Your embarrassed brother said he had saved a million, but he told you he forgot his withdrawal password, so you went to the bank with him to withdraw money. Unexpectedly, as soon as you entered the hall, he pulled out a gun, fired a shot at the ceiling, and shouted to the people inside, now all of you put your hands on your heads and squat on the ground. I'm robbing money, not your lives. You were stunned to see this scene. Goodness, is the withdrawal password actually this? What you don't know is that this is actually a public exercise initiated by the Municipal Cooperative Bank. The exercise will be broadcast live throughout, and the pistol Joe Hang is holding is only loaded with blank bullets. You cursed directly, feeling a surge of emotions. There are many cameras in the bank. You and Joe Hang entered the bank together, sat on the chairs in the waiting area for so long. Even if your whole body is full of mouths now, you definitely can't explain that he is not his accomplice. At this moment, Joe Hang turned his head and shouted at you. What are you still standing there for? Hurry up and pack the money. Do it quickly. We don't have much time left. Hearing this, you thought to yourself, this is bad. Now the identity of the accomplice is confirmed. Looking at the gun in Joe Hang's hand, you grit your teeth, pick up the bag he dropped on the ground, and walk directly to the counter. After filling the bag with a bag full of money, Joe Hang looked down at the watch on his wrist and said, all right, that's enough, let's go. He winked at you and quickly ran towards the outside of the bank. You didn't hesitate and hurry to follow him. You looked at him angrily. What the hell are you doing? Is this what you call a deposit? Joe Hang didn't explain much. Brother, rest assured I have a thorough plan, guaranteeing that you will finish this job safely. However, just as he reached the entrance of the bank, Joe Hang stood still in place, seeing several police cars not far away rushing towards the bank. Is this your idea of a perfect plan? You turned your head to glance at Joe Hang, somewhat helplessly asking. Obviously. Joe Hang had not expected the police to arrive so early, which was different from what was agreed upon earlier. Don't panic, they haven't surrounded the bank yet. As long as we get in the car and drive out, everything will be fine. What are you thinking? If we escape in the car now, we'll be caught in less than 10 minutes. We only have one way now. Back to the bank. As long as we have hostages, we still have a chance. Turn around and run back to the bank lobby immediately. After you all retreated to the bank, Joe Hang looked angry. How did they come so fast? We were almost able to escape. At this moment, you noticed the bullet casings on the ground, which were left by Zhou Hang when he fired the gun just now. Frowning, you looked up at the ceiling of the bank. Only a slight scratch was left by Zhou Hang's gunshot just now. You turned to look at Zhou Hang, who was still observing outside the door, and suddenly found the answer in your heart. A few days ago you did see news online that there would be a public exercise on banks, but at that time you didn't pay much attention. After all, since retiring from the military, you haven't been interested in these things. When you understood everything, you turned to Joe Hang and said, Hey, buddy, are you teasing me like this? Then I'll play with you to the end. You asked Joe Hang again, Do you have any other plans? Just tell me. Joe Hang scratched the back of his head awkwardly and said, My plan is for us to escape from the bank before the police arrive after we get the money. The audience in the live broadcast room also exploded in an instant. I'm laughing so hard. Is this the legendary pig teammate? These two robbers don't seem very smart. From the current situation, it seems that the live streaming brothers don't know this is an exercise. On the other side of the bank lobby, Joe Hang looked at you anxiously and said, I know my brain is not working well. I can't come up with many plans. Now the outside of the bank is full of police. What should we do? The outside of the bank is all blocked off. It's too difficult for us to escape now. The only way out is to control the hostages inside the bank and confront the police team. As time goes by, we will find opportunities. These hostages are our trump card. First, unify the hostages in one area to make it easier for us to control. Hearing this, Joe Hang didn't dare to be negligent. He quickly gathered all the people in the bank and arranged them on the chairs in the waiting area. After everything was arranged, Joe Hang ran back to you and said, The hostages are all arranged. What do we do next? By now, you have closed all the windows of the bank. After the police sealed off the scene, their first reaction must be to want to understand the situation inside the bank and the way to cut off their access to information about the bank is what we need to do. You calmly analyze the next steps rationally. The audience in the live broadcast room all saw it, and the audience was quite shocked. This robber seems to be quite interesting. When it comes to making plans, his mind is clear, not like an ordinary person. Indeed, compared to the anchor, this brother is obviously more reliable. By the way, this brother seems to be very experienced. Is it possible that they actually robbed a bank? Don't you say? I also feel that this brother may be a habitual offender. After all, he behaves too calmly. Outside the bank, the police team arrived at the scene and immediately blocked the intersections around the bank. 
how is the situation at the scene? The commander-in-chief looked 20 meters away at the bank and calmly asked the police officers next to him. Although this is just an exercise, it is being broadcast live on the entire network and there is no room for any mistakes. The police officer who came to report said that the surveillance in the bank has been blocked and now we have completely lost contact with the situation inside. In addition, the investigation revealed that the two robbers inside had both served in the special forces and have rich combat experience. It seems that this time, the director has really found us two opponents who are not easy to deal with. After looking at the basic information of the two, the commander-in-chief frowned slightly, his face showing a more serious expression. They are both ready for action. This time, the opponents are tough nuts to crack, so don't take it lightly. After Joe Hang finished dealing with the cameras in the bank, he excitedly said, what should we do next? We have too many hostages and too few people. It's difficult to control so many hostages, so we need to release some of them. Release hostages? Okay, who should we release? I'll go release them now. Joe Hang said eagerly as he got up, looking at his excited expression. A wry smile appeared on his face. Indeed, some hostages need to be released, but not now. Currently, there is less than 3 million in the bag. A new 100 yuan bill weighs 1. 25 grams. So 1 million is 12. 5 kilograms. 3 million weighs 37. 5 kilograms, which is 75 caddies. Even if we can escape from the bank, carrying 75 caddies on the run would be the limit. Most importantly, these are all new bills in consecutive order. Even if you can take them out, you won't be able to spend them. While Joe Hang listened to your words, the expression on his face became extremely wonderful. How come you seem like an expert in robbing banks? What should we do now? Let the bank manager change all the money into old banknotes that are not in consecutive numbers. The bank we are in is just a small branch. They may not have a reserve of millions of old banknotes. Even if they do, it will be a big problem for us to take away so much money. Zhou Hang listened in a daze, looking at you in astonishment. It was only half an hour ago that he was unknowingly implicated by himself, and he didn't even know that everything happening now was just an exercise. Could it be that he is a habitual offender who has robbed a bank before? Thinking of this, Joe Hang couldn't help but swallow his saliva. At the same time, the live broadcast room also exploded. Although the bank's surveillance was blocked, there was a miniature camera on Joe Hang's body broadcasting live. Brothers, isn't the friend of the anchor performing too professionally? With this performance, I really don't believe he hasn't robbed a bank before. I didn't expect a live broadcast of an exercise to be so exciting. It can be called a blockbuster film. No, much more exciting than mainstream movies. In the live broadcast room, the enthusiasm of the audience is very high. In the bank, Joe Hang looked at you with a strange expression. That, Ming Gu, how did you know so much? Could it be that you've done this before? You raised an eyebrow and looked at Joe Hang. Robbing a bank is high risk and low profit. Only fools would do it. Do you think I look like a fool? As the words fell, your gaze remained on Joe Hang, with a strange smile on your face. The look in your eyes was like you were looking at a fool. Joe Hang was stunned for a moment and then smiled somewhat awkwardly. So what should we do now? You lowered your head and after a moment of contemplation, said, now the price of one gram of gold is about 400 yuan. 37. Five kilograms of gold is worth 15 million yuan, which is five times the value of the same weight in cash. An important point is that gold can be melted and recast, completely erasing any traces from the bank, making it extremely difficult to trace. As Joe Hang listened to your words, he was so shocked that he couldn't help but swallow his saliva, and his astonished expression instantly turned into admiration. But this bank doesn't even have an independent vault, so there can't be that much gold. How do we rob it? Joe Hang frowned deeply and scratched the back of his head before asking what he thought was the most important question. There's nothing inside this bank. Naturally someone will send it to us. The number of hostages is too high. It's not conducive to control. We have to release the hostages, but we can't release them for nothing, right? releasing five hostages in exchange for 70 kilograms of gold. This is not too much to ask, right? Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and opened his mouth with a smile on his face, speaking out his thoughts. That appearance. It was still as relaxed and self-satisfied as if he was nagging a family friend, completely lacking the nervousness that a robber surrounded by a group and at the end of his rope should have. Exchanging hostages for gold is also more favorable to us than releasing the hostages alone because there are too many hostages to control. Because exchanging hostages for gold can release a signal to the police force, we are only interested in wealth and do not want to harm human lives. The bottom line of the police force is naturally the life safety of the hostages. As long as they can guarantee the life safety of the hostages as a prerequisite, they won't dare to rush to attack and provoke the robbers. In this way, we will have more time to look for opportunities. In the midst of Zhou Hang's shocked gaze, Lu Ming once again spoke with ease and complacency. 
These were the preliminary plans he had just thought of while Zhou Hang was covering the window glass as well as the camera. This part of the plan was not enough for him to dominate the pace of the entire maneuver and thus win. But, it was enough to delay for a long time, giving him enough time to formulate a plan to get away. The demands made on the condition of releasing a portion of the hostages, even if it was hard to meet, he would find a way to agree to at least a portion of it. After all, protecting the life and safety of every hostage was their most basic guideline. When Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming's words, his entire body had sat dumbfounded in place, his face filled with a look of shock. He knew that Lu Ming was powerful, but it was on the premise of knowing clearly that Lu Ming was powerful that he was still shocked by everything Lu Ming had said. It was too awesome. Compared to his own perfect plan, these plans of Lu Ming's were completely able to be called miracles. Zhou Hang was shocked at what kind of brain was capable of coming up with such a perfect plan. Live stream, Lu Ming's plans, as well as the lighthearted manner in which he spoke out his plans, were naturally relayed to the live broadcast by the hidden filming equipment on Zhou Hang's lapel. The audience directly exploded and the number of pop-ups reached its peak. Is this brother still human? Such a short period of time to formulate such a bullish plan. This is too strong, right? I can't help it. People are really different from each other. Look at the difference between these two robbers. It's totally a heaven and a hell. Laughing and crying, who the hell can imagine that I was kneeling down to watch the live broadcast of this maneuver? This robber is indeed a bit strong. But do you guys think it's possible that he's saying that all of this is just his experience? Upstairs has a point. After all, Right now he doesn't know that this is a drill. Formulating a plan that's apt. At a glance it's not the first time he's done this kind of thing. I bet 5 packs of chili fries. This pussy is definitely a repeat offender. Without robbing a bank 3 or 5 times. Can he have such experience? Anyway, I really don't believe it. Although this brother's eyebrows are clear and thick. Looks like a good person. But as far as this handy look of him as a robber. I also really can't believe that this is the first time he's done it. Kneeling to beg the city bureau to hurry to file a case to investigate. This brother must have a previous record. Ha ha. You say this brother if really have priors. By their own brother pit to rob the bank. Out of the big effort to help their own brother. The results know that this is just a drill. He is what kind of mood. It is estimated that he will be very grateful to his own good brother. In the live broadcast room. The viewers were discussing heatedly. And the pop-ups were rolling all over the place. Almost spreading over the entire live broadcast room. And from what the viewers were discussing, while shocked at Lu Ming's intelligence, the number of viewers who suspected that Lu Ming was a repeat bank robber was also increasing. After all, in the minds of all the viewers, Lu Ming was unaware that this was a drill at hand, and Lu Ming didn't have any prior preparation, and was completely pitted by Zhou Hang, and only inexplicably became a robber after the drill began. In other words, not knowing that it was a drill, and with only half an hour to spare, she had already mapped out the bank's situation and formulated a plan that shocked all the viewers. If it was an ordinary person who experienced such a thing, I'm afraid that they would still be in a state of confusion at the half-hour mark. Therefore, it was no wonder that the audience suspected that Lu Ming was an experienced recidivist. The heat in the live broadcast room was extremely high, and naturally there would be no shortage of self-media rubbing off on the heat, as all sorts of exaggerated posts began to appear on top of various websites. Shocked, maneuvers live in the robber play is actually a real robber. The audience were scared to tears. A drill, surprisingly involved in a shocking case. Know the truth after the police pour after fear. High IQ robber shocked the whole network. Did not expect him to be. The, various posts with exaggerated titles. Appeared on top of the major websites. Quickly harvested a large wave of clicks. And even a few on the hot search. At the same time, this is also considered to be free for this exercise live to bring a certain amount of traffic so that the visibility of the live broadcast room once again climbed to a high level. The number of viewers of the live broadcast is also once again skyrocketed a large section. In the middle of the bank, Zhou Hang was shocked for a moment before coming back to his senses after hearing Lu Ming's words. Gu, swallowing a mouthful of saliva, in his gaze towards Lu Ming, in addition to shock was a look of extreme admiration. Brother Ming, then what should we do next? Contact the police team outside? Reaching out and scratching the back of his head. Zhou Hang opened his mouth to ask again. Since Lu Ming already had a plan, he naturally didn't need to think about anything anymore. Just waiting to listen to Lu Ming's orders. After all, Zhou Hang still had a very good idea of his own abilities. We've already cut off the outside police team's access to the situation in the bank. So it's not us that's under pressure right now. It's them. It's estimated that it won't be long before they find a way to negotiate with us. This is also a common tactic of the police force. As for now, I'm hungry. Let's order something to eat. Didn't you kids say you'd treat me to dinner? I've waited from morning until now, but I haven't even gotten a drink of water. While Lu Ming calmly responded to Zhou Hang, 
he took out his cell phone from his pocket, opened the takeout software, and began to concentrate on choosing a meal. That appearance. It was as if they weren't robbing a bank right now, but rather traveling. Joe Hang couldn't help but frown as he looked at Lu Ming's calm demeanor. Actually, in the beginning when he decided to pull Lu Ming to be his partner in the bank robbery, Zhou Hang had thought about the reaction Lu Ming would have. After all, it was in the case that Lu Ming did not know anything about the maneuver, dragging him down and pitting him as his own teammate. Zhou Hang had thought of many different reactions Lu Ming might have, but the only thing he hadn't thought of was that Lu Ming would be as calm and collected as usual. It seemed like he knew that this was a drill, but how could he know? Zhou Hang clearly remembered that he didn't seem to have spilled the beans about the drill either. What would you like to eat? Just as Zhou Hang was still pondering, Lu Ming's voice rang out. Zhou Hang glanced at him. He only saw Lu Ming holding a cell phone in one hand and was looking up at himself, obviously waiting for his answer. Anything for me. I'll just follow whatever you order. Brother Ming. But, Brother Ming, we're robbers now. We're being surrounded by police officers inside the bank. And this takeout can't be sent in, right? Zhou Hang first cheerfully opened his mouth to respond to Lu Ming, before scratching the back of his head and opening his mouth as a reminder. Ordering a takeaway in the middle of robbing a bank? Zhou Hang estimated that Lu Ming should be the first person to do such a thing. This robber ordered a takeout order. Whether there is a writer to pick up is not certain, let alone the writer dares to send over. However, in the face of Zhou Hang's reminder, Lu Ming acted as if he hadn't heard it at all, once again lowering his head and ordering takeout. All right, the payment link has been sent to you. Make a payment. A few moments later, Lu Ming once again raised his head and cheerfully opened his mouth to Zhou Hang while putting his cell phone back. It was this kid Zhou Hang who had asked himself out and said that he wanted to treat himself to dinner. Therefore the money for this takeout meal naturally had to be paid by him. Zhou Hang sniffed and didn't have the heart to say anything more. After all, it was indeed himself who had punked Lu Ming. He hurriedly took out his cell phone from his pocket and prepared to pay. However, after seeing the payment link sent over by Lu Ming, Zhou Hang froze for a moment. What? It takes more than 2,000 to order a takeout? Brother Ming, what is this point you ordered? Looking at the data on the payment in Lu Ling, Lu Ming stared wide-eyed and spoke in extreme shock. Buddha jumping wall covered rice. Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and still had a smile on his face as he spoke. No, the Buddha jumping wall is only 208 servings. How did you order 12 servings? After Zhou Hang clicked on the details of the payment in Lu Ling, he immediately opened his mouth to exclaim again. Don't they have to eat too? Lu Ming pointed at the hostages and still cheerfully opened his mouth. But, but they are hostages. Zhou Hang had an expression worse than tears on his face as he opened his mouth to retort out. Originally, he still wanted to say that there were 15 hostages, but Zhou Hang was afraid that after Lu Ming heard this, he would order a few more. Wouldn't he himself suffer a big loss then? The hostages aren't people. Ha, huh? you kid hurry up and pay. We even robbed the bank. Are we still short of this much money? 30 million dollars of gold. One person to share half. You can still have 15 million. Har take this 2000 dollars. There is no point of interest? Lu Ming spoke with a smile on his face, clearly in a good mood as he spoke. The words were spoken in a light and cloudy manner. It seemed like he was just doing a small, insignificant thing. Indeed, compared to this kid Zhou Hang who had pitted him and robbing a bank, Lu Ming's pitting Zhou Hang for more than $2,000 was indeed only an insignificantly small thing, although knowing that this was just a drill. However, Zhou Hang this kid did not discuss with himself beforehand, pit himself as a robber. This revenge Lu Ming naturally had to avenge a little. This kid was a stingy ghost, so it was just right to slaughter him and make his flesh hurt. Goo. All right, I'll pay. Zhou Hang gulped down a mouthful of saliva before he responded to Lu Ming with a cry. What 15 million dollars? This is just a drill. When the drill is over, he has nothing but farts. But, this takeout money is also considered an expense in the middle of the operation. It should be able to be reimbursed, right? Should it? Zhou Hang really didn't want to pay such a large sum of money. But thinking about the fact that he had pitched Lu Ming as a robber, it really wasn't too much to ask for him to pit himself for a meal. The heart is dripping blood. Zhou Hang's whole hand was trembling when he entered the password. But in the end, the password was still lost. And looking at the successful payment interface that popped up on his cell phone, Zhou Hang's expression became a few more ugly points. Look at your little bit of talent. Eat you a meal. As for, the big deal is that when the gold arrives, brother will give you an extra kilogram. Lu Ming looked at Zhou Hang's unsightly expression and reached out to pat his shoulder, opening his mouth rather boldly. The psychology of revenge had been satisfied to a certain extent. At this moment, Lu Ming's heart was instantly relieved. Those who pitted people, people pitted people all the time. Thank you brother Ming. Zhou Hang squeezed out an extremely ugly smile on his face and responded to Lu Ming. At this moment, his heart was like a knife. 
outside the bank, the temporary command room. At this time, the group of commanders of the police team naturally did not know what was happening in the middle of the bank. After all, after the bank's window glass and surveillance cameras were blocked, they just couldn't understand the real-time situation in the middle of the bank. Two robbers, with guns in their hands, 15 hostages, there is an old man. The robbers have already snatched the stolen money from the middle of the bank, and when they were withdrawing from the bank, they discovered our rushing brothers and thus withdrew from the bank. The chief commander stood in front of a whiteboard, on top of which were pasted quite a few photographs, basically all of which were images intercepted from the bank's surveillance video, and among them, there were naturally the figures of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. The commander-in-chief was holding a marker pen, pointing on top of the whiteboard, obviously summarizing the information that the police team had now. As for the group of squad leaders who were part of the command tier, they were listening quietly at the side. The above is all the information we have. Does everyone have anything to add? Summarizing all the information once more, the chief commander leaned on the table with both hands and began while sweeping his gaze solemnly over every squad leader. The chief commander was originally a man who did not smile. He was serious and earnest when doing things. The crowd of squad captains did not open their mouths, obviously having nothing to add. Since everyone has nothing to add, I'll talk about our next action deployment. As everyone is well aware, banks are relatively closed buildings, with the robbers taking hostages to hold onto the bank. There aren't many breakthrough points we can utilize. The commander-in-chief opened his mouth again, and as he spoke, he unfolded a plan layout of the bank on the whiteboard, and used two pieces of suction stones to fix the layout on the whiteboard. Grabbing the marker on the table, he drew two circles on top of that bank layout map. This is the bank's ventilation duct which goes straight to the southwest corner of the bank's lobby. This is the back door of the bank, although it is tightly closed, but it can be opened by utilizing the ID cards of the bank insiders, and we were able to contact the head of the branch who was not in the bank, and he was able to provide us with the ID cards. After marking out the locations, the chief commander then spoke calmly, explaining both points. The group of squad leaders nodded once again as they heard the words. The expressions on everyone's faces were still quite serious and earnest. After all, this was an exercise that was broadcast live on the entire network, so many pairs of eyes were watching, no matter what, everyone's serious attitude still had to be put out, however, because this was just a drill, there wasn't too much of a tense atmosphere in this temporary command room, it was as if everyone, despite the importance they attached to it, felt in their hearts that it was just a drill after all, can we send members of the special duty squad to try to enter the bank through the ventilation ducts, one of the squad leaders was the first to speak up after everyone was silent for a moment, he was the squad leader of the technical squad, which was the department that managed the various computer equipment as well as the operators. Obviously, it was not good at deploying various operations for actual combat. As soon as these words were uttered, the crowd of squad captains all looked back at him, including the commander-in-chief who also looked at him with a raised eyebrow. For a moment, he fell slightly embarrassed. General ventilation ducts are rectangular ducts made of stainless steel with a thickness of 0, 0.5 to 0, 75 millimeters. With such a thickness, someone creeping in it, even if the movement is very slight, it's easy to cause a certain amount of rattling, causing the robbers to pay attention. Most importantly, according to the last surveillance footage we had before the robbers blocked the camera, we know that the hostages are probably in this position in the middle of the bank, while the robber's position is completely unknown, and the exit of the ventilation duct is in the southwest corner of the bank's position, it is impossible to know exactly where the robbers are located. Even if they can successfully enter the bank through the ventilation duct, it is still difficult to kill the robbers in the first place. If we do this, it's too risky for the hostages as well as our special task force members. The commander-in-chief spoke calmly, as if explaining to that technical department squad leader, spelling out the reasons why the operation was not feasible. Actually, saying that it was an explanation to the small captain of the technical department, it would be better to say that it was an explanation to the viewers in the live broadcast room. After all, this maneuver was being broadcast live, and there were a lot of viewers watching in the live broadcast room who weren't clear about these things, and an explanation was necessary. Hearing that, that technical department squad leader hurriedly nodded awkwardly. There were specialties in the technical department. After all, he himself was only from the technical department. It was not too much to say that he was a tech nerd. This wasn't a TV series, and he couldn't be like the protagonist in the TV series, whether it was a forensic pathologist or a portraitist. He was a good hand at solving crimes. The more feasible plan we have now to organize an action squad is to enter through the back door, bypass the office area, and arrive at the bank lobby to kill the robbers. However, the premise of this action is that the location of the robbers and hostages must be accurately determined so as to achieve a one-strike kill. Otherwise, 
This operation may only provoke the robbers and threaten the lives of the hostages and the operation team personnel. The commander-in-chief spoke again, speaking with a serious face, and his right hand even made a decapitation gesture. The squad leaders present all nodded with extreme approval. The feasibility of the plan was high, but the cost in case of failure was also extremely high, so they had to maximize the success rate as much as possible. At this time, the location of the robbers could not even be determined, so it was obviously not the time to execute the operation. In other words, what the current police task force could do was to try every means possible to obtain the situation in the middle of the bank, determine the location of the robbers, report, there's a delivery guy outside, looking at the information on the delivery order, the stuff seems to have been ordered by someone in the middle of the bank, just as the temporary command room fell into a brief silence, a police messenger appeared at the door, and after he saluted at the crowd inside, he hurriedly opened his mouth to report the situation, take out, bring it over and take a look. The commander-in-chief sniffed, first with a skeptical expression before he raised an eyebrow and opened his mouth to command, yes, that police messenger experienced a response, and then hurriedly turned around to carry out the order given by the chief commander. Not much time passed, three large bags of takeout appeared on top of the table in the temporary command room, the crowd of squad leaders were also gathered in front of the table, surveying the takeaways in the bags. The chief commander, on the other hand, took off the information sheet affixed to the bag and looked at it with a skeptical face. Mr. Lu Ming, it's really the takeout ordered by the robbers inside the bank. This is really interesting. This robber is trapped in the middle of the bank, but he's still in the mood to order takeout? After seeing the information on the takeout order, the commander-in-chief, who had always been unsmiling, couldn't help but laugh twice and spoke with interest. We police officers just eat some boxed lunches, and the robbers even dared to order Buddha jumping wall? And it's not just the robbers. Looking at the amount, it seems that the hostages inside also have a share. This robber is really generous. Robbing a few million dollars in a bank, can this not be generous? These two robbers, are they provoking us? Do they think this takeaway can be delivered to them? Why don't we split this Buddha jumping wall, just so I can taste the flavor? After all, I haven't eaten this yet. And after looking at the takeout in the bag, the group of squad leaders couldn't help but snicker. The atmosphere in the middle of the temporary command room was somewhat active for a while. After all, the robbers ordered takeout, such an operation they really saw for the first time. No, should say it is unheard of. This is really a knife slash ass. Open eyes. The most important thing is that you point takeout on point takeout. You also point a Buddha jumped over the wall? What exactly is the meaning of this? Just as the group of squad leaders were joking, the commander-in-chief took out his cell phone and dialed the virtual number on the takeout order. After being transferred by the platform, the call went to Luming's cell phone and was connected after a few rings. Seeing this, the crowd of squad leaders also hurriedly quieted down. The call was connected. The chief commander would press down the amplification and place the phone on the table. However, the person on the other end of the phone didn't speak. Lu Ming? I'm the chief commander of the city's criminal investigation team. My name is Zhao Ying. After two or three seconds of silence, the chief commander took the lead and spoke. Coming up with a self-introduction, the tone of voice when he spoke was calm, as if he was chatting with a friend, and there was no sense of oppression. After all, right now, he couldn't provoke the robbers. I know. Lu Ming's icy voice rang out on the other end of the phone, although the tone was also still calm. No emotion could be heard in the simple words. Hearing Lu Ming's reply, the chief commander obviously froze slightly. He knew. However, the chief commander felt that this should be Lu Ming bragging. He wasn't a delivery man. How could he be sure that he would definitely contact him? As far as we know, among your hostages, there are elderly people. The old man's mental capacity is poor, and he's also a problem in your hands. Why don't you release him? The commander-in-chief raised one eyebrow and once again spoke in a calm tone. That look. It was as if he was nagging Lu Ming about his family. He was testing. Testing the robber's bottom line. Yes. Lu Ming's cold voice sounded once again. He directly agreed to the commander-in-chief's request without hesitation. And the commander-in-chief froze again. For a moment, he couldn't understand the robber's intentions. Let him release the hostages and he agreed? What kind of calculation is this robber playing? Is it possible that he didn't take the drill seriously? The group of squad leaders beside him could not help but frown slightly. When the police demanded the release of the hostages, didn't the robbers usually not agree? This Lu Ming, why didn't he follow the rules? The commander-in-chief frowned deeply, and at this time noticed a message on that takeout delivery slip. There are a total of 15 hostages in the bank, plus you two robbers. That's 17 people, but you only ordered 12 meals which means you intend to release five hostages? With a raised eyebrow, the chief commander once again spoke in a conciliatory manner. These words exited. 
The crowd of squad leaders were all quite shocked and hurriedly looked at the three bags of takeout, and sure enough, there were only 12 meals in total. Talking to smart people really isn't that tiring, since you already know the chips I gave. Let's talk about this business. Lu Ming's voice sounded again. This time he smiled, and his icy tone seemed to have eased a few points. Business? What do you want? The commander-in-chief's brow was deeply locked, and the color in his eyes was a few points more stern. Using the release of hostages to make demands on the police team, Lu Ming's approach, although it was also considered a routine operation of the robbers, was something that the chief commander had not anticipated. Five lives, it should be worth a lot, right? It's a pity that we only have two people. Our strength is really limited. Let's do it this way. You prepare 70 kilograms of gold for us, and a fully fueled Chinese bus. This request isn't too much, right? Lu Ming cheerfully opened his mouth, speaking as if he was only mentioning a trivial matter. In his words, he seemed to be discussing with the chief commander, but his tone was irrefutable. The chief commander's face instantly became quite ugly. 70 kilograms of gold? Why doesn't this kid go and grab it? No, he was the bank robber, and now he was robbing. I can satisfy you with a fully fueled Chinese bus, but 70 kilograms of gold is too much. My ability is limited. I just can't do it. The commander-in-chief reached out and scratched his penniless hand before speaking again. This time, there was a bit less peace in the words. This request, it was indeed difficult for the commander-in-chief to do. After all, 70 kilograms of gold, that was worth a full 30 million dollars. Where was he going to get so much gold over? It seems that in the commander-in-chief's mind, five human lives are not worth this price now. Nah. Is that old man too old? Let's do it this way. After an hour, I'll kill the old man and exchange four young adults for 70 kilograms of gold from you. Is that a good enough deal? Lu Ming spoke once again, his words frivolous, as if he was joking with the commander-in-chief. But it was this joking tone that made the chief commander's face turn a little ugly. Don't be impulsive. If the lives of the hostages are in trouble, it won't be good for you. As long as you can guarantee the safety of the hostages, we have everything to talk about. The chief commander hurriedly spoke, trying his best to calm the robbers down. After all, what he needed to guarantee was the safety of every hostage's life. But where a hostage died, this matter could turn sour. Talk, captain. There's no talking. You also know that I only have a total of 10 meals, but the hostages have 15 people, and the extra 5 people don't have food. As for whether they are picked up by you or shot by me, that's something I don't care about. After all, I'm a robber, one who just robbed a bank. You only have one hour to prepare what I want. Understand? Right. Bring me my takeout. Lu Ming cheerfully opened his mouth. His words seemed to be filled with helplessness. And after he finished speaking, the phone was hung up directly. At the end of the phone, the commander-in-chief's teeth were clenched. And on a country face, the color was iron. Pinching the cell phone that had just been hung up, the chief commander's brows were deeply locked. His face was ugly as he stared at the takeout on the table, not knowing what he was thinking. This robber is too wild. The special duty squad leader raised one eyebrow and took the lead in breaking the quiet atmosphere in the makeshift command room. That's right, 70 kilograms of gold. He also really dares to ask for a lion's share. Does he hardly think that this gold is a stone? Another squad leader also opened his mouth immediately afterward. These words came out. The squad leaders present all nodded with considerable approval. 70 kilograms of gold. That was worth 30 million dollars. It was indeed no exaggeration to say that the robbers were asking for a lion's share. The robber said that he's going to start killing hostages an hour later. He has a total of 15 hostages in his hands. If he really kills the first hostage, then he won't be able to see what he wants. And the lives of the other hostages can't possibly be guaranteed. We can't compromise with the robbers. But we must also guarantee the life safety of every hostage. We can only agree to the robber's demands first. Pacify the robber's emotions and strive to end this maneuver before we reach the time the robber requested. The commander-in-chief was silent for a moment before he straightened his body and spoke in a serious and earnest manner. As he spoke, his gaze swept over every squad leader. The words fell. He casually threw the cell phone in his hand onto the table. Picking up the marker on the table, he turned around to face the whiteboard, and used the red marker to draw a circle at the back door position of the bank layout map hanging on that whiteboard. We still have an hour to go. Prepare what the robbers want. While the special task force organizes an operation, and while the robbers release the hostages, enter the bank hall through the back door and kill the robbers. 70 kilograms of gold. I want them to have the life to collect it, but not the life to take it away. 15 hostages, must make sure that every one of them is unharmed. Understand? The marker in his hand dotted fiercely in the red circle he had just drawn. The chief commander gave his action deployment in an irrefutable tone. All the squad leaders were standing straight and listening attentively to the chief commander's action deployment. 
At the moment when the chief commander turned around and threw the marker back on the table, looking over with a serious expression, all of them saluted at the same time. Yes, the response in unison resounded in the makeshift command room. The momentum was full. Live broadcast room. Since this exercise was open to the public by utilizing the entire live broadcast, on the side of the police team after arriving at the scene, naturally, the live broadcast was also turned on at the first time, more than half an hour's time. The police team live room has also accumulated a lot of viewers, although the heat is far less than the robber's perspective live room, but the online audience has also exceeded 30,000 people. At this time, looking at the commander-in-chief's action deployment, the audience in the live broadcast room was also discussing quite passionately. The chief commander of this police squad is very bold, worthy of being able to do to the city bureau criminal investigation team chief character. Meticulous thinking, acting decisively, indeed quite powerful. Look at the action deployment done by the commander-in-chief. This is ready to end this maneuver within an hour. Originally thought that this live broadcast could catch up for a day, but as a result, this has only been watched for more than half an hour. And you're telling me that it's almost over? Indeed it's a bit fast. I originally thought that this drill would last until the night. I didn't expect the police messenger side to be ready to act so soon. Alas, pity, it's hard to see such a wonderful drill live not expecting it to last only that long. Brothers are so not optimistic about the robbers? How do I feel that this time the robbers are also quite strong? The action on the side of the police messenger has not yet succeeded? The operation organized by the special police squad. Even if the robbers are smart, the probability is nothing. For this exercise, as the chief commander who is the decision maker of the police messenger team, the audience in the live broadcasting room are obviously still more recognized. At this moment, seeing the commander-in-chief preparing to launch a strong attack operation after an hour, the vast majority of viewers thought that the drill was most likely going to come to an end along with this police team's action, and the live broadcast of this maneuver has been carried out until now. The wonderful degree of viewers are more satisfied. Therefore, most of the viewers were still somewhat sorry. After all, if such a wonderful maneuver came to an end, it would not be easy to see the same type of live broadcast in the future. Bank Hall. After hanging up the phone, Looming's face was calm as he took out the bank platform layout map from within his backpack and looked at it. With that look, there was no intention of opening a conversation with Zhou Hang. Just now when Lu Ming made the call, although he didn't turn on the amplification, Zhou Hang came over and naturally heard the words of the chief commander over there. Listening to the commander-in-chief's meaning, the 70 kilograms of gold police team could not accept, but Lu Ming did not give in. Originally thought that after the phone call Lu Ming would discuss with himself, who knows that he did not say anything. A time, Zhou Hang was so anxious that he scratched his ears. Brother Ming, it turns out that you ordered five less meals because you didn't count the portions of the hostages you wanted to let go? Zhou Hang thought about it and came across to Lu Ming, cheerfully opening his mouth. If Lu Ming didn't say anything, then he naturally had to take the initiative to strike up a conversation. Saved you a fortune. Touched, right? Lu Ming did not raise his head still looking down at the bank's floor plan in his hands, and casually responded. When he spoke, his tone was calm, like casual conversation. But on the side of the police force, it seems like they can't quite accept our conditions. You said 70 kilograms of gold. Are we asking for more? Zhou Hang nodded before speaking seriously. In fact, Zhou Hang also felt that 70 kilograms of gold was indeed asking for a bit too much. After all, according to his original plan, he was only preparing to grab a 5 million. Not much. Originally, I also wanted a fully fueled helicopter, but after thinking about the fact that a helicopter is indeed difficult, that's why I sympathized with them and just asked for a fully fueled Chinese bus. Lu Ming spoke leisurely, his eyes never leaving the map as he spoke. He was telling the truth. At first, he did want a fully fueled helicopter. After all, the more difficult it was to fulfill the requests he made, the more he was able to make the police force burned out, and the more it burnt them out, the more advantageous it would be for himself. Sniffing. Zhou Hang was speechless for a while, with a head full of black lines. This Ming brother of his own really dared to think, asking for a fully fueled helicopter? This shitty bank didn't have a tarmac. Even if the helicopter did come, wouldn't there be no place to park it? Brother Ming, do you think that the 70 kilograms of gold will not be willing to give on the side of the police force? Zhou Hang scratched his head again and organized his language before speaking again. He was mainly pondering whether to persuade Lu Ming to make some concessions. After all, if they asked for too much, the police messenger team really couldn't get it out. Wouldn't it be a waste of time? To be able to grab a 50 kilograms, Zhou Hang was also satisfied. Kill two people and they'll be willing to give it. Lu Ming spoke again, his eyes still looking at the layout map in his hands, his words filled with calm casualness. Gu, hearing Lu Ming's words, Zhou Hang couldn't help but swallow his saliva. 
Within his perception, Lu Ming didn't realize that the moment was just a drill, and without knowing that it was a drill, talking about killing someone in such a casual manner, for a moment, Zhou Hang's heart began to feel a little apprehensive. This brother Ming of his own, after being discharged from the army, wouldn't have really done something like killing and setting fire to people, right? Otherwise how could he talk about killing so casually? Would killing, not be too good? Zhou Hang in silence for a moment, which is a little stiff squeeze out a few smiles, looking at Lu Ming tentatively asked out. He would say so, mainly because their own weapons inside are blanks, and do not have the power to kill. If Lu Ming really wanted to kill people, wouldn't that reveal that this was just a drill? Though, inside the secrecy request between Zhou Hang and the director, it only required that Zhou Hang could not actively expose the drill to his teammates, and there was no requirement that he could not let his teammates actively discover it. However, if Lu Ming found out that it was just a drill, it was hard to say if he would continue to cooperate with the drill, and it was very likely that Zhou Hang himself would have to be cleaned up by Lu Ming. Thinking about all of this, Zhou Hang's heart was a little terrified. After all, when Brother Ming punched someone, it really hurt. It's not good to kill people? Then have you ever thought that tricking me into robbing a bank isn't too good either? Lu Ming raised one eyebrow, this time raising his head and looking towards Zhou Hang, speaking with a smirking expression. Once Zhou Hang heard this, he smiled extremely awkwardly, and didn't know what to say at that moment. It was also at this time, the sound of shouting rang out from outside the bank. People inside listen, your takeout has been delivered. I don't have any weapons on me, can I talk to you? The mid-air voice resounded above the bank square after being amplified by the loudspeaker. The people in the middle of the bank were naturally able to hear it clearly. Brother Ming, the takeout is here. I'll go out and get it? Hearing the shouting outside, Zhou Hang stood up before looking at Lu Ming and opening his mouth to ask for advice. I'll go. Lu Ming also stood up and calmly opened his mouth to respond to Zhou Hang, and then directly walked towards the bank's front door. The police officer outside said that they wanted to talk, and this matter of negotiation. With Zhou Hang's brain, it was clearly not enough. Therefore, this matter naturally had to be handled by Lu Ming himself. Click click click. Accompanied by the sound of the motor starting up, the bank's skeletonized electric roller shutter door slowly opened. The glass door behind the rolling shutter door pushed open a 20 centimeter wide gap, and Lu Ming's figure walked out from the middle of the bank. He didn't bring a gun with him, because his identity had already been exposed in the surveillance footage, and he didn't have a hood to compare. With a calm face and a faint curve at the corner of his mouth, he just walked to the square outside the bank's main door without any hurry. This bank wasn't really big, but the small square outside was still quite wide. At this time, other than the police guards who had come over to make a delivery, the rest of the police guards were all outside the cordon that was set up by the team of police guards that was outside the plaza. Therefore, this small square also appeared to be somewhat empty. The commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders were standing next to the cordon, looking at the situation from afar, and the atmosphere was quite gloomy. The one who sent the takeaway over was the special duty squad leader, and at this time, he was wearing a bulletproof undershirt, with an earpiece on his ear, able to transmit this side of the conversation to the general commander's side through the walkie-talkie. You're quite bold. You even walked out like this, not even looking for a cover. Aren't you afraid that I'll ambush a few snipers on the opposite side of the building and directly take you out? The special duty squad leader looked at Lu Ming who was walking towards him and spoke with a smile on his face. Although his tone was calm, as if he was joking, the gaze within his pair of eyes was quite stern. It was obvious. The special duty squad leader really wanted to do this. How dare you rob a bank if you don't have a lot of guts? To be honest, if the robbers were only me. I really wouldn't dare to come out. But who let me have an accomplice? Right now my accomplice is holding a gun to the heads of those hostages. If I have the slightest thing happen to me, none of the hostages will survive. One person for 15 lives. This is not a bad deal. Lu Ming spoke cheerfully as he walked towards the special duty squad leader. That appearance. It was as if he was quite familiar with the special agent squad leader and was chatting about old times. Hearing those words, the special duty squad leader couldn't help but frown. Confident. Rampant. This was the feeling Lu Ming gave him at this moment, a feeling that made the special agent squad leader extremely uncomfortable. This was because people like this were generally crazy when it came to doing illegal and criminal things, and were hard to deal with. To have the police detail give you a takeaway, a robber like you, this is really the first time I've seen it. Aren't you afraid that we'll tamper with the takeout for you? After taking a deep breath of cool air, the special police squad leader suppressed the emotions in his heart before speaking calmly once again, although every word he said was like he was making small talk. However, since this was a negotiation, every word naturally would not be idle talk. The seemingly casual words were actually all tests. It was only by figuring out the robber's character and testing the robber's psychology that one could dominate in the middle of a negotiation. 
Afraid. But aren't you guys afraid that I'm one of those five people without food? Lu Ming smiled and opened his mouth. And as he spoke, he had already walked across to the special duty squad leader. He stretched his back and calmly looked at the group of police officers outside that cordon in the distance behind the special police squad leader. Casual and lazy. Not the slightest bit of tension could be seen at all. Hearing Lu Ming's words, the special police squad leader's face changed slightly, his cheek muscles on both sides moving, obviously with his teeth clenched, some anger in his heart. Indeed, just now, it wasn't that they hadn't thought of putting some sleeping pills inside every takeaway, so that everyone inside the bank would lose their ability to resist, but the chief commander was worried that perhaps one of the two robbers would not eat these boxed lunches. After all, there were five less boxed lunches, and the robbers were saying that there were five hostages who didn't eat, but in reality, who knew if one of the robbers wouldn't eat, so the sleeping pill thing wasn't carried out, now it seems that the commander-in-chief's concern is not unreasonable, this robber dares to order takeout that is passed through the hands of the police messenger team, and has already thought of this point, doing things carefully and thoughtfully, this robber in front of him who looked lazy in his behavior was really not an ordinary person nah, the request you made before, we can agree, but we must confirm that the hostages in the bank are all safe now, this point is our bottom line, the special duty squad leader's pair of eyes stared calmly at Lu Ming, who stood opposite him, and spoke in an irrefutable tone. At this moment, his tone was no longer calm, his brows were deeply locked, and his face was extremely serious, displaying an attitude that he would not make the slightest concession. While looking at him in this manner, Lu Ming laughed. This person of mine, I guess, doesn't have a good temper, although right now I can guarantee that the hostages are all safe for the time being, but maybe when my temper comes up later. I won't be able to resist getting one killed. That's why you guys need to be a bit faster in preparing things. After Lu Ming laughed, he then cheerfully spoke casually. Within the seemingly joking tone, the threatening implication was self-evident. For a moment, the junior captain's brows were tightly locked, and his face had a slightly angry expression. This person in front of him to really be a robber. Then the consequences are really unimaginable. Although right now he was only threatening to kill the hostages, he hadn't actually made a move yet. However, in terms of short contact, the special duty squad leader could sense that the Lu Ming in front of him was absolutely capable of killing hostages, faced with such a robber. It was natural to be extremely cautious when negotiating. After all, once he was angered, the consequences would most likely be too much for the police force to bear. Outside the police line, listening to the conversation coming through the intercom, the faces of the chief commander and the group of squad leaders did not look good either. The commander-in-chief slightly lowered his head and the expression on his face was terribly gloomy. The intercom was pinched in his right hand, and because he had exerted himself too much, the joints of his right hand fingers were slightly white. The robbers took hostages. This is not the most headache. What caused the most headache was that after taking a hostage, this robber was still a life-threatening master. After all, if you still want to give yourself a way out, still want to live, even if the hand has a hostage, as long as it is not provoked too much, the robbers will not easily kill hostages because a human life and not a human life, that consequence is a world of difference, but do not want to life robbers can be completely different, he will not consider the consequences, completely based on their own mood to kill, this kind of robber is the biggest headache for people, the Lu Ming at the moment was clearly such a person, Lu Ming, the chief commander clenched his teeth and raised his head again with a grave expression, slightly squinting his eyes to stare at Lu Ming in the distance once again, exhaling a mouthful of turbid air without moving, the chief commander murmured to himself, not knowing what he was thinking, on the small square outside the bank, the negotiations were still continuing, we need to send someone into the bank to determine the safety of the hostages, after all, this is not something that can be counted on with your verbal assurances, only by determining the safety of the hostages can we prepare what you want, after listening to Lu Ming's threatening words, the special duty squad leader was silent for a moment before speaking again, the thing he said at this time was the purpose of him borrowing the delivery request to talk to Lu Ming, after all, Lu Ming had blocked the bank's window glass, surveillance cameras and other things, causing the police team to be completely unable to access the situation in the bank. There was also no knowledge of the hostages' current situation, and if they were able to fight for the opportunity to obtain the situation in the bank and determine the exact location of the hostages and robbers, it would also play a great role in the next strong attack operation. Negotiate with me? You this seems to be some. Stomping on your nose ah. Lu Ming raised his eyebrows and spoke in a rather calm tone and when he said the second half of the sentence, his face was rather arrogant, looking at him in this manner, although the special duty squad leader was already trying to suppress the emotions in his heart, his teeth were still clenched to the point of cackling, this brat was simply too arrogant, don't be angry, anger will only lower your IQ, understand, 
Just as the special duty squad leader was holding a mouthful of fire in his heart, Lu Ming suddenly reached out and patted his shoulder, and then spoke cheerfully. That appearance, it was as if an elder was bitterly educating his juniors, and as the words fell, Lu Ming took the takeout from the hands of the special duty squad leader. You want to ascertain the safety of the hostages in the middle of the bank, that's nothing to be ashamed of, I can agree to that, but sending people in is not an option, after all, who knows if the one you send in will be a rash person who wants to make a scene in the name of ascertaining the safety situation of the hostages, there's a camera you guys hid in this takeout, right, if I bring this back, won't you guys be able to determine whether the hostages are safe or not, Lu Ming lowered his head as he examined the takeout he was carrying in his hands, while speaking calmly, the words were said in a rather casual manner, resuming the same idle chatting and catching up tone as before, and listening to his words, the special agent squad leader's heart thumped, indeed, there really was a miniature camera hidden inside the takeaway, after the initial plan of putting some sleeping pills into the takeout was vetoed by the chief captain, the group of squad leaders and the chief captain unanimously passed the decision of hiding miniature cameras in the takeout, after all, only to be able to determine the specific location of the robbers and hostages, can greatly increase the feasibility of the next strong attack action, and unexpectedly, this action of theirs was directly guessed by Lu Ming, this robber in front of them was indeed not simple, alright, the negotiations end here, I will let you determine the safety of the hostages, I hope that the time it takes for you to prepare for me to get my stuff, won't be too long, after all, my patience is very limited, just as the special duty squad leader still wanted to open his mouth to make a few wisecracks, Fighting for a glimmer of a chance for the miniature camera to remain undetected, Lu Ming suddenly raised his head and looked at the special difficulty squad leader as he calmly opened his mouth. The words fell. He then no longer cared about the special difficulty squad leader and directly turned around and walked towards the bank over there. However, he had just taken two steps out. As if he had thought of something, Lu Ming turned his head and walked back to the side of the special agent squad leader, casually reaching out. He took down the walkie-talkie on the waist of the special duty squad leader. Chief Captain Zhao Battalion, I'll take this walkie-talkie, I'll contact you if there's a need in the follow-up, holding the takeaway in one hand and that walkie-talkie in the other, Lu Ming gazed at the several people outside the distant cordon and spoke with a smile on his face, after these words were said, he turned around once again and walked towards the bank's gate without looking back, for a moment, the special police squad leader froze in place, and the chief commander outside the cordon over there, holding the walkie-talkie, after listening to Lu Ming's voice in the walkie-talkie just now, his eyebrows twisted into Chuan zigzags, it was only at this time that he realized, the opponents of this exercise were truly terrifying, the negotiations they had initiated by taking the opportunity to deliver the takeaway, the robbers had not only dominated the entire time, but they had also seen everything they had deployed, especially the last one that took the walkie-talkie and spoke directly to himself as the chief commander, a move that completely disregarded the entire police team in the eyes, simply arrogant to the extreme, however, he really had the capital to be arrogant, after all, from the beginning of this exercise until now, his performance was not exaggerated to say that he was strategizing, the commander-in-chief narrowed his eyes and looked from afar at Lu Ming's back that was walking towards the bank, it was only after that back figure entered the bank and the electric roller shutter door slowly closed that he turned around with a grave expression on his face and walked back towards the temporary command room, the bank hall, after Lu Ming closed the bank's door, he returned to sit cross-legged on the floor opposite the hostage table, divide the meal into smaller portions for everyone, while continuing to look at the bank's floor plan with that one map, Lu Ming opened his mouth to Zhou Hang without even lifting his head, during the negotiations outside, Zhou Hang had been guarding next to the hostages, he was unable to understand the negotiation situation outside, and was fearful that the team of police officers outside would make a move against Lu Ming, after all, if Lu Ming was taken care of by the police force, if he was left on his own, with his own brain, he probably wouldn't be able to last more than 10 minutes before the drill was over. However, it was good that Lu Ming had finally returned. Zhou Hang saw Lu Ming come back, and originally wanted to go up and talk to him. However, seeing that Lu Ming didn't pay any attention to himself for the time being, he sat quietly on the ground and waited for Lu Ming's orders. Brother Ming, how do we divide it up? At this time, Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming's words and opened his mouth to ask while rushing to get up. There were only 12 takeaways and there were a total of 17 people in the bank, how to divide it was naturally a problem, together with this old man, a total of 5 people are chosen, they don't have food, but they can leave after an hour, the rest of you get one portion each, Lu Ming spoke calmly, responding to Zhou Hang, when Zhou Hang heard this, he nodded then rolled up his sleeves and cheerfully prepared to share his meal, the crowd of hostages heard Zhou Hang and Lu Ming's conversation, and for a moment, they all became excited, looking forward to being the chosen ones, 
There were a few people who looked as if they wanted to present themselves, but they swallowed back when the words came out of their mouths. After all, thinking about the vicious appearance of these two robbers before, opening their mouths to recommend themselves now might only be counterproductive. Right, there is a camera inside the boxed lunch. Find it out and remember to look carefully. When Zhou Hang was just about to walk over towards the hostage table with his boxed lunch, Lu Ming suddenly spoke again. At those words, Zhou Hang was first slightly stunned, obviously curious as to how Lu Ming knew that there would be a camera in the boxed lunch. However, seeing that Lu Ming didn't seem to have the intention of saying anything more, he just returned a sentence of knowing, and sat down on the ground to rummage through the takeout. Two or three minutes later, Brother Ming, found it. Zhou Hang rummaged through almost everything inside the takeaway before he found the miniature camera that was only half the size of a fingernail cap. Holding that thing, he hurriedly ran to Lu Ming's side and handed it over to him. You're really willing to shed blood. This is a high-tech product nah. It's worth a lot of money, right? Lu Ming looked at the four square, only half the size of a finger cap and half a centimeter thick hidden camera in his hand and spoke with a smile on his face. With such a small size, it didn't need to be connected to an additional power source to work. This thing was indeed more advanced than all the cameras Lu Ming knew of, and it was no exaggeration to say that it was a high-tech product. Brother Ming, how did you know that there was this thing in the takeout? They pasted this thing on the back of the takeout sheet and made a small hole in it. If you hadn't said for me to look for it, I guess I wouldn't have been able to find it. This is too chicken thief. Zhou Terminal was beside Lu Ming, also sizing up the miniature camera in Lu Ming's hand, and asked out of curiosity. This thing was really hidden too secretly. After all, if it wasn't for deliberately looking for it, who would notice if there would be something on the takeout order that was affixed to the takeout bag? Guess. All right, hurry up and divide the meal. Don't let it all get cold later. Lu Ming stared at the camera for a moment before he looked up at Zhou Hang and calmly opened his mouth to respond. When negotiating just now, it would be said that there was a camera in the takeout, which was indeed Lu Ming's guess. After all, in heist movies, it was a normal bridge for police officers to put cameras and bugs into boxed lunches. Lu Ming had just casually said it at the time, but looking at the reaction of the special police squad leader, he knew that he had guessed correctly. Zhou Hang's side quickly divided the meal, and the five people who didn't get a meal were filled with excitement and joy. After all, not having a meal to eat meant that they would be released within an hour, which was a great thing. As for those who had been given their share of the rice, Zhou Hang had given them a vicious warning when he gave them the rice, so no one dared to say anything. The robbers had guns. With this alone, it would not be difficult to subdue these hostages. Everyone had only one little life, so naturally no one dared to arbitrarily take their own little life to try and make a mistake. Brother Ming, your meal. Zhou Hang returned to Lu Ming with two meals and handed one of them to Lu Ming. However, after receiving it, Lu Ming placed it on the ground to the side, clearly not prepared to eat it. For the time being, we can't be sure if the police messenger has tampered with this rice, so you eat first. Before Zhou Hang could ask, Lu Ming was the first to speak explaining the reason to him. During the negotiations just now, the special police squad leader had taken the initiative to mention this. Judging from his behavior, the great probability was that he had not tampered with the meal. But even if there was just a tiny bit of probability, Lu Ming would not try. Although Lu Ming had acted extremely arrogant during the negotiations just now, he was actually a rather cautious person. Being wild and arrogant was just what he wanted the police force to see. He wanted them to be unable to fully understand his opponent so that he could maximize his position as the robber and be in an absolutely dominant position in this exercise. Hearing Lu Ming's words, Zhou Hang couldn't help but sigh in his heart that he had really found the right teammate. Giving Lu Ming a thumbs up, he hurriedly buried his head and ate. After all, it was now nearly one in the afternoon, and from being hungry in the morning, he was truly hungry. Most people were eating, and it was rather quiet in the middle of the bank hall. At this time, however, the live broadcast room of the robber's perspective was bustling with activity. Live broadcast room, is this robber overly cautious? Surprisingly, he is still worried about the police team poisoning the meal, but directly finding the camera that the police team hid. This is still quite bullish. Upstairs brother, you are open God's perspective to say that people are overly cautious. If the police team really put sleeping pills in the meal, ha ha, just came over from the police team's live broadcast. At the beginning, the police team really intended to put down sleeping pills, worthy of being an experienced veteran. This is just too easy to cope with. Indeed, regarding this brother's performance, if I say he hasn't robbed a bank three or five times, I won't believe it. Originally I wanted to wash my hands of the big brother robber, but after watching this encounter where he was a member of the police force, there is indeed no wash. Expect the drill to end sooner. After all, once the drill is over, I'm afraid this big brother will be arrested and sentenced. 
A peanut rice won't run away. But looking at this big brother's performance, the drill is afraid that it won't end so soon. The next door police officer perspective live room is already preparing for a strong attack. The end of the maneuver is not far away. Are you guys trying to laugh me to death? People were pitched by their brothers to rob the bank. For the things of the maneuvers are still in the dark. As a result, you a large group of people waiting for people to be caught at the end of the maneuvers? Indeed is not too generous. This robber brother is indeed a talent. High IQ, strong planning ability, but also cautious enough. Who can think that in the end is actually harmed by a drill? Alas, it's all because he performed too brightly inside the maneuver and harmed himself. The audience in the live broadcast room was discussing very hotly. After seeing Lu Ming's operation of finding out the camera, as well as his attitude towards the takeout that passed through the hands of the police officer. The viewers were extremely impressed with this highly intelligent robber who was cautious in his actions, and at the same time, they were even more convinced that Lu Ming was a repeat offender. After all, in the confrontation with the police, Lu Ming's various countermeasures were easy to use and easy to maneuver. Indeed, he was like a veteran who had robbed a bank and had a lot of experience, but no matter what, Lu Ming's performance also made the live broadcast of this maneuver extremely exciting. Under the rendering of various online articles with exaggerated titles, real robbers mistakenly entered the drill and played robbers live? This topic also rushed onto the hot search, and such a dramatic thing is definitely attractive, naturally bringing countless new viewers to the live broadcast. The heat of this drill live broadcast spread all over the internet, and for a while there was no one. The number of online viewers of the hijacker's perspective live broadcast room also broke through the 100, 000 mark. It has just become one of the hottest live broadcasting rooms on the whole network. In the temporary command room, the commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders were gathered around the table, all of them remaining silent. The atmosphere in this not-so-large space was quite gloomy for a while. On top of the table, there was a laptop computer. And at this time, the computer screen was a gray screen. This laptop, connected to the signal of the miniature camera they had hidden on the takeout order, receiving the images coming from that side. After the camera was found by Lu Ming, he had apparently covered it with something, which was why the image on the laptop screen was a grayish one. At this moment, the chief commander had his back to the crowd, holding a red marker in his hand, and was writing and drawing on the bank's floor plan that hung above the whiteboard. A few moments later, the chief commander gently tapped the whiteboard with his hand, and the gazes of the crowd of squad leaders all hurriedly looked over. Entering through the back door, to reach the bank's lobby, you need to pass through a total of two areas and three doors. Utilizing the Bank Insider ID card to open the back door. This area is the locker room area for the bank insiders. That is, the place where the bank staff go to and from work to change their work clothes, as well as to store some of their personal belongings. And behind the locker room area is the office area. And there is a door between the two areas, which will only be locked after hours. So it should be open now. Lastly, there is this door between the office area and the bank lobby. After passing through this door, the raid team will be able to reach the bank lobby which is where the hostages and robbers are. Holding a marker, the chief commander pointed to the bank's floor plan on the whiteboard and spoke to the group of squad leaders about the bank's layout without haste. Everyone present listened extremely attentively. The cameraman carrying the video camera was also relaying everything that was happening in the makeshift command room to the police dispatcher's perspective live feed. Our biggest problem with this raid is that we don't know the exact location of the hostages and the robbers, so we can't kill the robbers the first time we open the door. Therefore the special duty team members need to first without the robbers realizing it, behind this last door. Use the filming equipment to check out the bank lobby and determine the robber's location first. Therefore this door from the office area to the bank lobby becomes the most important part of the raid. This door from the office area to the bank hall direction to open is not use the key, but open the door will certainly have movement, very likely to cause the robber's attention. And if it attracts the attention of the robbers, and the robbers take hostages in the first place, it will be almost impossible for our raid to win. The commander-in-chief pointed to the route he had just marked out, and with a serious expression, he spelled out the course of action as well as the problem. As the chief commander of this exercise's police squad, as the chief commander of the police force in this exercise, he had the right to make decisions on all the actions of the police officers in this exercise. However, he was not a dictatorial person. In the deployment of this next raid, which was enough to determine whether or not the exercise would end, he decided to brainstorm and involve all the squad leaders. Is there any chance that we can get the technical department to look for more opportunities on the bank's surveillance cameras? After all, as long as we can utilize the surveillance cameras to determine the location of the robbers, then the raid will be quite a bit easier. After a short period of silence from everyone in the makeshift command room, a squad leader spoke up. And as soon as the words left his mouth, the technical squad leader shook his head. 
The surveillance camera in the middle of the bank was covered by the robbers with white paper. This is not a technical means, but a physical means now. The technical department squad leader shrugged his shoulders and spoke rather helplessly. Indeed, if it was a technical means, with so many computer talents in their technical department, controlling a surveillance camera was naturally not a difficult task. But if people used white paper to cover it up, this kind of physical means, what could you do even if your computer skills were higher? Is it possible that we make a loud noise during the raid operation to override the commotion when the raid squad opens the door? The special duty squad leader rubbed his chin and thought for a moment before speaking seriously. The biggest problem right now was that there would be a loud noise that would attract the robber's attention when the raid team opened the door from the office area into the bank lobby. If it was possible to make some other noises so that the robbers wouldn't notice the noise of the raid team opening the door, wouldn't this matter be solved? Upon hearing this, the rest of them nodded. This plan proposed by the special duty squad leader was indeed feasible. However, what kind of loud noise to make became another problem. How about shouting outside the bank to attract the robber's attention? The special duty squad leader spoke up once more, voicing out his thoughts. Utilizing a megaphone to shout can indeed attract the robber's attention, but it may not be able to cover up the sound of the door opening. The commander-in-chief shook his head slightly and gave a calm response. This raid was a matter of great importance. The consequences would be extremely serious if it failed. So they had to score a hit. The plan for the operation had to be perfect enough. There couldn't be the slightest bit of ambiguity. There is an alarm in the bank. Our technical department can access the bank's alarm system and turn on the alarm. Although the alarm bell has buttons in the middle of the bank that can be cut off manually, it's enough to buy time for the raid team to determine the location of the hostages and robbers. After the special duty squad leader's proposal was rejected by the chief commander, the technology department squad leader raised an eyebrow and opened his mouth immediately afterward. The moment these words came out, the gazes of all the people in the temporary command room looked towards the special difference squad leader. This was indeed a good plan. The sound of the alarm in the bank was enough to disguise the sound of the door opening, and the sudden ringing of the alarm would give the robbers a certain amount of psychological pressure, gaining a greater chance for the raid team. Obviously, the feasibility of this plan proposed by the technical department squad leader was very high. Very good. Let's adopt the plan proposed by the technical department. After the raid squad arrives at the last door, the technology department accesses the bank's alarm system and activates the alarm to cause interference to the robbers. After that, the raid team opens the door and utilizes the filming probes to view the bank's lobby and determine the location of the robbers and hostages. The chief commander was silent for two seconds before he pointed at the bank's floor plan on the whiteboard and spoke rather excitedly. As for the technical department squad leader, after hearing that the plan he proposed was adopted, a smirk that was hard to hide surfaced on his face. After all, if this raid plan was successful in ending the maneuver, having come up with such a crucial plan himself, there would definitely be an entry for himself in the credit book when the time came. How could he not be happy? There are a total of two robbers. When the time comes, we'll prepare what the robbers want, and the special duty squad leader will bring the gold to the front door of the bank to attract the attention of one of the robbers. At the same time, set up snipers on the upper floors opposite the bank. Let's double prong the attack, back and forth, and kill both robbers at the same time. Ending this maneuver in one fell swoop. The chief commander stared at the layout diagram on the whiteboard for a moment before turning around and speaking again. As the words fell, he casually threw the marker in his hand onto the table, standing up straight with a serious and solemn expression. A pair of eyes translucent with refined light swept over the crowd of squad leaders, and his neutral voice once again resounded, Do you have any confidence? When the crowd of squad captains heard this, they all hurriedly stood up straight. Almost simultaneously, they saluted towards the chief commander. Guarantee to complete the mission. The response in unison resounded in the middle of the temporary command headquarters, which was quite imposing. Live broadcast room. Although compared to the hijacker's perspective live broadcast room, the audience of the police messenger live broadcast room was a large portion less. At this time, the number of online viewers is only 50,000. However, the number of pop-ups was also quite a lot. And if the pop-ups were not shielded, the black pressurized pop-ups could almost cover the entire live broadcast room. Chief Commander this plan Bola, using the robbers to raise something to hold back a robber, and then use the bank alarm to cover the sound of the raid team to determine the location of another robber. Absolute. Feel the robber brother to cool off. Although I admit that this exercise inside, play robber brother has been very cattle, but the police team commander-in-chief is obviously not a dry meal. After all, it is the chief commander of the city's criminal investigation team. Criminal investigation origin of the police messenger. Action deployment this piece is still very strong. This exercise, high IQ robbers touch high IQ police poor, can be called the whole process without urination point, this is looking at the end, it is really a pity. Brothers, 
Everyone is now thinking on the bright side. What do you think the situation will be if this raid plan fails? According to the current situation, the chances of the raid plan succeeding are very high, but if it really fails, it is estimated that the raid team's police officers will have to die in battle a few times, and the hostages will probably suffer casualties as well, so the situation will be terrible for the team of police officers at that time. In the face of the action deployment of the raid plan of the police squad, the audience in the live broadcast room were in awe. At the same time, for the decision maker commander in chief, they were also quite impressed. After all, this raid plan, in everyone's eyes, although it couldn't be said to be seamless, it could be called well planned. Basically, it had already taken all the needed considerations into account, and the chance of winning was naturally very large. Of course, seeing that the police team had formulated such a thorough plan, a part of the audience sighed at the possibility of the exercise coming to an end. After all, this exercise, the confrontation between the police force and the robbers, the degree of excitement was completely no less than some theater blockbusters. The audience naturally hoped that the exercise could last longer. Temporary Command Room The commander-in-chief had just finalized the raid plan and was in the process of planning a detailed action deployment. Suddenly, the walkie-talkie on the table resounded with a rustling sound. Chief Commander Zhao Battalion, I've come to fulfill my promise. After the rustling sound, Lu Ming's cheerful voice came from within the intercom. With that tone, if someone who wasn't clear about the situation heard it, I'm afraid they would have thought it was an acquaintance coming to catch up with the chief commander. Hearing this voice, the commander-in-chief frowned deeply and hurriedly picked up the intercom. The group of squad leaders in the middle of the temporary command room were also stony-faced and stood quietly in place, and the words just fell. Above the screen of the laptop on the table that was connected to the miniature camera signal, an image appeared, with one of Lu Ming's eyes occupying a large portion of the screen. Soon, the camera pulled away, and Lu Ming's face appeared on the screen. He had sword brows and starry eyes, decent features, a heroic spirit between his eyebrows, and a sunny and warm smile on his face. However, the smile on his face gave the people in the temporary command room a very uncomfortable feeling. Chief Captain, can you see me, right? Among the intercom, Lu Ming's voice once again sounded. He gazed straight at the camera, holding the intercom in his hand, and spoke cheerfully. The screen on the laptop was shaking a little, and it was clear that the miniature camera was being held and filmed by another robber. Because the miniature camera was not equipped with a radio, it was only able to capture the picture and not record the sound, and Lu Ming was obviously aware of this, which was why he used the walkie-talkie to convey his voice. Can see, the chief commander took the walkie-talkie and pressed the talk button, rushing to open his mouth in response. Although he had a deep frown and a grave expression, the chief commander still made his voice sound as kind as possible. Very well, I promise to let you determine the safety of all the hostages, and now I've come to fulfill my promise. Lu Ming once again cheerfully spoke into the intercom before waving his hand at the camera. The robber with the miniature camera then reversed the camera and started filming over the hostage table, filming every hostage before the camera returned to Lu Ming once again. See clearly, right? Fifteen people, every single one of them is alive and well. Not a single hair of sweat missing. Lu Ming's voice once again sounded in the intercom, still cheerful and giving off a feeling of goodwill. Since the hostages are all safe, then we will also honor our promise as soon as possible. 70 kilograms of gold, a fully fueled car, we will be ready within the time you requested. The commander-in-chief hurriedly opened his mouth to respond, using a tone that was as kind as possible to appease the robbers. Very well, but I'm not happy about your sneaky move to hide a camera in the takeout, so I'm going to pick a hostage to kill, or none of you seem to realize the consequences of your little act. What do you think? Lu Ming's voice sounded again, and the smile on his face thickened a few points. It no longer looked as sunny and warm as it did just now. Paired with those words, he was just like a bloodthirsty demon, treating killing as a pleasure to please himself. And upon hearing his words, the chief commander as well as the group of squad leaders all had expressions on their faces that were hard to see. Lu Ming, calm down a bit. If there are really hostage casualties, it will be extremely unfavorable for you as well. As long as you don't harm the hostages, I guarantee that I will definitely let you see the car and gold you requested within the time you set. The chief commander gritted his teeth and hurriedly and eagerly opened his mouth to stabilize Lu Ming's emotions, wanting to try and stop his idea of killing the hostages. However, after listening to the chief commander's pacifying words, Lu Ming in the computer screen image was smiling. He once again picked up the walkie-talkie, his pair of deep eyes looking squarely at the camera. Chief Captain, prepare to collect the corpse. Lu Ming's ice-cold voice rang out, and after the words fell, he put away his smile and stood up. The camera shook for a moment and seemed to have been thrown to the ground by Lu Ming, and then in the middle of the picture was a foot falling from above, followed by only the words lost signal connection on the computer screen. Obviously, 
That camera was directly crushed by Lu Ming. Damn it. This guy is really a madman. The chief commander's hand that was cupping the walkie-talkie slammed his fist on the table and directly opened his mouth to curse. If Lu Ming chose to kill the hostages now, the situation of the current standoff would become tense, completely disrupting the chief commander's next raid plan. After all, once there was a hostage death, it would cause great pressure on the police team's side, forcing them to speed up their actions. In this way, there wouldn't be much time left to prepare for their raid plan. In the middle of the bank, Lu Ming placed the walkie-talkie aside and sat cross-legged on the floor stretching his back, and on the floor in front of him, the miniature camera that was the size of a fingernail cap had already been stepped on by him and turned into a pile of slag. Zhou Hang, who was standing at the side, was wearing a shocked expression, clearly stunned by Lu Ming's actions just now. Gu, after swallowing a mouthful of saliva, the shocked expression on Zhou Hang's face only slightly eased, he hurriedly sat down cross-legged beside Lu Ming as well, reaching out and scratching the back of his head, he looked as if he wanted to speak, and after hesitating for several times, he then looked at Lu Ming and opened his mouth. Brother Ming, are we really going to kill hostages? As he spoke, Zhou Hang wore a somewhat stiff smile on his face. Obviously, he didn't want Lu Ming to kill hostages. After all, if this was done, wouldn't the matter of the maneuver be exposed? At that time, he really didn't know how to end it, since he had already lied to Lu Ming. Then no matter what, he had to insist on lying until the end of the maneuver. Nah, do I look like I'm joking with them? Lu Ming reached out and rubbed his neck. A faint smile on his face as he looked back at Zhou Hang and opened his mouth. Zhou Hang froze for a moment. In terms of Lu Ming's attitude just now, it indeed didn't seem like he was joking, but not knowing that this was an exercise, how did he make this matter of killing hostages sound so breezy? It was completely like saying a trivial matter. What kind of things had Brother Ming experienced during these few years of his discharge? Brother Ming, killing hostages is still not very good, right? After all, if there's a human life, this is a serious matter. The side of the police force will definitely start to take action, and our situation will be in danger. Zhou Hang frowned and continued to open his mouth to persuade Lu Ming. What he said was indeed the truth. Once a life was lost, the police force would be under pressure and would definitely begin to take action. At that time, the situation on the robber's side would naturally become less optimistic. You think they aren't ready to act now? We asked them to exchange 70 kilograms for 5 hostages. That's 30 million dollars worth of gold. Do you think they will really obediently hand over that much gold to us without making a move? Lu Ming was still moving his neck, relaxing his cervical vertebrae while talking to Zhou Hang. The tone of his voice was still calm, and no emotions could be heard. And listening to this, Zhou Hang blinked his eyes and looked at Lu Ming with a stunned expression, not knowing how to answer for a moment. After all, hearing Lu Ming say this, it still seemed to make sense as well. If you want to get the gold smoothly, you have to disrupt the plans on the police officer's side. I think they should be preparing to launch an operation against the bank within the last time I set. We have hostages in our hands. The risk of a forced attack is too great. They will only raid. If we kill the hostages now, the pressure they face on their side will be even greater. And under high pressure they are impatient, and more prone to mistakes. Lu Ming moved his shoulders and watched Zhou Hang calmly finish his purpose of killing the hostages before he stood up. His face was calm, and his icy gaze swept over everyone in the hostage table. Lu Ming's words made Zhou Hang listen in awe and as he watched him stand up, Zhou Hang also hurriedly stood up and followed behind Lu Ming. After hearing Lu Ming's words, he knew that it was basically hopeless to persuade Lu Ming not to kill the hostages, he could only look at Lu Ming's next arrangement, and try as much as possible to keep Lu Ming from realizing that this was just an exercise. I'm sure you all heard our conversation just now, we're going to choose a lucky one to go out and kill, to set an example for the police officers outside. I wonder if any of you have volunteered? Lu Ming's gaze swept around all the hostages before he spoke coldly. At those words, the crowd of hostages all hurriedly shrunk their necks, not daring to say anything for fear of being noticed by Lu Ming. Volunteering to go out and get shot? What kind of joke was this? No one is willing to come out? Then it looks like I'll have to choose myself. Seeing that the crowd of hostages were all still, Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and spoke leisurely while pacing in front of the hostage table. It was said that they would be pulled out and killed, but in reality, it was merely eliminated in the middle of the maneuver, which meant that they could leave. This was a good thing for them the hostages. However, the crowd of hostages didn't know about the maneuvers, so naturally they weren't clear about this, and naturally no one would take the initiative to come forward. Originally, Lu Ming was prepared to choose that old man. After all, he was old, and being held hostage in the middle of the bank for too long wasn't the same thing, so letting him leave earlier could save a lot of trouble. However, Lu Ming was afraid that he might have a heart attack or something, if he let Zhou Hang drag him out and shoot him, and he didn't know that this was a drill so he wouldn't be scared and have a heart attack, 
then the two robbers would be in trouble. You're it. Zhou Hang, drag her to the bank entrance and kill her. Let the police officers outside know that there is a price to pay for playing small tricks. Lu Ming sized up the group of hostages for a moment, pointed at one of the young female employees in her early twenties, and turned back to Zhou Hang to speak. The reason why he let Zhou Hang do it was naturally for this kid's consideration. He had been hiding the truth that this was just a drill from himself, so there must be a reason he had no choice but to do so. Therefore, Lu Ming then tried his best to give him the opportunity to not reveal that this was just a drill. All right, hearing Lu Ming's words, Zhou Hang instantly became excited. He didn't expect brother Ming to let himself do it, so that the blanks wouldn't be exposed, and the matter of the drill could be concealed. Therefore, Zhou Hang naturally agreed very quickly. However, just as Zhou Hang was about to walk forward and pull the person designated by Lu Ming, the old man among the hostages suddenly stood up. If you want to kill, kill me. The old man. This girl is still young. She still has a lot of good time left. It's a shame to die. My old man is old and has lived long enough. That old man's pair of cloudy eyes stared at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, his pale voice resounding in the middle of the bank hall. For a moment, everyone in the middle of the bank froze. Oh, I didn't expect you old man to be so full of balls, but you old man shouldn't have a heart attack, right? Don't be scared to death before we even shoot you at that time. Lu Ming froze slightly, then looked at the old man with a smile on his face and spoke. As he spoke, he stepped on the chair in front of him with one foot. His posture was arrogant to the extreme. He was truly afraid that this old man had a bit of a heart condition or some other common disease of the elderly, and was afraid that he would get into trouble. So he even made a point of asking. To be honest, the old man in front of him was able to come forward at this time. Lu Ming still had a few points of admiration in his heart. After all, the old man did not know that this was a drill. However, the current Lu Ming was the identity of a robber. And although there was some admiration for the old man in his heart, the arrogant posture of a robber still had to be put out. Ha! Scared to death? Your grandfather I was on the battlefield back then. The bullets flew past my brain. The shells exploded behind me. And I didn't even blink. If you guys want to kill someone, just kill me my old man. Leave that little girl a life. After the old man heard Lu Ming's words, he let out a cold laugh and spoke rather disdainfully. The voice wasn't too loud, but it was full of vigor. It rang out in the rather quiet banking hall enough to reach everyone's ears. When Lu Ming heard this, he slightly raised his eyebrows. He re-measured the old man in front of him, looking like he should be in his early seventies, with a white beard, a pair of pale but godly eyes, and a straight body. In terms of that aura, it indeed looked like a veteran. I didn't expect the old man to be a combat hero. Since you're begging for death, then I can only fulfill you. Zhou Hang, bring the old hero to the entrance of the bank and kill him in front of those police officers outside. Lu Ming sized up the old man for a few seconds before he spoke with a smile on his face. Because he had the experience of enlisting as a soldier himself, Lu Ming still had some respect for these old soldiers. At this moment, when he spoke to the old man, his tone eased up quite a bit. Oomph. The old man snorted coldly and didn't pay much attention to Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Directly turning around on his own, he walked out of the chair at the hostage table and took the lead to walk towards the bank's main door on his own. And seeing this, Zhou Hang also hurriedly followed. The crowd of hostages on the hostage table all lowered their heads, not daring to make a little noise, not even having the courage to raise their heads to look at the old man. If Lu Ming was in the position of those hostages now, I'm afraid that he would also be the same as these hostages. In order to prevent the robbers from involving themselves, he could only keep his head down. After all, everyone had only one life. There was nothing wrong with valuing one's life. Live streaming room. Seeing what was happening in the middle of the bank hall at this time, the live broadcast room naturally exploded. Who is this old man? I didn't expect to come forward in such a situation and save that female bank employee, not knowing that it was a drill, but still daring to come forward. This old man is admirable. Listening to him, he seems to be a veteran, defending his country when he was young, and now that he's old he's still willing to take his own life in exchange for a young man's life. This is a proper hero. Indeed it's an old hero. I wonder if the city council can release information about the old hero after the exercise is over so that we can at least know the hero's name. But then again, you guys said that Lu Ming really guessed that the police team was going to raid next? That is to say is there a possibility that Lu Ming stole the script from the police team's side? Laughing, brothers, can you stop thinking so much? Is it that hard to admit that Lu Ming is better than him? That's right, Lu Ming is a highly intelligent robber no matter what. Isn't it normal for him to guess in advance that the police team will make a move? This time, Lu Ming directly predicted that the police team would make a surprise attack. Is it possible that the robbers will be able to survive? It's still difficult to estimate. Even if you can guess that the police team will have an action, but you didn't guess the specific deployment and time of the action, you still have to be caught. 
Indeed, the probability is that the robbers are no more, and the maneuver is coming to an end. Such a wonderful maneuver. It's a pity. It's not easy to find such a highly intelligent robber. After all, at this time, the number of online viewers in the live broadcast room had already exceeded 100, 000, and even if it was only a small portion of people discussing it, the number of pop-ups was also very high. For that veteran's actions, the viewers in the live broadcast room were extremely impressed. At the same time, there was also a large portion of viewers in the live broadcast room who were shocked that Lu Ming had actually guessed that the police team would have a raid next. After all, the raid on the police team's site had just been finalized, and Lu Ming's site had already guessed it and started to respond to it. This was indeed a bit of an outrageous coincidence for viewers with a god's perspective. Lu Ming's label as a highly intelligent robber naturally began to take hold in the live broadcast. In the temporary command room, the group of squad leaders and the chief commander were still gathered around the table, discussing things at this time. Lu Ming had released his intention to kill hostages just now, although it was still uncertain whether this was just a means for Lu Ming to threaten them, or whether Lu Ming was truly prepared to do so, but no matter what, Lu Ming had released this signal, and the side of the police team's command room had to pay attention to it. After all, once there were hostage casualties, it would be a huge mistake for the police team in this exercise. Ending the exercise with zero hostage casualties and ending the exercise with one hostage killed in action were two completely different things. Report. Just as a discussion was going on in the temporary command room, a police constable ran to the door and saluted while speaking eagerly. What is it? When the commander-in-chief saw this, his already locked brows furrowed even deeper as he hurriedly opened his mouth to give an inquiry. A bad premonition surged to his heart. The robbers took a hostage and walked out of the bank, and are now standing in front of the bank. That police officer hurriedly reported the situation up. The chief commander sniffed, took a deep breath of cool air, hurriedly threw the things in his hand casually on the table and quickly walked out of the temporary command room. Seeing this, a group of squad leaders also hurriedly followed, next to the cordon outside the bank plaza. At this time, there were already quite a few police officers standing, all of them with their guns raised, standing by to watch the situation in front of the bank. When the commander-in-chief came over, the police officers hurriedly made way. Looking at the bank's entrance, where Zhou Hang was holding a hostage, the chief commander's face turned blue. All of you wait here, walking to the front of the cordon. The chief commander turned back to the group of squad leaders following him and opened his mouth to command, and then he directly pulled back the cordon and walked towards the bank square. After all, too many people in the past would be more likely to enrage the robbers, and the lives of the hostages would be even more unprotectable at that time. Chief Team The special duty squad leader watched the chief commander walk into the cordon and hurriedly opened his mouth to try to dissuade him. After all, the robbers over there had guns in their hands, and the commander-in-chief didn't have any weapons on him and wasn't even wearing a bulletproof undershirt. If the robbers started to go crazy and directly shot at the commander-in-chief, it would be a big deal. A maneuver. The chief commander of the police force was killed in action. The social impact of this was completely unimaginable. However, the special duty squad leader had just opened his mouth, and before he could even say his words of discouragement, he was interrupted by the chief commander, who had his back turned to him, raising his hand, with his brows locked. The special difference squad leader could only swallow back the words that had already reached his mouth. Snipers? Where are the snipers? The special duty squad leader turned around and looked at the crowd of gun-toting police officers beside him and eagerly opened his mouth. Since the commander-in-chief's determination to risk his own life could not be changed, all he could do was to protect the commander-in-chief's life as much as possible. Report, the sniper has long been in position. Among the crowd of police officers next to him, a heavily armed, Masked special duty member hurriedly opened his mouth to respond. In the first moment of seeing the robbers holding hostages out of the bank, special police squad members have naturally been mobilized, each in their own way to fall into position. After all, they were the most powerful fighting force amongst the police squad. In the face of such a situation, the action must also be the most rapid. While reporting the situation to the special police squad leader, that special police squad member also handed the special police squad leader a walkie-talkie. Listen up. Snipers give me a deadly stare at that robber. If the robber has the intention to shoot at the general team, no need to ask for instructions, just shoot to kill. Receiving the walkie-talkie, the special duty squad leader hurriedly pressed down the talk button and opened his mouth rather eagerly. The robber had an accomplice in the bank, and there were still 14 hostages in the hands of that accomplice. Once the robber outside was killed, there was a great possibility that the robber's accomplice in the bank would be enraged and harm more hostages. However, even so, Protecting the life of the commander-in-chief was still the top priority. Sniper position number one received. Sniper position two receiving. The four snipers who had already found a good sniping position, 
After hearing the words of the special difficulties squad leader, they all quickly gave a response. Receiving the response, the special difficulty squad leader clenched his teeth as his eyes looked towards the situation on the general commander's side. On the bank square, the chief commander slowly walked over towards the robbers holding the hostages, and he held his hands up high, signaling that he did not have any weapons on him. Zhou Hang, right? Calm down some. I don't have a weapon on me. I think we can talk. As long as you don't harm the hostages, I can prepare 20 kilograms more of gold for you. Isn't robbing a bank all about money? There's no need to kill anyone. While slowly approaching, the chief commander wore a smile on his face and tried his best to speak loudly in a gentle tone. At this time, he was already only more than 10 meters away from the hostages and robbers. Chief commander, you're leaning too close. If you go any further, I can't guarantee that when my gun goes off, I won't be able to kill you piece by piece. Zhou Hang's voice rang out. At this moment, his right hand was holding the gun against the waist of the hostage, hiding his entire body behind the hostage as much as possible. The commander-in-chief over there heard this and hurriedly stopped in his tracks, still maintaining the posture of holding his hands up high. It wasn't that he was afraid that the robbers would really shoot him. It was mainly because under the current situation, he knew very well that he could not make any more moves to provoke the robbers, and he naturally had to do as the robbers told him to stop. Old hero, this is just a drill for us. If there were places where we did not do right by you before, please bear with us. Thank you for your cooperation. After the commander-in-chief stopped, before he could speak, Zhou Hang, who was standing behind the old soldier, spoke out in words that only two people could hear. The veteran was slightly stunned. Drills? But just now, in the middle of the bank, the performance of the two robbers did not look like a drill at all, right? Just when the veteran was still a bit confused and couldn't figure out the situation for a while, the gun on his waist was jerked away. Zhou Hang held the gun, aimed it at the veteran's back, and slowly retreated back towards the bank door not far behind him. Boom! It was also when the figure retreated to the gate that Zhou Hang pulled the trigger. The sound of a gunshot came out, and a blank bullet struck the back of the veteran's heart. Because Zhou Hang had purposely pulled back a certain distance, the veteran did not feel much. However, the moment the bullet hit him, in the middle of this maneuver, he had already been killed in action. In other words, the robbers had indeed directly shot a hostage in front of the police team, arrogant to the extreme, above the bank square. The commander-in-chief listened to the sound of gunshots and looked at Zhou Hang who had retreated into the middle of the bank, and for a moment, his teeth gnashed, disregarding his own safety, he came up to appease the robber by taking the risk, offering to prepare more gold in exchange for the hostage's life, but this robber still killed the hostage in front of him, hostage at the gate, and did not have the first time to shoot, in favor of waiting for themselves to come up in front of their own face before shooting, the robber's move was clearly a demonstration to himself, the commander-in-chief of the police force, is in teasing himself as the commander-in-chief, the bank lobby, after Zhou Hang retreated back into the bank, he hurriedly pressed down the switch of the electric roller shutter door, and at the same time closed the glass door as well. Brother Ming, the hostages have been killed. Only after doing all this did Zhou Hang come to Lu Ming's side and cheerfully spoke. It felt like he had not only completed Lu Ming's request to kill the hostage, but had also not exposed that this was just a drill. Zhou Hang's heart was naturally joyful. Very good. Lu Ming was still sitting cross-legged on the floor opposite the hostage mat. After hearing Zhou Hang's words, he only nodded calmly in response. He kept his gaze fixed on the bank's floor plan layout diagram in his hands and didn't even raise his head to look at Zhou Hang. Brother Ming, what are you looking at? Zhou Hang sat down beside Lu Ming, glanced at the bank layout diagram in Lu Ming's hands, and asked with quite a bit of curiosity. Lu Ming had basically been looking at this whenever he had time after they retreated to the bank. Zhou Hang really couldn't understand. It wasn't just a broken map. What was there to see? Is it hard to believe that this thing could still see the flowers? Look at the next plan and action deployment of the police squad. Lu Ming calmly responded to Zhou Hang, while laying the bank floor plan on the floor. When Zhou Hang heard this, he raised an eyebrow and curiously patted up. However, this bank floor plan layout diagram was exactly the same as when he had just gotten it. Where was the next plan and action deployment of the police team? Reaching out and scratching his eyebrows, Zhou Hang figured that Lu Ming was making fun of himself. He didn't say anything more but just got up and went to the water fountain in the lobby to drink water. Lu Ming, on the other hand, picked up the ballpoint pen that he had previously found from the bank counter and wrote and drew on the floor plan. Temporary command room. The chief commander and a group of squad leaders had already returned here. The faces of those present were all rather gloomy, and the atmosphere in this caravan, which didn't have much space, was very depressing. And it was at this time that the walkie-talkie on top of the table stirred. After Lu Ming had taken away the special duty team leader's walkie-talkie, 
The commander-in-chief had already made the walkie-talkies that were originally on the same channel as this walkie-talkie change channels. In other words, at the moment, this walkie-talkie was completely in single-line contact with Lu Ming. Chief commander, don't get too wound up. After all, it's only one hostage that died. There might be a worse situation to come. Just as the chief commander gritted his teeth and stared gloomily at the bank's floor plan fixed on the whiteboard, Lu Ming's voice rang out from the intercom. The words were full of provocation, and the corners of the chief commander's mouth twitched slightly when he heard them. Having just killed a hostage, and now coming to provoke himself like this, this Lu Ming was really arrogant to the extreme. You killed the hostage in front of me. Such a provocative move against the entire police force. This is not a wise choice for you. The chief commander picked up the walkie-talkie on the table and took a deep breath of cool air before speaking in as calm a tone as possible. Although right now he hated to capture Lu Ming and then skin him, but there were still hostages in his hands. So even how angry he was in his heart, the chief commander had to control his emotions. After all, he didn't want to and couldn't make this situation worse. I'm a robber. I just robbed a bank. A vicious robber. Killing just one or two hostages based on my mood is nothing to talk about as wise or unwise. Besides, as long as I still hold these dozen of lives in my hands, don't you guys have no way to take me? In the walkie-talkie, Lu Ming's cheerful voice sounded once again. His attitude was extremely arrogant as he spoke, and at the same time, he gave off a feeling of blind arrogance to the extreme. The commander-in-chief couldn't help but raise an eyebrow when he heard his words. There was silence for two seconds before he once again pressed the speak button above the intercom. You took the initiative to contact me. It couldn't be just to say a few words to provoke me, right? The commander-in-chief spoke in a calm tone. So smart. I like talking to smart people like you. It's not tiring at all. After spending so much time at the bank, I'm tired of it. So I've changed my mind. I want to see the gold and the car in 10 minutes. If I can't see it, I will kill hostages again. This time, killing too. Lu Ming's voice rang out. And in a few words, the group of squad leaders in the middle of the makeshift command room couldn't help but frown deeply. Earlier, Lu Ming had made a request saying that he would give an hour of preparation time, but now only 20 minutes had passed. But now that only 20 minutes had passed, he had suddenly changed his mind and demanded to see these things within 10 minutes. Wasn't this playing tricks on people? Fine, I promise you, exchange the hostages with you with the things you demanded within 10 minutes. After two seconds of silence, the chief commander took in a deep breath of cool air before he solemnly opened his mouth and agreed to Lu Ming's request. And as soon as these words came out, the group of squad leaders were all slightly stunned. Obviously, they hadn't expected the chief commander to agree so decisively to the robber's request to change the time at will. The fact that this would fuel the robber's arrogance was not the second thing. The most important thing is, within such a short period of time, they might not even be able to prepare what the robbers asked for. Lu Ming's voice did not ring out again from the intercom. The chief commander then also placed the intercom on the table with a deep frown. I see that you all have something to say. Say it. Leaning on the table with both hands. The chief commander looked up at the group of squad leaders before speaking calmly. After he let out a long sigh, the expression on his face had regained its calmness. Only that pair of eyes was still full of anger. Like a fuming lion. Chief team, this arbitrary time change by the robbers is a completely unreasonable request. Yeah, with only 10 minutes left, we probably can't even prepare what he wants. That's right, this time is too tight. Shouldn't have agreed to him, letting him think that we're soft persimmons that can be pinched at will. A crowd of small captains opened their mouths to express their opinions, and the meaning was clearly all complaining that the robbers had inexplicably shortened the originally scheduled time. The time was directly shortened by half, which completely disrupted the plans of the police team. After the group of squad leaders had spoken for a moment, the chief commander then raised his hand, interrupting their murmurs. I know what you all said, but do you think we can make conditions with the robbers now? The robber just killed a hostage in front of us. If we don't agree to his demands, can we make sure he won't kill another hostage? He still has 14 people in his hands. This is his capital to blackmail us with impunity. The commander-in-chief stood up straight and spoke with a grave expression on his face. There was an undisguised anger on his face as he spoke. It was obvious, for being led by the nose by the robbers. The commander-in-chief was also extremely angry in his heart. But what could be done about it? The robbers have hostages in their hands, and they want to protect the lives of the hostages. They can only compromise with the robbers first. After all. The robbers had already killed a hostage, and could kill a second or third at any time, and the police patrol team, couldn't let such a thing happen again. Chief squad, then should our raid plan be slowed down? While the group of squad leaders were talking and discussing, the special police squad leader had remained silent. It was only at this moment when silence fell in the command room that he raised an eyebrow and opened his mouth to ask. Now that the time demanded by the robbers had been shortened by most, 
The execution of the raid plan that had already been formulated was obviously a bit rushed. It has been an hour since the maneuver began. And in this hour we didn't make any breakthroughs. Instead there was a hostage killed in action. After the robbers get the gold they want, they will most likely take the hostage and drive away from the bank. At that time, although they won't be able to run away, as long as the hostage is still in their hands, we will be led by the nose by them. The chief commander frowned deeply, looking at the pictures of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang above the whiteboard, and spoke in a serious and earnest manner. The crowd of squad leaders all kept their mouths shut, listening quietly to the chief commander's words with grave expressions on their faces. The words slowly echoed in the temporary command room, the atmosphere heavy and depressing. After the death of a hostage, this side of the police team's command room was already able to feel the obvious pressure. We must rescue the hostages and end the maneuver before the robbers leave the bank. The raid plan is as usual, and will take place during the exchange of hostages. Success only, no failure. The commander-in-chief turned to face the group of squad leaders and spoke again, speaking with authority. There were hostages killed in action, which had already breached the chief commander's bottom line. He would not allow the outcome of this maneuver to deteriorate any further. Therefore he decided to end the maneuver as thunderously as possible and rescue all the hostages. City Bureau, Director's Office. At this moment, the director had just made hot tea in a thermos cup and returned to the chair behind his desk to sit down. He had a meeting just now, and only now had time to spare, having just returned to the middle of his office. How are the maneuvers going over there? Sitting down on the chair, the director moved his neck for a bit before looking at the deputy director sitting on the sofa in the office and asking out, for this maneuver? The director was still relatively concerned. After all, this exercise was open to the entire internet with a full live broadcast. There were countless pairs of eyes watching the performance of the city council, and the social impact was great. It was naturally impossible for the director not to be concerned. It was just that the earlier meeting was more important, and he hadn't been able to take the time to follow the progress of the maneuver. The situation is still relatively scorched. After the team of police messengers arrived at the scene, the robbers chose to retreat to the bank holding more than a dozen hostages in their hands, very tenacious. Now the robbers have killed one of the hostages and are demanding that the police team take out 70 kilograms of gold as well as a fully fueled car in exchange for a portion of the hostages. However, from inside the live broadcast, it seems that the police contingent side has formulated a surprise attack, so I guess it won't be long before the maneuver is over. The deputy director looked at the director with a calm face, and spoke about the maneuvers in a general tone of casual conversation. Hearing the words, the director raised an eyebrow and the expression on his face changed slightly, but immediately returned to normal. One hostage dead, that's not exactly good news. The director picked up the thermos cup on the table, shook his head and blew on the tea froth inside, taking a small sip of the somewhat hot tea as he spoke. His tone was calm, not much emotion could be heard. However, the result of a hostage being killed in action was obviously still out of his expectation. Indeed, this exercise was live-streamed in its entirety. And it's not a small amount of heat on the internet. And the number of people online in the live streaming room has already exceeded more than 100. 000. With so many eyes watching, if it's under the circumstance of a fallen hostage, and the police patrol team still can't end this maneuver quickly, it will still have a certain impact on the credibility of our city council. The deputy director nodded. Before he took in a breath of cool air and spoke with a serious expression, he did not participate in the meeting just now. Therefore, after the maneuver started, he was watching the live broadcast almost the entire time, and he wasn't too satisfied with the performance of the police squad in the live broadcast. The fact that these boys didn't perform well shows that they still need to hone their skills more, which also proves the necessity of the existence of the drill. It's much better to make mistakes in the middle of a drill than in the middle of a real battle. Even if the credibility is affected, it's still better than losing one's life in the middle of a real battle. Knives, they always get sharper the more they are sharpened. The director laughed and placed the thermos in his hand back on the table before looking at the deputy director and cheerfully opened his mouth. The deputy director sniffed and nodded. There was a two-second silence before he drew in a cool breath and his gaze returned to the director. I have no problem with the maneuvers, but isn't this full live? Broadcast unnecessary? The deputy director frowned and spoke in a deep voice. The matter of the drill was initiated by the director, but the deputy director was still more in favor of it as well. However, Regarding making it public in the form of a full live broadcast, the deputy director was of the opposite opinion. He was naturally worried about the impact on the credibility of the city council if the performance of the police team was not as good as it should be. After all, with so many eyes watching, it was very likely that even the slightest problem would be infinitely magnified by those who wanted to. Old song, if it's not publicized in a live broadcast, without so many pairs of eyes watching, these boys can't take it seriously. It's not like our city council hasn't conducted drills before, 
but which one didn't work out hastily? You look at this time, not only has been a standoff for more than an hour, there is also a hostage killed in action. This is the real fit for actual combat. Maneuvers are not theater. If according to the previous exercises like that, these boys to the scene on the arrest, the robbers holding hostages still tied up, time is long. They thought the real robbers will also tie themselves up and wait for them to catch. Credibility is earned. The director also put away the smile on his face and frowned as he spoke extremely seriously. The reason why he had initiated an exercise that was made public by way of a full live broadcast was because he was not happy with the attitude of the people under his hand towards the exercise before. What was the use of a childish maneuver then? In this drill, there were hostages killed in action, which was not good news, but the director was still quite happy. After all, this at least proved that this drill robbers took it quite seriously, making the police force feel the pressure. The deputy director sniffed and nodded in silence. It was clear that he was still quite agreeable to the chief's words. But then again, those two boys who played the robbers in this drill, where did you find them? Just their performance. It can be a bit interesting, a bit of that flavor of a robber. Since he agreed with the director's approach, it was natural to stop discussing the topic of live broadcasting. Furthermore, the maneuvers had already been carried out up to this point, and there wasn't much use in discussing this issue anymore. The deputy director opened his mouth to digress and asked about the more curious matter in his heart. He had been watching the live broadcast and had naturally witnessed all of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's performances throughout. For Lu Ming, the bruiser, the deputy director was still more interested. Ha ha, the kid called Zhou Hang is someone who just transferred to our city bureau. As for the one called Lu Ming, he is Zhou Hang's comrade in arms, and is not someone in our system. At that time, Zhou Hang was chosen to play this robber, and he recommended Lu Ming to me but I asked him not to disclose the fact that this was an exercise to Lu Ming. So I guess that one called Lu Ming is still in the dark now. Hearing the deputy director ask this question, the director also smiled, before speaking rather happily. For the robbers in this exercise, he had specifically looked for two unfamiliar faces to save these boys from playing any human games. For this arrangement, the director was still rather pleased. Lu Ming doesn't know that this is a drill? While listening to the director's words, the deputy director was stunned, and then spoke with some shock. Looking at this performance of his, the director also froze. What? What's the problem? The director asked out rather curiously. Wasn't he just looking for someone outside the police system to play the role of a robber? There was no need for such a big reaction, right? If we say that Lu Ming is still in the dark about the reality of the maneuver now, then judging by his performance, he's afraid he's a repeat offender, and a criminal genius at that. The deputy director frowned deeply as he looked at the director and spoke extremely seriously. Lu Ming's performance in the middle of this maneuver. The deputy director had been watching in his eyes through the live broadcast, and was still quite appreciative. It was only thought to be a talent that the director had borrowed from elsewhere. Now that the director had said so, not only was he someone outside of the police dispatch system, but he also didn't know the reality of the maneuvers. This thing, just doesn't seem quite right. Is it as exaggerated as you say? But when you say it like that, I'm a bit curious about this Lu Ming. Two, hearing the deputy director's words, the director smiled and spoke cheerfully. Obviously, he felt that the deputy director was exaggerating a bit. Since he had agreed to Zhou Hang's request to pull Lu Ming into his gang, he had naturally read Lu Ming's information. He didn't have any previous convictions and had performed well during his enlistment, so he was indeed a talented person. After listening to the deputy director's words, the director naturally became more interested in Lu Ming. He opened the computer on his desk and began to watch the drill via live streaming. Bank Hall after hearing Lu Ming's request for the police team side to get things ready within 10 minutes, Zhou Hang, who was still standing next to the water dispenser drinking water, hurriedly threw away his paper cup and came over to Lu Ming. Brother Ming, are we preparing to run? Zhou Hang asked out in a rather excited opening. Lu Ming had requested that the hostages be exchanged for gold and a car within 10 minutes, which was clearly preparation for a drive-by escape, although it felt safer to still hold hostages and hide in the middle of the bank. However, Zhou Hang still trusted Lu Ming very much. He had decided to run, so the chances of successfully getting away were definitely not small, and the exciting road of escape was naturally exciting to think about for Zhou Hang, who was quite fond of taking risks. Run? Now is not the time. Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and calmly responded to Zhou Hang. Then why did you still ask the police team to get the car ready within 10 minutes? If we don't run, isn't it useless to ask for a car? Zhou Hang's face was filled with a puzzled expression when he heard Lu Ming's words. To be honest, this step-by-step -step plan of Lu Ming's was really something he couldn't quite understand. They should be preparing a raid plan. I purposely shortened the time for the hostage exchange, but only for the sake of them having more time to execute their plan. This way, 
they won't have as much time to think about the deployment of their actions, and it will be easier for them to fall into our trap. Lu Ming looked back at Zhou Hang, a confident smile on his face as he spoke in a calm tone. Zhou Hang froze. A trap? What trap? Hadn't Lu Ming been sitting on the floor looking at that one bank floor plan? When did he set a trap? This brother Ming of his own. Couldn't it be that he was under too much pressure and had become a bit bewitched? Look here. This is the bank's back door. Although it is closed, but using the bank employee's identity card, it is able to be opened at any time. We held most of the bank's staff hostage, but the bank's branch president and another security guard were not among them. That means that the police messenger outside was able to open this door after contacting these two men and getting their ID cards. After passing through the locker room and office area, they were then able to come to the bank lobby. Lu Ming turned back, pointing at his own labeled route on the bank layout map that was spread out on the floor, and spoke in a calm tone. Zhou Hang didn't dare to be slow and hurriedly came forward to look. Looking at Lu Ming's labeled route, he frowned deeply with a shocked expression. The police team won't send the gold and the car to us for nothing, and since we just killed a hostage, they are under even more pressure and will definitely make a move during the hostage exchange. We have quite a few hostages in our hands, so the chances of them choosing to force an attack are slim, and for a surprise operation, this route is their best choice. Lu Ming nodded at the bank's floor plan layout, his tone remaining calm as he spoke. As for Zhou Hang on the side, his face was already filled with disbelief. This was prejudgment? Brother Ming had been looking at this bank floor plan layout map there, and was actually prejudging the actions of the police team? I've looked at the weapons in your bag. There are grenades and remote controlled bombs. Let's set up some traps along this route. Give the raid team of the police police team a little surprise. A grenade can be set up here, and wait for the police team to. Lu Ming pointed at the bank layout map, pointing out all the places he had already thought of where he needed to set up traps to Zhou Hang. While Zhou Hang was at the side, quietly listening while nodding his head uncontrollably, he had always been extremely impressed with Lu Ming. Therefore, he was naturally convinced of Lu Ming's words, and didn't say half a word to question them. Only after Lu Ming had explained everything he had planned did Zhou Hang gulp down his saliva, the look of shock in his eyes still not diminishing by half. Brother Ming, you actually predicted the actions of the police messenger. How awesome. After digesting the shock in his heart for a while, only then did Zhou Hang give Lu Ming a thumbs up and spoke with extreme admiration. At the same time, Zhou Hang also couldn't help but sigh in his heart. Being a smart person was really tiring. Looking at a map one had to think so much. Sure enough, it was better for people to be stupid, not having so much to think about, and being able to sleep a little better. Prejudice? Why do you think I asked for gold from the police force? Lu Ming looked back and propped his hands on the ground behind him in a semi-reclining position, speaking with a smile on his face. He and Zhou Hang were brothers, so naturally, he didn't mind talking to him some more. Isn't it because gold is worth money? Zhou Hang blinked his eyes, obviously curious as to why Lu Ming would ask this. When he had said that he wanted gold before, wasn't it because he felt that gold was more valuable? Could it be that Lu Ming had another purpose? This is just one aspect. With the police team surrounding the bank, they will definitely do something, but this action can be rushed or slowed down. They can keep surrounding us giving us psychological pressure so that we slowly lose our fighting spirit and patience. Then they slowly plan the perfect action to free the hostages. But I offered to exchange the hostages with gold. 70 kilograms of gold worth 30 million dollars. They can't give it to us because once they do it's a compromise to the robbers. But they can't leave the hostages alone even more. At this time they will be under pressure. And will be desperate to make a move before the gold is handed over to us. With me killing the hostages, they are under even more pressure to ask for an early exchange of hostages again and in order to keep the outcome from getting worse, they have to agree. With time running out and fewer cracks revealed to us, they have fewer plans of action to execute. The raid plan of entering through the back door became one of the few plans they could choose. Everything is the path I chose for them. Lu Ming cheerfully opened his mouth and told everything. As for Zhou Hang, after hearing Lu Ming's words, his entire body froze in place. Goo, he gulped down his saliva, not knowing what he should say, and just gave Lu Ming a thumbs up. He had truly never thought that this robbing a bank was even a technical job, that there were so many twists and turns. Lu Ming's words came out. Naturally, Zhou Hang was not the only one who was shocked. The more than 100, 000 viewers in the live broadcast room were also shocked all over the room after hearing what Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had said. Live streaming room. Crap. Is this Lu Ming still human? Even the raid plan of the police team he actually calculated it? It's not calculated. Didn't you hear what he just said? This is the road he paved for the police team. Is simply terrifying as hell. Is this the legendary high IQ robber? It is indeed something one has to admire nah. His words, I feel that there is still a component of pretense, 
Which is so exaggerated. I guess I'm afraid that Lu Ming didn't steal the script for this drill police team. Laughing and crying, the chief commander of the police team said, they all fucking stole the script, so how else are we going to play? The brothers upstairs have gone too far. For an experienced recidivist like Lu Ming, isn't this the voice of experience? What's the point of stealing the script? That's right. Lu Ming said, it's all about experience. He's robbed a lot and naturally knows a lot, so you layman shouldn't discuss it blindly. The main thing is that Lu Ming showed too much composure. In the case of not knowing that this is a drill, but also the entire performance of calmness and ease of making plans, which does not rob a dozen or two dozen or two dozen times, can have such a performance? I have to say, this Lu Ming is indeed a talent. He sat with the chief commander of the police team and estimated that he had to have 800 hard eyes. He has this direct clear knowledge of the police team's next raid. So it doesn't seem too easy for the chief commander to want to rely on the raid plan to end this maneuver. End the maneuver? What kind of joke is that? The raid plan was directly guessed. The robbers set up traps in advance. This is completely the rhythm of inviting the king into the jar. It's even good if the police team can lose less. The pop-ups were rolling in the live broadcast room all over the place. And the enthusiasm of the audience to discuss was extremely high. After listening to Lu Ming's words, while the viewers marveled at Lu Ming's power, they also believed even more firmly that Lu Ming was a completely experienced veteran in the matter of robbing banks. After all, Lu Ming had not only dominated the side of the robbers in this drill, he had also taken the absolute initiative in the confrontation with the police team, and without knowing that this was just a drill, he had behaved so calmly throughout, without a hint of panic. This was a bank robbery. If this was the first time someone had done this, no matter who they were or how high their IQ was, there would always be a considerable amount of psychological pressure when they were surrounded by a team of police officers in the middle of a bank, wouldn't there? However, judging from Lu Ming's performance, the audience couldn't see a hint of pressure at all. On the contrary, Lu Ming revealed a hint of self-congratulation while being subdued. If this wasn't a repeat offender, what else could it be? City Bureau, in the middle of the director's office, after opening their computers and entering the live broadcast, the director and deputy director both naturally saw this live broadcast of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's conversation. For a moment, the director couldn't help but frown deeply, and the expression on the deputy director's face instantly became ugly. This Lu Ming is a bit interesting. The deputy director opened his mouth with a grave expression, and after saying the first half of the paragraph, he was silent for a few seconds before squeezing out the word somewhat interesting. Apparently for a moment, he hadn't found too good a word to describe his opinion of Lu Ming. When he had previously seen the raid plan formulated by the commander-in-chief from the live broadcast of the police messenger's perspective, the deputy director estimated that the maneuvers should be coming to an end. After all, the raid plan they had formulated was also feasible in the eyes of the deputy director, and there shouldn't be any major problems in capturing the robbers and ending the maneuver. Although there had already been a hostage killed in action, even if they were able to end the maneuver with a thunderbolt, the performance of the police patrol team was not considered perfect but it was also within the range of still acceptable. But at this moment, in the robber's perspective live broadcast, Lu Ming had unexpectedly seen through everything, even the raid plan on the side of the police team, there was still an element of him inducing it. The deputy director's mood naturally changed quite a bit. After all, he still cared more about the credibility of the city council. And in the midst of this live broadcast of an exercise that had hundreds of thousands of viewers watching, if the police patrol team made another mistake, it would be a big problem. The robber's side has already anticipated the raid of the police team. It seems that if they want to watch the raid to end this exercise, I'm afraid that it won't be easy. Zhao Wing and the others are going to be taught a lesson. The director took in a deep breath of cool air, his deeply locked brows stretching out, and a faint smile returned to his face. Just, that smile wasn't exactly pretty. After all, it wasn't exactly what he wanted to see when the team of police officers suffered a defeat. Still, the director was very satisfied with Lu Ming's performance. He was playing a robber with all his heart, a robber with intelligence and ability, and that was exactly what the director wanted. After all, an exercise like this was more like a real battle. After the deputy director heard the director's words, he just inhaled a deep breath of cool air and didn't say anything. Let's see it again. After all, even if the robbers guessed the raid plan, the plan might not fail to work. With one pair of eyes staring at the live feed on the computer screen, the director reached out and picked up the thermos cup on the table taking a sip of the strong tea inside. Only then did he speak again. The deputy director, upon hearing this, also nodded with a deep frown on his face. The temporary command room. The chief commander leaned on the table, his hands wrapped around his body, and was looking at the door with a grave expression, not knowing what he was thinking. At this moment, he was the only one in the temporary command room. After all, 
since it had been determined that the raid was to be carried out at the same time as the hostage exchange, the preparation for the operation was naturally urgent. A bunch of squad leaders went about their respective duties and got busy. As for the chief commander, as the highest decision maker of this exercise, the police squad, all he had to do was to convey the deployment of the operation. The preparations didn't have anything for him either. Lifting his wrist and looking at the time on his watch, the chief commander's frown deepened a bit. There were already only two minutes left until the time requested by the robbers. Phew, exhaling a long, cloudy breath, the chief commander stood up straight and turned to look at the picture of Lu Ming that was fixed on the whiteboard. His brows were deeply locked. At this moment, his heart was obviously still quite tense. After all, although in his heart, he felt that the next raid could most likely bring this maneuver to an end. The best outcome. It was the result of himself being killed in action with a hostage, leading the police police team to victory in the maneuver. The result wasn't perfect, but it was still within an acceptable level. However, the robbers had guns in their hands. A worse result, the special duty members of the raid team might suffer casualties, but this was also unavoidable. The robbers were arrogant and appeared to kill the hostages at their mood, so for the safety of the hostages, they had to take action. Of course, the commander-in-chief also knew that there was a possibility that the raid plan would fail. It was just that he didn't quite dare to think about the outcome. However, in the chief commander's opinion, the raid's action deployment was relatively well thought out, and the possibility of the plan failing was minimal. Chief Commander, the snipers and raid squads have all been set up. Just at this moment, the special task force squad leader walked in from outside the temporary command room. While reporting the situation to the commander-in-chief, he walked over to the water fountain and received a cup of water, tilting his head to drink it all. The special police squad was the most elite fighting force of the police squad. Therefore, the snipers as well as the raid squad were naturally manned by the special duty squad, and the deployment of personnel was also arranged by the special duty squad leader. The robbers have guns in their hands, and there is also a strong possibility that they have other heavy weapons. Have the brothers be careful. The chief commander nodded, before speaking again to give an explanation. While speaking, he lifted the watch on his wrist to look at the time again. Got it. The special duty squad leader drank another cup of water before he threw the paper cup in his hand into the trash can and opened his mouth to respond to the chief commander. At the same time, two more squad leaders walked in outside the door. The technical department has accessed the bank's alarm system and can activate the bank's internal alarm at any time. Chief commander, the golden car that the robbers demanded are also ready. Right outside, after entering the door, the team leader of the technical department and another team leader reported the situation to the chief commander successively. The chief commander nodded as he heard this. According to the plan, everything was ready. Not wearing a bulletproof undershirt? The commander-in-chief turned back and looked at the special duty squad leader and opened his mouth to ask. The weather was relatively hot, so the special difference squad leader wore a short-sleeved shirt and didn't do any protective measures. He would have to bring the gold to attract the attention of a robber in front of the bank, so naturally it was necessary to wear a bulletproof vest as a protective measure. I guess I will have to face with the robber. So close to the distance. Even a kindergarten child with a gun can hit my head. Bulletproof undershirt is useless. Not to mention the weather is so hot. Why suffer that? The special duty squad leader responded cheerfully, shrugging his shoulders as he spoke. With an air of disinterest, the commander-in-chief sniffed, but also just nodded and didn't say anything more. After all, the special difficulty squad leader said in the right. In that distance, the role of bulletproof undershirt is really not big. Raising his wrist, the commander-in-chief once again looked at the time. There was already only about a minute left from the time requested by the robbers. Prepare for action. The chief commander raised his head and looked at the special duty squad leader and opened his mouth seriously. The words fell. The few people in the middle of the temporary command room all saluted and responded with a yes in unison. The raid that was at stake officially kicked off. In the middle of the bank, Zhou Hang had already set everything up according to Lu Ming's request. At this moment, the two of them were sitting quietly on the floor opposite the hostage table and the atmosphere of the bank hall also appeared to be a bit depressing. It's almost time. Later on, remember to follow what I taught you no matter what happens. Lu Ming took out his cell phone and looked at the time before he got up, and after stretching, he looked at Zhou Hang and opened his mouth. He was still acting relatively relaxed. There was always a look of lightness and confidence, as if none of this was a big deal. Brother Ming, just don't worry. Although I, Zhou Hang, am not exactly smart, I am definitely the most reliable. Guarantee to complete the mission. Zhou Hang also got up and looked at Lu Ming and smiled before he patted his chest and packed his bags. He was, after all, someone who had been a soldier for a few years. And although he wasn't considered a top soldier, his practical combat ability wasn't bad. And Lu Ming had planned everything. He was not able to plan actions. 
but there was still nothing wrong with execution. Dependable? If you kid was reliable. I wouldn't have somehow become a robber just because I wanted to have a meal with you. This isn't over. You'll just wait for me to find you to settle the score after it's over. Lu Meng looked at Zhou Hang with a smirk and opened his mouth, patting his shoulder as he spoke with a meaningful expression. Upon hearing this, Zhou Hang couldn't help but scratch his head in embarrassment. Indeed, in the case of Brother Ming's unawareness, pitting Brother Ming as a robber, this thing was something that he had done somewhat less than honorable. But, what did Brother Ming say about waiting for this matter to end before finding himself to settle the score? Coupled with that meaningful expression, could it be that he had already guessed that this was an exercise? Zhou Hang stared at Lu Ming with wide eyes and a slightly shocked expression on his face, but there was no way he could have known. Ah, uh, how well he had been hiding himself all along, not revealing a single bit of horse's footing at all. At the same time, on top of the square outside the bank, a Chinese bus was slowly traveling in from outside the cordon, parking the vehicle more than 10 meters away from the bank's gate. The special police squad leader and a police officer came down from the vehicle. The two men were each carrying a black bag, and what was in the bag was naturally the gold that Lu Ming had requested. Placing the bags three meters away from the bank's main door, the police officer walked back towards the outside of the square's cordon. Listen up people inside, we've already prepared what you asked for. The special police squad leader glanced at the watch on his wrist, it was already the time the robbers had requested. Only then did he clear his throat and shouted at the middle of the bank. A few moments, a piece of the white paper pasted on the bank's glass door was torn off and Lu Ming appeared behind that glass door. He stood right behind the door, looking through the glass door at the special duty squad leader not far away, and had no intention of opening the door and coming out. The special duty squad leader raised an eyebrow, and some surprise surfaced on his face. After all, previously, whether it was to take a takeaway, or to kill a hostage, the two robbers were directly opened the bank door and walked out. This time, the special duty squad leader had also specially placed the gold a few meters away from the bank's main door. The idea was to attract the robbers to this position, and the snipers upstairs on the opposite side would be more likely to lock onto the target. Who knows? This time the robbers unexpectedly do not come out. Can't it be that they have discovered something? Although there was some doubt in his heart, but the special duty squad leader still walked towards the bank's main door without moving. At the same time, within the caravan of the technical department, there were several screens hanging above the console. The image on one of the screens was precisely the image of the bank's main entrance that was transmitted back from the camera on the special duty squad leader's collar. On the other screen was the image of the back door of the bank from the camera on the helmet of the raid team member. The robbers did not open the main door of the bank in the middle of the screen. The commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders were all slightly stunned. After all, this was still more or less different from what they expected. Although the chief commander didn't say anything, the expression on his face froze for a few minutes though. We've prepared everything you asked for. Where are the hostages you promised to release? The special duty squad leader walked to the entrance of the bank, looking at Lu Ming behind the glass door through the skeletonized electric roll-up door as well as the glass door, and opened his mouth. As he spoke, he couldn't help but look into the middle of the bank through the gap where the white paper had been torn open. However, this gap was too small to see what was going on inside the bank. I will naturally release the hostages. Let me see the gold first. Lu Ming wore a smile on his face as he looked at the special duty squad leader and spoke in a rather amiable manner. At the same time, in the middle of the Ministry of Technology's caravan, the chief commander pressed down on the walkie-talkie he was holding in his hand, pressed the talk button, and spoke in a deep voice, Raid Squad, take action. The raid team that had already been at the back door, after receiving the instructions from the commander-in-chief from the headset, also quickly began to take action. The leader of the team swiped open the back door with the identity card of the bank's branch chief, and several team members immediately kept their formation and entered the bank in an orderly manner. Wearing combat uniforms, the heavily armed members of the special task force cooperated extremely well, and began to march through the bank without moving. The commander-in-chief looked at the real-time picture that came back on top of the screen, and the expression on his face was still quite grave. After all, this raid could be said to be exceptionally important. The commander-in-chief was naturally hanging on to his heart, fearing that something had gone wrong. The police officer's perspective live broadcast room, watching the start of the police dispatcher squad's raid. The live broadcast room was naturally extremely lively. Worthy of being a member of the special duty squad, the cooperation is tacit. It looks reliable. The special duty squad is, after all, the strongest fighting force amongst the police force, and their abilities are naturally without comment. Alas, once upon a time, my dream was also to become a special police officer, but now I can only move bricks at the construction site. This robbers have already guessed the raid action of the police special police team, and they have no knowledge about this. It feels like something is going to happen. Have you noticed? 
This time Lu Ming didn't even go out of the bank's front door. It seems that he is indeed prepared to deal with it. I have to say, Lu Ming the robber is still smart ah, indeed worthy of the title of high IQ robber. Alas, this police police team's rate action robbers have prepared words. The final result is really not easy to say. Even if the robbers were prepared, so what? They are a total of just two people. The police team side of the raid plan of action is more thorough. I feel that there is still a chance. How can I put it? If the robbers were completely unaware of the raid, I feel that the chance of success is 90%. But if the robbers were prepared, I'm afraid that the chance of success would be less than 30%. Indeed, the robbers are controlling so many hostages in their hands. All they have to do is to use the lives of the hostages as a threat. What can the raid squad do? The special duty squad leader is also too difficult. Having formulated such a perfect raid plan, who knew that he would meet a robber who stole the script? Laughing and crying, the viewers were discussing heatedly, and at this time, the pop-ups were basically worried about this raid by the police squad. After all, in the case where the robbers had already anticipated the raid and had even guessed the course of action, such an action was naturally not very optimistic for the police team. Although the viewers were hoping that this maneuver would last longer, in which case they would also be able to watch it for a while longer. However, the viewers who were in the live broadcast room of the vigilante team were of course still more supportive of the vigilante team. So naturally, they also didn't want to see this raid end in a crushing defeat for the police team. However, their discussion in the live broadcast room, at this time and the maneuvers in the police team naturally also impossible to see. The main entrance of the bank, the special police squad leader stood outside the door, looking at Lu Ming behind the glass door and frowning slightly. The gold is in the two bags behind me, but 70 kilograms is too heavy for me to lift alone. If you want to check, come out and check. The special police squad leader reached out and pointed to the two backpacks behind himself. Speaking calmly, he still tried to get Lu Ming out so that the snipers could lock him down. In this way, the raid squad would only have to deal with one robber, which naturally reduced the pressure a little. However, Lu Ming had only looked at him and smiled after hearing his words, and had no intention of opening the door and coming out. The special duty squad leader raised an eyebrow and muttered in his heart, This Lu Ming, when did he become so cautious? In his previous negotiations with Lu Ming during the delivery, he only felt that Lu Ming was an arrogant and cocky person, and that caution was completely irrelevant. Why had he suddenly become cautious at this moment? What? Scared? The special duty squad leader looked at Lu Ming behind the glass door and opened his mouth with a smile. The words were full of provocation, quite a low level of provocation. However, in a real battle, such a low-grade provocation could play an unexpected role, because such a low level of provocation but we'll give a person to play a kind of no-danger feeling. There's a sniper hiding upstairs on the opposite side. Can I not be afraid? Lu Ming also smiled and looked at the special duty squad leader and spoke seriously. The special duty squad leader froze, a trace of undetectable shock surfacing on his face. However, that expression returned to normal in an instant. Are you kidding? Although I do want to finish you off, but there can still be your accomplices inside the bank and holding a dozen or so hostages. If we take you out, the safety of the hostages won't be guaranteed. The special duty squad leader laughed and once again opened his mouth in a calm tone, speaking as naturally as possible with an expression that didn't reveal his face. To tell the truth, Lu Ming directly opened his mouth and said that there were snipers upstairs on the opposite side. The special duty squad leader was very shocked. After all, when Lu Ming said this, his tone wasn't tentative, but instead extremely certain. It was as if he truly knew the actions of the special police squad. How many snipers do you think there are upstairs on the opposite side? One, two, three? or four, Lu Ming didn't pick up the special duty squad leader's words, but instead asked out with a smile on his face. The special duty squad leader's brows were deeply locked and he didn't say anything, only keeping the expression on his face as calm as possible. For ah, uh, so many snipers, if I were to go out here, wouldn't I have to be instantly shot into a hornet's nest? Relax, your expression has already betrayed you, why are you still so nervous? Lu Ming opened his own mouth, speaking cheerfully, as if he was chatting with the special duty squad leader. While listening to Lu Ming's words, the expression on the special duty squad leader's face became more and more ugly. They had indeed arranged for four snipers. Didn't think Lu Ming could even guess that? When he heard that it was his own expression that had betrayed him, the special agent squad leader was somewhat incredulous. After all, when Lu Ming was talking to himself, he was already keeping his face as calm as possible. So how could Lu Ming still be able to tell? You've studied psychology? The special duty squad leader raised an eyebrow and asked out in a rather surprised voice. Since the matter of the sniper had already been exposed, then Lu Ming naturally wouldn't come out of the bank again, and what one could do was to stall him as much as possible, making him stand behind this glass door, because in that case, 
The raid team that had already entered the bank through the back door would only need to determine the location of one of the robbers. Slightly, Lu Ming responded with a smile on his face, speaking in a cloudy manner. He had indeed studied some psychology. However, the four snipers were his guess, but he didn't expect to really guess. As for the point of arranging the snipers, then Lu Ming didn't need to guess and was naturally able to determine it. After all, since the police team is going to take action, it is certainly the pursuit of a one-strike kill. Naturally all the means have to be used. Arranging for a sniper. That was also certain. This is completely without guessing. In the Ministry of Technology's caravan, for Lu Ming to have seen through the snipers that the police team had deployed at the front door, several squad leaders and the chief commander were quite surprised. After all, when arranging the snipers, they had moved very little. Even if the robbers had been observing their movements, it was impossible for them to discover it. But Lu Ming opened his mouth and was certain about the snipers, which was naturally out of everyone's expectation. Chief Commander, what should we do now? One of the squad leaders looked at the chief commander and spoke in a deep voice. The sniper's deployment was recognized, and this naturally had a considerable impact on their overall plan. How to respond? This naturally required the chief commander to take the decision. However, the commander-in-chief was holding a walkie-talkie in his hand, his brows deeply locked, and did not open his mouth to respond. At this moment, from the picture that was sent back from the side of the raid team, the squad members had successfully passed through the locker room area and arrived at the office area. The march along the way did not encounter any situation. Obviously, there was absolutely no need for the police squad to terminate the raid just because the sniper's deployment was recognized. On the sniper's side, what's the situation? There was a moment of silence. The commander-in-chief pressed the talk button on the intercom. In a calm tone, he opened his mouth to ask out. Sniper position number one, unable to lock on to the target. Sniper position number two, obscured by stone pillars, unable to lock on to target. Sniper position three, unable to lock on to the target. Sniper position four, unable to lock on target. The response from each sniper soon came from the intercom. Unexpectedly, all four snipers were completely ineffective. The main reason was that Lu Ming's position was too well chosen, and it was completely a sniping blind spot. For a while, there was a brief silence in the technical department's caravan, although there was a certain amount of mental preparation. However, hearing the sniper's report, the hearts of the people present couldn't help but be grave. The raid cannot be stopped. Two seconds of silence. The commander-in-chief who was holding the intercom, with a pair of eyes staring tightly at the image transmitted back from the raid team on the screen, calmly opened his mouth. The words fell. The look on the chief commander's face became a few more points firmer. When the crowd of squad leaders heard the words, they all nodded silently as well. This raid was a good opportunity for the police squad to end their maneuvers, so it was naturally impossible to arbitrarily abort it. After all, the snipers were only supposed to cooperate with the operation, and as long as the raid squad was not exposed, then the chances of this operation being able to end the maneuver remained high. Special duty squad leader hold back the main gate robbers as long as possible. Raid squad proceed as planned. The commander-in-chief once again pressed the talk button on the intercom and gave his orders. The special duty squad leader at the main gate, as well as the raid squad that was marching in an orderly manner in the office area received the order from their headsets at the same time. At the same moment, they were silent and acted according to the commander-in-chief's orders. The main entrance of the bank. The special agent squad leader looked at Lu Ming behind the glass door and took in a deep breath of cool air. Since you're not willing to come out from the middle of the bank, then you release the hostages first, and I'll send the gold in for you. As for the center bus, the key is in my hand. I can give it to you now. The special duty squad leader opened his mouth with a smile on his face, and as he spoke, he pulled out the keys to the car and shook them in his hand, stalling for time well. Haggling with the robbers over the matter of exchanging gold for hostages was clearly the best way. There's no rush on this. It's not too late for us to exchange hostages after I treat you to a good show first. Lu Ming smiled, standing behind the glass door. He stretched out before leisurely opening his mouth. As these words left his mouth, the special duty squad leader instantly furrowed his brows. Watching a good show? What was the meaning of this? This kid wouldn't want to make a move against the hostages again, right? At the same time, the members of the raid squad had also arrived outside the back door of the bank hall. The six heavily armed special task force members held their guns, bowed over, and quietly waited for the signal to act. In the technology department's caravan, the chief commander was also looking at the images coming back from the bank's front door with a deep frown on his face. He had heard Lu Ming's words just now. Likewise, the chief commander didn't quite understand the meaning of Lu Ming's words for a while, but a bad premonition surged through his heart. Chief commander, the raid team has arrived at the predetermined location. Is the alarm bell in the bank activated? 
The small captain of the technical department stood at the side of the chief commander. Looking at the real-time image transmitted back from the ray team above the screen, he rather nervously opened his mouth to inquire. After all, at this moment, the raid plan had already reached the most thrilling time. Success or failure is here. All the police officers present were hanging on to their hearts, nervously waiting for the next action to develop. However, at this time, the commander-in-chief was silent. He had an extremely grave expression on his face. Two thick eyebrows twisted into a Chuan character. The muscles above his cheeks were taut, obviously clenching his teeth. What exactly did Lu Ming mean by a good show? It's hard to believe that he knows the backdoor raid plan? This could not be possible. After the raid team entered the bank, they traveled very smoothly and didn't find anything unusual at all. If Lu Ming knew about the raid plan, how could he let the raid team walk here so smoothly? Then what exactly did he mean? Could it be that his accomplices were in the middle of the bank, preparing to strike at the hostages? Thinking of this, the commander-in-chief's heart flinched, and the color in his eyes turned a few points colder. Lu Ming was a bandit who was able to kill hostages according to his mood, and it wasn't impossible to say that the one good play in his mouth was to harm the hostages. If that was really the case, then it was necessary to kill the robber and end the maneuver before such a thing occurred. Activate the alarm. With a raised eyebrow, the chief commander gritted his teeth and opened his mouth to give the order. And those words exited. The technician in front of that console was also the first to press the enter key on the computer. For a moment, the alarm bell rang loudly in the middle of the bank, outside the back door of the lobby. Several raid team members heard the alarm bell ringing. The team member in the lead raised his hand and waved it, and the remaining few team members immediately began to take action. One team member reached out and prepared to open the door, while the other team member took out an endoscope camera and prepared to determine the location of the other robber in the middle of the bank hall. Main door. The alarm bell was heard ringing. The special duty squad leader, who was deeply frowning, gulped, and a nervous expression that was hard to hide appeared on his face. After all, the ringing of the alarm bell was the time for the raid squad to actually make their move. Whether or not this raid could bring this maneuver to a close had also come to a critical time. However, the squad leader was not aware of the exact progress of the raid at this time. Naturally, he was quite nervous. However, while nervous, the junior captain saw Lu Ming's face. That face wore a calm smile and a bland look. It seemed that he was not surprised by this sudden ringing of the alarm. It was as if it was completely within his expectations. The special duty squad leader's heart thumped, and a bad premonition surged to his heart. The alarm is ringing. The special agent squad leader looked at Lu Ming and spoke tentatively. The alarm bell in the middle of the bank suddenly rang, yet Lu Ming remained calm and collected, a reaction that really staggered him. He didn't understand why Lu Ming would react in such a manner. Right. The good show is on. It's a pity that you're outside and can't see this good show. Lu Ming nodded and smiled in response to the special duty squad leader. After saying that, he even shrugged his shoulders and sighed. When the special duty squad leader heard this, he directly froze in place. There was a deception. The good show Lu Ming spoke of was the raid. He actually knew about the raid on his side. How was this possible? Goo. Deceitful. The robbers know our actions. Quickly have the raiders retreat back. The special duty squad leader gulped and hurriedly spoke urgently. The filming equipment he was carrying had a radio device. So what he said at this moment was naturally received by the commander-in-chief's side. It's too late. There is no medicine for regret in this world. And after the special duty squad leader's words fell, there was still no sound of response from the commander-in-chief and the headset. Lu Ming, who was behind the glass door, opened his mouth. He opened his mouth with a smile, and that tone was like an idle conversation. Cloudy and light. The special duty squad leader stayed in place. An expression of disbelief still filled his face. At the same time, the back door of the bank hall. The raiders pushed the door open a crack and were about to shove the endoscopic camera through the crack in the door to determine the location of the robbers in the bank. Splat! A crisp rattling sound came out. Obviously something had fallen to the ground. The crowd followed the sound and looked. Through the gap where the door was pushed open, there was a cylindrical object falling to the ground in that doorway. In the blink of an eye, Green-colored smoke rose up and surged in towards the back of the door. Smoke bomb. The hearts of the several raiders were slightly startled. Although the smoke bomb did not cause substantial damage, as they opened the door, this smoke bomb fell to the ground. The smoke bomb was prepared long ago. This just showed that the robbers had prepared for their raid, and the smoke rising from the smoke bomb made the endoscope camera completely useless. Cannot determine the location of the robbers. How to raid. After all, if they choose to push the door into the bank hall, Maybe the scene they saw was the robbers holding hostages and waiting for them. At that time what could they do? They were not snipers. Even if they were accurate, it would be impossible for them to shoot in that situation. After all, once the shooting accidentally hurt the hostage, that is a major mistake. 
no one could afford such a consequence. In the caravan of the technical department, looking at the images transmitted back from the site of the raiders, the chief commander also had an extremely unsightly expression on his face. He had also heard the urgent voice of the special duty squad leader. It was at the same time that voice rang out that he saw the picture from the raid team's side. The raid had proceeded to this point, and it could be said that it had failed. Raid team quickly withdraw from the bank. The chief commander pressed down the talk button on the intercom and gave the order to retreat through gritted teeth. Since the location of the robbers couldn't even be determined, then the raid squad could only retreat. After all, the current situation could already be said to be something that could not be done. If it was delayed any further, it was likely that even the lives of the raid squad members would be in trouble. Boom. And just as the several members of the raid squad received the chief commander's order to retreat, a loud muffled sound rang out beside the team members' ears. Accompanying the muffled sound was red pigment spraying out from both sides, and the clothes of the several members of the raid team who were caught off guard were basically stained with that red raw material. Following the sound of the explosion, it was the two boxes placed in the corner that had exploded. The boxes had been blown up, and the pigment had been sprayed out from inside. And among the boxes, one could still see the remaining remains of the remote-controlled bombs that had been used for maneuvers. The bombs didn't have much power, and blowing up the cardboard boxes was rather bare. However, the way he judged it, was the range of the paint sprayed. In other words, any living thing within the range that the paint could spray could be judged to be eliminated. Several of the raiders were too close and basically got paint on them, meaning they were all killed in action. Splat. It was also at this moment, a door opening sound came from the nearby office, and a hooded figure rushed out from inside. Without any further ado, he carried his gun and swept it towards where the several raiders were. The 95 type automatic rifle. 30 rounds of bullets all hit the several raiders in a brain. They gritted their teeth, their hearts burning with rage. Damn it. They had already been blown up by the bomb. But the robbers were still firing like this. This was a bare bones whipping boy. It was simply an insult. However, since they had already been eliminated, the few raiders could only grit their teeth and bear it all. Is there anyone else who can breathe? If there isn't, I'm going to clean up the battlefield. After Zhou Hang had finished shooting all the bullets in a shuttle, he changed bullets while looking at the several raiders and cheerfully opened his mouth. No one said a word. After all, this was an exercise that was broadcast live on the entire network. So many eyes watching. A few raiders can only follow the rules of the exercise, quietly play their identity. At this time dead. Technical department RV. Everyone froze. Everything happened too fast. The commander-in-chief's side had only just given the order to retreat. And in the twinkling of an eye the bomb exploded. And then the robbers rushed out to make up for the gun. In only a few seconds, several members of the raid team were unexpectedly all killed in action. What is going on here? The chief commander had a bewildered look on his face his pair of eyes still staring at the picture on that display, murmuring in a voice that almost only he could hear. He was indeed dumbfounded. The worst outcome of a failed raid that he didn't want, nor dare to think about, had happened. The raid squad was completely wiped out, and hadn't even been of any use at all. It was completely like, a sheep entering a tiger's mouth. It didn't make a single wave in this maneuver, and it was completely wiped out. This is the life of six special mission members. The group of squad leaders all didn't dare to say anything and stood quietly in place. A silence fell in the caravan, and the atmosphere was suppressed to the extreme. The entrance to the bank. The special duty squad leader and Lu Ming looked at each other through the hollowed out electric roller shutter door as well as the glass door. Lu Ming was calm, with a faint smile on his face. On the other hand, the special agent squad leader's brows were deeply locked, and he had a tense look on his face. He didn't know what was happening in the middle of the bank. However, he heard the retreat order given by the commander-in-chief in his headset, as well as the sound of explosions and a series of gunshots in the middle of the bank. There seemed to be a melee in the middle of the bank. However, how was it that Lu Ming couldn't see a hint of worry about his teammates on his face? Brother Ming, done and wrapped up. Not a single one of the six is left. We can have the people outside send in the gold. Just as the special duty squad leader stared at Lu Ming behind the glass door with a tense look on his face, Zhou Hang's voice came from the middle of the bank. The voice was loud. The special agent squad leader through the glass door could also hear it clearly. For a moment, the special agent squad leader almost froze in place. Six people. Not a single one left? The raid team was completely wiped out? The raid plan was so well thought out. And the raiders that he personally selected were all brothers with extremely strong combat abilities in the special duty squad. How could this be the result? Hear that? The good show has ended. Send the gold over. Looking at the special duty squad leader who was frozen in place. Lu Ming opened his mouth with a smile on his face and gave a reminder. Although the tone of speech remained calm. However, these words sounded full of mockery to the special duty squad leader at this moment. 
when the raid was formulated, everyone in the special police squad was of the mindset of killing the robbers and ending the maneuver, but now the result was that the robbers were unharmed and all the members of the raid team were killed in action, such a huge contrast, it was really something that the special duty squad leader was unable to accept for a while, of course, at this time, the result was right here, even if the heart is no longer how unacceptable, the matter is finally finalized. The special agent squad leader clenched his teeth and looked through the glass door at Lu Ming behind the door. His brows were locked, his eyes were narrowed, and the muscles above his cheeks were tense, as if he wanted to eat Lu Ming alive. If there was a gun in his hand now, I guess the special duty squad leader would not hesitate to pull out his gun and kill Lu Ming through the glass door. After all, the six people who were killed in action were all members of their special duty squad. They were his men, and even more so, his brothers. The special duty squad leader's heart was definitely harboring a fire. We prepared what you asked for within the stipulated time as you requested. Then, do you also have to keep your promise and release the hostages first? The special duty squad leader took a deep breath of cool air and stabilized himself before speaking in a deep voice. As he spoke, a pair of eyes stared at Lu Ming. His tone was quite forceful, and it was clear that he was not prepared to make concessions. After all, the raid had failed, and six special duty members had already been killed in action. If the golden car keys were handed over to the robbers first now, and then the robbers reversed course after getting the things and chose not to release the hostages. Then, in the end, wouldn't the police task force be a basket case? Do you think you have the qualifications to bargain with me? I've already killed a hostage as well as six police officers now, so it seems like I don't mind killing one more squad leader, right? Lu Ming laughed, then put away the smile on his face and spoke with narrowed eyes. There was no ferocious expression on his face. However, the fierce gaze in those narrowed eyes, paired with those icy words, gave off an extremely ruthless feeling, even if it was like the special duty squad leader who had a rather hard psychological quality, facing Lu Ming at this moment, he couldn't help but frown, give him the gold, just as the special difference squad leader wanted to say something else, the voice of the commander in chief giving the order rang out from within his earpiece, at those words, the special duty squad leader couldn't help but helplessly take a deep breath of cool air, he took the car keys in his hand, and then raised his hand to a height that was level with Lu Ming's eyes, immediately after that, he directly let go of his hand, letting the car keys of that Chinese bus fall from his hand to the ground, I will definitely catch you with my own hands, looking at Lu Ming through the glass door, the special agent squad leader coldly spoke, the words fell, he then turned directly towards the cordon outside the bank plaza, no longer caring about the gold that was placed 3 meters away from the bank's main door, since the commander in chief had already given the order to give the gold to the robbers, it was naturally not good for the special duty squad leader to say anything more, however, to let him in the current situation, but also will give the gold to the robbers to the bank door, he is also not willing to do so, upstairs opposite the bank, snipers are still hibernating, if the robbers were brave enough, they would have gone out of the bank's door themselves and come to get the gold, as for the possibility that his own actions would enrage the robbers, this naturally doesn't need to be considered, after all, the possibility of angering the robbers with the failed raid just now was much higher than his own actions at this time, moreover, this Lu Ming was a complete madman, killing people based entirely on his mood, such a robber, wanting to rely on appeasing him to ensure the safety of the hostages' lives was a joke, police special agent viewpoint live room, because the special police squad leader had filming equipment on him, everything that happened at the main entrance of the bank was spread in real time on top of the screen of the technical department's caravan, the live view of the special police squad was again following the chief commander, after the start of the operation, the commander-in-chief had been giving orders in the middle of the ministry of technology's caravan, Therefore, the entirety of this raid, as well as everything that happened at the main entrance of the bank, was naturally seen clearly by the audience in the live broadcast. Crap, this raid was also too tragic. Not only did it not work at all, but it also killed so many specialists. Something went terribly wrong. It's kind of expected. After all, the robbers guessed the raid beforehand. How else can the police special agent team win? Although Lu Zhuan and the others had already prepared, this defeat is too bad right, the raid team was all killed in action, and that's six special agents, one hostage, six special agents, seven people have been killed in action in this maneuver, the pressure on the police squad is not small, that's natural, didn't you see the reaction of the special police squad leader, it's probably all about to explode with anger, I can only say that it's the robber of this maneuver that's bullish, I'd like to call him the strongest robber ever, this Lu Ming's IQ really isn't blown off, the main thing is that Lu Ming still doesn't know that this is a drill, you guys say that if the drill is over and you look at your own proud record, and then you know the fact that this is just a drill, what kind of reaction will Lu Ming have? Lu Ming said, the drill was over in the last second. 
and the silver bracelet was put on in the next second. I guess the maneuvers are going to be confused after the end of the exercise. I tried my best to rob a bank, and as a result my teammates are acting? Ha ha. You guys said that. I can have a picture inside my head. Judging from Lu Ming's performance in this maneuver, Peanut Meter probably won't be able to run away. In the live broadcast room, the viewers discussed heatedly, watching the fiasco of the police team's raid, many viewers who supported the police team sighed quite a bit, and for the viewers with God's perspective, they had already known that the robbers had guessed the police team's raid and that the robbers had responded, therefore, the failure of the police team's raid was sort of expected, but they also did not expect it to be such a fiasco, all six members of the raid team were killed in action, this result was, indeed, too unexpected, however, this also precisely illustrated that Lu Ming, the decision maker on the side of the robbers, was indeed not simple. Highly intelligent robber Lu Ming. This label also began to spread like wildfire on the internet. Even many of Lu Ming's live images during the drill were made into ghost videos by netizens, and began to circulate wildly on top of major video websites. For a time, Lu Ming was on the internet and had a lot of heat. The name had even made its way onto the hot searches of many websites. City Council. In the director's office. Seeing the fiasco of the police team's raid plan from the live broadcast, the director and deputy director's faces were not looking too good. Previously, there was a hostage's death in action. The deputy director was already worried about whether the credibility of the city bureau would be affected. As a result, this raid ended directly with the deaths of six special agents. With so many spectators watching, the police force's first operation had gone so wrong. As the two leaders of the city council, it was naturally hard for them. The director frowned inside. Picking up the thermos on his desk, he took a sip of tea, gritting his teeth, he did not speak, remote controlled bombs, type 95 automatic rifles, with these heavy weapons on the robbers, isn't it a bit too much, the deputy director reached out and scratched his tightly locked brows, similarly sighing before looking at the director and opening his mouth, he was also unaware that the robbers had these equipment on them, after all, the drill was initiated by the director himself. Therefore who the robbers were playing before the drill started and what equipment was being handed out was all set up by the director himself. The deputy director was not involved in all of this. So naturally, he was not clear on what exactly some of the robbers' equipment was. After all, they are bank robbing bruisers. It makes sense that there are some heavy weapons. It's hard to believe that we can't deal with the robbers if they have a 9 to 5. The failure of the raid wasn't just because the robbers had some heavy weapons. After all, it's still this kid Zhaoing who was a bit impatient. The director placed the thermos cup in his hand back on the table before he let out a long breath of turbid air and spoke calmly. After losing a hostage in battle, the commander-in-chief had launched a raid plan, wanting to end the maneuvers swiftly with a thunderbolt. This would not have been a problem in the first place, but under the circumstance of not being able to understand the internal situation of the bank at all, and not even being able to determine the location of the robbers, this operation would indeed be a bit hasty. The deputy director just frowned and nodded at his words, and did not say anything else. He and the director were not participants in this maneuver. Thus no matter what direction the maneuver went in, they could not intervene. They could only look forward to the final result, which would not be too embarrassing. Temporary command room. The raid had failed, and the police team's group of squad leaders and chief commander had returned here. The faces of the people were gloomy, and the atmosphere was depressing to the extreme. Obviously, the deaths of the six SWAT team members in action was indeed a not-so-small blow to the police team's group of leaders. Chief team. The gold is still outside the bank. That location. If the robbers come out to get the gold, the snipers are fully capable of killing them. Should we utilize this opportunity? The special duty squad leader drank several cups of water in a row next to the water dispenser before he took the lead and opened his mouth to break the silence within the caravan. He was holding a fire in his heart. He couldn't wait to take out Lu Ming right away. However, as soon as these words left his mouth, they were overruled by the commander in chief with a raise of his hand. The raid failed miserably and has already resulted in the deaths of six more SWAT team members. If we can't kill two robbers at the same time, and after one robber is killed, if the remaining robber strikes out in retaliation against the hostages, what kind of situation will it be? The current situation is already bad. We can't let it get any worse. The chief commander took a deep breath of cool air before speaking in a deep voice. As he spoke, he looked at the information hanging on the whiteboard, a grave and serious look on his country face. However, from the deeply locked brow, it was not difficult to see that the pressure in the commander-in-chief's heart at this time was really not small. After all, the raid ended with such a result. This can be said to be a major mistake in the police force, and the commander-in-chief is the highest decision-maker of the police force. This mistake he naturally has to bear the greatest responsibility. The pressure in his heart was naturally not small. 
but if the robbers don't release the hostages as agreed after getting the gold and the car, our situation will be even more passive. If they take the hostages and drive away, how should we respond? The special duty squad leader crushed the paper cup in his hand into a ball and threw it into the trash can before looking at the commander-in-chief and frowning as he opened his mouth. Being passive all the time won't solve the problem. By the time, if the robbers took hostages and fled in a car, the situation would become even worse. After all, now that the robbers were trapped in the bank, surrounded by the police force, the situation was still barely controllable. But with the robbers driving down the road, which is full of traffic and pedestrians, the situation will be completely uncontrollable. The robbers had guns in their hands. Through this failed raid, they learned that the robbers had more than just two Type 92 pistols in their hands. After all, the robbers had already pulled out weapons like smoke bombs, remote-controlled bombs, and Type 95 automatic rifles against the raid team. Who knew what kind of weaponry these two robbers still had? If they escaped the bank and utilized these heavy weapons, what kind of chaos they would cause? This special duty squad leader didn't dare to imagine at all. We still have one more chance. Before the robbers exit the bank's gate and get into the car, both robbers must be shot down at the same time. The robbers must not be allowed to drive out of the bank's boundaries. The commander-in-chief was silent for a long time before he turned around and spoke in a serious manner. While speaking, he clenched his right hand into a fist, his knuckles tapping heavily on the table. Within a pair of eyes, the color was grave. Everything that the special special duty squad leader was worried about, the chief commander was naturally very clear about it as well. However, what he had to consider was to end the maneuver as much as possible on the premise that the situation couldn't get any worse. He could indeed order the snipers to shoot down one of the robbers while they were taking the gold then organize a strong attack and charge straight in through the main entrance of the bank, killing the other robber as well and ending the exercise without regard for the consequences. In that case, it wasn't hard to end the maneuver. But in that case, the lives of the dozen hostages would not be guaranteed in any way. But the commander-in-chief couldn't do that. Because, the bottom line of the police force is that the lives of every hostage must be guaranteed as much as possible. Every single one of their operations, couldn't possibly be conducted at the expense of any of the hostages the previous raid. It was true that there were six special duty members killed in action, but that was due to operational errors. It wasn't that the commander-in-chief was prepared to also launch an operation at the cost of the lives of the special difficulties team members at the very beginning of the operation's deployment. But, to kill two robbers at the same time, isn't this too difficult? After all, when the robbers take hostages on board, they will definitely do some camouflage, and we may not be able to distinguish the hostages from the robbers in the first place. The technical department squad leader frowned and spoke seriously. Indeed, judging from the performance of the robber after the start of the maneuver, the robber was not a generalized person. He was a smart person, and would definitely not strut around holding a hostage and appear within the sniper's line of sight. I also know that the difficulty is not small, but this is one of the few chances we have. If we let the robbers take the hostages and get into the car, it will be even less easy to end the maneuver. The commander-in-chief sighed before speaking through gritted teeth. The bank hall. Lu Ming sat on the floor opposite the hostage table. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, stood next to the water dispenser and drank several cups of water in a row before taking a new paper cup and catching a cup of water for Lu Ming to bring over. Brother Ming, this is really great. You are not aware of the situation at that time. I pressed the remote control for the remote control bomb and rushed out. Holding the gun was just clicking and sweeping. Those people's expressions. It was wonderful. Zhou Hang handed Lu Ming a paper cup filled with water before he spoke with considerable excitement. As he spoke, he also gestured with his hands. There's nothing to see in a dead man's expression. Lu Ming glanced at him and tilted his head to drink the water he received. Only then did he calmly respond to Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang sniffed. He hurriedly stared wide-eyed and scratched the back of his head with a stunned expression. In this moment of excitement, he had actually forgotten that Brother Ming didn't realize that this was just a drill. Ha ha. A few people are a bit dead. Naturally there are still some expressions on their faces. Zhou Hang laughed twice with a stiff smile on his face before he opened his mouth and snorted, rounding off his blunder. However, looking at Lu Ming's appearance, it seemed that he did not care about his slip of the tongue. He swallowed his saliva. Zhou Hang was sort of relieved in his heart. Right, the gold is still outside the bank right now. Why don't I go and bring it in? Zhou Hang also sat down on the floor next to Lu Ming. Looking sideways at Lu Ming, he spoke again. They were robbers. Naturally, they had to be on top of the stolen money. Now that 70 kilograms of gold was sitting in the square in front of the bank, Zhou Hang naturally had to figure out how to get the stuff in earlier. Upstairs on the opposite side, the snipers set up by the police team are probably not yet removed, just waiting for us to go out to get the gold, when the time comes to shoot us. After all, we just killed six of them. 
and now the chief captain is probably burning with rage, and would like to skin us both. Lu Ming was eating a boxed lunch that had already gone cold, looking at Zhou Hang with a smile on his face as he opened his mouth. It had to be said, this Buddha jumping wall was really a bit fishy after it was put out cold. However, it was good that Lu Ming had never been picky about what he ate, as long as he could fill his stomach. After all, when they were still in the army, they went out for training and even ate raw meat and insects, and the taste of those things was much worse than this cold Buddha jumping wall. Brother Ming, then what do we do? The gold is right outside the bank. We can't just not want it. Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming's words and stared with a shocked expression. Lu Ming's words naturally had an element of scaring Zhou Hang. However, Zhou Hang did not have the slightest doubt about Lu Ming's words. There are still four hostages who haven't eaten lunch right? They can leave now. But before leaving, have them get us the gold in. Lu Ming pulled two mouthfuls of rice into his mouth before he casually responded to Zhou Hang. When Zhou Hang heard this, he hurriedly nodded with a sudden realization. And then he hurriedly got up and picked out the hostages that he was originally prepared to release according to what Lu Ming said. As a robber, Lu Ming actually didn't need to talk about credibility. He could completely rely on his mood and kill all four of the robbers he was prepared to release as well. However, the deaths of one hostage and six special agents had put enough pressure on the side of the police force. Sometimes too much pressure was not necessarily a good thing. Now if he killed all four hostages again, it was hard to say if the police force would have to take action again due to too much pressure. And for the police team to act too often was not good for Lu Ming, who was going to start working on preparing a plan to get out of the situation. Therefore, Lu Ming still decided to release the four hostages, sort of giving the police force a slight reprieve. In this way, the standoff would be at a stalemate in a short period of time. Lu Ming would also have more time to start laying out his escape plan. Although, just now, Lu Ming and his team could be said to have won a great victory in the surprise attack plan against the police force. But at this moment, they were still trapped in the bank surrounded by the police force. The situation was still not optimistic. It wasn't easy to get out of the bank with the gold. Temporary command room. Amidst the oppressive atmosphere, a group of squad leaders and the chief commander were discussing things. Just at this time, a police messenger came over to report that the bank's doors had opened once again. The commander-in-chief sniffed and raised an eyebrow. After hesitating for two seconds, he still put down the things in his hands and walked out of the temporary command room, outside the square's police cordon. The commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders stood here, looking from afar at the slowly opening bank gate over there. Not much time passed. Two figures walked out from within the bank, but they were not robbers. In the slightly stunned gazes of the commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders, those two hostages walked over to the backpacks containing the gold, lifted up the two backpacks and returned to the bank. Lu Ming is very cautious nah, seeing that the one who came out to take the gold was not a robber, but instead two hostages. The chief commander couldn't help but murmur with a frown. Before the raid operation, from their encounters with Lu Ming, the chief commander and the others had concluded that Lu Ming was a smart but arrogant and cocky robber to the core. The point of caution could be said to be completely irrelevant to Lu Ming. However, looking back after the raid had failed, the commander-in-chief realized that he was wrong, and that what they saw was only what Lu Ming wanted them to see. It was precisely because they had misjudged Lu Ming. In their opinion, the well-planned and highly feasible raid ended with all six specialists killed in action. Behind the load-bearing wall next to the bank's main door, Zhou Hang was holding a Type 95 automatic rifle, staring from afar at the two hostages who had gone out to get the gold. At this time, his position had the load-bearing wall as a cover. Naturally, he would not be exposed to the snipers on the opposite floor, and the two hostages know that they have a gun behind them, and do not dare to have any small mind. Gold smoothly into the bank, and Zhou Hang also followed what Lu Ming said and directly drove the four hostages out of the bank. The four hostages had just gone out when the bank's door slowly fell, outside the cordon. As the chief commander watched the scene, that tightly locked brow couldn't help but stretch a few points. Chief commander, that Lu Ming kid actually released the hostages. The special duty squad leader looked at the four hostages who walked over unharmed and also spoke with some excitement. Obviously, such a result was still slightly out of his expectations. After all, According to Lu Ming's previous performance, the special duty squad leader had already prepared for the fact that Lu Ming would not release the hostages. At this moment, four hostages were released. This was also considered to be a bit of progress for the special police squad after the maneuver had begun. Find someone to receive the hostages and to calm them down. The robbers have gotten the gold. One can't let them escape with the gold. After all, this is something worth 30 million dollars. The commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air before he rushed the people at his side with a serious face and gave the order. Although there were hostages being released, but the chief commander was truly not happy. After all, one hostage, six special agents were killed in action. 
and 70 kilograms of gold worth 30 million dollars also fell into the hands of the robbers. If the maneuver didn't end, the commander-in-chief really didn't have the face to be happy. The bank hall. Lu Ming pulled open the two backpacks. The golden gold bars were exposed in the air. Although each of these gold bars was a kilogram in weight, their size wasn't even as big as the smartphones that were common nowadays. Split between the two backpacks, they were naturally not enough. You kid is not acting quite right now. Nah. Looking at so much gold, surprisingly not excited at all? Lu Ming reached out and picked up a gold bar and sized it up twice before looking at Zhou Hang next to him and opening his mouth with a smile. Zhou Hang was frowning deeply at this time, with a worried expression on his face. Only once he heard Lu Ming's words did his face hurriedly pile on a slightly stiff smile. I'm not too excited. After all, it's the first time I've seen so much gold. Reaching out and scratching the back of his head, Zhou Hang casually made up an excuse. To be honest, after seeing the gold, he did have some worries inside. Because the gold contained inside the bag in front of him was all real gold. This was just a drill. He, the robber, was a fake. But the dirty money that the police force was going to give them was real. If this is a mistake, lost one, then how can he bear the responsibility? After all, he's just a small policeman. With that small salary, how many years would one have to work to afford such a gold bar? Alright, put the stuff away. We have to prepare to get out of the middle of the bank. Lu Ming placed the gold bar in his hand back into the bag. Only after stretching did he look at Zhou Hang and calmly opened his mouth. Zhou Hang sniffed and first zipped up both backpacks before sitting down cross-legged directly next to the gold. One hand is still resting on top of the backpack containing gold. As if it is afraid that the gold will grow wings and fly away. After doing all this, only then did he let out a slight sigh of relief. Brother Ming, we're holding so much gold in our hands right now. The police officers definitely won't let us leave easily. Then how are we going to get out? Zhou Hang looked back at Lu Ming and asked out in a curious opening. If you, what do you have in mind? Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and casually opened his mouth to ask. As he spoke, Lu Ming spread out that one bank floor plan layout map on the floor again, with a calm expression on his face, unable to see any emotions. You asked for a fully fueled Chinese bus, and now the keys are in our hands. That must mean taking hostages on board and driving off, but surely that's something the team of police messengers could have guessed. They're definitely going to take a shot at us in the distance between when we get out of the bank and before we get in the car. They have snipers, so we must do enough camouflage so that they can't tell the robbers from the hostages. Zhou Hang pondered for a moment before he opened his mouth seriously with a single raised eyebrow, speaking out the thoughts in his mind. And after he finished speaking, he glared, a slightly shocked expression appearing on his face. Obviously, he was convinced by his well-thought-out plan. For a moment, Zhou Hang couldn't help but sigh in his heart. It was true that after spending a long time with a smart person like Brother Ming, his own IQ also soared with the naked eye. Without realizing it, surprisingly, he was even able to formulate such an awesome plan. A plan that even a brain like yours can come up with. That definitely can't be used. Just as Zhou Hang was becoming complacent, Lu Ming calmly opened his mouth and directly poured cold water on him. When Zhou Hang heard this, he skimmed his mouth in some displeasure. Brother Ming, you can't look at people with colored glasses like that. A scholar should still be impressed after three days of separation. With a deep frown on his face, Zhou Hang opened his mouth somewhat unconvincingly. He did feel that this plan of his was quite perfect. As long as it was well disguised, it was completely able to confuse the team of police officers, even if it's really like you said, and were able to safely hold the hostages on the bus. What can we do? Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and spoke again while looking at the floor plan layout of the bank on the floor. The tone in which he spoke was calm. It was as if he was chatting with Zhou Hang. Once we get in the car, let's drive and escape. My driving skills aren't a cover. Zhou Hang spoke with gusto. However, having only just said two sentences, he was interrupted by Lu Ming opening his mouth. So what if your car skills are good? The road outside is full of sky eye cameras. As long as the car is on the road, it will definitely not be able to escape the sight of the police team. The end result can only be caught. Why bother pushing yourself to your death? Lu Ming leisurely opened his mouth to interrupt Zhou Hang's words. This plan that Zhou Hang thought of. Lu Ming had naturally thought of it. However, it was ruled out by Lu Ming at the outset. This was not a movie. They also didn't have a racing expert like those in the movies, who could go out of their way amidst dozens of police cars chasing them. Therefore, once they were in the car, it was basically just a chronic death. What Lu Ming wanted was to win this maneuver. Zhou Hang listened to Lu Ming's words and after frowning and thinking, he still nodded. Indeed, it was still Brother Ming who had a point. But since he just wasn't going to flee in a car, then why did he still need to ask for a fully fueled Chinese bus from the police duty team? Brother Ming, since we're not going to get on the bus, wouldn't the bus be useless? Zhou Hang thought about it and couldn't think of Lu Ming's purpose for asking for a car. 
Then he opened his mouth and asked out curiously, The car isn't for us. It's for these hostages. If we ask for the car, the police team will think that we want to escape in a car, and their attention will be focused on this one car. That way, we'll also have more chances. Lu Ming spoke in a calm tone, answering the doubts in Zhou Hang's mind. It was idle anyway. Chatting was considered to be a relief from boredom. Zhou Hang sniffed and nodded with seeming understanding. After saying so much, he still didn't know what exactly Lu Ming's plan to get away was. However, he trusted Lu Ming anyway. The plan would be made by Lu Ming, and he would do whatever Lu Ming told him to do at that time. The atmosphere in the bank was leisurely. In contrast, in the temporary command room of the police team, the atmosphere here was extremely depressing. The robber released four hostages. Why do you guys think he did that? The chief commander looked at the group of squad leaders present and frowned as he spoke in a deep voice. The tone of his voice was serious and majestic as he spoke. The chief commander had maintained this attitude since the fiasco of the raid. The crowd of squad leaders also clearly felt a considerable amount of pressure, but no one dared to complain. After all, everyone also knew what kind of situation the police force was facing right now. The pressure faced by the commander-in-chief could be imagined. Wasn't this discussed beforehand, that we exchanged the gold for hostages? The robber collected the gold and then released the hostages, keeping his promise. One of the squad leaders frowned and spoke tentatively. The commander-in-chief sniffed, but let out a cold laugh. Promises? If Lu Ming was a man who kept his promise, he wouldn't have killed a hostage before exchanging them. All of his moves were just to further his plan, and the fact that he released the hostages it just shows that he wants to appease us and keep the standoff going for the time being, giving him enough time to set up his new plan. The commander-in-chief tapped his fingers on the desktop and looked at the crowd of squad leaders as he spoke extremely seriously. When the crowd heard this, they all also had a look of realization on their faces and nodded with extreme approval. Chief Commander, do you mean that Lu Ming is buying time for himself? Hearing the words of the chief commander, a short silence fell within the temporary command room. A moment. Only then did the special duty squad leader raise his eyebrows, looking at the chief commander in sudden realization and asking out. The rest of the squad captains also had a thoughtful look on their faces when they heard the words. The chief commander nodded. He took a deep breath of cool air and stood up straight. Turning around, he removed the photo that was fixed on top of the whiteboard and placed it on top of the table. The index finger of his right hand nodded at Lu Ming on the photo. Lu Ming is an exceptionally smart and cautious robber who works in a thorough and meticulous manner. A large part of the reason for the failure of the raid was because we underestimated Lu Ming and thus fell into the trap he prepared for us. We all thought it was Lu Ming who guessed the raid. But looking back, Lu Ming may have prepared the trap long ago, just waiting for us to raid. He's not a simple opponent. The commander-in-chief's expression was grave and serious, reaching out to rub his scruff as he spoke. A pair of eyes narrowed slightly as he stared at Lu Ming in that photo. The people present nodded with quite a bit of approval as they listened to the chief commander's words. The raid had failed. The team of police special agents had endured a huge loss. The deaths of the six special police officers naturally made everyone present understand that Lu Ming was not to be taken lightly. Among the contacts with Lu Ming at the beginning, we all felt that Lu Ming was a cocky and arrogant robber to the extreme. After all, when it came to the two events of negotiating and killing hostages, both of them were unguarded and strutted out of the bank, which is what made us feel that way about him. But just now, when he took the gold, he was cautious. With his intelligence, he must have known that as long as there was a robber in the bank using a hostage as blackmail, we wouldn't dare make a move on him even if he came out to fetch the gold. Yet he didn't allow himself and his accomplices to risk their lives, which shows that he is already a cautious person. His previous arrogance and hubris was just what he wanted us to see, to make us think that he was such a person to make us underestimate him and thus lose in one fell swoop. The commander-in-chief opened his mouth seriously, his words getting more and more agitated, and when he said it at the end, his mid-air voice slowly echoed in the makeshift command room. No one in the crowd of squad leaders dared to say anything, they all frowned and listened quietly. However, from the obviously thoughtful expressions, it was not difficult to see that they were all extremely agreeable to the commander-in-chief's words. However, it was obvious that they all still didn't understand what exactly the commander-in-chief meant by saying this now. The robbers asked for a fully fueled car. Why is that? The commander-in-chief paused for a moment before he slightly lowered his volume and asked at a normal volume. The tone was calm. After the words fell, his gaze swept over all the squad leaders. To take a hostage and drive away? The special duty squad leader raised one eyebrow and spoke tentatively. Wasn't this something that had already been discussed long ago? The chief commander had also said earlier that the distance between Lu Ming's exit from the bank and before he got into his car was their last chance to kill the robbers. Why was this issue being brought out for discussion now? I thought the same thing before, but now I have a different opinion. The commander-in-chief shook his head slightly, in a calm tone, but with a serious expression. 
he looked at the people present. The people present were all slightly stunned, and they were all quite surprised in their eyes, clearly curious about what new view the chief commander had. You guys said that Lu Ming wanted to drive away. Could it also be something he wants us to think? Wants us to see? But in fact, he is planning other escape routes? Releasing the hostages was to appease our police team and keep the standoff frozen. Buying him time to prepare his own escape plan. Lu Ming is a smart man. Even if the hostages were safely in the car he wouldn't be able to get rid of us. So I now think that this car is nothing more than a blindfold that he prepared. As he said this, the chief commander squinted his eyes. It was as if he could see Lu Ming right in front of him. He stared at Lu Ming like that, trying to figure out what was going on in Lu Ming's mind. For a moment, silence fell in the middle of the temporary command room. The crowd of squad leaders were all startled and filled with shocked expressions. Obviously, the chief commander's inference had awakened them. At the same time, in the middle of the police messenger's perspective live broadcast room, the chief commander's summary and inference also set off a not-so-small fervor of discussion in the live broadcast room. What's going on? Is this the chief commander's extras arriving? Suddenly he's guessed Lu Ming's mind. Apparently when Lu Ming exposed his caution when he took the gold just now, the chief commander instantly came back to his senses. Worthy of being the chief commander of the criminal duty general unit. Ah, a little bit of clues and clues, to be able to guess so much. It's really bullish. Anyway, the feeling I got from watching this live broadcast of the maneuver was exactly like watching a fairy fight. It does feel a bit like a godly fight now. Such a high quality maneuver can't be seen very often. The fiasco of the raid still made the commander in chief summarize quite a few things. Ah, it seems that the deaths of the six special difficulty brothers were not completely meaningless. Can you say there is a possibility that the chief commander stole the robber's script in a fit of rage after the operation failed? Ha ha. According to what the brothers upstairs are saying, now it's looming with the police team's script, and the chief commander with the robber's script right? I have to say, this thing is getting more and more exciting. The chief commander of the police force is also IQ online. Although Lu Ming is quite bullish, but want to get out of the estimation is really not easy. Although Lu Ming has a lot of experience in this bank robbery thing, the chief commander is also an old criminal police officer, so I guess it won't be easy to get away. The heat in the live broadcast room was extremely high, and there were quite a few viewers who participated in the discussion, and the number of pop-ups was naturally high, and the audience basically police officer perspective live room and robber perspective live room both sides. Therefore, most people knew in the robber's perspective live broadcast that Lu Ming indeed did not intend to drive away, and the chief commander's summary inference was completely on point. The audience naturally called out the chief commander's bullishness. Those viewers who were already supporting the police team also had more confidence in the police team. It seems, the fiasco of the raid, the deaths of the six members of the special duty unit, brought more than just great pressure on the commander-in-chief. It was also more like a resounding slap in the face of the commander-in-chief, waking him up. The viewers in the live broadcast room were naturally all quite excited to see such a situation. After all, as the chief commander who was the highest decision maker of the police force, he started to show his abilities, and this exercise would naturally be even more exciting. City Council, in the middle of the director's office, the two people, the director and the deputy director, saw the situation in the live broadcast room of the police force team. Some joy surfaced on their faces coincidentally. This Xiaoing kid has finally come around. It seems like the huge pressure brought to him by the failed raid was more or less useful. It allowed him to be able to see exactly what kind of opponent he was facing. The director cheerfully picked up his thermos cup and took a sip of hot tea before smiling and speaking to the deputy director. The deputy director sniffed and also nodded with a gentle expression on his face. Although the fact that the six special agents were killed in action can no longer be changed. But as long as Lu Ming is unable to get out of the bank, then the situation is always still within the control of the special police force team, and it will only be a matter of time before they can win the maneuver. It's not too late for Zhao Ying to come to his senses. The deputy commissioner reached out and scratched the top of his eyebrows before speaking seriously. Although, after seeing the commander-in-chief Zhao Ying's performance at the moment, the deputy director was also slightly relieved, but it was still not happy. After all, the current situation of one hostage and six special agents was already ugly enough. And, looking at the current situation, wanting to end the maneuver quickly was not yet possible. The final result was still unknown. However, the director looked a lot more optimistic and nodded with a smile after hearing the deputy director's words. He had initiated this whole live streaming exercise with the sole purpose of making sure that everyone could take it seriously, not thinking about what the final result would be. Although the current situation was a bit ugly for the police force, but the commander-in-chief also got serious, attentive in treating this exercise, not daring to have the slightest contempt for the robber who was just playing the role of a robber. Such a result would be enough for the chief. His purpose had been achieved. Therefore, in the end, 
whether the robber could win or the police team could win, it was rather less important to the director, the temporary command room. After listening to the chief commander's summary and inference, the group of squad leaders all fell into silence, thinking seriously about what the chief commander had said. For a while, it was quiet in the command room for a while. Chief commander, then what should we do next? It was only after a few moments that the special duty squad leader raised his head and looked at the chief commander, frowning as he opened his mouth to ask out. What the commander-in-chief said made sense, but if it was really as the chief commander had said, Lu Ming, the robber, wasn't prepared to take hostages and escape by car at all, then their previous plan of preparing to shoot the robber down before he exited the bank and got into the car would obviously be useless. He wants the standoff to freeze, then let's just not follow his idea. The raid plan just failed and we lost a lot of money. Lu Ming must think that we won't launch another operation anytime soon, then we can't do what he wants. Next step. Let's prepare for a strong attack. The chief commander hung the bank's floor plan layout back on top of the whiteboard, a pair of eyes staring at that layout, and calmly opened his mouth to speak out his plan. The voice was not loud, but majestic. As soon as these words were uttered, everyone in the command room was slightly stunned. The commander-in-chief had never been a radical person. It was also because of this. The maneuver had been going on for more than an hour until now, but the commander-in-chief had only initiated one action, the raid. But now, the raid operation had only just ended in a fiasco, and he was actually preparing to force an attack again. This was really not his style. Chief team, there are still 10 hostages in the hands of the robbers. Is it right for us to forcefully attack rashly? The small captain of the technical department frowned and pondered for a moment before looking at the chief captain and opening his mouth. All their actions had to be premised on ensuring the safety of the hostages. What's more, they were now facing the same problem as during the raid, unable to determine the location of the robbers. Rushing to launch a strong attack under such circumstances would have too low a chance of success. Once it fails, then the robbers would be enraged and the lives of the hostages would be in danger. What I said about preparing for a strong attack isn't really a strong attack. Rather, it's releasing a signal to the robbers that we're going to force an attack, and the action must be bigger so that the robbers can see what we're doing. According to Lu Ming's character, once he sees the signal that we're going to prepare for a strong attack, he will definitely start preparing a response. In this way, he won't be able to spare any time to prepare his own getaway plan. The chief commander looked at the layout map before turning to look at the group of squad leaders and speaking. When the crowd heard this, they all nodded in realization. They were all still in favor of the chief commander's move. If it was truly as the chief commander had said, Lu Ming was a cautious person, then the staged suspicion of theirs would definitely be able to do the trick. Of course, putting pressure on Lu Ming and disrupting his rhythm is only the first step. If we want to win this maneuver, the main thing is that we still have to find a way to obtain real-time information in the middle of the bank. Perhaps we can find a way to think of something from this ventilation duct. The commander-in-chief spoke again, frowning as he spoke and tapping his right hand's four knuckles on the desktop. Obviously, he hadn't figured out how this move should be made for the time being either. The bank hall. Lu Ming put away the bank layout map on the floor and lifted the watch on his wrist to look at the time. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, was lying on the bank's window observing the situation outside through the gaps between the white papers, he was mainly bored with idleness. After all, this being trapped in the middle of the bank, there was nothing at all to pass the time. This was simply a torment for Zhou Hang, a person suspected to be suffering from ADHD. Therefore, while Lu Ming was peacefully thinking about things, Zhou Hang ran to the window to kill time by observing the situation outside. But as he watched, Zhou Hang felt that something wasn't quite right. Outside the police force began to move. Zhou Hang could see many police officers began to mobilize towards a place, and there were also many heavily armed special agents among them. It seemed that they were ready to start moving again. Brother Ming, the police agents outside seemed to be making movements, and by the looks of things, they seemed to be preparing for action. As soon as Zhou Hang saw the situation, he hurriedly ran over to report to Lu Ming. Lu Ming sniffed and frowned slightly. This is somewhat out of my expectation. It seems that this chief captain is realizing something. This opponent is getting more and more interesting. Stretching his back, Lu Ming moved his neck a bit before he spoke cheerfully. According to his original thoughts, after he released the hostages, the police detail team whose raid had just failed miserably should have quieted down. The standoff situation would be at a stalemate, and he would have quite a bit of time to prepare his getaway plan. Unexpectedly, the side of the police force would actually make a move so quickly. It seems, this commander-in-chief, seems to be less controllable. The bank lobby. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang stood behind the window and looked through the gap between the white papers at the situation of the police messengers in the distance. Because it was so far away, it wasn't very clear to see. One could only barely see quite a few police messengers busy between the police cars. People were mobilizing. 
This was indeed a sign of some action. Brother Ming, if the team of police officers outside is attacking forcefully, then how should we respond? Zhou Hang looked at the situation before frowning at Lu Ming and asking out. He knew that Lu Ming was already working on preparing to get out. However, according to what Lu Ming and he had said earlier, the plan to get out should take a bit more time. Now, the police force had begun to take action. This was undoubtedly disrupting Lu Ming's rhythm. Therefore, at this moment, Zhou Hang was still more or less nervous. Even if they were preparing to make a strong attack, I'm afraid it wouldn't come so quickly. However, we'll have to get out as soon as possible as well. Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and calmly spoke in response to Zhou Hang. At the same time, turning around, he walked over towards the hostage table. His tone was calm, although the commander-in-chief had suddenly made a move, which was indeed somewhat out of Lu Ming's expectations, but he didn't seem to be very concerned. Of course, since the situation was already somewhat different from what Lu Ming had thought, the best solution was naturally to get out of the bank as soon as possible. Hearing Lu Ming's words, Zhou Hang was quite relieved. Once again looking through the gap at the situation outside the square, he also followed Lu Ming. Keep an eye on the hostages. Returning to the opposite side of the hostage table, Lu Ming lifted up the two backpacks containing gold that were placed on the floor before he looked at Zhou Hang and commanded. Got it, brother Ming. Zhou Hang sniffed and hurriedly nodded in response to Lu Ming. He didn't really know what Lu Ming was planning to do. However, he was still very clear about his positioning, and only needed to follow the orders given by Lu Ming and wait to lie down and win. Therefore even though he was a little curious about Lu Ming's actions, Zhou Hang didn't ask any questions. Lu Ming carried the two backpacks and walked in unhurriedly towards the restroom on the side of the bank hall. And this scene, naturally, Zhou Hang was not the only one who saw it. The hostage table was filled with hostages who all saw it clearly. For a long time, Lu Ming came back. He was still carrying those two black backpacks in his hands. However, anyone with a discerning eye could see that the backpacks in Lu Ming's hands were different from the previous ones. The two backpacks contained a total of 70 kilograms of gold, or 140 pounds, which was not a light weight. Lu Ming's physical fitness was very good, and it wasn't much of a problem to lift these 140 pounds. However, with such a weight in his hands, and carrying two empty backpacks, walking was naturally very different. And at this moment, Lu Ming had no intention of deliberately hiding it. Therefore this contrast was naturally even more obvious. The crowd of hostages were naturally very concerned about this 100 pounds of gold. And from the time Lu Ming lifted his backpack and walked into the toilet, almost everyone looked over. At this time, Lu Ming was suspected of returning with an empty backpack, and when all the hostages looked over, they naturally noticed this as well. And, the time between Lu Ming entering the toilet and coming out was more than 10 minutes. This was not the amount of time it took for a normal person to go to the restroom. Everyone was certain that the robbers had hidden the gold in the toilet. At this time, after Lu Ming brought back the two backpacks, he placed them in their original positions. There was a look of wanting to hide the gold. Brother Ming, those gold. Seeing this, Zhou Hang also hurriedly came up and opened his mouth in a rather worried manner. After all, he was truly afraid of losing those gold. Even if he lost one, he estimated that his wife's capital would have to be lost. Those few fallen specialists, what did you do with them? Lu Ming did not respond to his question. Instead, he raised one eyebrow and asked out seriously. Zhou Hang froze. It was as if he was surprised as to how Brother Ming could ask this all of a sudden. I just casually took their bodies, and found a room to throw them in. After all, just lying inside that aisle, the smell of blood is too heavy. Reaching out and scratching the back of his head, Zhou Hang before casually answering Lu Ming. After eliminating all six special difficulties, Zhou Hang was afraid that Lu Ming would see something. So he warned a few special difficulties before locking them all up in one of the offices. Go on them and plop down two cleaner clothes. A full set. Lu Ming nodded his head, not doubting Zhou Hang's words in the slightest, but just continued to open his mouth to explain with a serious face. Zhou Hang was baffled by Lu Ming's request. However, at this moment, he was just glad that Brother Ming hadn't noticed his own babbling, and couldn't help but feel relieved in his heart. Naturally, he couldn't be bothered to ask Lu Ming what he wanted the clothes of the fallen special agent for. At that moment, he hurriedly followed Lu Ming's request and ran to the office area. In the office, when Zhou Hang opened the door and came in, Several special duty members were sitting inside with depressed faces. They didn't talk and chat or anything like that. They were all playing dead quietly and rather honestly. After all, this was a drill that was broadcast live on the entire network. And there were quite a few people watching. By dying in battle in the middle of the maneuver, they had already been considered to have made a mistake. If they were found out again because they were uneasy to follow the rules of the drill, it was estimated that they would have to carry disciplinary action afterwards. However, after hearing Joe Hang's request, they still blew up a bit. 
What? Let us take off our clothes? A soldier can be killed, but not humiliated. I can't take off these clothes. That's. A special agent opened his mouth rather unhappily, and the remaining few people also echoed in a whisper. Obviously, for their own demise, the several special agents were a little less than convinced. At this moment, Zhou Hang still wanted them to undress, so they were naturally slightly displeased. You are already dead men. If you're not willing to take them off, then I'll come and strip them off of you myself. Since you're dead men, then lie obediently. Not to mention picking off your clothes, even if I were to pee on your heads, you'd all have to suffer for me. Zhou Hang sniffed, frowning as he stared at the several special agents and spoke viciously. He wasn't a good-tempered person either. Although in front of Lu Ming, he had acted somewhat coyly, but that was only in front of Lu Ming. For these few specialists in front of him who had already died in battle, he didn't have that much of a good face. Hearing Zhou Hang's words, the several special agents all gritted their teeth, and although they were quite upset in their hearts, however, they still followed Zhou Hang's request and took off all the clothes and equipment on their bodies. Zhou Hang selected two sets of still relatively clean ones from them and returned to the middle of the bank hall, placing the clothes beside Lu Ming. Brother Ming, it's done. These are considered the cleaner two sets. Zhou Hang looked at Lu Ming and spoke cheerfully. Lu Ming nodded a little, reaching out and grabbing a set at random, while then raising an eyebrow. These clothes, why are they still hot? He looked at Zhou Hang and squinted his eyes, speaking with a smile at the corner of his mouth. And when Zhou Hang heard this, his face instantly changed drastically. Just now, he was a little anxious, so he completely failed to notice this. This motherfucker is not have to reveal? Isn't this? This what I just held in my arms and took out? It may be stained with my body heat. Zhou Hang gulped and scratched the back of his head before speaking with a slightly embarrassed smile. Oh. Lu Ming sniffed and just nodded casually in response. It didn't seem like he cared very much. He took the set of clothes and then directly got up and walked towards the restroom. Seeing the way Lu Ming didn't look suspicious, Zhou Hang couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief, secretly sighing in his heart at his own resourcefulness. However, he couldn't help but be a bit suspicious. Why had Brother Ming become a bit easy to fool lately? He had casually lied to himself, and he had believed it just like that? But on second thought, right now, Brother Ming's mind should be on his plan to get away, so naturally he didn't have any extra thoughts to think too much. And didn't this also prove Brother Ming's trust in himself? His own random panic, Brother Ming even so believed, he almost unconditionally believed in himself, but he was lying to him from beginning to end. For a time, Zhou Hang still had some guilty feelings in his heart of having failed Lu Ming's trust. Live streaming room, while Zhou Hang was still filled with guilt, the pot had already exploded in the live broadcast room. Crap! Isn't Lu Ming a highly intelligent robber? How did Zhou Hang get rid of him with this one sentence? The temperature on that shirt. Is it something that can be muffled in such a short period of time? That's right. Even I couldn't fool the excuse. Lu Ming even believed it. This high IQ robber's name doesn't live up to its name. You guys say it's possible that Lu Ming actually found out that this was just a drill a long time ago, but didn't say it out loud. Listen to you guys so analyze. Feel very likely ah. Dare Lu Ming found out after not say out. In this play with Zhou Hang play? Ha ha. If that's the case, it would really be too interesting. Zhou Hang thought he had tricked Lu Ming, but it turned out that he was the one being played by Lu Ming, laughing me to death. Zhou Hang said, never thought that I would be just that clown. This thing is developing more and more interestingly. And it's true that watching these highly intelligent people battle it out is even more exciting than watching a cinema blockbuster. But now I'm more curious about how Lu Ming is planning to get out of the bank. It feels like it's still hard to get away. After all, the bank is still surrounded by police officers. It's a dead end any way you look at it. You guys can't figure it out. It doesn't mean that Lu Ming doesn't have a way. The title of highly intelligent robber is not called for nothing. That's right. Just watch the live broadcast quietly and wait to see Lu Ming's operation. The number of pop-ups surged by a wave. Obviously for Lu Ming's casual and perfunctory response like that, Zhou Hang thought he had muddled through. But most of the viewers in the live broadcast room could see the signs. For a moment, the viewers looked back and speculated whether Lu Ming had already guessed the reality of the maneuver. After all, in terms of Lu Ming's performance in the middle of this maneuver, he was indeed a smart person. It wasn't like Zhou Hang was able to casually muddle through with these few words. And if Lu Ming knew that this was an exercise, then the robber's side could be dramatic. Zhou Hang's clownish image naturally jumped off the page. Bank toilet. After Lu Ming came in with a set of clothes for a special task force member, he walked to the men's restroom. And on the floor here, there was a large pile of golden gold piled up. This gold had long since been wrapped into two piles by Lu Ming with duct tape. Previously, Lu Ming had entered the restroom and stayed here for more than 10 minutes, and he had not been idle during this time. Instead, he had used the tape to wrap up all the gold. Coming in at this time, 
Taking off his own clothes, the gold that was wrapped up with the tape was then placed over himself like soft armor. Only at last did he put on the clothes and equipment of the special duty crew on the outside. Walking over to the mirror on the sink, Lu Ming looked at himself in the mirror. The heavily armed special agent equipment covered himself up tightly, only revealing his two eyes. Although he wore a soft armor put together with gold bars inside his clothes, it was only slightly bloated, and he couldn't tell too much of a difference without looking closely. For all of this, Lu Ming was still relatively satisfied. Lu Ming exited the restroom and returned to the opposite side of the hostage table amidst Zhou Hang's measuring gaze, carrying 70 pounds of weight. This was nothing for veterans like Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Although movement was indeed somewhat restricted, it was not a big problem. Go to the restroom and change into these clothes. On the floor of the men's restroom, there's gold that I've already wrapped around. Hide the gold amongst your clothes and don't be seen. Lu Ming walked to Zhou Hang's side and spoke in a voice that only two people could hear. Zhou Hang sniffed. A pair of eyes were filled with a shocked look. Obviously he hadn't completely expected Lu Ming to be prepared to use such a method to take the gold away. Brother Ming, you can rest assured that I'll do the job. Zhou Hang nimbly stood up from the floor and patted his chest to pack his ticket before he cheerfully took the special bad clothes and equipment and walked towards the restroom. And during this time, Lu Ming didn't stand still. His gaze looked towards the hostage table, sizing up the crowd of hostages. For a moment, he selected six people from the remaining ten hostages. Having been held hostage in the middle of the bank for such a long time, these hostages had seen the robber in front of them kill hostages and specialists, although they had not seen the bodies with their own eyes. However, a group of hostages were extremely fearful of the robber in front of them. Those chosen few hostages, not knowing what awaited them next, all had an expression that was almost crying out. You six, I can let you leave next, but before leaving, I still have a little something I need your help with. Lu Ming's exposed pair of eyes looked calm as he stared at the group of hostages and coldly spoke. Hearing these words, the few hostages that were chosen all showed joyful expressions. However, they didn't dare to show too much. After all, the robber in front of him was temperamental, so maybe if he showed too much obviousness, he would suddenly backtrack again? Lu Ming lifted Zhou Hang's backpack that was loaded with weapons and equipment, and pulled out the two robber's hoods that he had used before, as well as a drill remote control bomb. He took the hoods and put them on the heads of the two hostages he had selected. Can drive, right? He looked at one of the hostages that he had put the headgear on, and calmly opened his mouth to ask out. Yes, that hostage sniffed and hurriedly nodded his head frantically in response like a chicken pecking at rice. Very good. Lu Ming nodded with a smile. Immediately afterward, he wrapped the drill-specific remote-controlled bomb with duct tape, tightly wrapping it amongst the hostage's clothes. He wrapped it so tightly that he almost used half a roll of tape. It was estimated that without three to five minutes, this bomb could not be dismantled. This is a remote control bomb. As long as I press the remote control in my hand, he will explode. With this dose, it should be more than enough to blow you in two. Later I will let you out of the bank. Take them to get on that one Chinese bus. Remember that after you get on the bus, hurry up and drive out. Don't stop for anyone who stops you. After all, as soon as you stop, I'll press the remote. This remote control sensing range is 500 meters. As long as you drive out to a distance of 500 meters, you'll be safe. Understand? Lu Ming's pair of eyes stared tightly at the hostage as he spoke coldly. As he spoke, he shook the remote control in his hand. When that hostage heard this, with an expression worse than tears, he frantically nodded his head at Lu Ming, indicating that he understood. P.S. The plan to get away is different from the last book. These two days should be able to finish writing the evacuation from the bank. I hope you can support it more. Don't be too nervous. As long as you follow what I say, I guarantee you'll survive. Lu Ming looked at the trembling hostage, patted his shoulder and spoke cheerfully. His tone was gentle, and his brows were smiling as he spoke. It was like an adult coaxing a small child in an amiable manner. However, the more he looked like this, the more fearful that hostage was in his heart. After all, a murderous robber smiling at you, just put it on most people. They would probably feel trembling. But after Lu Ming finished speaking, he didn't pay any more attention to the hostage. He turned around and walked to the entrance of the bank, and through the gap between the white papers, he looked over towards the team of police officers outside the square. Behind the police cars, it was still vaguely possible to see quite a few police officers being busy. Lu Ming raised an eyebrow, a few hints of doubt appearing on his face. If he was preparing a strong attack, there was no need to make such a big fuss, right? After all, if there was such a big commotion, wouldn't he be afraid to find out? Not to mention, for such a long time, the personnel had been showing signs of mobilization. Could the operational deployment of a strong attack operation take so long? This is beating the bushes to scare the snakes nah. It's a bit interesting. You're spooking the snakes. 
so I'll do a move to lure the wolves into the house. Lu Ming murmured to himself, a faint smile on his face. After another glance, he turned around and prepared to return over to the hostage table. And at this moment, Zhou Hang had also already changed into his special difficulties equipment and walked out of the restroom, similarly wrapped up tightly, only revealing his two eyes. If he didn't know that he was Zhou Hang, I'm afraid that if he passed in front of him, he wouldn't be able to recognize him. In response to this, Lu Ming was still very satisfied. After all, this was the effect he wanted. Brother Ming, how is it? Handsome, isn't it? Zhou Hang looked at Lu Ming from afar and spoke cheerfully. As he spoke, he also stretched out his right hand and made a shooting gesture at Lu Ming. Obviously, after putting on the special equipment, Zhou Hang was very confident. It was as if he felt that his face value and temperament had risen a few steps. Handsome, this headgear, just enough to cover up all the ugliness on your face, except for your eyes which are still slightly obscene. Everything else is fine. Lu Ming looked at Zhou Hang and smiled as he opened his mouth to make a flirtatious comment. Lu Ming was actually a person with a rather stuffy nature, and rarely joked with others. It was only when faced with a close friend like Zhou Hang that he would occasionally say a few words. Eh? And after hearing Lu Ming's words, Zhou Hang was instantly somewhat speechless. This set of extraordinarily poor equipment had already covered himself up tightly, just revealing his two eyes. Yet Lu Ming said that other than his eyes being somewhat obscene, everything else was fine. Feeling that apart from his handsome clothes, he was useless, right? He skimmed his mouth. Zhou Hang was slightly upset in his heart. All right, get down to business. Take the clothes we changed out of over there, and from the six specialists who died in battle, choose two who are about the same size as us, and give them the clothes to change into. Lu Ming walked next to Zhou Hang and spoke in a low voice. Obviously, he didn't want his voice at the moment to be heard by a group of hostages, so he tried to lower his voice as much as possible. Brother Ming, what are you? Zhou Hang raised one eyebrow and spoke in a rather puzzled whisper. Regarding Lu Ming's series of planned deployments, he was truly somewhat unable to understand them. He really couldn't figure out how exactly Lu Ming was planning to get away. If we want to get rid of the golden cicada, this shell has to stay, right? Give them the clothes to change into, and the people don't need to be brought out first. Lu Ming spoke calmly, responding to Zhou Hang. Oh, Zhou Hang nodded with a look of realization, responded to Lu Ming, and followed what Lu Ming said. Actually, Zhou Hang still didn't hear too much of what Lu Ming meant, but Lu Ming had explained it all to him. There were so many viewers watching in the live broadcast room, if he still acted like he didn't understand, wouldn't he be exposing his intelligence? Therefore, even if he half understood, Zhou Hang could only pretend to understand. Live streaming room, watching Lu Ming's series of maneuvers, the audience was also frantically discussing. Say, how exactly is Lu Ming planning to get out of this? Did any of the bigwigs in the live streaming room see it? I can't understand it, but it looks pretty awesome. I'm actually inexplicably confident in Lu Ming, this highly intelligent robber, hiding gold inside his clothes. Has Lu Ming done smuggling before? This is completely door to door. Ha ha. You say that, you're reminded of the news you saw before. A person with dozens of fruit cell phones wrapped around his body smuggling. Guess Lu Ming did get his inspiration from smuggling, but with 70 pounds of gold wrapped around each of them, their actions don't seem to have been affected much. It's quite bullish. Looking at the information on the police team's side, these two people are both veterans. Their physical qualities are definitely not comparable to ordinary people. Carrying 70 pounds of weight is really nothing. Although I also quite like Lu Ming, this highly intelligent robber, but it feels like he wants to get away from the bank. The chances are still not great. Indeed, the front and back doors of the bank are surrounded by police officers. I feel that Lu Ming has no hope of getting away. Brothers, open a betting hand. Within an hour, one to five if Lu Ming can successfully get away. One to one. One if Lu Ming is trapped in the bank. Although I believe in Lu Ming, I'll bet five packs of chili fries that Lu Ming is trapped in the bank. I also believe in Lu Ming. I'll bet 100 fish coins that Lu Ming is trapped in the bank. Ditto. Follow one hand. Ha ha. You people, you say you believe in people, but your bets are honest. The pop-ups were overwhelming, and the live broadcast room was buzzing with activity. With a large number of online viewers and a high level of enthusiasm in the audience's discussions, the heat value of the live broadcast room was naturally higher. And with a high heat value, the platform would give better recommended positions, and more people would come in the live room. This formed a cycle, allowing the number of people in the robber's perspective live room to keep climbing. At this time, the number of online viewers of the live room has reached 300,000 out of the top, becoming one of the top streaming live room of the platform. And this exercise, at this time is no longer just a live fire. Live quite a few clips were cut into small videos, everywhere crazy, a time, almost the whole network everywhere, can see the drill live. 
high IQ robber Lu Ming such words, the degree of fire can be imagined. Of course, at this time, Lu Ming, Zhou Hang, and the commander-in-chief, who were in the middle of the maneuvers, did not know about all of this, outside the bank square, the temporary command room of the police team. The chief commander and a group of squad leaders were gathered around the table at this time, discussing the next step in the plan. After deciding to look for a bit of a breakthrough through the ventilation ducts, they discussed quite a few plans. In the end, it was better to try to use a remote-controlled vehicle carrying a camera to reach above the bank from the ventilation ducts and film the situation in the middle of the bank. In fact, the remote-controlled remotely operated unmanned equipment, in terms of filming effect, naturally the drone was the best. But, the propeller as well as the motor used by the drone doomed it to that chainsaw-like noise that could not be disguised. Passing through the ventilation ducts, it would be a complete impossibility to not attract the attention of the robbers. Therefore, after the commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders deliberated, it was decided to use a remote-controlled vehicle to try and bring the camera into the bank through the ventilation ducts. As long as the real-time location of the robbers in the bank could be obtained, this maneuver would be far too simple if they wanted to kill the robbers. However, just at this time, the walkie-talkie that Lu Ming and the commander-in-chief had been in single-line contact with. However, there was a commotion that came from the walkie-talkie. The chief commander and the group of squad leaders were all slightly stunned. Then they all frowned and quieted down. Chief commander, I'm a little tired of staying in the middle of the bank. I'm going to take the four hostages and drive away. As for the remaining hostages in the middle of the bank, they will be given to you. By the way, after I drive away from the bank, I don't want to see police cars within 300 meters. Otherwise the consequences will be extremely serious. In the intercom, Looming's calm voice rang out. The gentle tone paired with the unhurried speed of speech was like a casual conversation between friends. However, in that last sentence, however, it was also full of threatening implications. When the commander-in-chief heard this, a slightly grave expression appeared on his face, and without hesitation, he grabbed the intercom on the table. As long as you don't harm the hostages, I can agree to your demands. Pressing the talk button, the commander-in-chief opened his mouth to respond in a calm tone. He didn't think Lu Ming would actually get into the car. After all, he had considered this before. In his eyes, it was highly likely that this one vehicle was just a blindfold for Lu Ming. Very well. That's right. Have all your people pay some attention and be careful that their guns don't go off. After all, if your guns go off and scare me and my brother, it's hard for me to guarantee how many people will have to die. Lu Ming's response sounded once again from within the intercom. This time, his tone was a few points colder, no longer as gentle and threatening as before. Don't worry. Since it's all been promised to you, I can naturally ensure that you get on the bus unharmed. The commander-in-chief raised one eyebrow and opened his mouth to respond with a calm expression. His words fell. The walkie-talkie fell into silence. And when Lu Ming didn't speak again, the chief commander also placed the walkie-talkie back on the table. Lu Ming is this preparing, to sound out the east and strike the west? Attracting all of our attention to the center bus and then escaping from somewhere else himself? It was only after Lu Ming and the chief commander's communication ended that the special duty squad leader reached out and scratched his brow, opening his mouth in confusion. According to the chief commander's previous summary and deduction, to come to this Chinese bus was only Lu Ming's attempt to make the police squad think that he was going to drive away. Now it seemed, this possibility was really not small. After all, if Lu Ming was truly prepared to drive away, why would he need to notify the police force in advance? Just to say a few threatening words to deter them? This was unlikely. After all, he directly took the hostage and opened the door to walk out of the bank. To beat the police team a surprise this is not better? By notifying the police force in advance. Wouldn't this give the police force time to prepare? But if it's a sound east strike, then where would Lu Ming's real escape route be? The front and back of the bank are filled with our men. This Lu Ming should also know very well. He can't just grow wings and fly. Another squad leader also raised an eyebrow and spoke in a rather puzzled manner. At those words, the rest of them were also slightly silent clearly pondering this question as well. Is it possible that this isn't a sound bite, but is actually a ploy to move the tiger away from the mountain? He just said that he would bring four people on the center bus, which means a total of six people. If all six people are hostages, then there will be four hostages left in the bank. Lu Ming wants to draw all of our attention to the minibus away from the bank, and when the siege blockade outside the bank becomes weak, he will then hold the remaining hostages to find a chance to break through? Another squad leader pondered for a moment and also frowned as he voiced out his thoughts. The rest of them nodded at his words, obviously agreeing more with him. At this moment, the commander-in-chief reached out and knocked on the table. Only after interrupting the crowd's discussion did he open his mouth with a serious face. Regardless of whether it's sounding out the east and striking the west, or transferring the tiger away from the mountain, 
The short answer is that the chances of the two robbers, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, getting on the train are not very high. Therefore our main focus doesn't need to be too much on the car. Of course, Lu Ming is an extremely cunning person. So it's unlikely that he's prepared to get on the car mixed in with the hostages. Therefore later on, everyone keep their eyes open and watch the people who get on the car. That's right. Have the snipers in your special duty squad be more vigilant. Observe everyone coming out of the bank. And if there are any suspected robbers, report back at the first opportunity. As for what exactly Lu Ming is playing, we just need to guard the bank and we'll always know. The chief commander opened his mouth in a proper voice, speaking with extreme seriousness. It made the people present not dare to be sloppy. Yes, the words fell. The people in the temporary command room all hurriedly responded in unison. Five minutes later, the doors of the bank slowly opened. After the chief commander and the others received the news, they rushed outside the cordon at the first time. It wasn't long. Several people walked out from the middle of the bank. The cordon was some distance away from the bank's gate. Therefore, although the commander-in-chief and the others standing outside the cordon could see the situation at the bank's gate, they could not see the faces clearly. The commander-in-chief picked up his binoculars and frowned as he looked over. Among the few people who came out, two were wearing robber hoods. The rest had a piece of white paper taped to their faces, only to gouge out a few holes in the white paper, revealing their eyes as well as their noses. None of the six people could see their faces. This Lu Ming has some small tricks up his sleeve. The chief commander spoke with a calm expression. The words fell. He handed the binoculars in his hand to the special duty squad leader next to him and spoke. Take a look. The special duty squad leader nodded, receiving the binoculars. He also looked at the few people that came out from within the bank over there. For males and two females, although they all have their faces covered, from the height and build, only the two wearing hoods are somewhat similar to the robbers. But a few people walked. Their movements were very unnatural and a bit stiff, obviously very scared in their hearts. The two wearing hoods are carrying backpacks. Looking at that movement, it seems that the backpacks are some weight. While looking at it, the special duty squad leader calmly opened his mouth and said all of his findings. The commander-in-chief nodded calmly at his words. Obviously, he had also noticed all that the special chai squad leader had said. Do you think those two will be Lu Ming and Zhou Hang? Only after the special difficulty squad leader put down his binoculars did the chief commander calmly ask out. Not like that. According to our information, Lu Ming's height is at 182 and his weight is 75 kilograms. There's still a bit of a difference in the size of these two people. Zhou Hang is 175 tall and weighs 70 kilograms. It's somewhat similar to those two. But those two people with hoods, that stiffness that they show because of fear doesn't look like they're faking it. I feel that they should all be hostages. It's just that the backpacks they're carrying are obviously not light. I just don't know what's inside. The special duty squad leader first shook his head, and then spoke out his thoughts. The commander-in-chief also nodded at his words. What the squad leader had summarized was similar to what he had thought. Although the few people who came out from the middle of the bank had their faces covered, the chief commander could also conclude that the chances of the robbers mixing in were extremely low. Only, what was contained in that backpack, this was indeed impossible to figure out. Of course, there was a high possibility that that backpack was just one of the means the robbers used to confuse them. Although the chances of the robbers getting mixed up in it are very low, but we can't let our guard down. Send someone to follow the car. And the comrades on the technical department's side are also plugged into the SkyEye system to monitor the vehicle's travel route as it leaves. Even if Lu Ming didn't get into the car, we can't let this car slip away. The chief commander opened his mouth to give the order after staring at the bank side for a few seconds. Lu Ming was an uncomplicated opponent. Therefore, even if the possibility of the robbers mixing in with a few people was only 1 in 10,000, the chief commander couldn't let this Chinese bus slip away. At this moment, the bank's gate was still open and not closed. Looking at the bank with the open door, the chief commander frowned with a grave expression. Lu Ming was preparing to put on a full show? In order to pretend that he was amongst the several people who had exited the bank, he had even left the bank's doors open? With the bank's doors open like that, this was an opportunity for the police force team to make a strong attack. However, how could the cautious Lu Ming give the police force such a great opportunity? What kind of scheme is this Lu Ming playing? Chief team, based on observation, among these few people, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang should not be among them. The snipers didn't report on the situation either. Then are we basically certain that the robbers are still in the bank at this time? Watching the six people in the distance slowly walking towards the place where the Chinese bus was parked, the special duty squad leader raised one eyebrow and looked at the commander-in-chief to open his mouth. After observing and analyzing, they had been able to basically determine that the chances of the robbers being mixed in with the six people that came out of the middle of the bank were slim to none. And, 
The commander-in-chief also explained early in the morning that if any of the snipers on the sniper's side found any suspected robbers among the people coming out of the bank, they would report back at the first opportunity. And until this moment, snipers have not reported the situation. This means that several snipers also did not find anything unusual. If anything, the squad leader and the commander-in-chief utilized binoculars to observe. The details might not be very clear to see. However, the professional magnification lens on the sniper rifle had ultra-high precision, so it was naturally able to see all sorts of details clearly, and the sniper side didn't find any problems. This will be able to basically determine, from the bank out of the six people, all are hostages, the real robbers were still in the bank. Do you think Lu Ming would think that such a low-level tactic could fool us? The commander-in-chief frowned slightly and did not answer the special duty squad leader's question. Instead, he narrowed his eyes and asked out a rhetorical question. Upon hearing this, the special difficulty squad leader was also slightly stunned. He frowned deeply, as if he was seriously thinking about the commander-in-chief's question. Since Lu Ming used such a means, he must have hoped that it would work, right? After pondering for a few moments, the special duty squad leader spoke with a frown. It was mainly because the chief commander's question was a bit strange. He somewhat didn't quite understand what the chief commander meant by asking this. Lu Ming is a cautious and intelligent man. Since he is a smart person, then he shouldn't treat his opponents as fools either. The six people who came out from the middle of the bank, as long as they were more careful, it wasn't hard to see that the robbers weren't among them. Since that's the case, then it seems like it would become pointless for him to do so. But Lu Ming still did it. And after the six people came out, no one closed the bank's doors until now. Is this trying to intentionally create the illusion that the robbers were among those six people? And now that there are no robbers inside the bank, no one is closing the gate? If Lu Ming really thinks this way, isn't this treating us like fools? The chief commander took a deep breath of cool air before he frowned and spoke unhurriedly. As he spoke, his face was filled with a puzzled expression. Obviously, for what Lu Ming was selling in his gourd, the chief commander really couldn't figure it out. At this time, the bank's doors were still open. However, looking in from the far open door outside, the site was blocked by the pillars, and the location of the hostages and robbers in the bank was still not visible. Hearing the words of the commander-in-chief, the special duty squad leader also nodded his head quite approvingly. He turned his head to look at the six people who were walking towards the Chinese bus, narrowing his eyes and sizing them up. Lu Ming's move was just too easy to see through, but he did it anyway. This was becoming somewhat suspicious. What exactly is Lu Ming doing all this for? The commander-in-chief sucked in a breath of cool air, his brow deeply furrowed with worry. Obviously, figuring out the mind of Lu Ming, this opponent, was really causing the chief commander quite a headache. The main thing was that this person was strange, so strange that it gave the chief commander a feeling of not being able to figure it out. Chief commander, one of the surveillance cameras in the middle of the bank, has a picture. Just at this moment, a police officer from the technical department suddenly ran behind the commander-in-chief and opened his mouth with an excited face to report the situation. At those words, on the faces of the chief commander as well as a group of squad leaders, expressions of delight surfaced. After all, this could be considered a huge unexpected joy for the police messenger team. You keep an eye here. Don't block the car when it leaves. Remember the people sent to follow the car. Try to keep the distance the robbers requested. Although the robbers are not in the car, but to ensure everything is safe, the car must not be lost. Everything is also according to what the robbers requested before. The chief commander turned back and looked at the special duty squad leader to explain a few times, and then he hurriedly turned around with excitement and walked quickly towards the technology department's caravan. After all, the surveillance cameras in the middle of the bank had the footage. Then the special police team would be able to obtain the real-time situation in the bank, as a way to determine the location of the robbers, or even directly forcefully attack and end the maneuver. The technology department caravan. At this moment, several technicians were sitting in front of the operating desk. Above the console, there were several displays hanging, which were connected to the signals of several surveillance cameras in the bank's lobby. Previously, after Lu Ming had used white paper to block the cameras, the images on the displays were all white. At this time, on one of the displays, the picture finally appeared. For a moment, the people in the caravan were all quite exuberant. After all, being able to see the situation in the middle of the bank through the surveillance screen, this undoubtedly provided a huge opportunity for the police team. What is the situation now? The chief commander walked to the door of the caravan, and his voice came in before the person even entered the caravan. A few of the technical department's police constables stood up at the sound of his voice. Only after watching the chief commander come in did one of the police agents take a step forward and open his mouth to report the situation. One of the surveillance cameras suddenly got a picture, and it seems that the white paper that the robbers used to cover the camera fell off. Looking at the current situation, 
The robbers shouldn't have realized it yet. That police officer's face was filled with a look of excitement that was hard to hide, and he reported the situation in as short a sentence as possible. While the chief commander listened to his report, a pair of eyes had already looked at the display with the picture. Indeed, from the monitoring time shown on the display screen, the picture was exactly the real-time situation in the middle of the bank. The camera is facing the location where the robbers placed the hostages, that is, the four people whose front faces we can clearly see. Through face matching, we were able to determine that they were all bank staff held hostage by the robbers. As for the lower left corner of the screen, these two people who can only see some backs, their clothes match the robbers' clothes, although they can't see the front faces, they should be the robbers. While the commander-in-chief was staring at the surveillance screen, that police messenger spoke again, reporting their findings at this moment. Can't see the robber's front face? The chief commander was originally elated, but after hearing this, he frowned slightly and murmured, can't see the front face. That is to say, it was impossible to be 100% sure that the two figures that could only be seen on the surveillance screen were the robbers. There were originally 15 hostages in the bank, and the robbers had killed one and released four, which meant that there were still 10 left. That is to say, the bank plus the robbers still left 12 people. At this time from the bank out of six, the bank inside the remaining six, the number is right. If the six that came out didn't have robbers, and the four that faced the camera did a face-to-face -face comparison and determined that they were indeed hostages, then the two backs were indeed the robbers. However, at this time, the bank door was open, and the white paper covering the camera suddenly fell, and it was still facing the camera at the position of the robbers' backs. Isn't this all too much of a coincidence? Everything seemed to be luring the chief commander to hurry up and give the order to forcefully attack the bank. Is this a mistake? Or a trap by looming? Looking at the surveillance screen, the chief commander murmured, a national face filled with a grave expression. Lu Ming was a cautious and highly intelligent robber. Everything at the moment, one after another, the robbers gave the police police team a chance. This was truly abnormal. Chief team, this is a good opportunity. There are only four hostages left in the bank, and we were able to determine the location of the robbers through the surveillance cameras. The most important thing is that the bank's doors are still open. If we launch a strong attack at this moment, we can completely catch the robbers off guard. One of the squad leaders stood behind the commander-in-chief, also looking at the surveillance images on that display, and spoke with extreme excitement. The other squad leaders beside him nodded their heads and opened their mouths to agree with him. Indeed, judging from the situation at this moment, a heavenly opportunity was placed in front of the police squad, as long as the commander-in-chief swiftly gave the order, and the police squad launched a strong attack with thunderous means, everything would be able to come to an end. However, at this moment in time, the chief commander was frowning deeply, with a grave expression on his face. He took in a deep breath of cool air, hands wrapped around his body in front of him, a pair of deep eyes staring at the surveillance picture on that screen, the fingers of his right hand tapping on his left arm, as if he was deliberating. Chief team, is there anything wrong? While the crowd of squad leaders were excitedly discussing, they naturally noticed the reaction of the chief commander. At that moment, a squad leader looked at the chief commander and rather doubtfully opened his mouth to ask out. These words rang out. The rest of them also quieted down and looked at the chief commander who was deliberating. A huge opportunity was right in front of them, but the chief commander hesitated. So the crowd was naturally a bit puzzled. Do you guys feel that this opportunity is too perfect? So perfect that it seems like it was carefully designed. A group of hostages just came out in the middle of the bank, the door was left open, and the white paper covering the surveillance camera even fell down. Everything seems like it was carefully prepared. When things go wrong, there must be a demon. The commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air before slowly speaking out the doubts in his heart. Indeed, everything seemed like it was carefully designed. It was like a trap, luring the police team to step inside. Chief team, is it possible that Lu Ming and the others were actually mixed in with the six people who exited the bank? Is that why he orchestrated all of this? So that we would set our sights back on the bank and then drive away? One of the squad leaders was silent for a moment before opening his mouth to speculate. After hearing what the commander-in-chief had just said, the crowd obviously reacted as well. The seemingly huge opportunity indeed gave off too deliberate a feeling. The traces of the arrangement were too heavy, making people cautious. This is impossible. All six people we have carefully observed. The chances of the robbers being mixed in are very small. At least for the six people who came out of the bank, there was no one whose height and build could match up with Lu Ming. We're pretty sure of that. What's more, even if we put our attention back to the bank, we've sent no small amount of police force to keep an eye on the Chinese bus. Even if there was a possibility that Lu Ming was on the bus, he wouldn't be able to escape. The chief commander shook his head slightly, calmly opening his mouth to negate this statement. 
The six people who got on the bus out of the bank didn't have a robber. This was something the chief commander could still be certain of. Chief team, then is it possible that it is just a coincidence? The robbers opened the bank door. The door was not closed. The wind blew in to blow off the white paper covering the camera. This is also possible. As for why it happened to be this angle of the camera, could it just be because this camera happens to deal with air convection? Another squad leader frowned and spoke tentatively. The words came out. The rest of them looked at that surveillance screen and pondered for a moment, and many of them still nodded in agreement. As far as the surveillance image was concerned, the viewpoint of this camera was really facing the direction of the gate, so this inference of his was not impossible. We can only hope that it's a coincidence. The commander-in-chief sniffed, and his brows also stretched for a few moments as he murmured to himself, if everything really was a coincidence, then it would really be true that even the heavens were on their side, blowing off the white paper on the camera and creating such a big opportunity for the police patrol team. In any case, at this point, we can determine the location of the hostages, and this is the perfect opportunity to free them. The bank door is still open, which is also extremely favorable for us to launch a strong attack operation. Even if these two figures whose faces cannot be seen are not the robbers, as long as we can free all the hostages, then no matter where the robbers are hiding in the bank, catching them will no longer be a problem. Prepare for a strong attack to free the hostages. The commander-in-chief stared at the monitor screen for a few seconds in silence, before letting out a long breath of turbid air. Immediately afterward, with a serious expression, he opened his mouth in a proper voice to give the order. Right now was indeed an excellent opportunity to free the hostages. So even if it was a trap set up by Lu Ming, then he had to step on it. After all, indecisiveness won't get you anywhere. In the face of such an opportunity, as the highest decision maker of the police force, he had to make an immediate decision. He couldn't let such an opportunity pass by in front of his eyes. Yes, hearing this, the group of squad leaders excitedly responded in unison to the commander-in-chief and rushed off to make preparations. In the technical department's caravan, only the chief commander and a few technicians were left standing here. While the chief commander gritted his teeth, his pair of eyes still staring tightly at the monitoring image on that screen, because earlier in order to make the plan of releasing the strong attack signal to the robbers a bit more real, on the side of the police team, the personnel had been mobilized according to the deployment of the real strong arm attack operation. Therefore, at this time, if they wanted to launch a strong attack operation, they didn't need much time to prepare. On the other hand, on the side of the special duty squad leader, after watching the six people who came out of the bank get into the car, and after arranging the deployment of the chief commander, he also rushed back to the technical department's caravan. Commander-in-chief, as per your request, people have been sent to follow from afar. How is the situation over here? When he entered the technical department's caravan, the special duty squad leader saw the chief commander who was standing behind the console with a grave expression on his face. He hurriedly went forward to report the situation, while then opened his mouth to inquire about the situation over here with concern. What can be identified on the screen are the four remaining hostages in the bank. This corner can't see the front face. According to the clothes, it's suspected to be robbers. I'm preparing to launch a strong attack within three minutes. What do you think? Looking back at the special duty squad leader, the chief commander pointed to the surveillance image on the screen and talked to him about the situation. Of course, speaking so clearly, the chief commander naturally also wanted to ask the special difference squad leader for his opinion. Although the deployment order for the strong attack had already been given, however, at this time, the commander-in-chief's heart was still somewhat hesitant. After all, with the example of the previous raid that failed miserably and the six special duty squad members who were killed in action, it made the chief commander unable to help but deliberate when faced with the seemingly almost perfect opportunity in front of him. Lu Ming was a cautious man. Would such a cautious person really accidentally expose such a great opportunity to the police special forces team? After all, the current situation. Lu Ming had surrendered himself and was standing inside the bank waiting for the police force to arrest him. How could this not make the chief commander feel that there was a fraud in all of this? Chief commander, you feel something is wrong? Hearing the commander-in-chief's words, the special police squad leader raised his eyebrows and opened his mouth to ask. Simply from the chief commander's grave expression, the special difference squad leader was able to see the worry in the chief finger's heart. Indeed something is not right. Unable to see the front face. There is no way for us to be 100% certain that these two figures are the robbers. What if they are not robbers? The commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air and reached out to scratch the top of his eyebrows before speaking in a serious tone. This was the point he was most worried about. If he was able to see the robbers' front faces and determine that these two people were Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, he wouldn't have thought so much. But if they aren't robbers, who else could they be? Counting the people in the bank, there should only be six left plus the robbers. Isn't this just six? And this? These two bags, 
Aren't they the bags we packed with gold to give to the robbers? The stolen money is all here. The robbers can't even not want the stolen money, right? The special agent squad leader frowned and opened his mouth. As he spoke, he also reached out and pointed to the two bags that were not easily noticeable in the corner of the surveillance screen. The commander-in-chief sniffed and moved over to take a closer look at the picture on that screen. Indeed, those two bags were obviously the bags that contained the gold before. The robbers were besieged in the bank and were simply in no condition to conjure up two identical bags. Hopefully, I'm overthinking it. The chief commander stared at the two bags on the floor in the middle of the surveillance screen for a moment. Only then did he raise one eyebrow and spoke in a deep voice. He still felt that something wasn't quite right, but at this moment, noticing that the two bags containing the gold were right next to the two men whose faces couldn't be seen, dispelled some of the doubts in his heart. Chief Team, the deployment of the strong attack operation is ready. Just at this moment, a squad leader walked into the caravan and looked at the commander-in-chief to report the situation. The chief commander nodded. While taking a deep breath of cool air, he no longer thought much about it. Take action. Have the brothers take care of their safety. The robbers have heavy weapons on them. The first time you determine the identity of the robbers, make sure to shoot them down. Don't give them any chance. The chief commander looked at that squad leader and opened his mouth to give the order for action. Yes, that squad leader sniffed and responded with a salute at the same time. And then he hurriedly turned around to convey the action order. As the special duty squad leader watched all of this, he couldn't help but frown, his face slightly lost. Originally, he was prepared to request to the commander in chief to let him lead this strong attack operation. After all, Lu Ming, this kid had eliminated six of his own special duty team members during the previous raid, and the special duty squad leader had remembered this grudge. He really wanted to kill Lu Ming with his own hands in the middle of the maneuver. However, he was still wearing his regular uniform, and the raid was about to begin. So waiting for himself to change into his combat uniform would definitely delay him. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity like this in the middle of the bank would not wait for him. Therefore, he didn't open this mouth either. Of course, this kind of raid operation surely also by their own special duty squad members to carry out, as long as the operation goes well, can rescue the hostages and end the maneuver. Whether or not it was Lu Ming that he personally killed, it was not so important. Live broadcast. Watching the commander-in-chief open his mouth and give the order for the strong attack operation, the audience was also instantly active. Has it finally started? Operation Strong Attack. If this is preparation for the final showdown? Why do I feel that Lu Ming and his two robbers have made a few too many mistakes this time? Didn't you guys brag about Lu Ming being a highly intelligent robber? Why can't you get it up now? That said, have any viewers who have seen the robber's viewpoint come to explain how I feel that this is all a trap for Lu Ming? The commander-in-chief obviously felt that something was wrong, but with such a good opportunity in front of him, he still had to make a move to free the hostages. To be honest, quite like this chief commander, I hope that this drill, the police duty team can win. A robber who has always been cautious but suddenly gave so many opportunities one after another. This really seems like a trap. The commander-in-chief is also helpless, although he can sense that there is a trap, but this is a good opportunity to free the hostages, so he has to try. Just came from the hijacker's perspective live broadcast, this really isn't much of a trap. These hostages the chief commander is surely able to successfully rescue them. I have to say, Lu Ming is really too bullish, completely pinching the commander-in-chief seven inches. Letting the commander-in-chief completely follow his preconceived notions ah. Indeed, if you want to say that Lu Ming didn't steal the script of the police dispatcher team, I really don't believe it. This is more than a look at stealing the questions. The commander-in-chief's performance was very good, but it's because Lu Ming is too cunning. The pop-ups were scrolling rapidly. The heat of the police messenger's perspective live room was not as hot as the robber's perspective live room, but the number of online viewers had also reached over 80. 000 people. Many viewers posted pop-ups to discuss, and naturally, it was lively. The hijacker's side suddenly gave the police team such a big chance, and many viewers in the live broadcast room also felt that there was something fishy. But for the chief commander's decision, it was also still relatively favorable. After all, what was in front of the police team at this time was indeed an excellent opportunity to rescue the hostages. In the face of such an opportunity, as police officers, they naturally could not let it go. Ensuring the lives of the people was their bottom line. At this moment, faced with the opportunity to free the four hostages, the commander-in-chief gave the order for a strong attack. There was no excuse. In the live broadcast room, many viewers of the robber's perspective live broadcast room also flocked over, bragging about Lu Ming's wonderful layout. Obviously, at this moment, everything that was happening in the police officer's perspective live broadcast room was proceeding in the direction that Lu Ming had predicted, and Lu Ming's layout ability was also considered to have been confirmed at this time. This exercise, 
The police team and the robbers on both sides of the performance is not bad. Many details of the exercise have been spread all over the network. The public live broadcast is even more eye-catching. At this time the visibility is even more staggering. The police perspective live room plus the robbers perspective live room. The number of simultaneous online viewers has even exceeded 300,000. Looking at the major platforms, this is an extremely horrible number. And this also precisely proves the splendor of this exercise. The police messenger team. Once the order for the strong attack operation was given, the 10 heavily armed special police officers then split into two squads and circled around the bank from far to the left and right. Sticking to the wall, they slowly approached the main entrance of the bank, and in the middle of the caravan of the technical department, the chief commander and a group of squad leaders were looking at all this with gloomy faces through the images coming back from the cameras on the heads of the special agents, outside the main entrance of the bank. At this time, the main door of the bank was in an open state. On each side of the left and right side stood five heavily armed special agents, who gave each other a hand signal. One special agent on each side pulled out two tear gas canisters from the pockets of their clothes. Pulling off the safety, they threw them into the bank door together. At the same time, the rest of the police special agents armed with guns quickly and orderly began to enter the bank. In the caravan of the technical department, the chief commander and a group of squad leaders stared nervously at the images on the display screen. Four tear gas canisters were thrown into the bank. Magnesium burned rapidly in the air, and the blinding white light as well as the smoke from the burning magnesium made the visibility of the entire bank hall decrease rapidly. As a result, the images relayed by the cameras also became blurred. Unable to clearly understand the progress of the strong attack operation through the images on the display screen, the commander-in-chief and the others were naturally hanging on to their hearts. For a while, the atmosphere in the caravan became quite gloomy. Everyone was quietly and nervously looking forward to the good news coming from the side of the strong attack squad. At the same time, in the locker room area at the back door of the bank, there were similarly people here who were watching this strong attack operation of the police squad through the images relayed by the cameras. Only, it wasn't the security camera feed they were connected to, the locker room area, next to the back door of the bank. Lu Ming was holding a cell phone, looking at the screen on it with a calm expression. The cell phone was in a video call interface, and the other side of the video call was the cell phone of Zhou Hang, who had been left by Lu Ming in the middle of the bank's lobby. Brother Ming, they've made their move. Looking above the cell phone screen, white smoke rose in the middle of the bank hall as a dozen or so heavily armed special agents maintained formation and entered the bank. Zhou Hang, who was standing next to Lu Ming, came up and spoke with excitement. Everything surprisingly really was exactly as Lu Ming had said. At this moment, in addition to excitement, Zhou Hang's face was more of a shocked expression. His own brother Ming, simply anticipating things like a god. Everything was developing exactly according to his script. It was as terrifying as hell. Wait a little longer. Lu Ming's eyes stared calmly at the image on the cell phone video as he spoke calmly. Zhou Hang sniffed and hurriedly nodded his head. At this moment, the two of them were wearing special duty combat uniforms, and the special duty equipped Type 95 assault rifle was hanging around their necks. I'm afraid that even if the commander in chief saw them, he wouldn't be able to react to the fact that they were the robbers in the first place. It's just a pity about my cell phone. His eyes once again returned to the picture in the cell phone in Lu Ming's hand. Zhou Hang murmured with a frown. That cell phone was the one he had just replaced a month ago. He hadn't even used it to get used to it yet. And it had been placed by Lu Ming right in the corner of the bank hall, acting as a camera. In response to this, Zhou Hang was naturally a little distressed. It's fine. When we go out, the gold bars on brother's body. Give you one. It's more than enough to buy dozens of cell phones. Lu Ming put away his cell phone and patted Zhou Hang's shoulder before he cheerfully opened his mouth. Hearing this, Zhou Hang couldn't help but skim his mouth. Brother Ming just didn't know that this was just a drill yet. The gold they were carrying would have to be turned in when the drill was over. Thinking of this, Zhou Hang couldn't help but feel quite sorry for Lu Ming for a moment. At this moment, he was still immersed in the joy that he was about to become a multi-millionaire. Little did he know, this was all just a dream. Alright, it's almost time. We should withdraw. After putting away his cell phone, Lu Ming stood up straight and spoke a reminder with a calm expression. At the same time, his hand was already placed on top of the switch that opened the back door. Outside the bank's back door, a cordon had been pulled up here as well, and four police cars were parked outside the cordon, as the only exit outside the main entrance of the bank. The commander-in-chief's deployment for this place was not weak, deploying a total of 20 gun-toting police officers to guard this place. After the raid started, the police officers here are also on standby, all using the police car as a cover and aiming their guns at the back door, to prevent the robbers from escaping through the back door. Master, do you think the robbers will escape through our back door? The atmosphere was gloomy. A young police officer looked sideways at his master beside him and opened his mouth to ask out. 
As he spoke, he swallowed his saliva. It was obvious that under such an atmosphere, he, who had just entered the police constable team, was still quite nervous. I don't know. Relax. This is just a drill. What's there to be nervous about? Remember not to shoot indiscriminately later. The robbers this time are very smart. Even if they want to escape through the back door, they will probably take hostages. If they accidentally injure the hostages, then it will be a big problem. The old police officer glanced sideways at his disciple and spoke calmly. However, as soon as he finished saying this, there was a movement at that back door. Ka! A crisp ringing sound came out, and the lock of that back door was opened from the inside. When the crowd of police officers saw this, they all rushed to alert. The heavy alloy door was pushed open, and two special agents with guns flashed out from the middle of the bank. The police officers outside the cordon were all slightly stunned. Just now when they heard the commotion of the back door being opened, everyone subconsciously thought that it was possible that the robbers were going to come out with hostages. Who knew that the ones who came out were actually two special agents? Those two special agents looked at the crowd of police officers outside the cordon, and suddenly was like slightly relaxed a bit, and put their guns away. Brothers, what's the situation? Looking at the two heavily armed special agents, the crowd of police guards waiting in tight formation were all confused for a moment before the older police guard opened his mouth and asked. After all, in the raid just now, the special agents had all entered through the front door. Now the two special agents suddenly came out from the back door. This was naturally out of everyone's expectation. Did you guys see the robbers come out? One of the special agents frowned and opened his mouth to ask. No, you guys were the only ones who came out from the back door after the strong attack operation started. The older police special agent hurriedly opened his mouth and responded. As he spoke, he remained vigilant, hiding his body in the back of the car as much as possible. Obviously, he was also an old criminal policeman with quite a bit of combat experience. Damn it, the robbers should still be at the bank. Hurry back. That special agent had a look of realization when he heard the old police agent's words, and he turned around and wanted to hurry back to the bank through the back door. However, after they came out, the back door of the bank had slowly closed. No. Why did you close the door? Looking at the bank's back door that had already closed, that special agent looked at the companion beside him with some helplessness and opened his mouth to reprimand. I didn't do it. That companion frowned and shrugged helplessly. Looking at the scene happening in front of them, the crowd of police officers outside the cordon all wanted to laugh a little. These people from the special police squad were the strongest fighting force in the police force. They were well equipped and had strong combat abilities. I didn't expect that there would be such a blunder. If this bank's back door wanted to be opened from the outside, it had to be opened with the identity cards of the bank's insiders. At this moment the door was closed. They wouldn't be able to return without their identity cards. Go, hurry back to the main entrance. While that special agent spoke helplessly, he hurriedly pulled back the cordon and quickly left. His companion also followed at his side. Only after watching their backs fade away did that group of police officers who remained on guard in place burst out laughing. Unexpectedly. They were actually able to see the jokes of the special duty squad members as well. Opening the door to chase the robbers, they actually shut themselves out. If this were to be spread out, it was estimated that the special duty squad leader's face would be a bit untenable. Don't even laugh. Concentrate and stay alert. Since the special police squad forced their way in and didn't kill the robbers in the first place, there's a possibility that the robbers could escape through the back door. That old police inspector glanced at the two special police officers' distant backs before turning back and speaking seriously drinking down the crowd of police officers who were laughing. At this moment, they were all still immersed in the joy of having watched the special police squad's joke, and completely failed to realize that something was wrong. The bank hall. The crowd of special agents wore goggles and leaned towards the hostage table. The tear gas had taken effect, and the unprotected people in the bank were naturally tossed around. The hostage table side was in chaos. Freeze. Everyone put down their weapons and crouched down with their hands on their heads. The special agent's stern voice rang out. Soon. The crowd in the middle of the thick smoke all rushed to do as they were told, holding their heads and hiding on the ground. It was only in the blink of an eye. The situation in the middle of the bank was already under control. Special agent rushed over to identify the people in the bank. The technical department's caravan. Because of the effects of the smoke from the tear gas, the images transmitted back through the camera. The commander-in-chief and the others could no longer see the situation, but the sound could still be heard clearly. From the sound. It was not difficult to judge that the situation at the scene had been brought under control, and that this forced attack had not suffered any resistance. For a moment, the crowd of commanding levels couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. How come it's you guys? Where are the robbers? Leave two people to send the hostages out. The rest of you search with me. Amidst the smoke-filled screen, the sound of the special agent's stun conversation came out. Listening to this conversation, the chief commander's face 
which had just relaxed for a few moments, instantly became grave again. Something had gone wrong. Listening to this conversation, those two people whose front faces could not be seen in the middle of the surveillance screen before were clearly not the robbers. Report, we have successfully rescued four hostages, but the robbers were not found in the bank lobby. Soon, the voice of the strong attack squad reporting the situation was received in the intercom. There are only a few people in the middle of the bank. Who else could it be if not the robbers? Hearing this reporting voice, the special duty squad leader took the lead in grabbing the walkie-talkie on the table and spoke with a slight hint of anger. He thought that his team members had successfully controlled the situation in the bank. Lu Ming could also fall into the net. He could also be considered to have avenged the deaths of several of his brothers in the raid team. But who knew that there was no Lu Ming in the lobby of the bank? This time, the special duty squad leader naturally had some anger in his heart. Those two figures, they are our fallen brothers from the previous raid. They were forced to change into the robber's clothes and were placed across the hostage table. Within the intercom, the voice of a member of the strong attack squad reporting the situation soon rang out. Hearing these words, everyone in the caravan froze, especially the special duty squad leader. His eyes widened with a shocked expression. How could he have forgotten about this? In the previous raid, he had lost six of his team members in battle, and the corpses of these six people had been in the bank all along. Unexpectedly, Lu Ming had actually moved on top of these corpses and made a move to change the prince into a cat? It was really a good idea. Even if it's not in the bank hall, Lu Ming is definitely still in the bank. The bank is surrounded by us at the moment. Can he still grow wings and fly away? Chief team, I'm applying to personally lead a team to search the bank. At this point, the robbers no longer have any hostages in their hands, and there is nothing that can threaten us. Lu Ming is nothing more than a lamb to be slaughtered. The special duty squad leader froze with the walkie-talkie for two seconds before looking back at the chief commander and speaking eagerly. However, the chief commander did not speak immediately. He frowned and stared at the white smoke-filled image on the display screen, his face staring as if he was thinking. Chief commander? Seeing this, the special duty squad leader hurriedly opened his mouth to give another reminder. The crowd of squad captains also looked at the chief commander. Obviously, at this moment, they were all waiting for the chief commander's order. Go, before searching the bank. First pick up the hostages and properly calm them down. The chief commander took a deep breath of cool air before he calmly opened his mouth to respond. Yes, the special duty squad leader saluted while responding to the chief commander, and then he eagerly left the caravan to mobilize the personnel. The commander-in-chief exhaled a mouthful of turbid air and turned to look at the scene outside the caravan, his brows locked. On his face, not a single expression of joy could be seen. The hostages were successfully rescued. This showed that this forced attack operation was considered to have achieved some results. However, Lu Ming was not found. Although at this moment, the special duty squad leader was still convinced that Lu Ming was still hiding in the bank. The commander-in-chief felt that Lu Ming had already run away. He could not guess what means Lu Ming had used to get away. Lu Ming was a cautious and highly intelligent robber. If he didn't have a final grasp of getting away, how could he give the police squad such an easy time rescuing the hostages? Giving up the hostages, hiding in the bank and digging his own death? This couldn't possibly be something Lu Ming could do. But how did he get away? All the roads that could leave the bank were surrounded by the police team, and up until this point there hadn't been any abnormalities reported. Could he really have been mixed in with the few people who got on the bus? This is impossible. At this time, the commander-in-chief was still very convinced that among the six people, there was absolutely no Lu Ming. Could it be that Lu Ming really knew how to do magic tricks and disappeared into thin air? Of course. Although the commander-in-chief thought that Lu Ming had gotten away from the bank, a search was still necessary. After all, Lu Ming's disappearance was only his own speculation and had not been confirmed. Therefore, the chief commander also agreed to the special duty squad leader's request to lead a team into the bank to search. Chief commander, didn't I say that the hostages left in the middle of the bank are considered sent to you? Why do you still need to make such a big commotion? Throwing tear gas canisters inside, aren't you tossing the hostages? Just as the commander-in-chief frowned, unable to figure out how to do so, Lu Ming's voice suddenly rang out from the walkie-talkie that was in single-line contact with him. Lu Ming's voice was filled with laughter and mockery. The commander-in-chief froze. He then grabbed the intercom and hesitated for a few seconds before he pressed the speak button. You really did run away. The commander-in-chief spoke in a calm tone. However, a bit of anger that was hard to hide could still be seen on his face. Lu Ming seemed to have disappeared out of thin air, getting out of the bank under his nose, and the commander-in-chief naturally felt bad in his heart. At this time, Lu Ming had already gotten away, yet he still came to taunt himself. The commander-in-chief naturally had some anger. By the way, I have a big gift for you later. Don't forget to thank me at that time. Within the intercom, Lu Ming's voice once again sounded. Hearing this, 
The chief commander's brows twisted into Chuan characters for a moment. What did this kid mean? A big gift? What else did he really want? The chief commander didn't respond again, only placing the walkie-talkie back on the table. Commander-in-chief. The robber used the walkie-talkie. Is it possible that he's still in the neighborhood? It might not be too late for us to pursue now. A squad leader in the caravan watched the chief commander put down the walkie-talkie before he frowned and opened his mouth. Sniffing. The chief commander, however, shook his head slightly. Police walkie-talkies. The signal coverage was 20 kilometers. That meant that as long as it was within 20 kilometers now, this walkie-talkie would be able to be used. Lu Ming had specifically used the walkie-talkie to taunt himself for a few moments. He must have felt that he was safe, and was afraid that he had already moved away from the bank. And now that the commander-in-chief didn't even know how Lu Ming had gotten away from the bank, how could he go after him? In the middle of the bank, the smoke from the tear gas had completely dissipated. The special duty squad leader pulled down his mask and stood in the middle of the bank's hall, waiting for the results of the team's search. Report. All the rooms in the bank have been searched. Nothing found. Report. No robbers were found inside the toilets either. Report. Ventilation ducts have been searched. No robbers have been found. The reports from the team members came one after another over the intercom. That resounding voice. Every time it rang out, the muscles in the special duty squad leader's cheeks tightened for a minute. Until finally, he had clenched his teeth, closed his eyes, and his face was filled with undisguised anger. And really let him run away? How did he run away? Deeply inhaled a breath of cool air, suppressing the anger in his heart as much as possible. It was only then that the special duty squad leader opened his mouth with a gloomy and confused expression. After all, from before the forceful attack operation began, he was certain that Lu Ming was still hiding in the bank. Moreover, all of the bank's exits had been completely blocked by the special agent team. As long as Lu Ming didn't know how to vanish, then there was no way he could escape. But now the entire person was as if he had vaporized and was nowhere to be found. This was truly a bit mind-boggling. The special duty squad leader's brows were slightly furrowed. After a little thought, slowly pacing in the bank hall, with sharp eyes, he swept through every corner of the bank hall. Yet, he could never think of a way for Lu Ming to escape. In his opinion, from the moment Lu Ming chose to give up his hostage, the commander-in-chief initiated a strong attack operation. The end of Lu Ming falling into the net was already doomed. However, the truth was hard for the special duty squad leader to accept. The person had just disappeared and vanished right under his nose? The special agent squad leader stood in the middle of the bank hall, substituting himself completely into Lu Ming's role. He imagined, if he was in Lu Ming's situation, what kind of way would he choose to escape? Gradually, he realized that he was like a bird in a cage, completely imprisoned here. No matter how he lifted his wings, he could not escape from this unbreakable cage. There was only despair, endless despair. Not a single thought of escape could be raised. Surrender was the only option. The special duty squad leader awoke with a start, pulling his perspective away from Lu Ming. He only felt that his heartbeat had accelerated by a few points, and even his breathing had become a bit rapid. If he were to put himself in Lu Ming's position, I'm afraid that he wouldn't even have the thought of getting out of the bank. But Lu Ming had done it. Lu Ming was really not simple nah. At the same time, the special duty squad leader was also thankful in his heart. Thankful that this was just a drill. Lu Ming was not a real robber. After all, to be able to remain calm in such a desperate situation, this kind of person, if he really was a robber, stood against the entire society. That would be a disaster for the people and the entire country. Think of the price the police messenger paid to capture him. The junior captain was even more frightened when he thought about it. Damn. These two guys in this situation. How did they think of a way to escape? I'm afraid that they haven't already rehearsed it countless times inside their brains, right? The special difficulty squad leader looked around and murmured an opening. The whisper that came out of his mouth was like an alarm bell. It rang in his heart. At some point, a few drops of cold sweat appeared on his forehead. No. When the maneuvers are over, we must apply to the director to prepare a case for the two of them. Thinking of this, the special duty captain shook his head and took a deep breath of cool air. It was at this moment, a team member hurriedly ran out of the house. Head-on just happened to bump into the special difficulty captain. Panicking, where are you going? The special difficulty captain was quick on his feet and grabbed his arm, speaking sternly. At the same time, he was already prepared for hand-to-hand -hand combat. After all, the entire bank had been blocked from the start. One could not rule out the possibility of looming muddying the waters and mixing into the special agent team. That was why before entering the bank, he had kept an eye on the movements of all the team members. Captain, there's a situation. That team member looked at the special duty squad leader and hurriedly opened his mouth to report. What's the situation? The special difficulty squad leader sniffed, frowned, and opened his mouth in a rather calm manner. 
The team member hurriedly brought the special difference squad leader into an office in the office area. When the special duty squad leader stepped in with one foot, when he saw the scene in front of him, a face instantly turned blue with anger, only to see four members of the special police, lying naked on the floor of the office. Watching the special duty squad leader come in, the several special duty squad members also did not look too good. However, they did not open their mouths to speak. They were all special agents who had been killed in action during the previous raid. In other words, at this moment, their status was dead, and dead people were naturally not qualified to speak. Where are the clothes on you guys? Seeing the several people in this state, the special agent captain opened his mouth with a deep frown and asked out. The four people looked at each other. They then closed their eyes and remained silent. Captain, they are the brothers who were killed in action during the previous raid. One of that team member who had led the special difficulty squad leader in just now, stood at the side of the squad leader, before rushing to open his mouth to remind him. It was only then that the special difficulty squad leader reacted. He frowned deeply and clenched his teeth as he took a deep breath of cool air and suppressed the fire in his heart. This Lu Ming, how dare he even take the clothes off a dead man. All right, don't lie down. Hurry up and put your clothes on, since you've already been killed in action. Go back to the station first. The special agent squad leader frowned and opened his mouth to give the order. A few special agents sniffed and also hurriedly got up to go to the corner to claim the clothes and equipment that would be piled up there. Earlier, Zhou Hang had asked them to take off all their clothes. After selecting two sets of cleaner ones, the rest were casually thrown in the corner. Captain, we lost a total of six brothers in the raid, but there are only four sets of clothing gear in the office now. That means two sets were lost. The team member who had just led the special difficulty squad leader in hurriedly continued to speak, reporting the situation to the squad leader. The special duty squad leader froze slightly, his heart thumping. He hurriedly grabbed the walkie-talkie and immediately reported the situation to the commander-in-chief. Report. The robbers were found to have taken the clothes of the two special duty officers who were killed in action during the raid, and it's likely that the robbers have blended into our ranks. Chief team, should we gather everyone together and do a head count? The special duty squad leader knew that two sets of special duty clothes and equipment had been lost. Naturally, he had also already guessed that Lu Ming was likely to take advantage of the strong attack to mix inside the team. So at this moment, he hurriedly applied to the chief commander to gather everyone together. However, the chief commander sitting in the car, after hearing this news, however, he sighed quietly. He knew that with Lu Ming's character, since he had let them discover the end, it would be impossible to remain here. What the most dangerous place was the safest. It was completely a forced downgrading of intelligence inside a TV series in order to pretend. After all, if there was a fugitive who thought that if he hid in the police station, the special agent wouldn't be able to catch him, then the special messenger would definitely be laughing his ass off. I'm afraid it's too late now. Prepare for the next move, as well as notify the special police member responsible for guarding the back door to come to me. The commander-in-chief spoke calmly and hung up the intercom after that. He pursed his lips and gazed at the bank not far away. At this moment, underneath his calm exterior, a ball of anger was hidden. However, reason told him that he must not let his emotions control his brain. Although he had previously given the death order of not letting anyone leave the bank, but a team, composed of so many people, could not be flawless. Just like the human body, even if the immune system is so strong, it's still possible for a virus to take advantage of the situation. There is no impermeable wall under heaven. What one had to do was to constantly fill the airtight places on the wall. Temporary command room. The commander-in-chief stood in front of the table in silence, his face grave. At this moment, he was ultimately a bit upset. After all, before the start of the strong attack operation, he had already urged himself a thousand times. However, in the end, the situation that one was most unwilling to see still came as expected. This feeling was like Zhuge Liang urging Ma Su not to be careless. Even if the worst case scenario was already in one's anticipation, one was also extraordinarily careful. But it still happened. Lu Ming had taken the clothes of two team members. It was likely that he had taken advantage of the start of the forced attack operation. The fish in the water had mixed inside the special duty team. Although with Lu Ming's cautious character, the possibility of him still being amongst the team was slim to none. But it wasn't none. After pondering for a long time, just to be on the safe side, after a moment of silence, the chief commander still grabbed the walkie-talkie and gave the order. Seal off the bank. Tell all team members to gather and take a headcount. The special duty squad leader received the order. He then rushed to follow the commander-in-chief's order and gathered all the special police officers together. Only a few were left to guard the entrances and exits of the bank, preventing Lu Ming from hiding somewhere and taking the opportunity to slip away. Very quickly. After the more than 200 people had reported their numbers, neatly standing in formation, waiting for the commander-in-chief's order, 
The car door opened and the uniform chief commander walked down, slowly coming to the front of the crowd. The sun was blazing in the sky, because they hadn't caught Lu Ming. The self-respect of the crowd as police officers was also unreservedly exposed to the sunlight. Shamefully, they lowered their heads, not daring to look directly into the chief commander's burning eyes. It's unfortunate that we let Lu Ming escape despite such a tight deployment, but we should be thankful that this was just a drill, and the people inside weren't real robbers. Otherwise, you and I would be nailed to the pillar of shame and ridiculed for the rest of our lives. Of course, being a soldier doesn't necessarily mean you can catch a thief, and being a thief doesn't necessarily mean you'll be caught. What happened today is not an exception. There are not a few thieves who escaped from the hands of soldiers in history. But who has the advantage of more than 200 people against two? I'm sure you all know better than I do. But the situation I least expected to see still happened. Come on. I'll tell us what you all did when the strong attack operation started. The commander-in-chief stood with his arms folded, waiting for the reports from the crowd. On a country face, there was a serious expression. From the tightly locked brows, it was not hard to tell that the commander-in-chief was not in a good mood at the moment. Report. I was in charge of leading the breakthrough. And at the beginning of the operation. I rushed into the bank to seize a favorable position according to the instructions. Midway through the operation, the robbers did not clash with us head-on. Report. I'm in charge of leading the team to conduct a search, responsible for searching for the robbers in the first place. Report. I'm in charge of leading the team to block the back door of the bank to prevent the robbers from escaping through the back door. No abnormalities were found in the middle of the process, except for the last police messenger reported. Everyone's gazes fell on him in unison. It left him with a feeling like a man's back. The originally loud voice gradually weakened. Even he himself realized that the problem was most likely at the back door. Continue. The commander-in-chief's face was expressionless as he spoke in a cold voice. That emotionless voice made the reporting team members heart drum. Stiffly, he continued. Other than the two special duty members coming out of the back door. After saying this, the expression on the face of that veteran police officer. It was more bitter than a bitter melon. A voice resounded in his mind. It's over. Ha, this is what you say there is nothing unusual? With his hands behind his back, the chief commander walked up to this team member, laughed coldly, and spoke quietly, what did I say before the operation started? I don't know if it was because the weather was too hot, or worried about the commander-in-chief's reprimand. At this time, the police officer's forehead was dripping with sweat, voice slightly trembling back, after the action begins, prohibit anyone from leaving the bank. Hearing this, the commander-in-chief took a deep breath. Even if he was as calm as he was, some anger was inevitable at this time. If that's the case, why would you still let these two come out from the back door? The chief commander forced himself to hold back the anger in his heart and spoke in a cold voice. That old police officer's throat nodded and he swallowed the saliva in his mouth, lowering his head. He returned. At that time, the two of them rushed out from inside the bank in a panic and asked if we had found the robbers. We didn't think much of it, thinking it was the brothers in charge of the search, the old police officer said subconsciously glancing at the special agent in charge of leading the search. The special agent, staring ahead, did not look at him at all. The subtext seemed to say, don't look at me, it has nothing to do with me. The old police messenger then continued, because of the need to re-enter the bank and the need for an identification card, we let these two brothers re-around back to the front door at that time. They, the old police messenger said while looking back, hoping to see the two men who had just come out of the bank. But, at that time, Everyone was wearing masks and only two eyes were exposed. It wasn't easy to recognize them through their eyes. Not to mention the fact that no one else had anything unusual going on. He was the only one who had problems. This meant that there was a high possibility that Lu Ming had escaped from him. Still looking? The people have all run away. Why didn't you go up to verify each other's identity when the two came out? Just let the person leave like this? There are twenty of you. If one of you is careless, are you all careless? The commander-in-chief's voice was stern as he questioned the team members in front of him. None of them dared to raise their heads in response, only feeling groundless. Indeed, if they had been a little more careful at that time, they had gone up to verify Lu Ming's identity, then what they would receive now would be a commendation, not a reprimand. It was Lu Ming who was to blame for coming out of the bank. That seemingly coincidental design, it was simply too disorienting, rushing out of the bank in a hurry, being locked out because of the lack of an identification card didn't say outright that he was leaving, instead, said he was going to rejoin the main entrance, such a logical and unexpected oversight, who would have thought that this was the excuse the robbers made to avoid themselves, if they could have thought of it, then at that time, their group of people, if they could have thought of it, then the group of them would not have seen the chagrin and embarrassing actions of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, and laughed out loud, now facing the commander-in-chief's chilling expression, 
how much they had laughed just now, how much they were crying in their hearts now, who, the chief commander now wanted to curse, but right now Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were on the loose, he could only let out a long breath to exhale the displeasure in his heart, when the worst happened, as the highest decision maker of the police force, he had to keep his sanity, thinking about how to mend the situation, although the negligence of the team members led to the failure of the entire strong attack plan and deserved to be reprimanded, but now was not the time, immediately retrieve the bank's surveillance, I want to know the direction looming transferred away, team 2, bring someone to intercept the vehicle the hostage was traveling in, the rest of you stay on guard and wait for the next command, everyone must not leave without authorization, the commander in chief pondered for a moment, and several orders came out of his mouth like a succession of cannons, he then turned around and returned to the caravan that served as a temporary command room, the technical department's caravan, soon, two technicians, retrieved the surveillance footage from the surveillance outside the bank's back door, it was also the scene where Lu Ming had gotten away from the bank, only to see a scene of chaos, two heavily armed special agents walked out from the back door, the two bypassed the defense at the back door and drilled straight into the alleyway next to the bank, as he left, Lu Ming also glanced back at the camera at the street entrance, even with the black mask on, the commander-in-chief was still able to feel the smile hidden on his face under that mask, this made him unavoidably a little annoyed, call up the surveillance of the surrounding streets, the chief commander spoke in a deep voice, the fingers of the two technicians, quickly tapped on the keyboard, a crackling sound passed, the location of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang was quickly locked, they only saw that they had taken a taxi on the side of the road and directly swaggered away, the cab headed in the direction of East Main Street, after seeing the direction Lu Ming had fled, the chief commander turned around violently and stared at the city map on the table, inside his mind, he began to preview Lu Ming's escape route, in the chief commander's eyes, a red line began to weave in and out of the city's roads like a spider's web, what places had surveillance, what places were residential areas, and what places were easy to hide, all in the consideration of the commander-in-chief, time and time again, the reenactment, time and time again, the negation, just to anticipate Lu Ming's escape route, but the situation on East Main Street was too complicated, as an old city center, it was filled with many unauthorized buildings, there were so many alleyways that they could not be counted, coupled with the cheap rent, many migrant workers lived in it, in this area of less than 200, 000 square meters, there were no less than 400, 000 people living there, the population density was extremely high, if Lu Ming were to hide here, it wouldn't be very realistic to catch him in a moment's time, but Lu Ming hiding in East Main Street wasn't too bad news for the commander-in-chief, after all, this East Main Street was like a gourd, surrounded by the moat, there was only one intersection in and out, if it were any other season, the commander-in-chief would still be worried about Lu Ming jumping into the river and escaping, but now was the time of summer with lots of rain, the water level of this moat had risen 5 or 6 meters, and the river was turbulent, jumping down rashly was no different from seeking death, so the possibility of Lu Ming choosing this path to escape was slim to none, what we need to do now is to block the entrance to East Main Street, then send people to conduct a carpet search, catching Lu Ming was just a matter of time, however, the chief commander, who had always pursued perfection, was not satisfied with simply catching Lu Ming, those gold bars taken by Lu Ming were also the focus of his attention, thinking of this, the commander-in-chief turned back, letting the technicians pull up the footage from when Lu Ming got on the car once again, stop, the chief commander frowned slightly, his gaze is burning as he stared at the surveillance screen, zoom in, zoom in a little more, the chief commander asked the technicians to zoom in twice in a row on the image of Lu Ming getting into the car, until Lu Ming's entire person covered the screen, the chief commander's gaze was sharp and he seemed to have discovered something, then his pupils dilated and a hint of surprise flashed in his eyes, he didn't take the gold, the chief commander spoke to himself, with a tone of disbelief, after all, the robber had risked so much, even going so far as to kill the hostage and threaten the police messenger, wasn't the purpose for the gold, but now that they were finally able to escape, why didn't they take the gold away, this is really mind-boggling, it's like a bloodthirsty boy who suddenly sees a cozy story of a woman and seven boys on a website, in his excitement, he spends dozens of dollars on traffic and downloads dozens of G's of video, everything is ready for the east wind, thought he was going to hide in the house alone and close the curtains, swear to hide under the covers when studying, but he heard a loud and clear song coming from inside, Hulua, Hulua, seven children on a vine, however, Lu Ming does not take away the gold, far from being so outrageous, after all, pure gold could be far denser than other metals of the same volume, this meant that gold of the same size, it was heavier than any other metal, one or two was okay to carry, once there were more, it would inevitably cause a burden, so, 
in order to facilitate escape. It didn't rule out the possibility that Lu Ming would temporarily hide the gold and come back for it after getting away. Thinking about this, the corner of the commander-in-chief's mouth hooked into a light smile if anything, as long as he found where the gold was hidden. Then the next step was just to wait for the rabbit. Just wait for Lu Ming to take the bait. The hostages inside the bank are all settled, right? The commander-in-chief pressed his hands on the map on the table and spoke calmly. All settled. In the temporary tent next to them, their emotions are basically stable. We just haven't told them that this is a drill for the time being. A squad leader on the side had a bitter smile on his face and spoke helplessly. After all, if these people knew that this was just a drill, with palpitating hearts, they would probably not be grateful to the police messenger for saving them out. Rather, they would be pointing at the group of them and cursing. It was to be expected how unpleasant the words would be when the time came. Although it gave them a fright, this is also a helpless move for the maneuvers to be more in line with actual combat. I just hope these people can sympathize with us. I'll go ask them something. You stay here and keep an eye on the robber's movements. The commander-in-chief remembered the aftermath and spoke with a considerable headache. The reason why the police messenger didn't conduct drills from time to time like firefighting. It wasn't just because the probability of such a serious criminal case occurring was extremely small. More importantly, people were far more complex than disasters. If one didn't drill as if it were a real battle, it would completely fail to achieve the imagined effect. But once it is treated as a real battle, the aftermath is a headache. The commander-in-chief walked into the tent. The stunned crowd immediately surrounded him with gratitude. Sir thank you guys, you don't know those two robbers. They are simply not human, killing people when they say they'll kill, without even blinking an eye. Oh, I thought I was going to die at that time. Whoa, I saw the robber with the gun at the time. It seemed like he had two mouths, but it scared me. These people spoke incoherently, even portraying Lu Ming as a monster with two mouths. It was obvious, they were all terrified. The commander-in-chief raised one eyebrow in a dignified manner. In his heart, he was secretly glad that the police messenger had not yet told these people that this was a drill. Otherwise, the moment he came in, his clothes would probably be stripped off by these people. Ahem. The commander-in-chief tactically coughed, then opened his mouth to pacify. It's okay, you are all safe. I came to be a little thing want to ask you, did anyone see where the robbers went after getting the gold? The commander-in-chief finished speaking and scanned the crowd in front of him. The few people who were still terrified originally became stumped when they heard this. Lowering their heads, they didn't dare to look directly into the chief commander's eyes. Seeing these few people's heartfelt looks, the chief commander sneered in his heart, convinced that they definitely knew where Lu Ming had hidden the gold. It was likely that the few people had already discussed it beforehand before they came in, didn't pay much attention. After he got the gold, he didn't go anywhere ah, uh, have you guys seen it? No. The crowd shook their heads in succession, calling out that they didn't know. When speaking, several people's faces could still clearly see unnatural nervousness. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that there was a problem. This way ah, I see that you guys were also scared by the robbers, so I'll leave you guys alone and have a good rest. Hearing the crowd's reply, the commander-in-chief had a look of regret on his face and, after saying that, he turned around and left. Just as soon as he stepped out of the tent, the corners of his mouth hooked into a light smile. These people spoke with averted gazes accompanied by inexplicable small movements. As an experienced police officer, the commander-in-chief recognized these people's lies at a glance. That was, after all, golden gold. Even just a single stick would allow an ordinary person to live a nourishing little life. Not to mention the fact that the quantity was so large. In the face of such temptation, how many people would be able to resist? He was certain that these people must know where Lu Ming had hidden the gold. However, in order to prevent spooking the snakes, the chief commander did not pursue them in the first place. After all, with the greedy character of these people, after the withdrawal of the police team, they would definitely go to fetch the gold in the first place. One only needed to send people to follow them. Pushing them too hard now would be counterproductive. Sure enough, after the commander-in-chief left the tent, the four hostages formed a circle at the first opportunity. They began to discuss in whispers. You really saw it? A middle-aged man wearing glasses spoke excitedly. The thick lenses couldn't even block the glittering essence in his eyes. Saw it, he, another young man wearing short sleeves was about to open his mouth. It was interrupted by the middle-aged man. The middle-aged man carefully glanced at the somewhat blonde woman next to him. The woman understood and knew that the middle-aged man was afraid of people eavesdropping. Silently nodded, and then walked to the door of the tent. Started to look out. After confirming that there was no one outside, the middle-aged man then signaled the young man to continue. I saw it, when he came out from inside the toilet, there was definitely no gold inside his bag. It must have been hidden inside the toilet's flushing toilet tank. Several people heard this news. One by one, they were blushing. 
all excited to the point of no return. The four people at this moment you looked at me and I looked at you, for each other's thoughts, it had long been unspoken. The only one who was still a bit uneasy was that young man, do you think if we take that gold, will we be caught by the police? The young man asked the other two with some concern. The middle-aged man wearing glasses was a bit older after all. He was also much bolder than the young man. What are you afraid of? The gold was taken by the robbers. If neither you nor I say anything, who knows where the gold is? The middle-aged man opened his mouth without a good mood. For the gold, he seemed to be imperative. But, in case the robbers are caught, when they can't find the gold, they will definitely. The young man was very vain. For him who could only earn four or five thousand a month, a million or a hundred thousand was simply astronomical. This huge sum of money really made it hard for him to sit still. No buts, even if he is caught and reveals where he hid the gold, the police messenger will definitely suspect that he is telling lies when he can't find it. Not to mention the fact that he is a robber. Who would easily believe him? As soon as the middle-aged man's words left his mouth, the remaining three people all revealed enlightened expressions. Indeed, who was foolish enough to easily believe the words of a robber? Even if he gave a truthful account, when the time came and the gold could not be found, the black pot would still have to be held on the robber's head, even if the robbers had the hindsight to know that it was them who took the gold, but to commit such a big case, not the death penalty is life, and what chance to retaliate against them, in this way, the gold was like giving it to them for nothing, figuring this out, the four became even more excited, even their breathing became rapid, the matter should not be delayed, when the team of police officers in the middle of the bank withdraws, we'll go in and get the gold, I'll make a deal first, when the time comes, we'll distribute it evenly, everyone has to take it, and at the same time, we have to keep it a secret, and even if we are questioned individually, we have to bite our tongue, whatever the police messenger asks, just say you don't know, and they won't be able to do anything with us, the middle-aged man wearing glasses, gave the other few people a preventive shot beforehand, in order to prevent infighting, he proposed that everyone take gold, not only that, but also instructed the several people to make sure that their mouths were not loose, Having watched several criminal investigation dramas, his greatest fear was the prisoner's dilemma. As long as a few of them bite the bullet and say they don't know, then the black pot of missing gold would be firmly held on the robbers' heads. Don't worry, I definitely won't say anything. When the time comes to ask me, I'll just play dumb. I'll just say I don't know. The other three agreed to the matter. Starting to take turns to pay attention to inside the bank, the movements of the police messenger. At the same time, they prayed in their hearts that the police officers would never find the gold hidden inside the toilet tank, so that they could go over and take it away, but they do not know. At this time, the commander-in-chief sitting inside the car was secretly watching them. Tell the team members inside the bank to withdraw. Have two of the team members change into civilian clothes and follow these four hostages after they leave. The commander-in-chief looked out the car window and spoke calmly. The assistant standing at the side nodded and began to carry out the chief commander's orders. Lu Ming, you should be thanking me or else if you really lost the gold, you're afraid that you won't be able to pay it back for the rest of your life. The corners of the chief commander's mouth rose slightly as he murmured to himself. Soon, the team members responsible for searching in the bank withdrew one after another. Those four hostages who were paying attention to the movements of the police messengers were thrilled to see this. The police messengers in the bank have all left. The cordon has also been withdrawn. They didn't find any gold. The young man hiding behind the tent and peeking in spoke excitedly. Even his voice was trembling. Wait first, don't rush in, we'll enter the bank after their attention is not on it. The middle-aged man held up his glasses. Similarly, he acted unusually excited. More than 10 minutes passed. The team members inside the bank had all left. The four people saw that the time was ripe. They lied that they had left something in the bank. Then walked into the bank. Four people into the bank hall. The young man is about to go towards the toilet. However, they were pulled by the middle-aged man wearing glasses. Wait a little longer. After the middle-aged man finished speaking, he led a few people to act like they were looking for something in the bank hall. The four people surveyed the surroundings from time to time, keeping their guard up at all times. Finally, after pretending for a few minutes, the young man could no longer hold back. Once again, he stood up. This time the middle-aged man didn't stop him, instead choosing to follow him. The other two, glancing at each other, hurriedly got up and followed the two. The four came to the door of the toilet. After looking around for a while, the three men drilled headfirst into the inside of the toilet. Only the middle-aged woman was left outside looking out. The woman stood outside the toilet and looked inside from time to time. Did you find it? Seeing that the trio had already been inside for a few minutes and had yet to come out, she had to anxiously urge them. She was afraid that the three people who went in would steal and hide gold, and then she would get one or two less. Don't rush. Still looking. 
After the middle-aged man impatiently roared, the sound of prying the toilet lid once again resounded inside the toilet. The woman who was yelled at was indignant in her heart and was turning back, but she found two shadows blocking her front. She raised her head resentfully, only to see two men like iron towers standing in front of him at that moment. Their expressions were serious and their gazes were sharp. The two men didn't speak, but pulled out their credentials. At the same time, their index fingers were placed in front of their mouths, making a silencing motion. The women knew that the fact that they had come to get the gold had been revealed. After shrinking their necks, they stopped speaking. One of the special task force members guarded the door, while the other walked straight into the restroom. Have you two found it yet? Which toilet is it in the end? Strange, when he came out, the bag was obviously empty, and the only thing hidden inside this toilet is the toilet tank. How could there be nothing? The three of them searched hard and kept prying open the lid of the toilet tank, seeing that there were not many water tanks left for them. The trio's mood couldn't help but be a bit irritated. Need help? The team member standing behind the middle-aged man spoke calmly. The middle-aged man, who bowed his body, returned without looking back. What's the point of bothering? Hurry up. Don't get caught by the police messenger by then. Just as the words came out of his mouth, his entire body froze in place. He put back the lid of the toilet tank that he had just lifted up. He then stood up straight and slowly turned his head. Looking at the team member, he smiled awkwardly. But the special duty team members didn't give him a good look. Always straining their faces, making the middle-aged man's smile become a bit stiff. All come in. The special police officer member shouted towards the outside only to see quite a number of police agents streaming in, instantly making the already cramped toilet unusually crowded. Please make way. A team member peeled away the middle-aged man wearing glasses, uncovering the lid of the toilet tank for him. In just the blink of an eye, the lids of more than 10 toilet tanks inside the restroom were all opened, but inside all the water tanks, no trace of gold was found. The four hostages were a little worried at first, but saw the special members of the toilet tank inside, and did not find the gold over. Four people cannot help but reveal a very surprised expression. You look at me. I look at you. The message in their eyes seemed to be asking each other if they were hiding something. The special special duty member saw the four people's appearance. Coldly snorted. Walking up to these four people. Speak. Where exactly is the gold hidden? The special police member opened his mouth in a cold voice, questioning the several people in front of him. When the four people heard this, they couldn't help but freeze. Right. Where did the gold go? The eyes of the remaining three people fell on the young man in unison. The young man felt like a thorn in his back. Hurriedly, he said back, Don't look at me, how do I know? At that time, when he came out from inside the toilet, it did look like the bag was empty. It must still be in the toilet. Why don't we all look for it again? The middle-aged man wearing glasses saw that the matter was lost. To take away the gold is no longer possible. With a sad face, he explained, All right, I admit that we came in to look for the gold. But you guys also saw that there is indeed nothing inside this toilet tank. We also don't know where the robbers hid the gold. We are also ghostly. The special police members sniffed, and their expressions remained serious. Instead of letting the four leave, they directly asked the chief commander for instructions. Report. These four people were caught by us. They were really looking for gold. But we searched the entire toilet and didn't find any gold bars. At this moment, the chief commander sitting inside the caravan heard the report from his team members. He could not help but slightly frown, through the images within the surveillance video. Lu Ming didn't have a backpack on him when he left, which meant that he didn't take the gold with him. Then was it possible that the four hostages had discovered the team members following them? In order to get rid of the suspicion, they deliberately searched in the toilet, releasing a smoke bomb to confuse everyone. In fact, they know the gold is not in the toilet, but hidden elsewhere in the bank? However, with the four people previously that sneaky, cautious appearance, this possibility was really not small. Bring them back for questioning first, and tell them that this is the gold used for maneuvers, and if they dare to steal it, I'll dare to make them sit through the bottom of the jail. The commander-in-chief finished speaking and placed the walkie-talkie on the table. The frown tightened, with his hand on the table, his right index finger rhythmically tapped the tabletop, seemingly thinking. Soon, the four hostages were brought back to the tent. This time the four people unreservedly confessed what happened to them when they were kidnapped and told the chief commander that the reason they went back to the toilet to look for gold, it was entirely because when Lu Ming came out, it was obvious to see that the bag in his hand was empty. They mistakenly thought that Lu Ming had hidden the gold inside the toilet tank in the toilet. For a moment, he was obsessed and wanted to take the gold for himself. This is why there is some concealment. Hearing the confessions of the four hostages, the chief commander hurriedly left the tent and headed towards the temporary command room. The special special agent squad leader followed closely behind 
not understanding why the commander-in-chief suddenly chose not to interrogate the four hostages. After all, what these four people had just said was not necessarily the truth. It could not be ruled out that the four of them were deliberately creating a false impression for the chief commander to see. Chief team, are we really not going to question them? In case if they really know where the gold is hidden and secretly take it away, this is going to be a big problem. The special duty squad leader followed the chief commander's side while walking briskly at a fast pace. While doing so, he asked the commander-in-chief in a rather puzzled manner. No need to ask. Lu Ming is deliberately letting them see it. No, to be more pertinent, Lu Ming is trying to deliberately let me see it through these people. The chief commander gritted his teeth and spoke, although he hadn't met with Lu Ming a few times. However, during the course of the maneuvers, the chief commander had already gained a general understanding of this tricky opponent. Lu Ming was in the same category as him. People like them did things and pursued perfection in everything, like everything to be under control and organized. Even if it was an ordinary walk, they were thinking about how many calories would be consumed by taking a single step. What place to walk would conserve more energy? So, guided by such a character, Lu Ming would not commit a situation where he would let the hostages know that he was carrying an empty bag. If there was, then it meant that Lu Ming had done it on purpose. Its purpose was to confuse himself, to make it more difficult for him to find the gold. Pity the hostages who thought they were going to make a fortune. Instead, they ended up being used as guns by Lu Ming. If Lu Ming was a real robber, he would have gotten away with the gold at this time, and disappeared from the scene. Then these few hostages who thought they were going to make a fortune would most likely take a big black pot. After all, who can guarantee that what they say must be true? Until the gold was found, it was impossible to rule out the suspicion that they were hiding it, deliberately taking an empty bag to show others, and even counting the hostages in it. This Lu Ming is really not human. The chief commander continued to speak calmly as he walked away, calmly opening his mouth to spit out a sigh. The special duty squad leader on the side listened to this and nodded in deep thought. Obviously. For the chief commander's words, he was very much in agreement. This kid Lu Ming, no matter who he had to count on, was indeed quite unproductive. Only, the gold wasn't in the bank, so where could it have gone? Although the special duty squad leader was quite curious in his heart, but seeing that the commander-in-chief did not have the intention to open his mouth, he did not ask any questions, just followed the commander-in-chief's side, quickly walking towards the temporary command room. The commander-in-chief walked inside the caravan and immediately picked up the intercom. Tune in to the band where the second team was. Second team, please reply when you receive it. The chief commander spoke in a deep voice. Thanks to Lu Ming's blessing. It made his mood swing too much this day. So much so that he, who was usually somewhat silent, said too many words. Now that he was speaking, his throat hurt a little. Second team received. Please instruct the chief commander. Soon, a response from the second team came from inside the intercom. Has the vehicle responsible for escorting the hostages been stopped? The commander-in-chief spoke in a stern voice. When he spoke a national face had a serious expression. Not angry and authoritative. Barriers and rows of spikes have been set up at the intersection. The target vehicle is expected to arrive in five minutes. The second team squad leader in the intercom responded to the commander-in-chief in a serious tone. Very well. Keep in contact at all times. The commander-in-chief put down the intercom again. Secretly, he let out a sigh of relief although he had let Lu Ming go now. But since Lu Ming was hiding in East Main Street, it was only a matter of time before he could be caught, and he didn't take the gold in the first place, nor did he hide the gold in the bank. Before, when the six hostages got on the bus, the two hostages with the robbers' hoods were carrying the robbers' backpacks behind their backs. From their walking posture, it was not difficult to see the sense of weight of the backpack. At that time, the commander-in-chief was puzzled as to what exactly was in the backpack. Thinking about it in conjunction with this moment, there was a high possibility that it was gold inside, hiding the gold in the backpacks of the hostages, and having the hostages bring them to the car. Lu Ming's calculations were really smart. According to the reactions of the hostages in the bank, according to the reactions of the hostages in the bank, he should have been quite stealthy when he did this. The hostages who just stayed in the bank even thought that the gold was still in the bank's toilet, and was not taken away by the hostages who got into the car. Think carefully. This was also more like Lu Ming's style of doing things. Therefore, Commander-in-chief at this time can basically determine that the gold is in the car on the backpack of the six hostages, and what he wants to do at this time is to stop the hostage vehicle, get the gold, to get back to the city, East Main Street, a police car stopped on the side of the road, two police messengers jumped out of the car and walked quickly to an old Mazda parked on the street, from the bank's back door surveillance, the team of police officers knew that Lu Ming had taken a cab after exiting the bank, and follow Lu Ming escape route continued to retrieve the surveillance video. The commander-in-chief found that Lu Ming got out of the car halfway, 
to a remote place, pried a second-hand Mazda to continue to flee. At this time, the two police messengers first glanced at the license plate number, then walked to the side of the car door and reached out to pull the handle. Surprisingly, the car door was pulled open at once. He leaned down and looked towards the car, only to see that underneath the steering wheel of the car, there happened to be a red and a basket with two wires sticking out. Seeing this scene, he was sure that this car was the same Mazda that Lu Ming had driven when he fled. This guy, he's really good, even knows how to turn on the ignition without using the car key. The police sergeant drilled out of the car and spoke with quite a bit of emotion. The slightly younger police constable glanced sideways at the car. Can you start a fire without using the car key? The way it works inside the movie? He frowned in confusion. Sure it can. I caught a car thief years ago who used that method. And he told me how it works. Starting the engine depends on the electric spark produced by the spark plugs. The key tube is the switch that controls the spark plugs energization. So when you don't have the key, you can start the car just as well by energizing the wires. It's just that nowadays, all cars have steering wheel holding systems and chip anti-theft. And the hitching wire method is only useful for this kind of old-fashioned car. The middle-aged police officer spoke eloquently about the young man who had come in. He was very happy to say more. After all, he had come from the same place. Brother Huang, you know a lot. The young police sergeant sniffed and spoke rather admiringly. How much? All learned from these thieves. The middle-aged police sergeant walked faithfully to the front of the car and gently tapped the hood. Smiling, he opened his mouth. Learned from thieves? The young police sergeant had just graduated from the police academy. Today was the first time he heard the argument that he still had to learn from thieves. That's for sure. You don't think these thieves are all stupid, do you? Let me tell you. Everyone locked up inside that big jail is talented. Thieves are better than locksmith companies. And fraudsters know more about the human heart than psychologists. The higher the sentence, the more specialized they are. Maybe if you take out any one of them, they're even better than a famous professor from a university. You're still young. Take your time to learn, the middle-aged police officer said, stood at the front of the car, took out his cell phone, and took a picture of the car, then he pressed the button on the intercom, report, on the streets of East Main Street, the vehicle the suspect was traveling in when he escaped was found, the intercom emitted a nuisance two current sound after, came the response, stay put at the street corner and wait for reinforcements, roger, the middle-aged police messenger rehung the walkie-talkie back to his chest. He then looked towards the dense residential buildings on East Main Street. The buildings on the entire East Main Street could only be described as disorganized. Electric wires hung from the poles like a jumble. The narrow streets were filled with crowded people and vendors. In this kind of mixed place, to find Lu Ming, it was by no means a matter of a moment. He simply walked to the street and sat down at the cold noodle stand. Let the shopkeeper get two bowls of cold noodles to satisfy his craving. What are you still standing there for? Come over and eat the cold noodles. The middle-aged police constable sitting at the cold flower stand looked at the young police constable standing in the sun, raised his arm and shouted, greeting the young police sergeant to come over. The young police officer glanced at the street and hesitated a little, afraid that if he turned around, Lu Ming would escape from under his nose. But the sun overhead was too hot. The sun burned his scalp. It was too much for people to bear. Looking further into the bowl that the middle-aged police officer was carrying, on top of the crystal-clear cold noodles, a layer of red oil was poured. A few emerald green scallions decorated it. Just one look made his saliva secrete like crazy. Under such temptation, the young police officer ended up walking towards the cold flower stand. East Main Street. In a B&B, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, led by the landlord, walked into the room of. Since there were many migrant workers gathered here, many of the local landlords had converted their housing into many single rooms. Converted into many single rooms. In the form of daily rentals, rented to these foreign workers. These landlords are mostly old men and women who don't care what kind of person you are, only need to pay $50 of daily fee, and $10 of key deposit, then they let you stay for a day, if you want to renew the lease, just pay another 50 the next day, unlike hotels and hostels, you have to check your ID, in a place like this, the police messenger would never be able to catch Lu Ming for a while, finally I can get these things off my body, dozens of pounds, still have to pretend to be nothing, it's even more tiring than running a few kilometers underweight. Zhou Hang removed the gold that was originally tied to his body. He paralyzed on the bed as if he was relieved. Although the bed was not as soft as Simmons, it was just a wooden board with a cushion. But for Zhou Hang who was tired for a day, but it was softer than the clouds in the sky. Lu Ming also removed the gold bars on his body. However, he did not paralyze on the bed like Zhou Hang. Instead, he walked over to the window, his gaze clear and cold, gazing out the window. Street. The vendors were hiding in the shade of the street to avoid the blazing sun. An old man selling popcorn sat on the street. 
breathlessly shaking the shiny black popcorn machine. A few children squatted a short distance away, looking at the spinning black guy. A look of both anticipation and fear float from their tiny eyes. Boss, hiding in a place like this, they won't be able to find us at all if they don't search for three to five days. There's no need to worry. Inside the house, Joe Hang propped himself up and sat on the bed, grinning. A cool breeze blew in. Extraordinarily cool. The words had not yet fallen. Only to see. Lu Ming put his index finger to his mouth and made a silencing motion. Hush. Quiet. Sideways ears seemed to be listening to some sound. This expression made Zhou Hang instantly tense up. Crap. Discovered us so quickly? Zhou Hang opened his mouth incredulously. Hurrying to hug his gun, he hid by the door and held his breath. Ready to break out at any time. The inside of the house was deathly silent. The sound of slippers walking came from upstairs. Not far from the street. The yelling of the grinding scissors and kitchen knives echoed breathlessly in the ears. Just then, there was a loud bang. Zhou Hang was so frightened that he hurried to the window, following Lu Ming's gaze, only to see the street entrance, the old man selling popcorn, prying open the hand-cranked popcorn machine with an iron bar. Snow-white popcorn scattered all over the place. A puff of white smoke rose. The children ran over with a whimper and danced around in the white smoke. It blew up. The corners of Lu Ming's mouth rose slightly, revealing a long-lost smile. He then turned around and walked inside the bathroom. There came a sound of clattering water. Seeing this scene, Zhou Hang revealed a puzzled expression. Scared me. So it's a popcorn seller. I thought it was something that blew up. Zhou Hang didn't speak in a good mood, wiping off the sweat on his forehead as if relieved. After putting the gun down, opened his hands and fell straight onto the bed. Not long afterward, he fell into a deep sleep, letting out a purring sound. Bombed? The commander-in-chief's face was expressionless, but his eyes were cold and frightening. The police officers standing next to him bowed their heads. This was the second time they had seen this expression on the chief commander's face. The first time was when the raid failed miserably, with six special duty members killed in action while the robbers were still alive and well. At this moment, everyone was afraid of offending the current commander-in-chief, getting into trouble. And the reason why the commander-in-chief's face was so ugly had to come from half an hour ago. On the highway, a Chinese bus flew by, bringing up a strong wind. It blew the trees on the roadside to shake slightly. Only a few seconds later, another police car followed. Brothers, how about we just stop here? The police messenger is already here to save us. On the minibus, a hostage clutched his seatbelt tightly and glanced back at the police car behind him afterward, said to the hostage in charge of driving. Stop. Stop. The hostage gripped the steering wheel, his eyes looking straight ahead, murmuring and speaking. It wasn't that he didn't want to stop, but he didn't dare to stop. After all, he had a remote control bomb fixed on him by the robbers, and the remote control was still inside the hands of the robbers. The robbers had also said before that the signal range of this remote control bomb was 500 meters. As long as it was out of range, the bomb could not be manipulated. He had already driven the car a long way, but this way around the bend, he did not know if this straight line distance had 500 meters. So, instead of trying to grasp this 500 meter distance, it would be better to drive the car as far away as possible. As far away from the signal range of the remote control as possible. No way, run a little further away. The hostage driving the car spoke with a trembling voice, gripping the steering wheel, he tensed his nerves, just as he was mentally wondering how much longer he had to drive before he could stop. The next second, two poofs of explosions suddenly came from the car's tires, the traveling speed of the Chinese bus dropped, visible to the naked eye, only to see that up ahead, two police cars were parked on the side of the road, the alternating red and blue police lights on the roof of the car flashed nonstop. Dozens of police and special police officers holding firearms and bulletproof shields stopped in front of the barrier. They were standing by. After the car's tires were punctured by the rows of nails on the road, the driver hurriedly stepped on the brakes to prevent a rollover. An ear-splitting sound of brakes rang out. Two dark scratches were left on the road. The Chinese bus skidded for a distance of about 10 meters. It stopped in front of the barrier. After forcing the Chinese bus to a stop, more than a dozen heavily armed special agents surrounded the Chinese bus in a flash. The six hostages on the bus saw the situation. They were too scared to move. Now, everyone with their hands on their heads, get off the bus. The temporary captain of the special police leading this operation shouted with a loud voice. Although after previous analysis, the chances of Lu Ming being on this minibus were slim to none. A small chance did not mean there was none. What's more, if the hostage wasn't coerced, then why didn't he stop earlier and caused himself to chase so far? It was always right to be careful. Don't shoot, we are all hostages. There are no robbers in this car. The hostage driving the car yelled at the top of his voice. Why don't you stop the car if there are no robbers? Get out of the car right now. The temporary captain voiced out somewhat angrily. 
with such a big sun and a dry mouth, it was inevitable that he would be a bit angry. What's more, after chasing so far along the way, this Chinese bus ended up being forced to stop by them. The crowd of special agents naturally had a lot of fire in their hearts. Can't come down. There's a bomb on this bus. You guys be careful too. The hostage who was driving the car cried out, his voice trembling as he returned. Hearing these words, the police officers surrounding the Chinese bus subconsciously moved their feet. Don't panic. Everyone retreat successively. Keep a safe distance. Bring the explosion-proof suits. The temporary captain raised his hand and ordered the police officers to retreat. He then put on his own explosion-proof suit and took the lead. He jumped onto the minibus. What where is the bomb? The temporary captain looked grave and frowned as he spoke. In the bag of that little brother in the back seat. And on me. The hostage driving the car cried out. Trembling. He lifted off to lift a corner of his shirt. Revealing the bomb that had been tied to his body by looming with duct tape. Don't move yet. The temporary captain called out to the driver. Fearing that he would accidentally detonate the bomb. The temporary captain checked the driver's surroundings very carefully. Then carefully cut the tape with scissors. Someone take the bomb away. The temporary captain shouted sideways towards the intercom, and a member of the team darted in. After receiving the bomb in the captain's hand, he quickly left, throwing the drill bomb to the open space by the road. Don't move either. Wait for me to come over. The temporary captain signaled the young man carrying the bag to sit down. It was up to him to personally go over. Coming behind the young man, the temporary captain very carefully pulled open the zipper of the backpack. The entire movement was extremely slow. The hostages were so nervous that they held their breath and clenched their fists. After the backpack was pulled open a crack, the temporary captain took a look inside, revealing a look of surprise and confusion. Then he put his hand into the backpack. The hostages in the car saw the captain reach inside the bag containing the bomb. One by one, their pupils dilated in fear and their hands and feet went numb. However, the next second, what the temporary captain took out from inside that bag, but it made their jaws drop in shock. Surprisingly, it was a small black box with red buttons. Wasn't this the bomb remote control that Lu Ming had previously held in his hands? The taut nerves of the hostages instantly relaxed at this moment. One by one, they were like deflated balloons, paralyzed in their seats. It's finally safe. Sure enough, those who can think of going out and robbing a bank are not normal people. Surprisingly, they put the remote control and the bomb together. If I had known earlier, I wouldn't have had to run so far. I was scared to death all the way. Look at you. We'll have a good drink when we get back. Yeah, let's get married when we get back this time. The warm sunlight shot into the bus through the window. It fell on the smiling faces of the hostages who had survived the robbery. After experiencing life and death, friendship and love were all sublimated. It was like a cozy grand finale inside a Hollywood blockbuster. This guy, he's really out of his element, actually pulling this kind of prank. The temporary captain looked at the remote control in his hand. More and more, he felt that he couldn't understand Lu Ming as a person. To actually put the bomb remote and a bunch of miscellaneous items inside his bag. This anti-conventional style of acting seemed to be comparable to the patients of a certain well-known mental hospital. Subsequently, the temporary captain checked the other backpack and didn't find any problems. Then he turned on the walkie-talkie. The bomb has been cleared. Someone take the hostages away. The special task force members in the distance received the order. Quickly running towards the Chinese bus. Come on, give me the bag. The temporary captain, wearing a heavy blast suit extended his hand towards the hostage carrying the bomb. Although the remote control is inside the bag and we aren't in any danger, but you're willing to risk your life to save us. Thank you. The hostage carrying the bomb, his shoulders slumped as he put the backpack down and solemnly handed it over to the captain. With gratitude, he opened his mouth. The others also turned to the captain, casting grateful gazes. The temporary captain sniffed with an embarrassed face, only wanting to hurry up and take these hostages away. Otherwise, when they realized that this was a drill, it might not be gratitude by then. This is my duty. Everyone get out of the car. The temporary captain opened his mouth with a righteous face and took the backpack from the hostages. But the moment he lowered his head. Instead, he saw a transparent fishing line. The temporary captain pinched the fishing line with two fingers and somewhat inexplicably gently lifted it. Only a pull ring was seen hanging in midair. Slightly swinging. What is this thing? Who tethered it to me? The hostage glanced back behind him with a confused expression. The words had not yet fallen. Boom! A muffled sound came out, scaring everyone in the car. The moment the bomb exploded, paint sprayed out. The entire Chinese bus was filled with colorful powder. It landed on everyone's face. It was green and red. Only the temporary captain, who was wearing an explosion-proof helmet, was able to be spared. The atmosphere in the bus instantly went to zero point of embarrassment. The audience inside the live broadcast, on the other hand, 
saw the hostage's face of paint, but they couldn't help but laugh. Ha 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 ha. The hostage's heart is now collapsing. All the way to fear. The bomb still blew up. What's more important is that the bomb blew up. And inside is actually fucking paint. The captain doesn't know how to explain to these people. It's hard to get oh. This captain is actually considered to be very careful. As soon as he got on the car, he also specifically urged the hostages not to move. But when he saw the remote control, he slacked off. Who would have thought that someone like Lu Ming would have hundreds of minds to set off a bomb? If he has a remote control, he doesn't use it. He has to use a fishing line. What do you know? He's making sure the bomb hits the target precisely. Then how did the bomb explode? Can't you see? That fish line connected to it should be the bomb switch. As long as the hostage dares to take the bag away, the fish line will pull the switch. Then how can we be sure that the bomb will definitely explode? Someone raised another doubt. Before the police messenger arrives, the hostage will definitely not dare to move that bag. Anyway, I don't dare to move it. The only way to open the backpack is to wait for the police messenger to arrive. Then they will definitely see the remote control inside the bag. There's no timer on the bomb. And the remote control is inside the bag. So everyone will rightly assume that it won't blow up. And they'll let their guard down. And since the bomb won't blow up, it's only natural to think of taking it away quickly. Or else holding it home as fireworks? But as soon as you take it, the bomb will blow up. The captain probably forgot that Lu Ming is a veteran. This kind of triggered explosive trap. Anyone who has had experience in jungle combat would do it. The netizens in the live stream saw this, one after another. They brushed out 666 pop-ups on the screen. They marveled at Lu Ming's tawdry operations. Like Lu Ming, even planting a bomb had a thousand layers of routines. A bandit who ensured that he would definitely be able to blow up the police station. This was too dedicated. There was a world of difference from the previous kind of bandits who would raise their hands and surrender as soon as the police officer attacked. However, this is also in line with the reality of the situation. Just like CS this game. The reason why so hot. It's all about fairness. It doesn't give you any bonuses or negative statuses because of your camp. Winning or not. It only depended on the strength of you and your team. What's going on here? The bomb is fake? I've seen this kind of bomb that is paint after exploding in a military program. It seems like it's a bomb for drills. Could this be a drill? On the minibus, the hostages were in a daze for a while. And after the hijacking, they were talking and discussing. At this moment. The temporary captain wiped off the powder on the glass of the explosion-proof helmet with his hand, revealing his two eyes, only to see. The hostages were staring at themselves with gritted teeth. The eyes were bulging out. It was as if they had an undying grudge against him. The temporary captain's throat nodded and swallowed the saliva in his mouth. The brain also raced at this moment, thinking about how to explain to these people. At the same time, he also secretly blessed looming 800 times in his heart. Ah. Uh, Actually this is just a drill. Is everyone still having fun? The temporary captain had a far-fetched smile on his face, hoping to be able to gain the sympathy of the crowd. But the hostages whose faces were covered in paint didn't buy it at all. Happy? I damn near didn't piss myself. Do you think I'm happy? Because of this, I didn't even go to work. If you don't give me compensation, you can't leave today. The hostages swarmed up and were about to find the temporary captain to seek justice. Seeing this situation, the temporary captain didn't dare to stay a moment longer. He turned around and ran. Even though he was wearing a heavy explosion-proof suit, he was still as fast as flying. Head first, he got into the police car and closed the window. Hurry up and drive. Hurry up. Right. Leave a few people behind to properly arrange the hostages here. The sweaty captain took off his explosion-proof helmet and spoke under his breath, urging the police messenger in the driver's seat to start the car. Boss, we've been eliminated. Aren't we not allowed to move? The police messenger frowned slightly, somewhat hesitant. He was afraid that if he didn't follow the requirements of the maneuver, he would be settled after the fall. Dead brain, Lu Ming isn't even here. Why are we staying? If we don't leave, we won't be able to leave. The captain turned his head to look out the car window. Seeing the raging group of hostages approaching, he scratched his head anxiously. The police messenger followed the captain's gaze and was also taken aback by the hostage's stance of trying to eat people. There was no half-hearted hesitation. Hurriedly kicked the gas. Turned the steering wheel. Escaped through the rearview mirror, saw the hostages and the police officers who stayed behind arguing. In his heart, he was secretly glad that he ran fast enough just now. At this time, outside the bank, the commander-in-chief was sitting in the caravan with his brows furrowed. After hearing that many of the police officers who intercepted the hostages' vehicle were killed in action, he only felt this blood vessel in his temple. Throbbing hard, it tugged at his scalp with a vague pain. There seemed to be a voice in his heart that kept questioning him. When did this thief become so difficult to catch? At first, he had hoped that Zhou Hang and Lu Ming could uphold a more serious character. 
treating the maneuvers as actual combat. He was even worried that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang would not perform well, letting this prestigious maneuver end easily. So when he saw Lu Ming's means of controlling the bank hostages, the commander-in-chief still had some surprise and excitement in his heart. However as the maneuver progressed, he realized that his worries were redundant. The performance of these two men had completely exceeded his expectations. Every move seemed crazy, yet there were no loopholes. After all, from Lu Ming's point of view, as a bruiser, since they had come to the point of robbing a bank, either way, he was going to die, so it seemed logical to do anything. It's just that underneath this guy's calm exterior, the spirit seems to be a bit abnormal. While thinking about how to escape, he kept creating problems for the police, either laying hands on the hostages or counting on the police officers. If Lu Ming was next to him right now, the chief commander even wanted to grab Lu Ming's collar and vociferously question him. Are you playing the fucking robber or are you mentally ill? If he really asked that, perhaps with Lu Ming's character, he would have faintly replied back to him. Who would rob a bank without some mental illness? At the thought of this, the chief commander's head hurt again. After rubbing his temples with his hands, his mood calmed down a bit. Right now, the only way to catch Lu Ming was to conduct a carpet search of East Main Street. It was a good thing that the geography of East Main Street was special. To catch Lu Ming, it was like catching a turtle in a jar. As long as they guarded the street entrance, Lu Ming would never have any chance of escaping. If nothing else, it would take at most a day to bring him to justice. At this moment, the commander-in-chief wanted to end this exercise that had given him a headache from the bottom of his heart. If time could be rewound back to before the start of the maneuver, he would definitely give himself two big mouths, telling himself, you're a normal person. Why are you pretending in front of a crazy person? Early evening, the sun slowly sank. The afterglow gave the clouds of the distant mountains, layers of golden splendor. The earth that was scorched by the hot sun finally got a moment's respite. The evening breeze brushed lightly, bringing a hint of coolness. People who had finished their lunch, have gone out on the streets, making East Main Street, more and more lively. However, today's streets seem to be more crowded than, Auntie, have you seen these two people? A uniformed police officer, holding a portrait of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang in his hand, was asking an old lady, You want shrimp? There's a restaurant at the intersection ahead. The old lady opened her mouth in a serious manner. The answer was not what was asked. It was obvious that there was some deafness. Young man, have you seen these two people? Another police messenger, on the other hand, chose to question a young man. The young man took off his headphones and shook his head after squinting at Lu Ming's portrait. Haven't seen it, I just came back from work. Along the way, all of them would see these police agents who went door to door, searching for Lu Ming. Due to the, the existence of the live broadcast, it would expose where Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were hiding. So the live broadcast about the maneuvers was not shown in this city for the time being. The people on East Main Street, naturally, wouldn't know that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were hiding in. The search and arrest was not much different from what happened in reality. It was nothing more than a door-to-door -door search. Night crept into the sky. The entire land was shrouded in darkness. This tiny place, East Main Street, was a different kind of bustling. Only two young men walked into a barbecue restaurant one after the other. After ordering some kebabs and beer, they sat down in a window seat. Boss, it's only 8 o'clock and you're hungry? I haven't even slept enough. Zhou Hang yawned and opened his mouth. Zhou Hang, who was originally in deep sleep, was called up by Lu Ming, taking a look at the wall clock. The needle only pointed to 8 o'clock. He had been tired all day, and it was not easy to have a chance to rest. There was inevitably resentment in his heart. Although this East Main Street, with its high flow of people, for them to find us in a moment, the possibility is too low. But it doesn't mean there isn't such a possibility. It's off-duty time. Basically everyone has returned home. It's also the time when their search efforts are focused. It's too dangerous to continue staying in the BNB house. Lu Ming detailed his reasons for calling Zhou Hang up for a barbecue. Indeed, at this time of the day, the police messenger would almost never go empty. It was the time when the searches were the most intense. Hiding in the house would instead make it easier to get caught. It would be better to come to the street to eat in a big way, and then go back after this period of time. Now that there were so many people on the street, to find Lu Ming and Zhou Hang in this crowded crowd, it was undoubtedly a needle in a haystack. However, this approach wouldn't work tomorrow. The shopkeepers and residents around here might not be able to remember his and Zhou Hang's appearance, but looking at them again, it would be impossible to say. By then, walking down the street like this again, he might be caught by the enthusiastic crowd in the next second. After all, there were very few people who could not forget a glance, and those who could forget a glance were just as few. After surviving today, Lu Ming must think of other ways to hide his tracks. Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming's words. He froze for a moment. Suddenly, he realized that this brother of his, who had passed through life, 
was somewhat unfamiliar. Silently in his heart, he prayed that Lu Ming would never take a detour in the future. Otherwise, Ten of himself probably wouldn't be able to catch Lu Ming. Very quickly, the skewers were brought to the table. The two of them ate one skewer for you and one for me. The delicious meat juice splashed around in their mouths. Then drinking a glass of malt-flavored cold beer, it was a moment of ice that went from the throat all the way to the inside of the stomach. A beautiful burp as you put the glass down. The heat of the day, with this hiccup dissipated, Zhou Hang thought that one bottle was not too much, and wanted the boss to come back for a few more bottles. However, he was stopped by Lu Ming. That's enough. One drink to relieve the heat is enough. It's still the time to indulge. Drinking too much will be a mistake. Lu Ming spoke calmly and took away the beer cup in Zhou Hang's hand. Zhou Hang knew that the maneuver was not over and he could not relax yet. It could only sigh helplessly. Picking up a handful of kebabs, he jerked them into his mouth as if he were a cow chewing on oysters. During this period, the two of them did not drink again except for eating. Zhou Hang, the big appetite king, was like grief for the sake of food. Hardly one person finished two more than two kilograms of grilled fish. By the time it was around 11 o'clock, Lu Ming told him to leave. He was already so full that he was burping. When the two of them walked out of the barbecue store, most of the passers-by on the street had already been reduced. The police officers in charge of the search basically didn't see much either. After all, by this time, those who got up early had already gone to bed. At night, people in the neighborhood still have to work tomorrow. A further house-to-house -house search would inevitably cause public anger. Even if this is not a drill, but a real hunt for suspects. Even if this wasn't a drill, but a real hunt for a suspect, they wouldn't choose to go door to door at this time of day. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang arrived at the two-story residential building that they had rented before. Before walking in, Lu Ming first looked around. Only then did he take out his key and open the door. He went up the stairs. When he came to the door, Lu Ming held the doorknob, but hesitated to open the door. At the same time, inside the sweltering heat of the room, the heavily armed police officer's clothes had long been drenched in sweat. The palms holding the pistols were also full of sweat. At this moment, they heard the movement outside the door. All of them held their breath, not even dare to breathe. They were afraid that if they made a little noise, they would let Lu Ming escape. The reason why they chose to hide in the house. The reason why they chose to hide in the house instead of setting up an encirclement outside. It was because they were afraid of being discovered by the extremely vigilant Lu Ming. After all, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were armed and this place was full of residents. Once the two of them realized that they were holding hostages as blackmail, then the police will once again fall into a passive situation. The door handle is slowly turning. Several pistols were already aimed at the door. As long as Lu Ming pulled the trigger the moment he opened the door, this headache-inducing maneuver will come to an end. Open up. Hurry up. I'm dying of heat in this room. Every cop is praying for Lu Ming to open the door. Creak. The wooden door cracked open, and the golden light from the hallway filtered in. A narrow shadow was stretched out. All the police officers who were ready to shoot stood up in unison. No one is allowed to move. Move and you will be shot. A group of people shouted in unison. They then swarmed over Lu Ming and pinned him to the ground. But when they lifted Lu Ming's head up, only then did they realize that this person wasn't Lu Ming at all. Instead, it was a stranger. Sir, don't shoot. I'm a good citizen ah. The stranger was so terrified that even his voice was shaking as he spoke. Who are you? Why are you here? The police officer leading the team was stunned when he saw the strange man. He took a step forward, looked at the unfamiliar man in front of him, and spoke in a stern voice. Just now, two people came to eat inside my store and asked me to send over another roasted fish. The key is what he gave me. The strange man spoke with a trembling voice, aggrieved to the point of wanting to cry. After all, just now, being pressed by so many police officers, his arm almost pouted and broke. It was all still hurting now. The police messenger looked down. There was indeed a takeout box containing grilled fish on the ground. The butter inside had already flowed all over the ground. Fuck. Let him get away again. Which store is it? The police officer sniffed and hurriedly pursued the question. Opening his mouth and cursing directly was enough to see the anger in his heart. Turn left at the intersection ahead. Go straight for a hundred meters. Then turn right. Piggy's grilled fish shop. The strange man's words just fell. He hurriedly said the address of his store. The other police officer then spoke. I'll lead the men to chase after them first. You report to the top. After saying that, several police officers then hurriedly left. A young police constable, looking at his colleague who ran away, had a flash of loss in his eyes. At this time, the middle-aged police officer next to him gently patted his shoulder. Speaking out to comfort him, he said, The Lu Ming that everyone failed to find was found by you. You've done a great job. Tell me how you knew that Lu Ming lived here? Facing his senior's praise, the young police sergeant said somewhat coyly, when the search operation began, 
I realized that although this kind of carpet search wouldn't miss anything, it was unlikely that we could find Lu Ming in a short period of time with just this amount of manpower. So I went to the neighborhood committee's amas and asked them to help find him. I also didn't realize that each of them had built a group. After sending the portraits of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang inside the group, there was news soon after. But by the time we got here, they had already left. Speaking here, he blushed red and scratched his head in embarrassment. Obviously faced with compliments. He was still more or less shy in his heart. Not bad. You still know how to take the mass line. Promising. We as police officers have to do this if we want to arrest people. Not only do you have to deal with criminals, you also have to deal with the masses. I just always tell them, sitting in the office all day long, you can't handle cases. You're better than them. Go, I'll take you to a place, the middle-aged police officer said, waving his hand towards the young police officer, leading him headlong inside the deep alleyway. At the same time, in another day room, boss, you were living well there just now. Why did you change places again? Joe Hang was puzzled and opened his mouth. Cunning rabbits have three caves. There are many people. I don't feel at ease. Lu Ming took out an apple from inside the plastic bag and held it in his hand. With a clear and cold gaze, he gazed at the reddish apple. It seemed to have some thoughts. I think you're just being too careful. It's so complicated here. We definitely won't be found in a day or two. Zhou Hang opened his mouth in disbelief, saying that he sat his butt down opposite Lu Ming. Just as he sat down, he immediately popped up. Not good. Zhou Hang exclaimed in shock. Lu Ming, who was preparing to peel an apple, saw his startled appearance. The corners of his mouth rose slightly, but what Zhou Hang said next made him incomparably sweaty. Boss, the grilled fish you had the boss deliver just now. The address was filled in wrong. Zhou Hang slapped his thigh, seemingly distressed by the plate of grilled fish. Lu Ming raised his eyelids and looked at Zhou Hang. In his heart, he was helpless. Did he really take himself as a king of appetizers? That delivery of grilled fish, was it for eating? That was for spooking snakes. This place can just see the store where we ate barbecue. Someone should be here by now. Lu Ming spoke with a calm expression. Picking up the knife on the table, he began to peel off the skin of the apple bit by bit. People? What people? Zhou Hang frowned slightly, very confused. Slowly walking to the window, he looked towards the street. As expected, that piggy's baked fish could just be seen from here. Just when he was surprised what kind of people would come, only to see a few police officers hurriedly running into the grilled fish store. After a short while, they came panting to the door and looked around. Seeing this, Zhou Hang was so frightened that he hurriedly shrunk his head back, leaning against the window. He looked at Lu Ming with a shocked expression. He then lowered his head and bent over like a dog thief to Lu Ming's side. Boss, the police messenger just went to that barbecue restaurant. It seems like they were just looking for us. Zhou Hang lowered his voice and opened his mouth in a low voice, afraid that downstairs, a few hundred meters away, the police messenger would hear it. It's not as if. Lu Ming spoke with indifferent eyes. The small knife in his hand was held very steadily. It was as if he was doing a precise peeling surgery on the apple in his hand. Under the slight rotation of the other hand, the thin, cicada-like apple skin grew longer and longer. Even the thickness was highly uniform. Peeling an apple was not difficult. But to imagine peeling off an apple skin so thin that it was almost transparent. Yet it was difficult to do so. Crap, these strips are fast enough. Luckily, boss, you're careful enough or else you'd really be caught. Zhou Hang opened his mouth with a palpitating heart, just when he was glad to have dodged a bullet. Suddenly, he remembered another particularly important thing. Finished, boss, we didn't take our guns and gold. Zhou Hang was so angry that he slapped his head, didn't take the gold, so this day wasn't a waste of time? Under the bed, Lu Ming spoke quietly. A knife sliced off the long apple skin. The peeled apple had been perfectly presented in his hands. The entire curved surface of the apple was very smooth without any angular bumps. What it was originally, it was still what it was now. Only the outer layer of reddish apple skin was missing. Only the golden-colored flesh remained. That apple, in his hands, perfectly like a work of art, just like the way he did things, precise to the extreme. Since he is such a person who strives for perfection, how could he forget to take away the gold? Zhou Hang lifted the bedsheet and bent down to look under the bed, only to see two backpacks placed underneath. Zhou Hang reached out to tug on the bag, but found it dead heavy. He had to pull it out. Pulling the bag out, he opened the zipper for a moment. A blinding golden light shone on his face. It made him excited. Crap, wasn't the gold in the place where we were staying before? How come it's here? Zhou Hang spoke incredulously. Very excitedly, he looked at Lu Ming. Lu Ming took a bite of the apple, and a faint fruity flavor spread in his mouth. Under careful chewing, the flesh broke apart, releasing more of the apple's flavor. The sweet and sour juice splashed around on his tongue. 
It was only until all the juice was squeezed dry that the pulp was swallowed. Indifferent eyes fell on Zhou Hang. There seemed to be some sympathy. Do you have to ask this too? When you were asleep, I brought the gold over here. Lu Ming spoke helplessly, looking at Zhou Hang's excited appearance. Inside his mind, he involuntarily remembered that video of the gorilla watching people do magic tricks. East Main Street Street Corner. The police officers had already set up a barrier here at this time. Inside the guardhouse, 24-hour shifts were on duty, paying close attention to the pedestrians coming and going. Not only that, in order to prevent Lu Ming from escaping, an L-face recognition system had even been installed. As long as Lu Ming's face dared to appear here, it would immediately trigger the alarm. Not to mention a person. Even a fly would be delusional enough to try to escape from under the eyes of a police officer. At the same time, outside the bank square, the temporary command headquarters, general team, still haven't caught Lu Ming. The caravan. The police officer who had come to report on the arrest operation opened his mouth rather regretfully. Didn't catch it? I know. Go rest. The chief commander looked at the map on the table and spoke calmly. He didn't seem to be surprised by this result. After all, it would be a real surprise if it was really caught. Speaking of which, this guy, Lu Ming, was indeed a little too cautious. He had just rented a day room, and hadn't even lived in it for a few hours before moving. What kind of perverted anti-surveillance ability is this? I'm afraid that he wasn't born thinking that he would be caught someday, right? However, the time left for Lu Ming was only tonight. With such a vigorous manhunt, tomorrow should be able to bring this exercise to a perfect conclusion. The commander-in-chief put the seat down, leaning back in his chair. He looked out the car window at the stars that filled the sky and let out a long breath. These last few days, the weather was hot. He was also a bit tired now after a busy day. It had only been a few minutes since he had leaned back in the chair. His eyelids slowly closed as if they were falling. In this small space where he couldn't even stretch his feet straight, the commander-in-chief was still sleeping very soundly. This is no wonder. After all, every police officer must learn the skill of falling asleep in the car for a second. Because when tracking suspects, sometimes sitting inside the car for days at a time, in order to prevent the suspect from escaping, there must be someone on the lookout 24 hours a day. Even eat, drink and sleep in the car. You can't let up for a second. If you don't sleep one second, you may let the suspect go the next second because of napping. In order to squat. A few days down, the whole person stinks. It is the beggar's sea. We'll also cast a contemptuous look. This is all commonplace. It's not easy to be a police messenger. And it's even more difficult to be a dedicated police messenger. The commander-in-chief, as a police messenger from the front line, naturally will also have this ability to fall asleep in a second. The lights of all the houses have been extinguished. In the day rental room, Zhou Hang, who was sleeping on the other bed, started snoring again. Lu Ming, on the other hand, leaned on the bed, holding a book in his hand. He was flipping through it. This book, he took advantage of Zhou Hang's nap today. He went to the bookstore to buy it. It wasn't because of how much Lu Ming loved to learn, but because after he came out of the bank, the system that hadn't moved for a long time, surprisingly, a prompt came through. Lu Ming closed the book and sat cross-legged on his bed. A light blue curtain of light unfolded before his eyes. Godly play system, host, Lu Ming, attribute panel, physical ability, 28, intelligence, 23, spirit, 31, charisma, 25, novice task, play as a robber and win the current maneuver. Winning will get you a great reward. Current task completion progress, 70%. Some rewards have been sent to the host's backpack. False witness mastery, beginner, false witness mastery, beginner. Stealing mastery, beginner. Fraud mastery. Talent skill book natural talent. Host's comprehension is increased by 50%. And memory is increased by 50%. Permanent effect. The so-called rewards were these few skills given by the system. At first, Lu Ming, who had read a few web novels. He was still very much looking forward to it, but now that he took a look, he was a little bit saddened by the tears and laughter. Take a good look at what the system had given. False testimony, fraud, theft, these skills, used poorly is three to five years, used well is decades to indefinite, but you can't say he's completely useless. Good thing the system wasn't completely inappropriate. Also gave him a natural skill, natural talent, in order to experiment whether or not it was effective. Lu Ming then went inside the bookstore and bought a few books. He already had a high IQ. With the addition of his natural talent skill, he really did learn everything very quickly. It could almost be said that he could learn at the first glance, and he also could not forget it, even obscure medical books. He was also able to learn it within a few hours. Originally, Lu Ming was worried that with the narrowing down of the search, he would most likely be caught tomorrow. After all, although this East Main Street was good for hiding, 
It was easy to get in but hard to get out, in addition to the street entrance being accessible. All around was surrounded by the moat. Plus it's summer now, the rainy season, the water level rises, the river is turbulent. Even a cow jumping down would be swept away by the raging river, not to mention an individual. It was very dangerous to jump in at the risk of jumping in. After all, this is just a drill. What's the point of playing with your life? It was good that there was now the help of the system. This worry was completely superfluous. Of course, if the commander-in-chief who was sleeping inside the caravan at this time, knowing that the suspect he has been chasing is a traveler with a system, he would probably be so angry that he would jump to his feet, even pointing at Lu Ming's nose and cursing. You can't fucking afford to play. Starting to open up? However, Lu Ming also had a reason to say, hundreds of people to catch too. Do not start hanging that realistic? After reading a few books, Lu Ming also took a short nap. When he opened his eyes again, the sky was already bright. The reason why he was able to sleep peacefully here for the night, it was because he knew that the police messenger wouldn't find their hiding place so quickly like last time. First of all, Lu Ming had used some cosmetics to change his appearance when he rented the room. Without a closer look, one wouldn't be able to tell it was him at all. Secondly, this day room was rented by him while Zhou Hang was asleep and he came out alone. The target changed from two people to one. He also brought Zhou Hang over at night while the landlord was asleep. Even if the landlord received a message from the police messenger, he would also subconsciously pay attention to a room with two people living in it, thinking that Lu Ming was only living here alone. However, this was only able to settle down for one night. Soon the police messenger would check here. At that time, even if he also used cosmetics to change Zhou Hang's appearance, he would still be exposed. After all, two big men are not a couple. Sleeping in the same room, the target is too big. Inevitably, it will cause suspicion. So it is also necessary to think of a new hiding place before it is too late. Lu Ming shook the sleeping Zhou Hang awake and said in a nonchalant tone, It's time to go. Zhou Hang opened his sleepy eyes. Reaching out, he rubbed his eyes, hurriedly turned over and got out of bed, putting on his clothes. After briefly washing up, he looked towards the window with some concern. Boss, now that there are police officers outside, where are we going to hide? Zhou Hang looked at the few police officers who hurriedly walked by on the street. Now was the time to really realize how hard it was to be a robber. Just like a rat, you only dare to hide, can't even see the light. Hospital. Lu Ming calmly opened his mouth. Hearing this, Zhou Hang froze for a moment, then pulled Lu Ming's arm. Brother, are you sick? Is it serious? Zhou Hang asked Lu Ming with a tightly locked brow. Very worried. The look was rarely serious. Looking at Zhou Hang's concerned look, Lu Ming, who was always cool, had a rare warmth rising in his heart. After freezing for a moment, he threw Zhou Hang a set of clothes. Zhou Hang opened it and saw that it was a flat and clean suit. Boss, we're running away. We don't need to dress in such a high-profile manner, right? Zhou Hang opened his mouth in doubt. In his opinion, running should be incomparably low-profile. Dress plainly. It was best to dress like a migrant worker. Only then would it not be easy to attract the attention of the police. Where would someone run away and wear a suit and tie? You put it on first and see if it fits. Lu Ming didn't have any unnecessary nonsense. While speaking, he had already taken off the shirt on his body, revealing those solid and powerful muscles. Similarly, he took out a suit and changed into it. He himself was tall. Even though he had already retired from the army, his figure was still well maintained. Now after putting on that straight suit, he looked gentle and elegant. The hostility in his eyes earlier had also subsided by a few points. Zhou Hang frowned slightly, although he didn't know why Lu Ming suddenly asked him to change his suit. But he also knew that Lu Ming definitely had his own plans, so he followed and changed into the suit. Zhou Hang was tall and stout. The suit was instantly taut on his body. The body type was like action star Ma Dongxi. It belonged to the category of big pussy pockets with a storm. As he was worried about him straining the suit off the line, Lu Ming reminded with a headache. Try to keep the arc of movement as small as possible. Zhou Hang pulled on his suit and nodded repeatedly. After changing his clothes, Zhou Hang still hadn't figured out why Lu Ming had changed his clothes. After all, it wasn't very convenient to move around in this suit. If he ran a little faster, he was afraid that the pants would split. Boss, what are we suddenly changing our suits for? Zhou Hang opened his mouth in confusion, very uncomfortably pulling on his clothes. Interview. Lu Ming weakly returned, then threw Zhou Hang a few small books. Zhou Hang caught them in a panic, opened it and took a look, completely dumbfounded. Medical school graduation certificate? License to practice medicine? Boss, where did you get these things? And how does this stuff look more real than real? Zhou Hang looked at Lu Ming's back and spoke incredulously. As he spoke, his eyes widened, holding that certificate. He even met the light and looked at it, as if he wanted to see if there was a watermark inside. 
You did it while you were asleep. Lu Ming spoke calmly. When he turned back, his entire appearance changed. Zhou Hang stood up from the bed as if he had seen a ghost. He carefully surveyed the Lu Ming in front of him. Crap, brother, you've changed your face? How come I didn't know you could put on makeup? Zhou Hang muttered and opened his mouth, reaching out to touch it. However, he was grabbed by Lu Ming. I learned it last night, don't touch it. I'll paint one for you too. Lu Ming said, opening the makeup box. It began to paint on Zhou Hang's face. Not long after, Zhou Hang also changed his face just like Lu Ming. It had to be said, the makeup technology nowadays was simply Asian evil magic. Unless one got close enough to take a closer look, one simply couldn't see any clues. And now Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's appearance were both 8 or 9% similar to the person on the documents, together with the high imitation fake ID that Lu Ming had made. It was completely able to fool ordinary people. All right, let's go. Lu Ming gently patted Zhou Hang's shoulder. He then carried his bag and turned to leave. Zhou Hang was still marveling at his unfamiliar self in the mirror. Only when he turned back did he realize that Lu Ming had already left. He hurriedly put on the backpack with the gold on it and went after Lu Ming. The audience in the live broadcast room, threw the camera on Zhou Hang's body, saw Lu Ming's face changing process. One by one, they were so surprised that their jaws dropped. Crap, this is too bullish. This makeup technique, isn't it better than those beauty bloggers? If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it was the same person. It turns out that Lu Ming drummed all night last night, but he was actually making a fake ID. He still has this skill? But the fake certificate do again real. People online a check not find out? How can they check? Why do you think Lu Ming is wearing makeup? It's because his documents are made according to the official website. And when you check online, hey, he's the same in person as he is in the photo. That's awesome. Even being a robber is so demanding now? Lu Ming is simply an all-rounder. I'm convinced. This Lu Ming is also too damn awesome. Brothers, don't ask me why I watched the live broadcast on my knees. Now I feel that the title of high IQ robber is no longer worthy of Lu Ming. I would like to call him the all-round Lu Ming. The netizens completely worshipped this operation of Lu Ming's, but they didn't know that Lu Ming's superior makeup skills were actually learned by brushing videos all night last night. With the blessing of the system's skill natural talent, the speed at which he learned things had far surpassed normal people. Road. Zhou Hang was very dissatisfied and said to Lu Ming, Boss, can you stop doing things while I'm asleep every time? This makes me very worried ah. At this time, Zhou Hang sort of spoke from his heart. Originally, for this exercise, he had brought Lu Ming because he wanted to have more helpers. He didn't realize that Lu Ming's performance had really surprised him a bit. To describe it in two words, professional. He was really worried that after he fell asleep, this good brother of his would sneak around and blow up the commander-in-chief's car. You're the one who always sleeps when I'm doing something. Lu Ming looked straight ahead and spoke nonchalantly. Hearing this, Zhou Hang's old face reddened, and he hemmed and hawed. It's mainly because I'm relieved that you do things. Plus, I was also too tired yesterday. Right, what did you bring me that fake license for? And where are we going now? Zhou Hang remembered the fake certificate that Lu Ming had just given him. Curiously, he asked Lu Ming. To the hospital? Of course. Lu Ming returned without thinking, and his footsteps quickened by a few points. It wasn't much longer. The two arrived at the entrance of the health hospital on East Main Street. Looking at the patients and family members coming and going outside the door. Zhou Hang was a little apprehensive inside, because next, what Lu Ming was going to do, it really left him with no bottom line. Brother Lu, can you really interview for attending physician? How come I don't remember you knowing medicine? Why don't we take advantage of the fact that we've put on makeup now and just walk out onto the street to try it out? Zhou Hang was drumming in his heart, wondering why Lu Ming chose to hide in the hospital. Instead of walking out directly onto East Main Street, makeup can only fool ordinary people. Experienced police officers who know people look at the bone phase. Going now is just shooting yourself in the foot. Lu Ming looked at the hospital ahead and spoke calmly. He wasn't the type of person who existed to take chances. After all, people who had a lucky heart were often the most unfortunate. Then we don't have to impersonate a doctor, right? Is it okay to impersonate the others? A security guard? A porter? Or something? Zhou Hang really didn't have a bottom in his heart. For him, the difficulty of the profession of a doctor was just too high. The risk of exposure was naturally high as well. No way. Lu Ming simply rejected Zhou Hang's proposal. Carrying his bag, he walked straight towards the hospital. Actually, choosing to impersonate a doctor was not a whim. It was the fact that the doctor wore a mask for a long time, reducing the risk of exposure. And on the other hand the doctor was highly specialized. He and Zhou Hang were both soldiers. Who would have thought that they would be able to successfully enter the hospital? Being a doctor? So, hiding in the hospital was the hardest place for the police messenger to find them. It had to be said that hospitals were really earning money. 
especially this kind of private hospital. It's only been open for less than two years. Several inpatient buildings were expanded, making the hospital's manpower not quite enough. At this time, the dean was sitting in his office looking through his resume. Suddenly, he heard a knock on the door from outside. Come in. The door to the office opened. Only Lu Ming, who was carrying a bag, was seen. Unhurriedly, he walked in. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, followed behind him with a sheepish look on his face. Hello, you are Dr. Zhang, right? When the dean saw Lu Ming, he stood up enthusiastically, shaking hands with him. His face was full of smiles as he spoke, and he looked like he was looking for talent. Hello, Dean Chen. Lu Ming nodded slightly and spoke courteously, with a decent demeanor. He truly looked like a well-read young doctor. And this one next to you is? The dean glanced at the sweaty Zhou Hang behind Lu Ming. Smiling, he asked. This is my assistant. Lu Ming spoke with a smile on his face. He glanced back at Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang didn't dare to use his hand to wipe the sweat from his head, so he could only grin and smile at the dean. Seeing Zhou Hang's stiff smile, the dean could not help but stare. Thinking to himself which black bear has become a spirit and is learning to wear a suit? Dean, let's talk about my work? Lu Ming, who was on the side, reminded in a gentle manner, pulling the dean back to reality from his fantasies. He he he. Right right right. Please sit please sit. Little young, please make a pot of tea for the office. The dean hurriedly greeted Lu Ming and sat down. The young female nurse walked in holding the teapot, seeing Lu Ming sitting on the sofa. For a moment, she couldn't help but be in the throes of spring, thinking to herself that this young man who had come to apply for a job as a doctor was also too handsome. But when her gaze moved to the smiling Zhou Hang's face, it was like a black cloud appeared above her head. It made the entire face darken. The subtext seemed to say, this person is so obscene. After pouring the tea, he hurriedly left as if escaping. In the office, after the dean and Lu Ming exchanged a few polite words, he then began to pretend to be modest and asked Lu Ming about some of his specialized knowledge. He didn't want to see how many kilograms Lu Ming had. Instead, he was thinking that when Lu Ming couldn't answer, he could say a few words himself. He could say a word or two himself. Aya, uh, you don't even know this. It seems like you'll have to learn from us in the future. Once this sentence was uttered, then wait until the stage of discussing treatment. It would be possible to lower Lu Ming's salary by another notch. This ploy was familiar to anyone who went out on the street and bargained a lot. Take a piece of clothing. Oops. Your clothes aren't of good quality. Take an apple. Oops. Your apple has been bitten by a bug. When you say these words, at the same time with a look of contempt, it works wonders. You think he can't see it? Actually, it's just to press the price. However, for the questions that the dean continuously asked, Lu Ming was able to answer them all in a very professional manner. Zhou Hang, who was on the side, saw Lu Ming who was able to answer the questions fluently. His eyes were as wide as bronze bells. He was in disbelief. In his heart, he was thinking, Big brother, did you become a doctor behind my back? But he didn't know that both the dean and Lu Ming were now in a difficult situation. A dean who was stingy to the extreme. He wanted to use the problem to make it difficult for Lu Ming. He wanted to suppress Lu Ming's treatment. One was Lu Ming, who was disguised as a doctor. He was afraid that he would not answer professionally enough and the dean would see the cracks although both of them were smiling now. In fact, at this moment in their hearts, they were both greeting each other's parents. Dr. Zhang is really knowledgeable, worthy of being a high achiever who has studied abroad. The dean took a sip from his teacup and spoke with a smile on his face, when he lowered his head, that Li Moha like small eyes. However, let out a flash of refined light that landed on Lu Ming. Secretly, he slandered. This guy is simply an encyclopedia, right? How is it that a surgeon even knows everything about obstetrics and gynecology? Lu Ming, on the other hand, also picked up the tea on the table and took a sip, smiling amiably, he returned, I usually like to read books, so I know a little bit about everything, can't talk about precision, just a little bit of, a little bit of, knowledge, in that seemingly gentle eyes, killing intent lurks, in his heart, the same secret slander, this old man has too many problems, always hold on to me not to let go, yesterday in the book to read things a little not enough, or showdown, directly pull out a gun and threaten him? The atmosphere became tense for a moment. The office was dead silent. The two people's eyes docked at the place. If a fly flew by, it would definitely be electrocuted by the electric light in midair. There was a cooing sound. It was the sound of Zhou Hang swallowing his saliva as he sat next to Lu Ming. He was truly afraid that this old man, Dean, would play with fire. If he really annoyed Lu Ming and pulled out the gun inside his bag, it was estimated that the Dean would be scared half to death. However, his worries were obviously a bit redundant, because there wasn't much left inside the dean's stomach. Ahem, 
but Dean coughed twice and took the lead in breaking the calm. Dr. Jang, our hospital's salary isn't high. I heard that you just came back from abroad and also served in a well-known big hospital for three years. Can I take the liberty of asking why you're thinking of coming to our hospital? The dean lifted his teacup, huffed and blew the hot air from the surface, and asked with a smile. Hearing this, Lu Ming couldn't help but hesitate a little. It was. This small hospital wants resources without resources, wants conditions without conditions. I'm a high school student or have experience working in a well-known hospital. Why would I give up a high-paying job to serve in this hospital? If the reasons were not sufficient, it would inevitably arouse suspicion. Lu Ming's eyes blinked, and he inadvertently saw the little nurse hiding outside peeking at him. A perfect answer came to mind. It's simple. I like a nurse in your hospital. Lu Ming replied back without his eyes turning red. When Zhou Hang and the dean heard this, they both barely managed to spit out the tea in their mouths. Although this reason sounded a bit far-fetched, yet it made it impossible to refute. A reason that could make a doctor like Lu Ming condescend to a small hospital. It seemed that there were only emotional reasons. Cough cough. So that's how it is. There aren't many people who are as dedicated as Dr. Jen. I appreciate you. You can come to work tomorrow, but the salary for the trial period is not high. And since our hospital is basically full now, we might not be able to hire your assistant. The dean coughed twice, praising Lu Ming without mincing words. In his heart, he was stealing joy, thinking that he had picked up a treasure this time. After all, with Lu Ming's resume, coming to their hospital would be like a phoenix flying into a chicken's nest. But Lu Ming would come to their hospital because of emotional reasons. That would mean that any amount of salary would be able to take him down. And looking at Lu Ming's relationship with Zhou Hang, he could also whore out Zhou Hang's manpower in the meantime. At this time, the nurse who was eavesdropping outside, hearing Lu Ming's words, a flash of scarlet rose on her pretty face, hurrying to cover her cheeks with her hands, secretly speculating, just now when I poured in tea, he seemed to look at me, it couldn't be me that he likes, right? The more the little nurse thought about it, the more ashamed she felt, the heart was like a deer in headlights, hearing the commotion coming from inside the office, she hurriedly turned her head and ran away, colleagues who passed by, seeing this red-faced appearance of hers, were surprised, East Main Street, as the search operation proceeded, the area where Lu Ming was able to hide was quickly narrowed down, by noon, in the entire East Main Street, there was only the last residential building left, the sun at noon began to become poisonous, heat waves filled the air, there wasn't even a hint of wind, a senile old dog lay by the door, it was sickly and sleepy, a robin on a distant branch made a raucous sound breathlessly, go, worthy, this ragged cloak, war, battle, ah, with the humblest of dreams, who says stand in the light of, a singing schoolboy, while walking, was gesticulating in a very middle-aged manner, as he was singing, he turned the corner, that emotionally charged singing voice gradually became faint, only to see, he stared blankly at the special agent ambushed inside the alley, in his heart, he was shocked and scared, but the lyrics engraved on his young soul. Still, like a reflex, they came out of his mouth. Only then is it counted as a hero. When the words just fell, the special duty member next to him covered his mouth. A hand held him away. A white cloud slowly floated through the air, shadows covering the entire residential building. The heavily armed special agents approached the residential building with lightning speed. During the fast running process, the hand signals of the lead special agent changed rapidly. A team quickly and methodically split into two. One team circled around to the back of the residential building and surrounded the entire building. The other team, on the other hand, came straight to the main entrance. Four special agents hid on either side of the doorway, and one special agent took out a key, opened the gate. Several people quickly and carefully entered the residential building. As for why they didn't kick it open and then yell out freeze, this kind of handsome entrance? That was because kicking open a sturdy security door with your foot was not an easy task and this is an exercise, if you break a neighbor's door, you have to pay for it, so one could only find the key beforehand, after entering the residential building, the special duty squad quickly searched every room, but in the end, they only came out of the residential building with their heads hanging down, outside the bank, the entire east street has been searched, and we didn't find Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, RV, the commander-in-chief heard his subordinates report and opened his mouth in doubt, through the surveillance along the way, he was certain that Lu Ming had hidden inside East Main Street, but the police messenger had blocked off the street entrance at the first opportunity. Other than the street entrance as a place of entry and exit, the only way to leave was to cross the river. But now the river was rising. The water level was at least 7 or 8 meters, and the river is turbulent. Swimming across, simply unrealistic. Why just cannot find it? The commander-in-chief was also a bit puzzled. 
but he didn't believe that Lu Ming could fly and hide. There must be something missing. In his heart, he kept thinking, what exactly is the place that allows Lu Ming to escape this manhunt? You have to know that this search operation, the police had gone from house to house. They had even mobilized the public base and had the help of the enthusiastic neighborhood committee ants. This kind of effort, and still can't find Lu Ming? It was really a bit unbelievable. Could he have already run away? The squad leader next to him asked with an uncertain tone. All the exits have been blocked by us. He doesn't have a chance. He must still be in East Main Street. Send more men. Keep looking. If we don't find him once, find him a second time. Right. Remember to tell everyone that the center of gravity shouldn't just be on residential areas, residential buildings. Other places are also possible. The chief commander narrowed his eyes slightly and spoke calmly. The words fell. He casually threw the marker in his hand on the table. And at this moment, the map spread out on the table had already been marked with quite a few circles by the chief commander with a marker. Obviously, although he wasn't at the scene on East Main Street, the chief commander hadn't been idle and had been studying Lu Ming's movements through the map. Yes, chief commander, I'll go down and make arrangements. That squad leader saluted the chief commander, then turned around and went to prepare for the second search operation. Healthy hospital. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had already moved into the temporary dormitory arranged by the hospital. Along the way, the handsome Lu Ming had attracted the attention of many female nurses, although he had changed his face. But nay, it was hard to change something like temperament, plus his bone appearance was already outstanding. He was also a high school student. Naturally, he became the object of attention for these nurses inside the hospital. You seem to be very popular, eh? Who are you looking at? Speak to your buddies. I'll be your wingman. Zhou Hang raised an eyebrow. Using his arm to gently corner Lu Ming, he opened his mouth in jest. As he spoke, he also scowled at Lu Ming. You, forget it, I'm worried about crashing. Lu Ming replied back nonchalantly. The two of them carried their bags and continued walking towards the dormitory building. This building was a newly constructed dormitory after the hospital's expansion. The first two or three floors were for boys, and the fourth, fifth and sixth floors were for girls, since most of the doctors and nurses inside the hospital were locals. So there weren't many people living here permanently. Only occasionally, when the doctors and nurses were tired and didn't want to go home after working the night shift, they would sleep here. They would sleep here. The dormitory is a two-person room, although the area is not large, but after all, it is a place where doctors and nurses live, and it is very clean and tidy. As soon as Joe Hang came in and confirmed that there was no one outside, he immediately closed the door behind him, lightly giving Lu Ming a punch on the shoulder. You're good. When did you learn medicine behind my back? How come I didn't know? Joe Hang grinned. Previously, when the dean examined Lu Ming, he had sweated for him, but he didn't think that Lu Ming would be able to pass the dean's exam with flying colors. I've read some books before, and I just happened to be asked by him. Lu Ming spoke calmly. While saying that, he opened the cabinet in his dormitory. He then placed the bag of gold he was carrying into the cabinet. So that's how it is. Zhou Hang didn't think much about it, but in his heart, he admired Lu Ming. But once he thought that Lu Ming, the doctor, was faking it, he was a little worried anyway. But you, the fake doctor, will be revealed sooner or later, and we won't be able to hide here for long. After my deep thoughts last night, I have a bold plan, Zhou Hang said in a deceitful manner. Full of anticipation, Lu Ming asked him what the plan was. However, after Lu Ming folded his clothes neatly, he asked him back, Weren't you sleeping last night? Can that be called deep thought? Zhou Hang sniffed, and his face was a little embarrassed. You don't understand. This, this is medically called deep thinking state. No more selling out. I'll talk about my plan. I've thought it through. Us hiding here is not a long-term solution. Sooner or later, they will find us. But, they didn't find us today. They must have thought we had run away. It's the time when defenses are at their most lax. So we'll leave East Main Street first tonight. Zhou Hang spoke with conviction. It only felt that he had guessed the commander-in-chief's mind. After the words fell, confidence was high amidst the smile that hung on his face. Leaving directly like this? Lu Ming was surprised as he looked at Zhou Hang. That look was as if he was looking at a familiar stranger. Ah, otherwise? I've thought it all out. Two in the morning, you're driving the car, and the gas is stepped on. I started with a grenade, followed by a gun, sticking my head out of the car window, cracking a sweeping, shot. Zhou Hang spoke eloquently, as if he had already thought of himself being as imposing as Xiao Ma. Lu Ming looked at him and remained silent. In his heart, he said just with this IQ, but also to rob a bank. How unworthy is the earth? City Council, the director and deputy director, who had gone home to rest for the night, once again came to the office. However, both of them did not look too good today. Obviously did not rest well. 
It was no wonder. Ever since seeing Lu Ming enter East Main Street, both of them had begun to worry if Lu Ming would escape. If that were to happen, the pressure of public opinion would probably overwhelm everyone in the city council. But who would have thought that a robber would turn around and go to a hospital and become a doctor? If it wasn't for seeing it with their own eyes, it was really hard to be convinced. This Lu Ming is a talent. Making false witnesses, applying makeup, and even knowing medical skills. Are all soldiers so versatile now? The director looked towards the deputy director and spoke with a smile on his face. Only, that smile looked slightly bitter. In the beginning, he wanted an exercise that was tailored to the real world, but now it seemed. This drill seemed to have surpassed actual combat. After all, even in a real actual battle, one would not be able to see looming's really powerful robbers. Now discharged from the army does not arrange a job, can only find their own. More skill is not oppressive well. Everything will be a little bit normal. I go to make a cup of tea, the deputy bureau perfunctorily said, picked up the teacup on the table, and got up to leave. When he walked to the door, he turned back and looked at the director who was staring at the live broadcast, with a deep frown. In a low voice, he muttered, letting you sharpen your knife, it's almost sharpened now, isn't it? Originally, the deputy director was worried that the maneuver being made public in a fully live broadcast would affect the credibility of the city council. Now that the maneuver was underway, although it hadn't been said that a winner could be distinguished, but the police team was completely being teased by Lu Ming. The deputy director naturally had quite a hard time in this heart. At the same time, the audience saw Lu Ming's operation of applying to become a doctor. The live broadcast room directly exploded. Crap, I can understand Lu Ming disguising himself as anyone, but I never thought that he would go and become a doctor. If he was hiding inside a residential building, the police officer would still have the neighborhood committee's Emma as his eyes. Now that he's hiding in this hospital, who can find him? And the doctor wears a mask every day, even without makeup. He can't be recognized as him. No one would have thought that the robber would be strutting to work in the hospital. Could this be the legendary great concealment? It's just that I don't know how long it'll take for the police officers to come back to their senses and realize that Lu Ming is hiding in this impossible hiding place. It should be very soon. After all, Lu Ming isn't really a doctor. He just fooled the dean. And if he doesn't treat people for a long period of time, he'll soon reveal himself. I'm afraid that the police messenger will mistakenly think that Lu Ming has run away and removed the team. The victory or defeat will depend on the commander-in-chief's decision. But I have to say, Lu Ming is really awesome. Please accept my knees. This guy, is he the legendary all-round genius? Is there anything he can't do? Anyway, I'm convinced. All-round high IQ robber. Lu Ming is greatly bullish. The number of pop-ups in the live broadcast room was extremely high. The high level of heat caused the popularity of the live broadcast room to increase. And the number of viewers who came to the room in admiration increased. At this moment, the robber's perspective live broadcast room had just become the hottest live broadcast room on the entire network. Of course, the viewers of the live broadcast room knew that Lu Ming couldn't hide in the hospital for long, at most these two or three days. After all, the doctor's profession, professionalism is too high. Without a decade or so of study, it was simply not possible to get on stage. Most importantly, a good doctor also had to have a lot of practical experience. Lu Ming had only managed to fool the dean by relying on his realistic fake license and makeup skills. If he really asked Lu Ming to see patients and save people, he definitely couldn't do it. Once or twice, Lu Ming could still find excuses to shirk, but once there were more times, the dean would definitely see the difference. Of course, it was also the fact that doctors were a profession that ordinary people couldn't handle. This was what allowed Lu Ming to temporarily remain undetected by the police. In the dormitory, Zhou Hang, who was full of anxiety, paced back and forth with his hands behind his back. One moment, he made an enlightened, enlightened expression. The next moment, he was in self-denial, shaking his head and sighing. Lu Ming, on the other hand, was lying on the bed, his hands resting on his head, his eyes closed as he pretended to sleep. He was calm and collected. Brother Ming, why aren't you in a hurry at all? You're going to work tomorrow. What if I let you make a move on a patient at that time and cause a death? I think we should do what I said. We'll break out tonight. Take him by surprise. Zhou Hang spoke eagerly. It was very worried. After all, if Lu Ming really did accidentally doctor someone to death to hide his identity, then he would have to take a lawsuit for human life. But he couldn't say outright that this was a drill. So he could only strongly suggest leaving tonight. I'm not as stupid as you think. I definitely need to leave. But now is not the time. Lu Ming closed his eyes and spoke in a cloudy manner. Once Zhou Hang heard this, he knew that Lu Ming definitely had his plans. Overjoyed, hurrying to half squat beside Lu Ming's bed, he asked curiously, then when do we have to wait? If you don't make a move on the patient, 
Our impersonation of a doctor will definitely be discovered by the dean. Lu Ming's eyes slowly opened and he got up and walked to the balcony, propping his hands on the railing, looking up at the turquoise blue sky, seemingly thinking. Zhou Hang didn't know when Lu Ming was going to wait, and hurriedly walked over to catch up with him. Boss, don't be a riddler, just tell me when I have to wait until? Zhou Hang begged bitterly, only hoping that Lu Ming would tell him. The weather has been so nice lately, there isn't even a cloud in the sky. Lu Ming smiled faintly and patted Zhou Hang's shoulder. He walked past him. Zhou Hang stood frozen in place for a moment, similarly looking up at the turquoise blue sky. Yeah, this weather is so good, so good that I want to recite a poem. God, you're so fucking blue, so fucking hot. Zhou Hang complained with a disgruntled heart. He then walked back inside and continued to sigh. Outside the bank, the chief commander, who was frowning, was sitting in front of the computer at this time, and his index finger kept tapping the arrow keys on the keyboard, repeatedly watching the surveillance video. Over and over again, he confirmed whether Lu Ming had really hidden in East Main Street. However, no matter how many times they watched it, the footage showed that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had indeed ducked in. But since the people were on East Main Street, in a situation where the street entrance was blocked and there was no way out in the surroundings, why just couldn't they find anyone? During the first search, the entire East Main Street residences and residential buildings were turned upside down by police officers. The second time, it was even the shopping malls, companies, and even the sewers where they could hide were searched. Still no sign of Lu Ming. These two living, breathing people, could they have evaporated? Can it be that the people are no longer on East Main Street? I've seen their backgrounds, they used to be soldiers, it's not hard to swim across the river armed, maybe they ran through the moat? A police officer next to him had a puzzled look on his face as he looked at the surveillance screen and said with an uncertain tone, if Lu Ming couldn't be found in East Main Street, perhaps there was only this one possibility, that was that Lu Ming had already run away. Armed swim across? Do you know how deep that river is? At least 5 or 6 meters? A person would be swept away by the rapids immediately after jumping in. How can you cross? The commander-in-chief asked the police messenger rhetorically. Before coming here, he deliberately took a look at the moat. People simply couldn't swim across. So Lu Ming must be hiding in East Main Street. Just in a place that everyone overlooked. At this time, the chief commander's mind suddenly flashed with an idea. Picking up the walkie-talkie that was sitting on the table. With a serious expression. He said, notify everyone, terminate the search operation and remove the barriers at the street entrance. At this decision of the commander-in-chief, a squad leader next to him raised an eyebrow and questioned it at the right time. Chief commander, it's still uncertain whether Lu Ming has left East Main Street. Is it not a bit improper to withdraw the defense at this time? This squad leader stroked his chin with one hand and spoke thoughtfully. In his opinion, the commander-in-chief was now commanding his team entirely with his subjective judgment. Before it was determined that Lu Ming had really left East Main Street, the barriers set up at the street entrance could not be withdrawn. Otherwise, on the contrary, it would give Lu Ming a chance to escape. The correct approach should be to guard the area tightly, continue to have the police force check everyone on East Main Street. This was the only way to ensure that everything was safe. I also feel that it's a bit too early to withdraw. Another squad leader gently shook the pen in his hand, also feeling that the commander-in-chief's decision was a bit inappropriate. The others followed and nodded their heads. The commander-in-chief saw so many people opposing him. It was not annoyed. Instead, he gave his own reasons. Only to see the commander-in-chief slowly stand up and walk to the whiteboard. I wonder everyone, do you have any other interests? He spoke with a faint smile on his country face. The crowd shook their heads at the words. Unsure. Not understanding why the commander-in-chief was asking them about their hobbies at this time. None of them have hobbies? Then I'll talk about mine. Seeing that the crowd refused to speak. The commander-in-chief simply spoke up himself. When I'm usually resting, I like to go fishing by the river. This fishing is a learning experience. From the bait to the fishing rod, there are all the rules. What fish like to eat what bait? All have to be studied in detail. But if you think you can catch big fish just by preparing all these things, you're sadly mistaken. A truly experienced angler, when he meets a big fish, the first time he doesn't even think of lifting the line. But rather, he releases the line for a while to let the fish swim and then lifts the line for a while to let the fish return. It is only by going back and forth that the big fish can be exhausted. If you're tugging on the rod and refusing to let go of the line, even the strongest fishing line will be taut. So to catch Lu Ming, this cunning fish, at the right time, we should also let go of the line a bit and let him swim on his own for a while, the chief commander said, walking over to the whiteboard. Standing with his hands on his back, he looked serious. Since we searched twice and couldn't find Lu Ming, we don't need to continue wasting manpower and resources on this. In the entire East Main Street, the street entrance is the only exit. 
Only by removing the barrier will he think about leaving. I've looked at the surrounding terrain, and there are really only two ways to leave the street entrance of East Main Street. By locating the barriers at these two intersections and splitting the population volume, not only will it reduce the difficulty of searching, but it will also allow Lu Ming to let his guard down. That's why the platoon was told to come back and remove the barriers at the street intersections in order to lure out Lu Ming who was hiding inside. Even if he's already escaped, there's no need to consume so much manpower and material resources. After the chief commander finished speaking, his hale and hearty gaze, he swept a glance at the people present. When the police officers heard this, they realized the chief commander's true intentions. It turned out that the withdrawal of the exhaustion officers wasn't really believing that Lu Ming wasn't in East Main Street. Rather, he wanted to lure Lu Ming out. Lure the snake out of the hole. A squad leader nodded with a serious face and opened his mouth to respond. The others also felt that this method was feasible and nodded their heads. However, the chief commander did not have any smile on his face. The expression was always serious. Because he was actually forced to do this. After all, this maneuver was simply dragging on too long. Wasting one more day with Lu Ming would consume a lot of manpower and material resources. He was the top decision maker of the police force. One had to consider things thoroughly. The drill hadn't even ended yet. And wasting manpower like this without regard to cost exhausted the men under his hand. So, after searching twice, and still unable to find Lu Ming, the commander-in-chief was only able to come up with this odd trick. Soon, the number of police officers walking on the streets decreased as far as the eye could see. But for fear of arousing Lu Ming's suspicion, he did not transfer all the police officers. Less than one-fifth remained. Still searching on East Main Street. This obvious change was noticed by Zhou Hang who came out to buy cigarettes. He hurriedly feigned ignorance, asking the store owner what had happened. Boss, why have all the police agents on this street withdrawn? Those two bank robbers were caught? Zhou Hang shook his cigarette case and pulled out two cigarettes from it, handed it over to the boss. As the saying goes, cigarettes build bridges and wine opens the way. The boss took the cigarettes from Zhou Hang's hand and was happy to have a word with him. You guys stay in the hospital all day. You must not know. These two flying robbers are awesome. It is said that they are still practicing. Will be lightweight? Directly stepping on the water of the moat has long run away. Cause this gang of police officers also searched here for two days. But the result was not found today. Withdrew. The boss lit a cigarette and smacked it. Eyes narrowed into a thin slit by the smoke. Adding fuel to the fire. He said. Joe Hang raised his eyebrows and thought to himself. I'm all this bullish in the hearts of the public now? You can still do lightweight kung fu? Putting this aside for a martial arts movie? Although the words that came out of the boss's mouth were more or less colored with a little bit of the metaphysical martial arts of the popular legends. But Zhou Hang got a very important news. That is, the police cannot find them, has begun to withdraw the defense. Thinking of this, Zhou Hang felt that he had to tell Lu Ming this news immediately. After smiling and snorting with his boss, he turned around and walked towards the hospital dormitory building. A few minutes later, Zhou Hang returned to the dormitory, pushing the door. He entered, seeing Lu Ming, he immediately stepped forward and said cheerfully, Brother Ming, I've gotten some good news here, guess what it is? Lu Ming glanced at Zhou Hang, nonchalantly, he returned, I know, Zhou Hang froze at his words and expressed his disbelief, you definitely don't know, I'm telling you, the police messenger couldn't find us and withdrew the defense, saying this, Zhou Hang was so happy that his mouth split open, revealing a row of large teeth, there was even some secret smugness, those little eyes seemed to be saying to Lu Ming, look, what I said before came true. So what? Lu Ming was unconcerned about this, still flipping through the books in his hands. Seeing Lu Ming acting so cold towards this heavenly good news, Zhou Hang continued undeterred. Look at you. Smart for a lifetime. Confused for a moment, right? Don't you think that this is the perfect opportunity for us to leave East Main Street? Now they all think we're not in East Main Street anymore. And if we waltz out now, no one will know. As long as we walk out with the gold, then the drill. Zhou Hang was so excited that he almost blurted out the words drill victory, hurriedly closed his mouth. Acting what, you continue to say. Lu Ming closed the book in his hand and raised his hand to signal Zhou Hang to continue his declaration of victory. Zhou Hang turned his words around and hurriedly rounded back. That bad-eyed cop will definitely never find us again. P.S. Ask for a wave of small gifts. 50 gifts plus one more. I hope you support it. Mama Mia. But have you ever thought about it? This could very well be a trap for the police messenger to not be able to find us. In order to lure us out? Lu Ming wore a smile on his face. The voice that spoke was calm and composed. It poked at the point at once. Hearing the words, Zhou Hang was first slightly stunned, and then he waved his hands repeatedly. I've carefully observed. The police messenger has only withdrawn most of the police force, and there are still some left in this East Main Street. 
if it's really to lure us out, wouldn't it be better to withdraw all of them? Zhou Hang spoke decisively. There was a smile on his face as he spoke and was filled with a confident expression. Obviously, he was feeling complacent about his careful observation. Instead of withdrawing all of them, he left some of them behind just to lure us in. See, didn't you just take the bait? Lu Ming shrugged, then spoke leisurely. Are they that insidious? Zhou Hang raised his eyebrows, seemingly enlightened, yet he didn't quite dare to believe it. Luring snakes out of their holes, it's not a very clever ploy, but for you, it is indeed somewhat sinister. Lu Ming spoke calmly, looking at Zhou Hang with sympathy in his gaze. The words fell, then he no longer cared about Zhou Hang, instead looking down at the book in his hands. But brother Ming, if it's really like what you said, then how should we escape? Waiting like this all the time isn't a solution. Are we waiting for the dean to find out that we're fake doctors and report us? Zhou Hang cried out, almost going crazy from the current predicament. He belonged to the type of character that couldn't help but stutter when he said a false word. The current him was mingling in the hospital as a fake doctor. He was completely, all the time, not in fear. That originally light and airy white coat on his body was as heavy as carrying several hundred pounds of weight. He couldn't wait to take it off earlier. He only hoped that Lu Ming would take him out of this infernal purgatory earlier. However, Lu Ming always had a relaxed look on his face. He seemed indifferent to the actions of the police officers. It was as if they weren't fugitives, but rather tourists. It was infinitely close to posing. Don't worry, we can leave in three days at most. But before that, we still have to do something. Lu Ming raised his head to look out the window and spoke with conviction. Hearing these words, Zhou Hang instantly came to life. The original expression that was more bitter than a bitter melon immediately crawled with a smile. Oh, brother Ming you tell me. You put in your brains. I'll put in my strength. The two of us brothers working together. We'll definitely crunch and mess up the kill. Zhou Hang came up to Lu Ming. Looking forward to Lu Ming's next plan. Do you so? Then. Finally. Get it? Lu Ming whispered a few words in Zhou Hang's ear. Only to see. Zhou Hang seemed to understand and nodded his head. But inwardly he was screaming. What is this talking about? going around and around, it was almost dizzying, I want Lu Ming to say it again, but would that make me look too stupid, forget it, let's just pretend to understand, after all, this is a live broadcast, so many people are still watching, thinking of this, Zhou Hang immediately revealed an expression of sudden realization, oh I get it, so that's how it is, Zhou Hang spoke with a feigned composure, I don't understand, but I won't say it, really understand, Lu Ming, who still wanted to repeat himself once more, saw Zhou Hang's appearance and asked in disbelief. Of course I understand, ouch it's simple. Zhou Hang opened his mouth with conviction. As he spoke, he also looked away with a smile on his face, like the student who was asked by the math teacher if he understood, afraid that the teacher would continue to pursue the question. All right, then stay in the hospital for these few days and do as I say. Lu Ming sniffed and was quite pleased, thinking to himself that this brother has finally opened up. Subsequently, the two continued to blow air conditioning in the dormitory. They no longer thought about whether or not the police officers had really withdrawn their defenses. Those female nurses, in order to welcome Lu Ming's arrival, they even sent watermelon to the two of them, blowing the air conditioner and eating watermelon. In this hot summer, there was nothing more pleasant than this. However, however, it was bitter for those police officers who were secretly squatting on Lu Ming. I can really, he have withdrawn the defense. This Lu Ming still refuses to come out, and on such a hot day, he actually made me fry chestnuts. Streetside, the top of the big sun, the police officer who still has to pretend to be selling chestnuts is gritting his teeth, holding the spatula in his hand, he shoveled hard at the chestnuts in that pot of iron sand, it was as if the chestnuts in that pot of iron sand were Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, finally, he finished frying the pot of chestnuts and put them into separate paper bags, having a moment's rest, picking up the somewhat hot water cup on the table, he violently poured a cup of water into his stomach, that warm water just entered the stomach and would soon turn into a waterfall of sweat. If it wasn't wiped off in time, it wouldn't take long for it to turn into some small white particles. The exercise that was originally expected to end in just half a day. Now it was hard to be indefinitely postponed by Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. The dead brains. It was reasonable to be so angry that he exploded in anger. Moreover, what made him even more angry was that in order not to be recognized by Lu Ming for their disguise, the chief commander also demanded that they must act like a normal vendor. When someone came to buy something, they had to sell it to someone else. There was also to be no negativity. But just when he thought that nothing was going on, only to see a group of people coming from far away on the street. This group of people were aggressive and came with bad intentions. When the police messenger saw this, a sense of foreboding rose in his heart. This bag of chestnuts is sold by your family, right? 
One of the dwarfs took out a bag of chestnuts from the black plastic bag in his hand, heavily placing it on the police messenger's stall. The police messenger wiped the sweat on his forehead with a towel and slowly stood up from his stool. Opening his mouth, he asked, Is there a problem? With that vain look, it was obvious that he was worried that Cricket would expose his identity, although this was just a drill. However, the above attached great importance to it, otherwise it wouldn't have arranged for a live broadcast. If he exposed his identity because of this small matter, when the exercise was over, he would definitely have to write a review. Who knows? That little dwarf who originally looked fierce and vicious was suddenly full of smiles. Pointing at his stall, he shouted, It's his house. His chestnuts are the best. A group of people began to scramble to buy his chestnuts. The freshly fried chestnuts were instantly swept away. Boss, why are there so few? Stir fry some more. The little dwarf shouted with dissatisfaction. Hearing this, the police officer hurriedly waved his hand. No more. No more. Come back tomorrow to buy more. However, the sharp-eyed little shorty, at once, saw the chestnuts that hadn't been fried next to the police officer. There's still such a big bag. And you're saying it's sold out? I'm taking care of your business so much. And you're actually not selling? As soon as little shorty's words left his mouth, the other police officers disguised as vendors on the street, all landed their gazes in unison on the police officer selling chestnuts, as if saying to him, what are you waiting for? Then Freya, are you waiting for your identity to be exposed and discovered by looming? The police officer selling chestnuts squeezed out a smile on his face that was even worse than crying. Word by word, he returned the shorty. I forgot. To thank you for taking care of my business, thank you eight generations of ancestors. The police messenger had no choice but to pick up the shovel and continue frying chestnuts. Business is exceptionally hot. Outside the bank, in the middle of the temporary command headquarters, the commander-in-chief and a group of squad leaders were frowning tightly, constantly looking over the search reports sent by their subordinates, trying to find out what the entire search operation had missed. Nay, the situation in this East Main Street was really complicated. Not only was it densely populated, it was also filled with all walks of life. The search reports of all the police officers piled up. There is a thick pile, taking it to sell scrap paper. It could be exchanged for several popsicles, to find out what was missing from such a huge amount of information. For a person's brain power and physical strength, it was not a small test. If the brain was a CPU, then the commander-in-chief would be in a state of overheating right now. He had to take a sip of tea to cool down. After putting down the teacup, the commander-in-chief looked down at the time. Estimated that now lurking in the East Street Police should have collected a lot of useful information. As expected, the captain of the third team, who was responsible for reporting the latest situation on East Main Street, walked in with a black plastic bag in his hand. Report, Chief Captain. According to your instructions, a total of 50 police agents were ambushed on East Main Street, and they were all disguised as various vendors respectively. On the way to the mission, one of the team members, due to excessive fatigue, fainted from heatstroke and has now been sent to the hospital. The captain of the third team spoke solemnly. When the commander-in-chief heard this, his brows were deeply locked and his face was filled with a worried look. Hard work. The recent weather is very hot. Urge everyone to pay attention to heatstroke prevention. I'll take some money out here privately. When we rest at night, you give everyone an extra meal. The commander-in-chief said and took out his cell phone, about to transfer money to the captain of the third team. Because of this maneuver, everyone was exhausted. The commander-in-chief was not a person who was not considerate of his subordinates, although it was just an extra meal. But when the number of people is large, it is also a considerable amount of money. But the commander-in-chief pulled out his cell phone, but was sternly rejected by the captain of the third team. Commander-in-chief, no need to break the bank, we have the money. The captain of the third team finished speaking and opened the plastic bag in his hand, only to see that it was full of money, both zero and whole. Looking at the amount, it was estimated that there were several thousand. The commander-in-chief saw this bag of money, somewhat confused. Where did this money come from? The commander-in-chief looked at the captain of the third team and opened his mouth in confusion. After all, this money was in a bag, and didn't look like it came from normal channels. Report, as per your request, all the disguised team members must look like a real merchant. So, meeting the customers we all bought and sold normally, and this money is today's revenue. Of course, most of the money is also thanks to old Chen who was disguised as a fried chestnut, but he's already gone to the hospital. The captain of the third team spoke with an expressionless face and a slate. Hearing this, the commander-in-chief was so surprised that his mouth slightly opened. Good guys, letting you guys pretend to be traitors, and you're still generating income for the team? And it looks like there's a lot of money, so everyone in the team is a good businessman? But the commander-in-chief couldn't say this out loud. After all, in order to prevent Lu Ming from seeing the cracks, 
He was the one who had asked all the team members to go about their business like a real merchant. How much is there? The chief commander glanced at the money inside the bag and calmly opened his mouth to ask. 8,000. The captain of the third team spoke without hesitation. As soon as these words left his mouth, the chief commander was so shocked that he almost didn't choke on his own saliva, coughing up continuously. How could it be so much? The commander-in-chief slowed down and asked the third team leader with quite a headache. He was asking them to act like traitors. Not really go as traitors ah. Even though it was the first day, business was too hot. So they earned 8,000. The captain of the third team always had that iron face. Not at all moved by the commander-in-chief's emotions. Too hot? How hot is it? The chief commander opened his mouth in doubt. After all, $8,000 really wasn't a small amount of money. It could be worth a month or two of salary for an ordinary police errand boy. Take old Chen for example. Before he entered the hospital, his stall sold a thousand copies of sweet fried chestnuts, making a profit of $2,213.50. Together with other people's earnings, the total is 8000 The captain of the third team raised an eyebrow, his small eyes sneaking a glance at the commander-in-chief. Then he continued to look ahead. Stop reporting to me how much money you guys earned. I want to know if there's any news of Lu Ming for the day today or not. The chief commander frowned and spoke. Perhaps it was because the weather was too hot and the fire was too much. The tone of his speech was also aggravated by a few points. No trace of Lu Ming has been found. The captain of the third team opened his mouth in a serious manner. When the chief commander heard this, he let out a long breath of disappointment. You guys have been tired all day. Take an early rest. He opened his mouth with a tired face and waved his hand towards the third team captain. The third team captain, however, did not leave in a hurry. It was still standing in place. There's something else? The commander-in-chief asked with a frown. This is the 8,000 earned today. The captain of the third team handed the bag of money in his hand towards the commander-in-chief. The commander-in-chief immediately felt his blood pressure rise. After all, they were police agents. And the purpose of their disguise was to catch robbers. Not to earn money. This is the fruit of your day's hard labor. No need to give it to me. You three team members can handle it yourselves. All right, go back to East Street. The commander-in-chief waved his hand towards the captain of the third team once again. This time, it seemed very unwilling to see this iron face. Thank you, chief commander. The captain of the third team returned, then turned to leave. From afar, he was also seen clenching his fists in excitement. The chief commander walked back to the caravan quite helplessly. Sitting on a chair, he fell into deep thought. Today it seemed that apart from the three teams generating 8,000, there didn't seem to be any results again. If this wasn't an exercise, then he now really suspected that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had already left East Main Street. But the problem was, this was a drill. If Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had really left East Main Street, then why did they end the drill and let him and the many police officers continue to look for them? It was because of this. The commander-in-chief was convinced that Lu Ming must still be hiding inside East Main Street, and that there must be a place that they had overlooked. However, the current situation has made him waver in his guess. After searching twice and not finding it, forget it, withdrawing the search operation, there was no movement either, with no way out. Lu Ming didn't even have the idea to test the waters. No matter what decisions were made, it was like a stone sinking into the sea on East Main Street. There was no sound. This situation evoked painful memories from childhood. Jude remembered a game of hide and seek. He was looking for a little friend, racked his brain and searched any corner, but none could be found. Unconvinced, he searched hard for a whole day. Finally, or wait until the time when the stomach is too hungry to bear, before dragging the tired body home, push open the gate of the compound. Saw the little friends sitting there. Only when I asked did I realize that people had left a long time ago. They just forgot to tell themselves. Could it be that the live camera is broken? And these two guys didn't report to the top after they escaped? Nope, that way the top should have notified me. The chief commander thought about it and still felt that this was unlikely. Zhou Hang and Lu Ming might not report it, but the top wouldn't fail to remind them. After all, the two were carrying a lot of gold worth of money. The live broadcast room. The viewers were surprised to see that the police officers sent out to disguise the vendors had generated a revenue of $8,000 in a single day. The live broadcast room was instantly buzzing with activity. Faced with such a dramatic matter, the viewers burst into laughter. Crap, this is a path I never thought of ah, this old Chen is truly cowhide. To take down more than a quarter of the performance by himself, it's really hard to justify not giving old Chen a best employee. The commander-in-chief's face turned green when he heard the captain's report. I think he was thinking, Letting you guys pretend to be traitors. And you even made money? He also wanted to treat the team members out of his own pocket. But it turned out that people took out more money than he did. If the police officers knew that they were out there working their asses off while Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were blowing air conditioning and eating watermelon, I wonder what they would think in their hearts. 
how would they think? I don't know about the others, but old Chen is probably going to carry more or less personal emotions. Actually, I also quite admire old Chen, even though it was a drill. He was really serious at the time, or else he wouldn't have tired himself out to the point of heatstroke. Right, there should always be one or two serious people within the police force. Lu Ming Ah, you're really causing a lot of harm. If old Chen catches Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, he'll probably treat them as if they were real criminals. However, Lu Ming's identity as a doctor should be recognized soon. I wonder how he's going to escape. As long as the commander-in-chief guards the intersection, this is a dead end. It can't be solved. There was a crazy wave of pop-ups in the live broadcast room, while most of them were viewers poking fun at the matter of the police team camping. After all, disguised as a vendor, he had even brought in revenue for the police force. This matter was truly hilarious when it was said. The heat in the live broadcast room was extremely high, and the number of viewers had been climbing. The influence of this maneuver could not be described as insignificant. East Main Street, Health Hospital. Two female nurses were leaning against the side of the corridor, were muttering in whispers. Let me tell you, do you know about that DR? Zhang who just came to our hospital? I know, he's so handsome, he's also a high school student. I can't even figure out why he came to our hospital. He is. I heard that he's willing to come over because he likes the nurses in our hospital. Really? Who is that nurse? She's. Two very gossipy nurses were chatting away, smiling like flowers as they spoke. It was also at this moment, a coughing sound came from their side. Have the ice packs for Ward, for been sent over yet? Gossiping here? The female head nurse asked with a cold face. The two small nurses sniffed as if they had seen a ghost. Stuttering, they returned, we'll send it over right away. Not long after, the female nurse who had gossiped earlier, sent the ice packs to Ward for. Before they could push the door in, they heard someone inside cursing. Damn, this Zhou Hang, and this Lu Ming, don't let me catch you. The voice of the person inside was not loud, but with those words, it wasn't hard to hear that there was a lot of fire in their hearts. The female nurse took a deep breath and pushed open the ward door. This is an ice pack. Remember to apply it more often. After the female nurse placed the ice pack on the table, she hurriedly left. The patient picked up the ice pack and applied it to his head. Continuing to curse breathlessly, he seemed to have a blood feud with those two people in his mouth. The general team only asked you to act like a merchant. They didn't ask you to work so hard. You're good. You sold a thousand chestnuts in one day and earned over two thousand dollars. The other middle-aged man who was responsible for looking after him held a towel in his hand. After putting it into the water basin and wringing it until it was half dry, he opened his mouth in tears and laughter. This middle-aged man lying on the hospital bed was none other than old Chen, who was previously disguised as a vendor selling chestnuts. Because business is too hot. Busy 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 forgot that he was on a mission. As a result, coupled with the hot weather, he exhausted himself to heat stroke. Don't talk so much. The higher-ups attached great importance to this exercise. How dare I give up and quit? Blame it on this brainless Zhou Hang and his ghostly brother. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't have suffered. Old Chen said to the emotional point, about to sit up from the bed. As a result, his arms were exhausted after wielding the shovel for a day. A pain in the teeth grimace. The colleague next to him saw it and rushed over to help, placing him smoothly on the bed. Don't move. The doctor has told you to rest. The colleague said picking up a wet towel and wiping the sweat on old Chen's forehead, speaking rather helplessly. You said that your fried chestnuts are so delicious. What's the point of being an errand boy? This is more than 2,000 a day. This is several tens of thousands a month, much higher than your salary, the colleague said half-jokingly. Turning around, he put the towel into the water basin again, one after another to cool down old Chen. Of course it's for the ideal. You're too vulgar. Your eyes only have those three melons and two dates. You don't understand. Old Chen spoke righteously, glancing at his colleague with contempt. The co-worker heard Old Chen's words, wanted to retort, but swallowed the words in his mouth. Looking again at Old Chen who was sleeping on the bed and cursing, more and more, he felt that this person was cute and honorable at the same time. Ro, you're tall, hurry up and turn around, I'll rub your back for you. The co-worker came back to his senses and blankly glanced at Old Chen without any goodwill. Taking the towel, he went to wipe Old Chen's back, just as the two of them were fighting with each other. The captain of the third team and some of his co-workers walked in with fruit baskets. Why are you guys here? I've said I'm fine. What's the point of making such a fuss? Old Chen didn't speak in a good mood. As he spoke, he wanted to get up. However, because of the aches and pains all over his body, he still didn't get up from the bed after struggling for a few times. Sleep at ease. I've already asked for permission from above to rest. So you won't be participating in this maneuver. By the way, this is the money you made from selling chestnuts today. $2,213.50. Consider it your bonus inside this maneuver. 
The captain of the third team put down the fruit basket. He then took out the money in his pocket and handed it to Old Chen. This was, after all, the money that Old Chen had earned only after tiring himself out like this. And after pondering over it, the third team captain decided to give it to him as a bonus. You won't let me participate anymore? Old Chen did not bother to take the money from the third team captain. Strongly enduring the pain, he still sat up from the bed. Why don't you let me participate? Isn't this still not over? I've already said that I'm fine. I just had a heat stroke. I'll be fine after a day of rest. Old Chen said undeterred. Since fainting today, he wanted to catch Lu Ming and Zhou Hang even more. To get out of this bad anger. Now that he heard the captain tell him to rest, his emotions immediately became agitated. This is an order. The captain of the third team spoke with an unquestionable tone of voice. Decisively. Old Chen was so angry that his body was shaking. The captain of the third team was worried that Old Chen was too emotional and fainted again. After saying this, he turned around and left. The rest of his colleagues, putting down the fruit basket, also walked out of the ward with apologetic faces. Even if you don't let me participate, I will still catch them. Old Chen muttered to himself through clenched teeth. He then huffed and lay down on the bed, sulking. The police messenger's successive failures had long since made Old Chen's heart fester. As the saying goes, he does not steam buns to fight for the breath. For Old Chen's bullish temper, the colleague who was responsible for taking care of him, knew it best. So they don't advise Lao Chen, just let him digest it himself. Night, the people in the hospital were obviously much less than during the day. The patient's painful moans came from time to time. Old Chen, who was originally asleep, violently opened his eyes. Those eyes, in the dark night, were as sharp as a falcon. The next day, when the sun revealed its head from the horizon, the entire earth, once again, would usher in a merciless scorching. A few days in a row, citizens have received successive high temperature warnings from the weather station. Yunhai City had ushered in the hottest time of the year. At this moment, the hospital also came to its busiest time. Nurses were changing medicines while doctors were checking the wards one by one, observing the patient's conditions. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who were wearing masks and white coats, were naturally among them. Brother Ming, whether or not we'll wear out our welcome depends on your performance. You're all I have left to hope for. Zhou Hang, who was following behind Lu Ming, opened his mouth in a vain manner. He was afraid that he would not act like a good person and be recognized on the spot by the doctors present. On the contrary, Lu Ming, his eyes seemed like ancient wells, calm and composed. You're just the assistant. What others say, just say you don't quite understand. Just don't talk nonsense. Playing dumb, isn't this your forte? Lu Ming held the medical record book in his hand and spoke calmly. Zhou Hang nodded repeatedly and was about to reach out to wipe the sweat from his forehead. After seeing Lu Ming glaring, he immediately came back to his senses. He used a dry paper towel to gently dip it, not daring to exert himself at all, afraid to wipe the makeup off. At this time, a doctor who was about 40 or 50 years old walked over. You are Dr. Zhang, right? Welcome, welcome, the hospital you went to before I used to aspire to for a long time. I didn't expect you to let go of your high salary and actually come to our hospital. But since you're here, I'll be checking in soon, so I'll take you guys through it. That doctor looked at Lu Ming and spoke with a smile on his face. The words were very polite. Obviously, for this young doctor from the big hospital, he was still quite respectful. With a smile in the corner of his eyes, Lu Ming nodded. Subsequently, the doctors in charge of checking the rooms began to go from room to room to check the patient's physical condition, and gave new treatment plans. During this time, there would rarely be a discussion. This also came to the time when Zhou Hang was the most nervous. After all, Lu Ming was a fake. Before he even walked into the hospital room, Lu Ming swept his head back and glanced at the group of interns around him who had come from the school. How long have you all been here? Lu Ming asked in a calm tone, although it couldn't be talked about as harsh. Still, it immediately made the group of interns nervous. We have been here for two months. A slightly bolder intern stammered out. As he spoke he squeezed out a somewhat stiff smile at Lu Ming, clearly extremely nervous. Two months. That should have learned quite a lot. Lu Ming nodded thoughtfully, then followed the attending physician into the ward. Lying inside was a patient with extensive burns. The attending physician took out the patient's medical record and flipped through a few pages. His expression was grave. He was about to ask Lu Ming for advice. Lu Ming, however, took the lead and said, What kind of treatment do you guys think should be taken for this patient? All rest assured and speak boldly. I will answer any questions for you. At this time, Lu Ming was like a strict teacher, coupled with Lu Ming's seniority. It made the pressure on the group of interns who had come from school multiply. One by one, they quickly opened their minds and put forward their own opinions. Lu Ming, on the other hand, slowly nodded his head from the side. 
Relying on his newly learned medical knowledge, he offered a little ambiguous opinion from time to time, totally ignoring the attending physician, skillfully not meddling in the patient's treatment. After all, if he said the wrong thing and died, it would be a big trouble. People's lives are at stake. It can't be a child's play. The attending doctor saw that Lu Ming couldn't get away. Plus he couldn't understand the things Lu Ming said. He was afraid that Lu Ming would turn around and ask himself. He lost face in front of this group of interns, so he tried to avoid Lu Ming as much as possible and didn't strike up a conversation with him. He didn't even dare to make any eye contact with Lu Ming. Just like this, relying on that group of interns, Lu Ming managed to muddle through. When it was time to eat, those people just treated Lu Ming as a godlike figure. During the break, they even said goodbye to Lu Ming. Seeing this, Zhou Hang was so surprised that his jaw dropped. He hurriedly pulled Lu Ming aside. Brother Ming, what have you told them? It can't be that you've brainwashed them, right? Zhou Hang lifted his mask and spoke with great concern. After all, just now, the eyes of that group of interns were filled with fervent admiration for Lu Ming. It was like that of a follower after being brainwashed. I don't know what was said. Anyway, it's just those latest medical achievements on the internet. As long as it's related to the condition I'll mention it and let them come to their own realization. Lu Ming spoke with a bland expression. Hearing this, Zhou Hang gave a thumbs up to Lu Ming's ability to fool around. You're awesome. Sort of a smooth day. I'm going to use the restroom first. Zhou Hang said, lifted his mask, turned around and headed towards the restroom. Arriving in front of the toilet door, Zhou Hang carefully glanced back, seeing that no one was coming. He then walked in. At this time, Old Chen and his colleagues were hiding inside the toilet to smoke. Seeing Zhou Hang come in, frightened hands and feet, the cigarette clamped on the finger, directly to the pants pestle, before they had time to spit out the smoke, directly wrapped in the mouth. Zhou Hang's nose moved slightly, smelling the smell of smoke inside the toilet. With a raised eyebrow, he glanced at the two. The two pretended as if nothing had happened and were about to leave. However, they were stopped by Zhou Hang. Stand still, you guys are smoking inside the hospital, right? Smoking inside a hospital is a fine of 500. Zhou Hang opened his mouth in a serious manner. Old Chen and his colleagues shook their heads when they heard this. Nor did they speak, holding their breath and holding their faces red. All right, don't smoke in the toilet next time. There will be no penalty for your payment this time. Zhou Hang opened his mouth very generously. Old Chen and his co-workers sniffed, and the smoke in their mouths came out from inside their nostrils. After hurriedly fanning it off with their hands, they thanked Zhou Hang repeatedly. Thanks, brother. I won't smoke next time. The two grinned and hurriedly walked past Zhou Han. After seeing the two men leave, Zhou Hang took another uneasy look. Only then, from inside his pocket, did he take out his own cigarette? A person hid in the toilet and closed the door. After taking off the mask, he beautifully lit one. Old Chen and his co-workers walked down the corridor of the hospital. The heart is very grateful. Luckily, I met a doctor who was willing to be accommodating, or else this fine will be paid today. I have said, let you out of the hospital. Go outside to smoke. You're not willing to do so. I just can't understand old Chen. You just have a heat stroke. Why do you want to stay in the hospital? Because of a hunch. Intuition? Yes, intuition. I can feel that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang are hiding in the hospital. The co-workers seemed to be enlightened when they heard old Chen's words. When they searched before, it seemed like they hadn't focused on the hospital. After all, there were many patients inside, and delaying treatment was a big deal. So when they searched, they had only retrieved the information there in the hospitalization department. It hadn't even come into the hospital. Now that I heard old Chen say this, it was really possible. You don't say. It seems like we really haven't checked the hospital much. The colleague came to a realization and looked around. See, there are so many wards inside this hospital. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang can totally pretend to be patients and family members and hide in here. With food, drink and a bed. It's more comfortable than a hotel. Old Chen spoke triumphantly. It seemed that he had already seen the image of himself bringing Lu Ming and Zhou Hang to justice. Old Chen and his colleagues walked while discussing what to investigate next. Walking down an aisle, from afar, he saw several nurses surrounding Lu Ming. Several young and beautiful nurses were talking and laughing as they asked questions. Old Chen frowned, looking at Lu Ming standing in the middle of the nurses. He always felt that this person's figure was somewhat familiar, but just couldn't remember where he had seen it before. Suddenly, suddenly, he remembered that this person's height and body type was very similar to Lu Ming. However, that person was wearing a white coat and looked quite familiar with the nurse. It was clearly a doctor from this hospital. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were both soldiers and did not have the background of a medical soldier. How could they possibly mix into a hospital and become doctors? A hospital recruiting a doctor was not recruiting a waiter, just pulling a random person to do the job. Old Chen reached out and rubbed his temples, 
shaking off the thoughts in his head. It was only thought that he was being a bit haywire. He then followed his co-workers and checked every ward, attempting to find suspicious people. Live streaming room. The viewers saw Old Chen rubbing shoulders not only with Zhou Hang but also with Lu Ming. They all sighed at how life was not the same. Zhou Hang and Lu Ming, whom the police officers outside had not been able to find after rummaging through the East Main Street, unexpectedly rubbed shoulders with Old Chen. Surprisingly, they rubbed shoulders with Old Chen respectively. Zhou Hang even reminded Old Chen not to smoke in the restroom. This kind of drama naturally caused quite a discussion in the live broadcast room. Ha ha. If Old Chen knew that the person he had been trying to find had just walked right past him, he would probably be so angry that he would vomit blood, thanks to Zhou Hang wearing a mask. Otherwise it would be embarrassing. He doesn't know Old Chen, but Old Chen can recognize him. Despite the makeup, I feel that the chances of Old Chen being able to recognize Zhou Hang are also really not small. To be honest, just now I was really sweating for both Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. There's one thing to say. It was so close, so close. If Old Chen had missed Lu Ming and knew the truth after the exercise was over, he probably wouldn't be able to sleep for months. That's for sure. He'd wake up in the middle of the night, slapping his thighs and saying fuck, why didn't I go up and take a look at it then? Laughing my ass off, you people are so damaging. People's Old Chen already accidentally missed Lu Ming. And you're still mocking here. The audience discussion in the live broadcast room was enthusiastic. After all, this hand of Lu Ming hiding in the hospital was truly brilliant. This caused the audience to exclaim Oxby while at the same time becoming more interested in the live broadcast of this maneuver. The number of people in the live broadcast naturally remained high. After two days of accumulation, the number of online viewers in the live broadcast room had exceeded the 700,000 mark. This was clearly an extremely terrifying number. And it was while the netizens in the live broadcast room were talking. The perceptive Lu Ming. He had already detected Old Chun who had been watching him just now. Even though Old Chen was wearing a hospital gown at the time. Lu Ming still instantly recognized Old Chen's identity. After all, a police officer's eyes could be quite different from an ordinary person's when looking at someone. Most importantly, when those two walked by, that air of a years old police officer was on display. Coupled with the fact that East Main Street was now almost entirely filled with police officers, Lu Ming was basically able to conclude the identity of these two men as police officers. After seeing Old Chen leave with his colleagues, he hurriedly pulled himself out of the crowd and went forward to find Zhou Hang. At this moment, Zhou Hang had just come out of the restroom after smoking a cigarette. Brother Ming, what's wrong? Seeing Lu Ming in such a hurry, he was surprised to speak. He also shook off the water on his hands as he spoke. Bringing his fingers up to his nose, he sniffed it, and revealed an expression of disgust. There's a police messenger inside this hospital. Hurry up and leave. Lu Ming frowned and opened his mouth, twisting his head as the words fell, not stopping for a moment. Hearing this, Zhou Hang instantly became incredibly nervous hurrying to follow behind Lu Ming. Where is it? How did you find out? Zhou Hang was quite nervous as he spoke. As he quickened his pace to keep up with Lu Ming, his eyes turned from time to time, observing the surroundings. It just fought with me. It should have found me. It's just that seeing as I was just joking around with the nurses and I was wearing a white coat, I didn't react at first. When they come back to their senses, we'll be exposed. Lu Ming spoke extremely fast. As he spoke, his footsteps accelerated by a few points. Old Chen's appearance had completely disrupted Lu Ming's plans. He hadn't expected that the police officers would put their sights into the middle of this hospital so quickly. It was logical to say, if they couldn't find them on East Main Street, they should have suspected that he and Zhou Hang had already left. He had originally planned to wait until the police officers had really let their guard down. Then he and Zhou Hang would take the ambulance and leave. Even if they met the inspection on the way, he could lie about the patient's dying condition and avoid it. But now, Old Chen's appearance but it gave Lu Ming an important message. That was that the police officers had already set their sights on the hospital. Even if it was still just lining up patients, it felt impossible to mix inside the hospital as a doctor. But the chief commander was a smart man, figured that he would soon check on the doctor's head. By then, the entire East Main Street, there would be no more hiding places for him and Zhou Hang. However, Lu Ming did not know. Old Chen had not been sent by the police police officer at all. He had been sent to the hospital because of heatstroke. The suspicion that Lu Ming was disguised as a patient was only based on intuition, but it was such a misadventure. It had to make the cautious Lu Ming advance his own plans. Boss, then how are we going to escape now? None of what you said before will work. Zhou Hang spoke nervously with a frown while walking. Although he was very clear that this was a drill, he had already substituted into the identity of the robbers. The thought of being arrested. This heart was flustered to the point of panic. Even his voice was shaking as he spoke. Follow me. Lu Ming said in a very calm manner, looking at his unperturbed demeanor. The flustered Zhou Hang also felt a lot more at ease. 
Although he didn't know how Lu Ming would escape next, but he always felt that Lu Ming would have a way. But after seeing Lu Ming walk out of the hospital and go in a direction other than to the dormitory, Zhou Hang instantly panicked again. Brother Ming, our gold is still in the dormitory. Where are you going? Zhou Hang glanced at the direction Lu Ming had left and then looked back at the hospital's dormitory building. The entire person was like being pulled by two invisible forces. There was a dilemma in going in and out. After all, if that gold was lost, the rest of his life would be over. Gold worth 30 million dollars. Even if you cut yourself into segments and sell them by the gram, you can't sell so much money ah. The gold is no longer in the dormitory. Hurry up and follow me. Lu Ming didn't explain too much. He drilled straight into a deep alleyway. Zhou Hang was once again stunned when he heard this, but then skimmed his mouth in relief. I know. It must have been done while I was asleep again. Zhou Hang seemed to have gotten used to such unexpected surprises. He followed closely behind Lu Ming. At the same time, Old Chen, who had searched all the wards in the hospital without finding Lu Ming, he also suddenly reacted. He felt that the figures of those two people looked like Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Undeterred, he turned back to look for them. But after some inquiries, he realized that the two had already left. Although the two had already left. However, Old Chen also asked the basic information of the two people and learned that it was these two people who entered the hospital only two days ago. For a moment, a bad premonition surged in Old Chen's heart. Did you feel that the doctor who was in the restroom just now, as well as the doctor in the aisle, looked somewhat familiar? Old Chen took a deep breath of cool air, looked at his colleague standing beside him, and spoke extremely seriously. Hearing this, the co-worker slightly raised his eyebrows. It was clearly an effort to recall the two people Old Chen had mentioned, but looking at that appearance, it was clear that he had little impression. What, you recognize them? That co-worker recalled for a moment before shaking his head slightly. Then he looked at Old Chen rather curiously and asked out. Listening to Old Chen's words, he only thought that Old Chen had run into an acquaintance. Lu Ming is 182 tall and weighs 75 kilograms. Zhou Hang is 175 tall and weighs 70 kilograms. The height and body types are all right. Just now I thought they looked a bit familiar. Only I didn't think much about it. But just now I asked the two of them to enter the hospital the day after Lu Ming and the others hid in East Main Street. And it's still all still business hours. Yet they left the hospital in a hurry. Old Chen looked at the square below the hospital through the window on the aisle. Seemingly searching for Lu Ming and the others. Lu Ming's height and weight were among the basic information that the team of police officers had gotten. Old Chen was studying this information in the past two days. Therefore remembered it more deeply as well. Are you saying? That those two people are Lu Ming and Zhou Hang? Hearing Old Chen's words, the co-worker opened his mouth with a shocked expression. Old Chen didn't respond, but just remained lying on the window searching for figures towards the hospital square. Of course, at this moment, naturally, the figures of those two people could not be found. I'm not sure, the body type matches, and the time they hid in the hospital also matches. But as you heard just now, everyone inside the hospital said that that Dr. Zhang and Lu Ming don't look anything like each other. That's a bit strange, it's only been a few days, could this Lu Ming have changed his face? There's also the fact that if it's really him, where did he get those credentials from? Old Chen really couldn't figure it out, although he felt in his heart that those two people were Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, but there was no sufficient evidence. In order to corroborate his suspicions, he decided to ask the dean to take him to Lu Ming's dormitory to take a look. The dean's office. What, you're saying that the doctors in our hospital are most likely the robbers who robbed the bank a few days ago? When the dean heard about Old Chen's suspicion that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were robbers, he almost didn't fall off his chair in shock, recalling back to before, when he had deliberately tested Lu Ming with a difficult question. Lu Ming's cool eyes, he now had a pang of fear. I said that, at that time that one looked at me, looked at my heart and I was still a bit puzzled. It turned out to be a murderous robber. Dean said while wiping the fine sweat on his forehead with a tissue, he was glad that he was able to walk back from the ghost gate, in order for the dean to be able to cooperate better. Old Chen did not tell him about this being a drill. Instead, he said with a serious expression, These two people are very dangerous. Now we need to go to his dormitory to take a look. Please take us there. Dean. When the dean heard this, how could he dare to say a word? Immediately leading Old Chen and his colleagues, he went to Lu Ming's residence. Since Lu Ming and Zhou Hang hadn't returned to clean it, the place was still in its original furnishings. As soon as they opened the door, they only saw the air-conditioned quilt folded neatly on the bed. There wasn't any trash inside the house either. It was clean and tidy. On Lu Ming's bedside, there were also a few medical books. Old Chen picked them up and flipped through them a few times before putting them back in their original position. Slowly walking to the closet, he opened it. The gun parts were all placed in a bag. Seeing these parts, Old Chen couldn't help but have his pupils shrink. After realizing that Lu Ming and the others had run away, 
His intestines were almost green with remorse. He hurriedly, at the first opportunity, took out his phone and reported his situation in the hospital to the general commander. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang have mixed into the hospital? The chief commander, who was an afterthought, was as enlightened after hearing this news. At this moment, he finally realized why he hadn't found Lu Ming after rummaging through the entire East Main Street. That was because the focus of all the sweeps was in residential areas or residential buildings. Even if there was a thought that Lu Ming would hide in a shopping mall or a place where other people worked, disguised as an ordinary person, working and living. But those were jobs where the recruitment requirements weren't that high. He had never dreamed that Lu Ming would pass the doctor's examination, successfully mixing inside the hospital to become a doctor. If Old Chen hadn't been hospitalized with a heat stroke, if he hadn't been hospitalized when Old Chen suffered a heat stroke, he would have noticed the omission. Lu Ming might have really escaped East Main Street without realizing it. Immediately deploy to arrest Lu Ming. Block the entrance to East Main Street. Notify all the neighborhood committee staff. As soon as there are outsiders, immediately notify and report them. The commander-in-chief's orders were given as quickly as if in a series of shots. The police officers disguised as vendors were overjoyed to hear this news. Each threw down their own hands of work. They began to search for Lu Ming in all the streets and alleys of East Main Street. This move created a spectacle on East Main Street. That is, if you walked down the street, you would find many stalls without people. It was very bizarre. After a few moments passed, a gunshot pierced through the sky. It startled a flock of white pigeons and flew towards the sky. Traces of robbers have been found in the alleyway in front of the Southeast Pharmacy, requesting backup. All the police messengers heard the gunshots, immediately closing in on the target location. It was able to be seen on the street, heavily armed special agents holding shields or assault rifles, advancing quickly. The neighbors in the neighborhood saw such a powerful scene. One by one, they stretched their necks and watched the action. By the time the special police officers arrived, only to see a police officer was lying on the ground. Red liquid stained the blue shirt. It was precisely the pigment inside the blanks. Although according to the rules of the exercise, after being shot, you are not allowed to move. However, this concrete floor was as hot as an iron plate by the sun. There is really no way to lie down properly. Only have to change positions from time to time to reduce the contact area and time. The robbers have taken the police gun, ready to shoot at any time. Continue the pursuit. Pay attention to dispersing the onlookers. Continue the pursuit. The special agent in charge finished speaking and led the team to quickly chase after them. Seeing that no one was paying attention to him, the police officer lying on the ground screamed in agony. Seeing that the people had pretty much left, he hurriedly got up from the ground and pulled out a cigarette from inside his pocket and lit it, sitting in the shade and fanning himself. At this time, another team of police officers rushed over, just saw covered in blood he was smoking. The atmosphere was instantly a bit awkward. Ah, uh, I'm a dead man now. It's not too much to burn a stick of incense right? The corners of the police messenger's mouth twitched slightly as he hurriedly pestled out the cigarette in his hand. East Main Street. In the middle of the street, two figures in white coats were running quickly in the middle of the one meter wide alley. Lu Ming's brows were deeply locked with a grave expression. The police messenger had placed his eyes in the middle of the hospital, which had completely disrupted his plans. He and Zhou Hang hadn't been out of the hospital for long before some police officers had already started searching for them. It was obvious. Lu Ming's prediction was not wrong. The police officer in the hospital gown had sensed his identity after coming back to his senses, although he himself had transferred the gold long ago. However, a portion of the gun parts used for the maneuvers were still in the dormitory. That police inspector would naturally be able to identify himself if he found those things. The beginning of the manhunt also proved that those things had been found. However, it was good that the number of police messengers remaining on East Main Street was not too many, and most of the force was expected to be used by the chief commander to block the exit of East Main Street and the main force of the police guard team, which the general commander had previously transferred away in order to lure the snakes out of their holes, would still need some time to rush back to East Main Street. Therefore, Lu Ming still had time. In the past few days of hiding in East Main Street, Lu Ming hadn't been idle. He had used the map on top of his cell phone to figure out the intricate and complicated alleyways of East Main Street. His original IQ that far surpassed normal people, coupled with the skills rewarded by the system, made Lu Ming's memory quite terrifying. The various roads of the entire East Main Street were engraved vividly in his mind, and what Lu Ming needed to do at this moment was to outline a route that was completely free of surveillance cameras from the map in his mind. East Main Street was an old urban village, therefore the number of cameras spread out wasn't much. It wasn't difficult to plan such a route. Earlier, they had collided with the police officer who had come to intercept them, seized the police officer's gun, killed him, and then managed to escape. It was because the route he chose made it impossible for the police officers to lock onto it at first. 
the police force was spread too thin. It was only then that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were given the opportunity to take advantage of the situation. At this time, the two men drilled out of the alleyway. Lu Ming stood in place and frowned as he looked around before starting to run once again. And just when Zhou Hang thought that Lu Ming would escape somewhere else, he realized that the direction Lu Ming chose to travel at the moment was actually the direction where the hospital was located. Brother Ming, have you turned your head around? This direction is where the hospital is. Zhou Hang spoke in panic, hurrying to remind Lu Ming. After all, they had only just run out of the hospital. If they went back now, wouldn't they be throwing themselves into a trap? Don't ask. Hurry up and follow. One more step slower and it'll be too late. Lu Ming spoke decisively. His tone was unusually firm. Things in this world changed rapidly. It was impossible for anyone to know what would happen in the next second. It was true that people like Prime Minister Zhuga, who had a mind like a demon. There was also a day when the stars fell from the five abode planes. After all, human calculation is not as good as heaven's calculation. Lu Ming never calculated that old Chen would be hospitalized due to heatstroke. But the more it came to this kind of time, the more it tested one's courage. When he bumped into the police officer who had intercepted him, Lu Ming could have chosen not to have to shoot. It wasn't as if he didn't have the ability to subdue that police messenger with other methods. After all, if he used other methods, he would not have to reveal his position at all, buying a little more time to escape. But Lu Ming still fired at the police officer. His purpose was not to be brave, nor was it any longer about how ferocious he wanted to appear. Instead, he wanted to create the illusion that he was in a trap, as much as possible to attract more police officers over. After all, the robbers had guns in their hands, and they were so vicious, the police officers would definitely be worried about the robbers taking hostages again. Once again, they would be caught in a stalemate. So before the robbers had a hostage in their hands to use as blackmail, the police officer would definitely send most of the police force over to search for Lu Ming. In this way, a large number of police forces would concentrate in the direction Lu Ming escaped from. The hospital that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had just left had undoubtedly become the weakest place in the police force. And at this time, Lu Ming had dodged the surveillance cameras along the way and returned to the hospital once again in the blind spot of the police team's vision. He then had a chance of survival. Outside the bank, the chief commander sitting inside the command car looked at the images coming from the front in the screen. The expression was unusually serious. After all, the rats that were hiding in the gutter now had already run into the street. What one had to do now was to catch them as fast as possible. However, when he heard that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had taken away a police officer's sidearm, and also shot at that police officer, the expression was very gloomy. Another police constable had been killed in action. At the same time, a squad leader next to him also spoke with an angry expression. This Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, their anger is just too arrogant. It was no wonder he was so angry, because this was really a bit unfair to the police messenger. After all, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were from special forces. How could an ordinary police officer compare to their skills? Now the gun in their hands was taken away, and they were also killed on the spot, undoubtedly gave them another resounding slap in the face. However, the commander-in-chief, who hadn't been overwhelmed by anger, frowned slightly as if he was thinking about something. Not right, most of the police force hasn't rushed to East Main Street yet, and his previous escape route has been avoiding the security cameras. We don't know his exact location. He has already grabbed the police messenger's sidearm, and he can completely continue to escape along this route that has no surveillance. But at this time, he chose to shoot. The sound of a gunshot will reveal the location. There's no way this Lu Ming didn't know that. But he still fired this shot. This is not like his style of behavior ah. The chief commander's hail gaze seemed to perceive a hint of clues. The squad leader next to him sniffed and hurriedly said, Are you saying that he's deliberately attracting our attention? The commander-in-chief nodded thoughtfully. Frowning, he pondered for a few seconds. The chief commander hurriedly grabbed the intercom on the table. Immediately giving orders to the troops ahead. Leave five members inside the hospital. The rest of you continue to hunt down Lu Ming. Let him hold hostages again and I won't spare you. The commander-in-chief spoke in a loud voice, in order to prevent Lu Ming from giving him a light. The cautious chief commander, despite the lack of police force, still left a few team members at the hospital. At the same time, East Main Street, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had already reappeared in front of the hospital at this time, looking from afar. The hospital's several entrances and exits were guarded by police officers. It was obvious. The commander-in-chief had left a few people behind just in case Lu Ming and Zhou Hang would take advantage of the fact that all the police forces had gone out to search and arrest, and then turn back again. Indeed, the police officer's brain was not a walnut. It was impossible to withdraw all police forces just because they were going to arrest Lu Ming. It was definitely necessary to guard against the possibility of Lu Ming turning around and coming back, seeing those police officers at the door. Lu Ming quickly thought about how to get in. 
It was also at this time. A crisp voice came from behind him. Dr. Zhang, why are you here? Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were startled. Turning back, they only saw that it was the little nurse who had poured tea for them during their interview. Since she was on the evening shift, she had only come over from home now. For the time being, she didn't know about Lu Ming being the robber. At this moment, she was looking at Lu Ming, who had met her by chance, and her autumn eyes were full of peach blossoms. When Lu Ming heard this nurse address herself, he immediately had an idea in his mind. He pulled the little nurse over and whispered a few words in her ear. The little nurse immediately lost her face in fear. Really? You saw two robbers disguised as patients mixing into our hospital? I said why is there a police messenger guarding the entrance of the hospital? The little nurse covered her mouth in disbelief. Her face astonished. You go inform the two police officers. We'll keep an eye here lest the robbers escape. Lu Ming spoke solemnly. The little nurse was convinced of his words. She hurriedly told Lu Ming's words to the police guards guarding the entrance. Hearing this, the two police messengers immediately reported the situation over the intercom. One went in to search and arrest, leaving only one guard. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang looked at each other. Lowering their heads, they walked towards the police messenger at the door. The two of them quickly stepped in front of the police messenger. Lu Ming casually snatched the passerby's drink can and threw it at the police officer's head at once. The police officer froze and just reacted. Zhou Hang, who had previously taken the opportunity to approach him, instantly stormed up. Like a large black bear, he snatched his gun over, aiming the gun at the police officer. The entire action was extremely swift like a flowing cloud. It was only the blink of an eye, and the cooperation between Lu Ming and Zhou Hang was seamless. You can't even hold a gun steady, and you still call yourself a police messenger. Zhou Hang pointed his gun at the police officer in front of him and spoke teasingly, apparently forgetting that he was also a police officer. It's only a few thousand dollars a month. I advise you not to play with your life. Lu Ming gently patted the police sergeant's shoulder. He walked straight towards the inside of the hospital. Seeing that Lu Ming had already walked away, the police sergeant then looked at Zhou Hang and smiled somewhat awkwardly. However, Zhou Hang, however, had a serious look on his face and his gun was always pointed at him. Don't play around with me. Zhou Hang glanced back at Lu Ming uneasily. He then stepped forward and used his hand to gently slash the police officer's neck. The police messenger was surprised as he stared at Zhou Hang and stood still, not knowing what Zhou Hang was doing. Seeing this, Zhou Hang impatiently said, Why are you still standing? My blow just now has fractured your cervical vertebrae. Hurry up and lie down. Hearing this, the police messenger came to a realization. His legs went limp and he lay down on the ground. Perhaps it was the wrong posture to lie down, slightly moving his body. Only then did he not move at all. Only then was Zhou Hang satisfied and left, hurrying to follow behind Lu Ming. After the two successfully lured away a police officer and cooperated well to solve the remaining one, they smoothly entered inside the hospital. Just as the two of them were walking quickly towards the inside, not far away from the office, a loud noise came from the office. It's this nurse, gave my dad an injection, and as a result, he couldn't get out of bed for three days. Let's see if I don't gouge your bitch face. Pull her out. A group of people came out of the office noisily. The female nurse who had just accosted Lu Ming was being surrounded by these people. Her clothes had been torn open. Her hair was scattered. The pearly appearance was very sympathetic. Your father's illness. It's not the needle. It's that his body is already like that. The female nurse explained with a sobbing voice. Her eyes filled with tears. She was very aggrieved. After all, she had taken care of the patient in every possible way. But in the end, instead of getting understanding from the patient's family, also called on friends and family to find her trouble. And now they even hit her with their hands. Other hospitals are fine but sending it to your hospital makes it like this? I think it's you bitch who messed up. The patient's family members were unforgiving, and a group of people were about to make a move on the weak female nurse. Obviously, this is to meet the patient's family medical disturbance, but just when a group of people dragged the female nurse out, they bumped into Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who was holding a gun. A time. Family's eyes have fallen on the two. All the noisy voices came to an abrupt halt. It was as if time had frozen. Even the air no longer circulated. Dr. Zhang? The female nurse opened her mouth in surprise, looking at the gun in Zhou Hang's hand. Her mind went blank. Ha! Huh? Zhou Hang snorted coldly, pointing the gun at the shrew who was still grabbing the female nurse's collar and not letting go. He raised his eyebrows. The shrew was scared out of her wits. It hurriedly let go of her hand. If you have any problems, say them properly. Harmonious society. Don't move your hands, got it? Lu Ming spoke in a calm voice. He swept a glance at the group of patients' families. Those people were like chickens pecking at rice, nodding their heads repeatedly, not daring to say half a word. Let's go. After Lu Ming finished speaking, 
he took Zhou Hang and continued walking towards the inside of the hospital. Everyone watched the two leave, respectful and humble. When Lu Ming and Zhou Hang disappeared at the end of the hospital corridor, the vicious shrew from earlier, only then did she politely ask the nurse, is your hospital now giving doctors guns in order to deal with medical disputes? The female nurse was also confused, not knowing what was going on, but at this moment, Lu Ming's dashing back was deeply engraved in her mind. Magnificent, tall, like the shining sun, radiant, coming to the third floor, in front of the door of the dean's office. Zhou Hang was about to kick the door, but Lu Ming stopped him, holding the door handle. He gently twisted it, walked in. Zhou Hang, who was holding the gun, scratched his head in embarrassment at the back. He thought to himself that it was fortunate that Lu Ming had stopped him in time. Otherwise, when the exercise was over, he had to pay for another door. At this time, the dean was still sitting inside the office and dozing off. After hearing the footsteps, he impatiently said, Didn't you say, come in and knock? Seeing that no one responded to him, only then did the dean slowly open his eyes, like seeing a ghost. He almost didn't fall off his chair in fear. Dr. Zhang, you, you. The dean's throat nodded and he swallowed the saliva in his mouth forcefully. Stuttering, he opened his mouth. The entire person was soft, unable to stand up at all. Don't be afraid. I came to ask you for a favor. It won't take your life. Of course if you don't cherish this opportunity. I don't mind sending you to God. Oh, no. We're not under God's control here. We should be sending you to meet King of Hell. Lu Ming calmly opened his mouth. The cool gaze landed on top of the Bible that the dean had placed on the table. As long as I can help. The dean opened his mouth in tears. He kept wiping the fine sweat on his forehead with a tissue. Lu Ming received his exact reply. Then he looked at the dean's trembling appearance. Satisfied, he sat down on the sofa, picking up the teapot on the table. He poured a cup of tea. Lifting up the teacup, he slowly said, Now, I'll make a few emergency calls. You just arrange for manpower to get on the bus. And remember that they're all patients who are killing people and must be rushed as soon as possible. The dean sniffed and nodded repeatedly. Nor did he dare to ask Lu Ming why he was doing this. Very good. After Lu Ming took a sip of tea, he stood up and extended his hand towards the dean. Give me your cell phone. Hearing that Lu Ming wanted his cell phone, the dean hurriedly and tremblingly touched the cell phone inside his pocket and handed it to Lu Ming, only to see Lu Ming pick up a toothpick on the table and remove the phone card inside his cell phone. Afterwards, he touched out a few phone cards from his pocket. After inserting the phone card, he quickly pressed a few numbers. After a few busy sounds, the call was connected. This is Healthy Hospital, Emergency Center. How may I help you? On the other end of the phone, a sweet voice came out. My father is critically ill and needs an ambulance. The address is 114 Magnolia Street. Come over quickly. The person is dying. Lu Ming finished with a panicked tone. He then hung up the phone, changing to another phone card. He used a different voice, a different reason, and dialed several health hospital ambulance numbers. In a short period of time, so many ambulances had to be dispatched. The call center there had to come and ask the dean for permission. How dare the dean disagree? Hurry up and let the ambulances go out. Subsequently, several ambulances, carrying doctors and nurses, swept toward the East Main Street corner. East Main Street. The sun was blazing. The air was tumbling with heat waves. Not even a trace of wind lingered here. Today's heat was different from previous days. It was the kind of extreme sweltering heat, so stifling that people couldn't catch their breath. Being under the sun, it wouldn't take more than a few moments before one would be drenched in sweat. The world was like being in a giant steamer, suffering twice as much. The police officer's clothes had long been soaked in sweat, wet and sticky, like dog plasters. They clung to their skin and could not be pulled off. But even so, they still had to stand by at the street corner for fear that Lu Ming would escape from here. After all, as the only exit on East Main Street, if Lu Ming escaped from here, that would be a serious fault. So, even in this sweltering heat, the police officers guarding this place didn't dare to have any slackness, staring at every passing pedestrian and vehicle, finding something suspicious, immediately went forward to interrogate. Brothers, all brace yourselves. Don't let Lu Ming escape from under our noses. A police officer bought a box of chilled drinks from the kiosk. One by one, he handed them out to the police officers guarding the street entrance, at the same time, also spoke loudly to cheer up his colleagues. That's for sure. In the past few days to catch him, the skin on my body has lost a layer to the sun. Another police constable took the drink and drank it in two gulps. Ice water flowed into his stomach. A breath of cold air was let out freely. The heat from that body was only slightly reduced by a few points. When we catch Lu Ming, I'll treat everyone to a good meal. The police officer who delivered the drink spoke very boldly. These past few days, 
He had earned quite a lot from setting up stalls disguised as a vendor, although it wasn't as outrageous as old Chen, but it was still several hundred. It was naturally not a problem to treat himself to a meal. How can I let you break the bank? I'll treat you then, and bring me another bottle. This damn weather, it's weirdly hot. The police messenger took another bottle of drink, but before he could unscrew the cap, he saw an ambulance coming towards them from afar. He frowned and put down the drink and walked up, knocked on the driver's window. The driver hurriedly rolled the window down. Is it convenient to check? The police messenger spoke with an apologetic face. After all, this was an ambulance, and a minute's delay would likely take someone's life. The car is full of doctors. If you want to check, hurry up. You're still in a hurry to save people. The driver spoke eagerly, wiping the fine sweat on his forehead with his hand. All right, thanks for cooperating. Please take off the mask. The police messenger thanked him repeatedly, not daring to have a moment's delay. At the same time, several colleagues rushed up to open the back door of the ambulance, seeing that there was only a doctor and nurse sitting inside. The body type and appearance did not match Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. They then signaled towards the police officers guarding the intersection in front of them that they could be released. Sorry for the delay. The police messenger apologized to the driver. Afterwards, he hurriedly let the people pass, not daring to delay the ambulance for a second. After all, saving people was like putting out a fire. They were just practicing. If they really delayed saving people because of the drill, then the trouble can be big. Human life is at stake. Who dares to take this responsibility? It's not easy for you guys. It's such a hot day and you're still guarding here. If we catch the robbers earlier, we'll also feel at ease. The driver spoke generously. He then stepped on the gas and left East Main Street. Just as the police messenger let out a huge sigh of relief and prepared to return to his post, several other ambulances drove over from afar. Is this some kind of major accident? Why are these ambulances coming one after another? The police officer was puzzled in his heart. One ambulance was fine, but this time so many came out. It was really a bit strange. Of course, this also instantly made him alert. However, he didn't dare to delay the ambulance to save people. So he could only request instructions from the chief commander. General command. Seven or eight ambulances have come from the East Avenue Street corner. I suspect Lu Ming is hiding among them. But if we line up now, it might cause congestion. Requesting instructions from the chief squad. The police messenger picked up the walkie-talkie and hurriedly reported the current situation. After learning this news, the chief commander also developed the same suspicion as the police messenger. But if the ambulance was really delayed because of the row, once a certain patient really had problems because of the untimely rescue, then he would definitely be held accountable as well. Although the drill was important, but when human life is at stake, the commander-in-chief does not dare to give orders indiscriminately, has always acted decisively, the thunder and lightning of the commander-in-chief, a time, also hesitated for a moment, but after a little thought, the commander-in-chief even gave a reply that surprised everyone, he even ordered all ambulances to leave quickly. He even instructed the police messengers guarding the street entrances, don't delay the ambulances, quickly let them pass. Although, the police officers guarding the street entrance were worried that there was a possibility that Lu Ming might be mixed up inside the ambulances, but since the commander-in-chief had spoken, he also had no choice but to do as he was told. The chief commander said to let them roll down the windows, do a quick check, and then hurry to let them go. Human lives are at stake, don't delay people. The captain of the police guards shouted at the top of his voice. After the rest of the police constables hurriedly checked the ambulances, all the ambulances, almost unhindered, passed through the barrier at the street entrance. There wasn't a bit more delay because of the police guard's fortification. The police officers guarding the street crossing watched the ambulances leave. One by one, they sighed. What do you think this commander-in-chief was thinking? With so many ambulances coming out all at once, anyone with eyes can see that something is fishy. In my opinion, this Lu Ming is hiding inside this car. What else can you think? He's afraid to take the blame. Who would be responsible for a death? That's right. He said he would treat the drill as a real battle. But in the end, he's afraid of being scapegoated. It's been hard on us. We've lost several layers of skin to the sun. Now that Lu Ming has probably fled in an ambulance, are we still defending? Definitely. The evacuation order hasn't come down. So we can only continue to guard. The police officers were full of complaints. Obviously there was some dissatisfaction with the commander-in-chief's decision to be afraid of taking the blame. Inside the live broadcast room, the viewers saw the ambulance leave East Main Street without incident. They all felt pity for Lu Ming. Because through the camera on Zhou Hang's body, they knew that Lu Ming didn't leave in these ambulances. Pity, if I had known it would have passed so easily. Lu Ming should have hidden inside the ambulances. Yeah, Lu Ming was still too careful. Look at how the police messenger barely checked before letting them through. 
missing such a good opportunity. But even if he left East Main Street in an ambulance, where could he escape to? When Lu Ming chose to hide in East Main Street, wasn't it because of the complexity of the situation and the large number of foreigners here, making it easy to hide? Indeed, other places are not as chaotic as East Main Street. Although the commander-in-chief released the ambulance, he still sent a car to follow it. After leaving East Main Street, it's not so easy to hide. In my opinion, Lu Ming is just testing to see the reaction of the general commander. If the investigation is not strict, he will then leave in an ambulance. But the hospital's ambulances are almost all dispatched now, right? Lu Ming is only preparing to leave in an ambulance now. It's too late, isn't it? Lu Ming is a prudent and highly intelligent robber. He naturally has his own plans. Let's not worry about it as spectators. That is, maybe Lu Ming has a better chance? People have high IQs. Just because we can't think of them doesn't mean they can't think of them either. Anyway, I believe in Lu Ming. Lu Ming does diehard fan comes to report. The pop-up discussion in the live broadcast room was very hot. At this moment, the viewers were speculating about Lu Ming's next plan. After all, there was no other place to escape from East Main Street other than the street entrance. If Lu Ming didn't leave in an ambulance, he continued to stay on East Main Street. It would only be a matter of time before he was caught, outside the bank. In the temporary command room, the chief commander was sitting in front of the table, waiting with a grave expression on his face. It wasn't long. He received the news that the ambulance had left East Main Street. With a raised eyebrow, the commander-in-chief immediately picked up the walkie-talkie that was placed on the table. Attention attention. The 4th squadron immediately sends someone to follow the ambulance coming out of East Main Street. Remember to maintain a certain distance between the vehicles. Don't lose them. The other several squad leaders inside the caravan had subtle expressions after hearing this from the commander-in-chief. After all, with so many ambulances coming out at once, anyone with a clear eye could see that there was a problem. But the chief commander let these ambulances leave so easily, didn't even send anyone to double check, waiting for the ambulances to come, only to realize that things are not right, send a car to follow, it was a bit too much of an afterthought, however, looking at the look on the commander in chief's face, there was not a hint of panic, on the contrary, there is a kind of calmness, the crowd could not help but be suspicious in their hearts, commander in chief, why didn't you scrutinize the ambulance from the start, but waited until now to send someone to follow it? One of the squad leaders hesitated for a moment. Finally, he couldn't help himself. He looked at the commander-in-chief and asked the doubts in his heart. This street entrance is the only exit. It's the top priority. You and I both know that. That Lu Ming naturally knows it as well. But with his cautious character, he would definitely test the waters before leaving. Checking so tightly from the start, where would he dare to leave in an ambulance? The commander-in-chief had a serious expression. His eyes fixed on the map on the table. A calm voice slowly sounded. As he spoke, he grabbed the marker on the table and casually drew a mark on the map. But what if Lu Ming thought of this as well, and took the risk of a surprise and sat inside this batch of ambulances? That squad leader looked worried and asked uneasily. The rest of them nodded as they heard this. According to Lu Ming's style, it wasn't like he couldn't do something like this. Didn't I send a car to follow? If there's a situation with these ambulances, we'll be the first to lock down the location. Whether Lu Ming is testing it or not, we won't easily miss these ambulances. And as long as we leave East Main Street, with surveillance all over the entire city, Lu Ming will have nothing to hide. The chief commander spoke with a faint smile on his face. It was as if he had a good plan. Since Lu Ming had used the ambulance to confuse him, the best way to deal with it was naturally to use the trick to lure Lu Ming out of East Main Street. And, he didn't care if the ambulance Lu Ming was the first to send out was a test. As long as it was suspicious, it would never be spared. This was also a habit he had developed over the many years he had been a police officer. If Lu Ming dared to play smart in front of him, then in the end, Lu Ming could only turn into a jumping clown. I see. Indeed, if Lu Ming hadn't hidden in East Main Street, we wouldn't have wasted so many days. When the maneuvers are over, we must focus on deploying surveillance on East Main Street. This place is too chaotic, and it does make our search quite a bit more difficult. That squad leader first nodded in sudden realization, then he blamed himself a bit as he spoke. After all, if the surveillance of East Main Street had been perfected earlier, the drill wouldn't have dragged on until now. It's good to know. The commander-in-chief looked cold and spoke indifferently. That sharp gaze kept flickering, seemingly thinking about something else. Although, the current Lu Ming seemed to have become a turtle in a jar. But in the chief commander's heart, he was vaguely uneasy. It always felt as if he had missed something. But he couldn't think of it. This uneasiness lingered in his heart and lingered. It made him unavoidably a bit distracted. This weather, it is indeed too stuffy. The commander-in-chief murmured and opened his mouth, wiping off the sweat on his forehead with his hand. 
Thinking only that he was worrying about nothing, he took a deep breath and got up, walking over to the water fountain to pour himself a cup of water. Health Hospital The hospital was built very high, and in the middle of this urban village, it was quite like a face with a small mountain, and the dean's office was even located on the top floor of the hospital. Therefore, looking out from the office, one could almost overlook the entire East Street. At this time, the window, from afar, he watched the ambulances and police vehicles leave from the East Main Street exit. The corner of Lu Ming's mouth hooked into a seemingly shallow smile. At the same time, he secretly let out a sigh of relief. If the commander-in-chief had ordered a strict investigation of these vehicles, he might still be a little nervous, but seeing the other party let the ambulance go so easily, Lu Ming knew that the chief commander had fallen for it. Brother Ming, these cops were really afraid of delaying the rescue and didn't check the vehicles. Why don't we just follow your original plan and leave in the ambulance? Beside the desk, Zhou Hang, who was holding a gun in his hand, spoke with an agitated expression. According to Lu Ming's original plan, they were indeed planning to disguise themselves as doctors and leave East Main Street in an ambulance. However, the prerequisite for that plan to succeed was that their identities had not been exposed. After all, no one would have thought that he would become a doctor. But now, their identity as doctors had been exposed, undoubtedly giving the commander-in-chief a wake-up call, leaving again in an ambulance. It was undoubtedly throwing themselves into the net. The reason why Lu Ming still let so many ambulances leave the hospital. In fact, he had other plans. After all, with Lu Ming's character, he would never pin his hopes on just one path. He would always leave a back way out. Don't think about it. The chief commander let these cars leave just to lure us out. Even if we go out, we won't be able to escape far. Sooner or later we'll be caught. Lu Ming spoke calmly, responding to Zhou Hang. Obviously. He had already seen the chief commander's intention to let the ambulance go. However, this made Zhou Hang very puzzled, since Lu Ming knew that leaving in an ambulance would not escape the police messenger. Why did he run to the dean's office again and let so many ambulances leave East Main Street? Wasn't this redundant? We can't escape? Then what are we still doing here? Hurry up and think of another way. Otherwise, the police will come over later. Zhou Hang instantly panicked. After taking a hurried glance towards the door, panicked, he opened his mouth. After all, just now, in order to enter the hospital, they had resolved one of the police messengers guarding the door, and the one police messenger inside the hospital had lost contact. It was estimated that it would soon be discovered by other police messengers, and at that time, the two of them would no longer have any chance to escape. It's time to go. Lu Ming raised his head to the sky and frowned slightly. Then his gaze flickered as he turned his head to look at the dean. The dean was given such a look by Lu Ming. On this three-volt day, he unexpectedly broke out in a cold sweat. The entire person went soft like a puddle of soft mud from the inside out. The heart was already half cold. Being cooperative is good for everyone. Understand? Lu Ming spoke calmly. The dean nodded in fear. Comprehension was instantly pulled full. Seal his mouth. Lu Ming spoke in a deep voice and reached out to rip down the office curtains. Having been a soldier, his hands were extremely strong, and in a few clicks, he tore the curtains into several pieces of cloth. He threw it to Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang nodded heavily. Very skillfully, he used the strips of cloth to bind the dean to the chair. At the same time, he also stuffed the strip of cloth into the dean's mouth, worried that the dean would spit out the cloth, making a sound, exposing their whereabouts in advance. Also wrapped a circle along the dean's head, determined that the dean's shouting and screaming can only make a whimpering sound. Only then did the two leave the dean's office with a quick step. Boss, there is a police messenger in the hospital who has lost contact with the hospital. It should soon be noticed by them that we have returned to the hospital. Where are we going to go next? The flustered Zhou Hang looked back from time to time, fearing that he would be caught up by the police messenger. Although it was cool to play the robber before, but now after substituting into the role, he realized that this feeling of being scared was devastating. Stay close to me. Don't ask so many questions. One step slower and it'll be too late. Lu Ming's pace was calm and orderly, yet very swift. East Main Street. A moment ago, the sky was a clear blue sky with a blazing sun. At this moment, it suddenly became cloudy and dull. Passersby were running wildly on the street, fearing that they would be trapped under the eaves a little later, blocked by the heavy rain on their way home. A gust of wind whistled through the streets, rolling up the plastic bags, leaves and dust on that ground. For a while, above the not-so-tidy streets, dust romances the sky. This day can change at any time. Street exit. The police officers in charge of guarding the exit of East Main Street, looking at the passersby who were scattered and fleeing, they couldn't help but look worried. It seems like it's going to rain. Should we find a place to hide as well? One of the police officers looked up at the dark and heavy sky. Frowning, he opened his mouth. 
Looking at the gloomy sky, it was estimated that the upcoming rain was not small. The commander-in-chief hasn't given the order to withdraw. We can't go AWOL. It's not like we haven't been rained on before. What are we afraid of? The captain's expression was serious, and he threw back his voice. The words fell, with a deep frown on his face. He also looked up at the sky. This ghostly weather's sudden shift, there would still be an impact on this maneuver, more or less. But, Lu Ming most likely left in an ambulance just now. That police messenger hesitated for two seconds, but still opened his mouth to speak his mind. In his opinion, the chief commander letting go of those ambulances was a major mistake. Lu Ming had run away in his car long ago, seeing that the rainstorm was approaching. It was also completely useless to still guard here in the rain. Where did all this talk come from? As a police constable, obeying orders is your duty. The captain skimmed a glance at the police sergeant. After opening his mouth to reprimand him, he withdrew his gaze and continued to watch the street, allowing the gusty wind to whistle past his ears. He remained loftily unmoving, standing straight. Seeing this, the rest of the police officers did not dare to say half a word of complaint, and similarly stood firm at their posts. Even though the streets now, there were no longer any people walking around, not even a single car could be seen, outside the bank, in the temporary command room. The street crossing served as the only exit from East Main Street. It was also the most important barrier for strict defense. The commander-in-chief naturally had people install surveillance at the street entrance, no longer paying attention to this place at all times. He stared at the picture in the screen with bated breath. The eyelids didn't even blink. Just at this moment, movement came from inside the walkie-talkie placed on the table. Report, a killed in action team member was found inside the hospital, and it's extremely likely that Lu Ming has long since returned to the hospital requesting instructions. Hearing this news, a ripple rose in the chief commander's ancient, wave-free eyes, immediately launch a sweep of the hospital. The chief commander picked up the walkie-talkie and spoke calmly. He had been curious before. So many ambulances were out on East Main Street. If Lu Ming was truly hiding amongst the ambulances, where exactly would he be mixing up the cars? Unexpectedly, surprisingly, it was the hospital. It was mainly because the chief commander hadn't expected Lu Ming to be so bold. With all the police officers searching for him, he even dared to return to the hospital. In this way, the possibility of Lu Ming mixing in the ambulance and leaving was infinitely magnified. However, in order to prevent Lu Ming from transferring the tiger away from the mountain, the commander-in-chief still requested that the hospital be thoroughly investigated. After giving the order to search the hospital, the chief commander once again picked up the walkie-talkie. Captain of the first squad, please reply when you receive it. Roger, please instruct. Send additional vehicles to follow those ambulances to ensure that Lu Ming can be brought to justice when he is found at the first opportunity. Roger. The orders were issued one after another. It made the entire police team, like a machine, run in an orderly manner. It had to be said that to be able to do this, it was very much a test of one's ability to command and the cohesion of the entire team. After all, everyone has his own mind. It wasn't easy to have hundreds of people, pointing and hitting wherever they wanted. Think about the military training. Let a class of people stepping on the ground, have to train for several days, not to mention something like this. Chief Commander, do you think Lu Ming will really be among the ambulances? A squad leader standing next to the Chief Commander murmured and asked. As he spoke, a face was also filled with a grave expression. No idea, but this is his only chance. Now that his identity has been completely exposed, there will be no more hiding place for him in the entire East Main Street. If he doesn't leave now, he won't have any more chances to leave. Are the reinforcements already in position? The commander-in-chief clenched his fists. Looking at that screen, the picture of the darkening sky. Only then did he speak with a grave expression. Chief team, now our police forces have now all arrived at East Main Street. The two forks out of the street. All have our people setting up defenses. Another squad leader beside him heard the chief commander ask a question. He hurriedly opened his mouth to report the situation. Only then did the chief commander breathe a sigh of relief. When the ambulance left the street corner. He felt that there was something missing, mulling it over for a moment. He had purposely fortified the defense of the two diverging roads outside the East Main Street Street Crossing. After hearing that Lu Ming had returned to the hospital, he was even more convinced of Lu Ming's plan of trying to escape by using the ambulance. He just didn't know if he had gotten into the ambulance that had exited East Main Street before, or if he had mixed in with the next ambulance. Of course, in the commander-in-chief's opinion, it was very likely that Lu Ming would only use the ambulance to get away next the previous batch. The greater likelihood was that it was a smokescreen that he had put out. If that's the case, then these two roads were the focus of the defense. Previously letting the ambulances leave was the same smoke bomb that the commander-in-chief had put out for Lu Ming. The subtext was telling Lu Ming. You see, 
I'm afraid of taking responsibility and don't check the ambulance much at all. Such a good opportunity. Why don't you leave? The bait had wrapped around the hook. Now it was up to Lu Ming to bite or not. However, the commander in chief, who has always been a master of his craft, he also became uncertain about whether Lu Ming would bite the hook. Because, Lu Ming is a person who really makes him a little puzzled. That kind of jumpy thinking was completely unlike a normal person. Either he was a madman or a genius. And the way to deal with this kind of person was to respond to all changes with no change. No matter what schemes and tricks he comes up with, you just have to be firm and execute your plan. After all, East Street is this big. Guard the street corner and cover all the vehicles coming in and out. Then conduct a carpet check. Lu Ming wouldn't have any possibility of escaping. At this moment, the sky suddenly darkened. It was like it was nighttime. The wind was raging, and the cool breeze surged into the caravan. The papers and maps on the table were completely blown away. The sultry weather finally had a hint of coolness. The police messenger next to him looked at the dark clouds rolling in the sky and muttered, These past few days have been so hot, it's finally cooler. The commander-in-chief raised his head and looked outside with a grave expression. The sky was full of dark clouds that pressed down heavily, rolling and churning. Rumbling thunder could be faintly heard, shaking the window panes of the car and shaking them continuously. The commander-in-chief seemed to be thinking, and his heartbeat seemed to resonate with the thunder. Rumble. The heart shook his chest together with the thunder. Faster and faster and faster. So fast that it made him somewhat breathless. The originally dull eyes gradually became bright at this moment. Click. A thunderbolt of electricity fell from the dome, cracking the entire dark sky. Heavy rain poured down. Everyone in the car was startled. They were all attracted by the electric light and looked out the window. And the commander-in-chief was also awakened by the thunderbolt. Suddenly, he stood up. It hasn't rained for a few days? The chief commander clenched his fists tightly, stared with wide eyes, and spoke in a stern voice. The group of squad leaders beside him did not understand why the commander-in-chief's emotions were so agitated. They were glared at by the chief commander's appalling eyes, and their hearts were scared. I'm guessing it's been three or four days, right? One of the squad leaders squeezed a bitter smile on his face and spoke with a slightly trembling voice, thinking to himself that the commander-in-chief was afraid that he hadn't been heat-struck by this damn weather. Can you even be this excited at the sight of rain? Who knew that after the chief commander heard these words, he turned around and rushed out of the caravan, caught off guard. The crowd reacted and hurriedly chased after him. East Main Street, two or three meters underground in the middle of the sewers. Brother Ming, you're really awesome. I guess the police messenger's side didn't even dream that we would leave East Main Street from here. But seriously, this sewer pipe is damn stinky. In that narrow pipe, Zhou Hang was crawling forward, following closely behind Lu Ming. As he crawled forward with vigor, he spoke excitedly. Obviously, he was very impressed with Lu Ming's plan for this step. In the sewers, from time to time, there would be rats that heard the commotion made by the two and fled in fear. It had to be said. It was the first time Zhou Hang had seen such a fat rat. It was almost as big as a cat. Previously, he heard the old man say that rats could also bite cats to death. Zhou Hang was not quite convinced. Now that he had seen it with his own eyes, he realized that he was the one who was poorly informed. Hurry up and climb. When it rains later, rain will pour in, and the two of us will be accounted for here. And as soon as it rains, the police messenger will react. Lu Ming's brows tightened as he opened his mouth to urge a cry. Ordinary people couldn't even imagine how dirty this place was. The silt that had accumulated in the pipes over the years emitted a sickening stench. It was so smoky that people were about to shed tears. Not only that, this black mud was as slippery as oil. One careless slip of the hand and the entire person could bury their face in this foul smelling mud. And, the narrow passageway could only allow one person to pass through on their stomach. It was a good thing that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were both from the military. Their mental qualities far exceeded those of ordinary people. Otherwise, in this dark and claustrophobic environment, they would definitely collapse. Ordinary people simply didn't have the courage to drill into the pipes. Not to mention crawling forward inside. At this moment, a deafening thunderclap sounded. Water gradually flowed in from the pipe. Not long after, the water went over Zhou Hang's wrist. It made him unavoidably panic. Brother Ming, it's starting to rain outside. How much further do we have to climb? Zhou Hang frowned and opened his mouth, and there was an undisguised nervousness in his words. He had originally thought that Lu Ming would just climb a short distance through the pipe and then drill out through the sewer manhole cover. But now, looking at the long and narrow pipe, there wasn't any way up at all. It made Zhou Hang start to worry. If it rained too much, being in the pipe, they would definitely be flooded by all the rainwater pouring in. If they didn't hurry to escape, they would definitely be drowned in here. Faster. Climb faster. Lu Ming's brows were slightly furrowed and his expression was grave. While trudging forward in the mud, in his mind's eye, 
That road map of the entire sewers of East Main Street was clear and bright. The past few days of hiding in the East, Lu Ming had never been idle. He had not only memorized the entire environment of East Main Street, he had even mapped out the sewer route of East Main Street. Since this East Main Street was close to the moat, earlier, the sewage of the entire East Main Street was discharged directly into the river. It was only later when the environment was remediated that the original sewage pipes were changed, letting the resident's sewage go through another pipe. And this one pipe to the moat was only used to discharge rainwater. Of course, this piping system is intricate. If you choose the wrong pipe, not only can not reach the moat, in the case of more and more water, they would not have any chance to return to the original path, only to be drowned inside the pipes. At this moment, there was more and more water, and in the blink of an eye, it didn't go past their arms. The clattering sewage that rushed past splashed on his face from time to time. This made Joe hang almost about to collapse. The two men saw the situation, not daring to stop for a moment, doing their best to crawl forward. For a moment, Joe Hang felt that the god of death was following closely behind him. It seemed like there was a black mist lingering on its body as it followed closely with a teasing smile on its face. As long as the speed of himself and looming slowed down, it was going to pull the two of them down to hell. The rain was getting heavier and heavier. It was getting more and more urgent. Now let alone climbing. It would take a lot of effort just to keep itself from being washed away by the water. And, the further you go, the greater the impulse. The sewage had even reached the chest. The fear of death made Joe Hang's heart beat wildly and his breathing rapid. Physical strength also followed the rapid decline. Finally, just when he was near despair, he saw a bright light coming from afar. At this time, the rainwater in the pipe almost drowned the two. Under the impact of the water flow, coupled with the fact that the pipe was full of slippery black mud, the two were unable to stabilize themselves at all, only to be swept away by the torrent. Moat, the two were rushed out by the water directly from inside the pipe. They fell straight into the river. Joe Hang was the first to emerge from inside the river. The first thing he did was look around for Lu Ming's voice. Brother Ming? Lu Ming, where are you? Joe Hang yelled at the top of his voice, his hands constantly slapping the water, seeing that no one responded. Joe Hang was startled in his heart and hurriedly dived into the water. Through the murky river water, he finally saw Lu Ming, who was entangled in the water plants. He hurriedly went forward and pulled off the water plants on Lu Ming's feet. He dragged Lu Ming to the surface. Seeing that the river began to rise, the current became more and more rapid. Joe Hang did not dare to stay. With all his strength, he brought Lu Ming to the bank. After placing Lu Ming on the grass, he hurriedly pressed Lu Ming's abdomen with his hand. Seeing that Lu Ming had spit out water but had not yet awakened, he could not help but sit on the grass and hesitate. Brother Ming? Joe Hang heavily patted Lu Ming's cheek, but Lu Ming did not respond. He frowned deeply. Shouldn't we be giving you artificial respiration? Forget it, the maneuver is a brother I'm pitting you against. Just do it. Taking a deep breath of cool air, Joe Hang murmured to himself. With a look of disgust, he glanced at Lu Ming, gritting his teeth. He still came forward. Just at this moment, Lu Ming opened his eyes and saw the big black bear like Joe Hang approaching him, and with his eyes closed, he was pouting. His pupils shrunk violently. He hurriedly reached out to cover Joe Hang's large face. What the fuck do you want? Lu Ming yelled in a stern voice. After all, Joe Hang's action had really scared him. You woke up? I thought you were going to hang up. Was about to give you artificial respiration. Joe Hang first laughed excitedly, then scratched the back of his head somewhat awkwardly. Only then did he open his mouth rather aggrieved. After all, he was sacrificing himself for his brother. When Lu Ming heard this, his head was filled with black lines. Incredibly sweaty. He was glad that he woke up quickly, or else the consequences would be unimaginable. Hurry up and go. The police messenger should be here soon. Lu Ming tumbled up from the ground. After speaking in a cold voice, he took the lead and walked out quickly. Zhou Hang saw this. He hurriedly followed Lu Ming's pace. The two ran straight towards the park next to them. And just after the two left, it wasn't long, a group of police officers arrived here. But when they came, in addition to seeing the footprints left behind on the grass, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang could no longer be found. The chief commander, who had hurriedly arrived, looked at the moat where the angry waves were rolling in. It was my carelessness, the high temperatures for several days in a row have caused the water level to drop quite a bit already. Lu Ming just pinched the point where the water level line of the moat was lowest before this heavy rain came, still letting them escape. The commander-in-chief spoke with a lost tone, letting the cold, icy rain, slap mercilessly on his face. He had come to see the water level of the moat a few days ago, when the river was turbulent, and he had assumed that it was impossible for Lu Ming to pass through here, so he put all his energy into searching for Lu Ming. But who knew that Lu Ming relied on his superb counter-reconnaissance skills and superior courage? Hardly dragged his feet for a few days. 
The high temperatures had caused the water level to drop rapidly. Before it rained, the moat could no longer block Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. But the commander-in-chief's attention was still completely in the middle of East Main Street. Even Lu Ming had deliberately sent out so many ambulances in order to paralyze him. By the time he came back to his senses, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had already escaped through the river. Previously, the uneasiness that had been lingering in the commander-in-chief's mind, it was that he had ignored the effects of the hot weather, now being awakened by this rain, yet it was already too late. But at this time, a squad leader next to him raised a question. Chief Captain, Lu Ming and the others are carrying such heavy gold, it's impossible for them to swim across the river, right? Could it be that they don't want the gold? These words were like a flat thunderstorm that exploded in the chief commander's heart. The robber's perspective live broadcast room. The audience completely boiled over when they saw Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who had swam away. A terrifying amount of pop-ups filled the live broadcast room. Crap, this is really wonderful. The entire process, as long as one step was wrong, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang would have no possibility of escaping. Just now through the camera on Zhou Hang's body, I was sweating for the two of them. Only someone like Lu Ming can escape under the police's heavy siege. Ordinary people wouldn't even dare to think about it. At first I thought Lu Ming's choice was stupid, because although this East Main Street has a complicated environment, there's no way out if you block the street entrance. Drilling in, it's like drilling inside a bag, and it's only a matter of time before you get caught. Now that I look at Lu Ming's original choice again, I was still too simple. When he chose to hide in here, he probably already thought that he would leave through the river. Perhaps he even made a point of watching the weather forecast. I have to say that this plan of Lu Ming's to escape from the river channel had an element of gambling. After all, the weather forecast wasn't completely accurate. If it had rained in advance, then he really would have been unable to escape this time. One can only say that there was a large element of luck in him being able to escape. Then according to you, the police messenger was also quite lucky. If it wasn't for the fact that old Chen was hospitalized with heat stroke, causing Lu Ming to mistakenly think that the police messenger had discovered him, perhaps he would have run away in an ambulance by now. That's why the world is unpredictable. So you guys should stop arguing. I don't think Lu Ming relied on luck, but also on his courage. Think about it. If Lu Ming hadn't had the guts to return to the hospital after his identity was exposed and coerced the director to send an ambulance to attract the police's attention, perhaps the chief commander would have reacted immediately after seeing the change in the weather. As it turns out, it was Lu Ming's hand that drew everyone's attention to the ambulance that left East Main Street, and only then did he have the opportunity and time to escape with Zhou Hang. Indeed, if it was a little later, when the heavy rain came, there wouldn't have been any more chances. Not true. Did everyone realize that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang didn't have any gold with them when they left? Where did the gold go this time? Yeah, where is the gold? Did Lu Ming forget to take it? Could it have been tied up by Lu Ming again? Impossible. Although the high temperatures of the past few days have caused the water level to drop quite a bit, and the current isn't so turbulent, but the water is at least 4 or 5 meters deep. So how could one swim through it with such heavy gold? That should be Lu Ming hid inside the East Street. Want to wait for the wind to pass, and then come back to get it. It depends on whether the commander-in-chief can react. The live broadcast room was buzzing with activity. The heat had also reached a peak. Nearly a million viewers were online at the same time, seeing the highlight of Lu Ming's escape. The number of pop-ups was naturally extremely terrifying. Of course, through God's perspective, the viewers saw that Lu Ming hadn't taken the gold yet. They also knew that this maneuver hadn't completely ended. Each and every one of them expected the chief commander to react earlier. Using the gold as bait, he would capture Lu Ming back. At this time, the bank of the moat. The commander-in-chief also came to his senses after hearing that police officer's reminder. Indeed, the density of gold was very high, and the buoyancy inside the water did not provide much help at all. It was too unrealistic to swim across the river with such heavy gold. Even if Lu Ming had prepared wood or a large amount of plastic foam or something that could float the gold up at the exit of this pipe beforehand, with the heavy gold passing through the narrow pipeline, it would also greatly slow down the crawling speed and consume a lot of physical strength. Moreover, if it wasn't for Old Chen's appearance, Lu Ming probably wouldn't have chosen to leave East Main Street from here at all. After all, this path was simply too dangerous. Preparing something like wood foam at the exit of the pipe would also reveal his purpose. Therefore, the chief commander was able to conclude that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang definitely didn't have any gold on them when they swam across the river. In that case, then there was only one possibility that he had hidden the gold beforehand. The gold is most likely still on East Main Street. Now inform the brothers guarding the street entrance to check passing vehicles, and passers-by to scan them with metal detectors before being allowed to leave. Brothers from the technology department retrieved the surrounding CCTV footage. I want to know the direction Lu Ming and the others escaped in. Unwilling to fail like this, the chief commander quickly gave the order. 
The words fell. His brows were deeply locked and his teeth were clenched. Only after glancing towards the footprints on the grass once more did he turn away. At the same time, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who had already escaped East Main Street, arrived at the side of the road. Lu Ming raised his hand and stopped a taxi. Master, go to Yulan Street. Lu Ming wiped the rainwater from his face with his hand. He had just drowned and passed out, making his face a little pale now. The driver answered. Nor did he ask much. He then kicked the gas and drove towards Magnolia Street. Brother Ming, what are we doing on Magnolia Street? Zhou Hang didn't know why Lu Ming wanted to go to Magnolia Street. Looking sideways at Lu Ming, he lowered his voice and opened his mouth to ask. Climbing out of the pipe had taken a lot of strength, plus dragging the unconscious Lu Ming from the water to the shore. At this time, the somewhat exhausted Zhou Hang's face didn't look good either. We'll know when we go. Lu Ming turned his head to look at Zhou Hang, the corner of his mouth rising. It wasn't much longer. The two arrived at Yulan Street. Lu Ming looked all the way down the street and finally found no. 144, Magnolia Street. On the first floor here was a grocery store. The shelves were filled with a wide array of goods. Next to the grocery store, there was a stairway leading upstairs. Lu Ming's face was calm as he followed the stairway straight up to the second floor. Zhou Hang saw this. He hurriedly followed. After going up the stairs, Lu Ming pushed open the first room in the stairway, only to see a suitcase placed just like a suitcase on the ground. Lu Ming opened the password of the suitcase. Looking at the things inside, Zhou Hang had a shocked expression on his face. Crap, Brother Ming, haven't you always been on East Main Street? When did you bring the gold out? Zhou Hang spoke incredulously. If he hadn't spent so much time with Lu Ming, he would have suspected that Lu Ming knew magic. Otherwise, how could the gold suddenly appear in this place? Who said that gold has to be carried around and run? If it's that heavy, just have someone send it over. Lu Ming said as he picked up the neatly folded clothes that were placed on the bed. He walked into the bathroom. Not long after, he walked out after changing his clothes. Sitting on the bed, he picked up the mineral water on the table, opened it and took a sip. Sent over? We're fugitives. Ha! Huh? Who would send it over for us? Zhou Hang still couldn't figure out that Lu Ming had helpers besides him? What was even more mind-boggling to him was in the situation where the police officers were deadlocked at the street entrance. That helper was still able to bring out the gold easily. Of course it's a nurse from the hospital. Lu Ming stretched and looked out the window. Then he slowly said, before I even removed the dean's phone card, I sent a text message to that nurse and asked her to stop by and help bring the gold here. Of course, I lied to her and said that it was all equipment. The police officer's attention was all on you and me. So naturally, he didn't realize that the inside of the box containing the equipment was all gold. Hearing this, Zhou Hang sort of understood. It turned out that Lu Ming had called so many ambulances to leave. It wasn't all to attract the attention of the chief commander. More importantly was to send the heavy gold out. No. 114, Yulan Street. Hearing Lu Ming's explanation, Zhou Hang nodded in realization. However, the entire process of this plan seemed simple. It was nothing more than before Lu Ming entered East Main Street. There were two programs to escape out. What was difficult was the two programs and how to implement them. In this, not only did one have to consider the changes in the weather, we also have to consider how the police will respond. Only by doing everything, can escape out at the same time, also take away the gold. Well, enough playing too, it's time to end it. Lu Ming pestled out the cigarette in his hand, clapped his hands, and stood up. From inside his pocket, he felt out a pistol. That gun was the one that he had previously snatched from the police officer. Lu Ming had been carrying it on his body. At this moment, seeing him fumble out the gun, Zhou Hang couldn't help but feel a little nervous. Brother Ming, what are you touching the gun for? Zhou Hang subconsciously took a step backward. Doubtingly, he opened his mouth. At this moment, Lu Ming's eyes were so cold and frightening. It made Zhou Hang feel unfamiliar. It was as if he had never really known Lu Ming. Facing Zhou Hang's question, Lu Ming did not answer him. Instead, he slowly raised his hand and aimed his gun at Zhou Hang. At this moment, time seemed to stand still. Even the air was so viscous that it no longer circulated. Zhou Hang's breathing became rapid and thick, and the sound of his heartbeat was, at that moment, deafeningly loud. He had never thought that he would one day be pointed at by Lu Ming with a gun. From the beginning to the end, he had only unconditional trust in Lu Ming, thinking that Lu Ming was his closest brother. But now, the so-called brothers were ultimately unable to withstand that golden gold. We've been brothers for so many years. For this box of gold, you actually pointed a gun at me? Zhou Hang red-eyed, gritted his teeth and questioned Lu Ming. His body was trembling uncontrollably due to his anger. Obviously, being pointed at by Lu Ming with a gun made him doubly devastated. You almost drowned just now, or I saved you, and now you're pointing a gun at me? Zhou Hang questioned Lu Ming once again, with hidden tears in his eyes. 
To be able to make a tough guy like Joe Hang, so sad, perhaps there was only the current situation. After all, this feeling of being betrayed by his closest brother, it was far more heartbreaking than physical pain. Lu Ming did not answer. His finger slowly pulled the trigger. Boom! The deafening sound of a gunshot rang out. The muzzle of the gun spat out a tongue of fire, and a bullet shot out from it. It was a flash of lightning. Time was slowed down countless times. Then the raindrops that kept falling outside seemed to be hanging in midair. The owner of the kiosk downstairs revealed a horrified expression. He watched the water cup in his hand fall. Zhou Hang, however, slowly closed his eyes at this moment. Although he and Lu Ming escaped from East Main Street with the gold, but at this moment, his heart was not half elated. Instead, he was in agony because his best friend would actually shoot him for a box of gold. In Zhou Hang's perception, at this moment, Lu Ming hadn't realized that this was just a drill. In other words, he was really trying to shoot himself for the gold in front of him. The current Zhou Hang even hoped that Lu Ming's gun was not loaded with blank bullets, but real bullets. In this way, he wouldn't be heartbroken to the point of suffocating because he had lost a good brother. Brother, after today, you will be discharged from the army. What are you going to do in the future? Haven't thought about it. Anyway, no matter what, one day is a brother. A lifetime is, I, Zhou Hang, will always support you. If you need anything, just ask. Okay, you guys, can you always speak one word at a time? Okay, then if I have something in the future, you can't pretend you don't recognize me. No problem. Robbing a bank also follow along? Ahem. Today's smoke is a bit choking. Why are you still not sleeping? The room checker is coming. Quickly put out the smoke. What are you two muttering about if you're not sleeping? I'm getting out of the army tomorrow. So I'm talking about what's in my heart. Hey, a big smell of smoke. Be careful. Don't set the dormitory on fire. Don't worry you Lou. The image of two people looking at each other and smiling is fixed in their minds. Past events pass through the mind like a walking lantern. Every time one was remembered, it intensified this pain by one point. Even Zhou Hang, a seven-foot man, could not help but weep at this moment. A person's life is said to be long. In reality, it is like a white horse passing by. Suddenly pass. The more you experience, you will find that some people walking around without a shadow, the people around you, will be like a big wave of sand. Less and less. And the people who stay, it seems so precious, betrayed by their closest people. This kind of taste, can be more painful than the chisel drill ten times. Even if Joe Hang was a seven-foot man, he couldn't help but weep now. The moment Lu Ming shot at him, his friendship with Lu Ming had come to an end. However, the pain that he had been waiting for had been slow to come. Slowly opening his eyes, he saw Lu Ming looking at him with a teasing smile. That smile was as bright as when they were discharged from the army. He had been tricked. Zhou Hang snapped out of it and looked back, only to see a puddle of red liquid coated on the wall. There was no need to think about it to know that it was the paint contained inside the blanks. Still crying? Really think I'll shoot you to death for this amount of gold? Lu Ming, who had always been unsmiling, couldn't help but laugh at this moment. Zhou Hang hurriedly wiped away the tears at the corners of his eyes with his hands. With a shocked face, he asked, When did you find out? Big brother, with your few IQs, you think you can hide it from me? From the moment you fired that shot at the bank in the beginning, I already knew that it was a maneuver. Lu Ming gave Zhou Hang a very contemptuous glance. Crap, you son of a bitch. You actually tricked me. Do you know how sad I was just now? Zhou Hang, who had come back to his senses, was so angry that his eyes widened in rage, pointing at Lu Ming and roaring angrily. You're the one who tricked me first. I asked you to treat me to a meal, saying something about not having enough money to go to the bank. As a result, heck, he brought me to rob the bank. Lu Ming was also not willing to show weakness, and braced himself to argue his case. Grass, that's because I look up to you and trust you. Other people begged me to bring them, but I still ignored them. Zhou Hang laughed back in anger, scratching his head in anger. Oh, thank you then, do I still have to repay you? If it wasn't for me, could you have escaped for so long? Lu Ming pointed at himself and asked Zhou Hang rhetorically, Without you, I can win just the same, with my marksmanship. How many come is all for nothing? Zhou Hang confidently opened his mouth, and in his anger, he completely lost his previous appearance of only looking up to Lu Ming. Stop bragging, without me, you'd be shot on your way out the door. Lu Ming laughed coldly and spoke disdainfully. The two appeared to be bickering, neither one refusing to give in to the other, but in reality, each treated the other as a true brother and sister. This kind of camaraderie, in this era of fickle hearts and materialism, it was far more touching than that box of gold. When the audience saw the box of gold in Lu Ming's room, the reaction was exactly the same as Zhou Hang's. Everyone was extremely shocked. After all, before this, 
Everyone still thought that the commander-in-chief was able to rely on the gold and had hope for a final turnaround. But now, it seemed that this was completely overthinking it. Lu Ming, from the very beginning, had already planned to take the gold out of East Main Street. Live stream. Crap, Lu Ming not only ran away, he even took the gold with him. This is probably going to be hard for the police messenger's side. Just now when Lu Ming pointed his gun at Zhou Hang, it really scared me. I thought he didn't know this was a drill. If he really fired and found out that it was blanks, it would be an embarrassing scene to think about. Upstairs brother really hindsight. Before in the bank Lu Ming said words have revealed that he knew it was a drill. Just Zhou Hang did not react. That's it. But I have to say that Zhou Hang's wave of true feelings really made me laugh miserably. There's one thing to be said for Zhou Hang. This brother is still able to get along. Even though his brain isn't too bright. It can't be said that Zhou Hang isn't too bright. It can only be said that Lu Ming is too smart. Highly intelligent robber. This title lives up to its name. That said, it should be time to announce the end of the maneuver. Right? After all, Lu Ming has already run away with the gold. So if he really goes on as a robber, it's a bit of a sore loser and trickster. Alas, this drill is finally coming to an end. With such a wonderful drill coming to an end, there will be no live broadcast to watch next. Indeed, watching this thing come to an end always feels empty and nagging. That being said, both sides of this drill, the police team and the robbers, performed admirably. Everyone treated the drill as if it were a real battle, which is indeed very respectable. When you guys say that, I think of old Chun who sold chestnuts until he got heat stroke again. Ha ha. The number of pop-ups was extremely high, and the viewers were discussing enthusiastically. Looking at the fact that this maneuver was already coming to an end, the viewers were quite sorry. After all, such a wonderful maneuver was really not seen very often. At the same time, the audience's lively discussion. It also pushed the heat of the hijacker's perspective livestream to its rightful peak. The heat of this maneuver was all over the internet for a while. City Bureau, Director's Office. It's a bit interesting, deliberately using an ambulance to confuse the police messenger team, but actually used the car to give the gold away. And he himself went through the drainage pipe on East Main Street, directly from the river. The director put down the teacup in his hand, his eyes still staring at the live feed on the display. There was a touch of rather bitter news on his face as he spoke. However, the director didn't have the slightest look of anger because Lu Ming had won the maneuver. After all, he had initiated this drill. What mattered was not whether the police officers were victorious or defeated. Rather, it was whether or not the police force could gain some experience from this drill. Because of this, in the choice of robbers, he put some effort. He chose Zhou Hang, who had just transferred to the city council. Facts proved. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang did not disappoint him. They haven't completely escaped yet either. If we continue to pursue them we will definitely be able to catch them. The deputy bureau frowned and spoke. As he spoke, he was clearly a little disheartened. Obviously, the deputy bureau chief felt that the police messenger hadn't completely lost the maneuver. There's no need. Besides, so many spectators are watching. Hundreds of people searching for two robbers and still letting them slip away from under their noses. If this continues, won't it become us bullying these two robbers? Winning or losing isn't really a big deal. Through this exercise, Knowing what deficiencies we have is the most important thing. Notify the media to hold a press conference tomorrow. These two guys have performed so well. It's time to praise them. The director smiled. After speaking calmly, he got up and left the office. The deputy director let out a long sigh. Obviously, the thing he was most worried about had still happened. This live fire drill could not be said to have no effect on the credibility of the city council. But with things having come to this, it was useless to say anything. Sighing. The deputy director dialed the commander-in-chief's phone. Tell everyone to withdraw. Don't guard East Main Street. The deputy bureau's tone was quite calm, but the expression on his face wasn't exactly pretty. On the other end of the phone, the chief commander, who was currently at the street corner of East Main Street, personally supervising, heard these words. For a moment, he didn't react. Deputy bureau, although the robbers ran away through the river, the gold is still left on East Main Street. They will come back for it sooner or later. And the perimeter surveillance has already discovered the direction the robbers fled in. At most one day, they will be able to catch them. The commander-in-chief's tone was firm. Still convinced that he only needed to guard the street entrance. There was still hope for a turnaround. People took the gold and left long ago. The maneuver is over. Hurry up and withdraw. Everyone has also worked hard these past few days. Let everyone go back and have a good rest. The deputy director's voice sounded again. It was rather helpless in its tone. After saying that. The other end then directly hung up the phone, listening to the beeping sound coming from the phone. The chief commander's entire person froze in place on the spot. The gold has been taken away? How was it taken away? The commander-in-chief frowned. 
looking thoughtfully at the people coming and going on East Main Street. He kept thinking back to what had happened before, thinking about when Lu Ming had taken away the gold. After all, the entire street entrance of East Main Street had been heavily guarded from the beginning until now. Lu Ming had again gone from the river. Logically speaking, the gold should have been hidden by Lu Ming inside East Main Street. But now, the deputy director told him, Lu Ming has taken away the gold? Just as the commander-in-chief's brow was deeply locked with a puzzled look on his face, suddenly, a health hospital ambulance from outside, slowly drove towards him. The chief commander's puzzled look dissipated. Contemplating for a moment, the chief commander let out a long sigh. Good you Lu Ming, it turns out that you even counted on me here. After dealing with those stupid thieves for a long time, even your thinking has stiffened up quite a bit, but the next time, you won't be so lucky. The words fell. The commander-in-chief let out a long breath of turbid air. The expression on his face became extremely serious and earnest. Then with a wave of his big hand, in a positive voice, he droned. The maneuver is over. Collect the troops. The crowd of police officers heard the news of the end of the drill. While breathing a sigh of relief, they also felt very lost. Because, the drill was over. This meant that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had most likely won the drill. These two guys caused me to fry chestnuts and almost didn't die of exhaustion. And they actually still let them get away? Old Chen was the first to be unconvinced, pounding his chest in anger. After all, if it wasn't for Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, he wouldn't have gone into the hospital. What made it even harder for him to accept was that the team had now given him a nickname. No longer calling him Old Chen, but Chestnut King. Someone even specifically came to his door and asked him to teach him the method of frying chestnuts to perfection. Just thinking about this, Old Chen's heart was extremely depressed. The maneuver came to an end. Wrap-up work was proceeding quickly. Soon, the gold that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had snatched was retrieved by the police messenger and returned the same way. Although, Zhou Hang was very clear that this was just a drill. However, watching the gold being carried away, he was still somewhat unhappy in his heart. Originally, he had thought that the above had seen him work so hard and almost drowned. How could they also give him one or two gold bars as a reward? But now there is no indication at all. When the gold was carried away, he had been standing by the door. That look of reluctance was like a mother seeing her child off. The maneuver came to an end. However, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's wonderful performance was still widely circulated on the internet. For a time, Lu Ming's entire robbery process was being talked about with great relish. And because of the fire in the live broadcast room, and Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's wonderful performance, a lot of fans were one for them. For a time, the two of them were considered to have become celebrities on the internet. The next day, city council, in the middle of the large conference hall, the director and deputy director sat on the podium, under the stage, surrounded by countless cameras and reporters. Of course, the focus of their attention was not the director and deputy director. Rather, it was Lu Ming and Zhou Hang who were sitting next to them. With so many people, will I say the wrong thing when the time comes? Zhou Hang was very anxious, looking at the reporters below. He opened his mouth with a leathery smile. He was originally a person with a stupid mouth, although he had also seen many big scenes, but being surrounded by so many cameras as the main character, this was really the first time. You dared to rob a bank, but you're still afraid of being asked questions by reporters? Just answer truthfully. Lu Ming had a faint smile on his face and returned in a calm tone, although he didn't really like this kind of scene either. However, the performance was still too much more calm than Zhou Hang. Director, everyone has arrived. Can we begin? At this time, a police officer came next to the director. In a low voice, he sought the chief's opinion. Start. The director nodded slightly and announced that the press conference was officially convened. The reporters, who had been waiting for a long time, immediately brought out the questions they had already prepared. Director. There are comments on the internet claiming that the robbers achieved victory in this drill, showing that the police messengers were not able to fully protect the people. Do you have anything to say about this? A reporter held a microphone. In a mouthful of standard Mandarin, he asked out. In order to ensure that his question did not go wrong, he also deliberately glanced down at the small card in his hand. I think this one-shot view is too radical. As police officers, we carry the heavy responsibility of protecting people's lives and property on our shoulders. We are not gods. We are also human. In reality, we don't catch every criminal, but we never give up on chasing any criminal either. The director answered the reporter's question very sincerely. The reporter nodded slightly and sat down. A loud round of applause then rang out in the arena. Indeed, in reality, there were not no fugitives. But these fugitives, no matter how long they fled or where they fled to, the police messenger never gave up on hunting them down, never giving in to crime. This is a promise to the people. Chief, now that the robbers are victorious, 
it will definitely have an impact on the image of the city police messenger. Then may I ask, do you now have any regrets about broadcasting this maneuver live in the first place? Another reporter stood up and asked the question. It was much sharper than before. This drill is a test. How many points on the test is how many points? If you take a test of 59 and have to secretly change your score to 60, wouldn't that be self-deception? Daring to publicize this exercise, I'm not afraid of people poking my backbone. Moreover, I don't feel that the image of our police difficulty has suffered. There are people who only see their failures, but they don't see that our police constables can only nap in the car when they're sleepy in order to catch thieves. Some of them have been sent to the hospital after being sunburned in the sun, and some of them have never left their posts no matter what the winds and rains are doing. In seeing them fail, please don't forget their dedication as well. The director replied with a calm and composed voice. Once again, it was met with a round of applause. Next, after the reporter asked the director a few more questions, the focus fell on Lu Ming. After all, Lu Ming's endless trickery was truly applauded. Mr. Lu, may I ask what your mood was when you first learned that Zhou Hang had invited you to dinner but took you to rob a bank? The reporter spoke with a smile on his face. The corners of the mouths of the crowd under the stage involuntarily rose. They had watched the entire live broadcast. At that time, seeing Lu Ming inexplicably being pulled into the pirate ship by Zhou Hang. Everyone was curious what Lu Ming's mood was at that time. What mood? Probably the helplessness of meeting a pig teammate. After all, this bank robbery thing is high risk and low profit. Normal people aren't too willing to try it. Lu Ming responded with a smile on his face. It instantly drew a burst of laughter from the crowd. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, scratched his head in embarrassment. Mr. Lu, when did you find out that this was a drill? And what made you willing to continue the act with Zhou Hang? The reporter continued to pursue the question. The reason for acting on? Of course Lu Ming wouldn't say that it was because of his system mission. As I said before, when Zhou Hang fired the first shot, I realized that the bullet was a blank. And then I also guessed the maneuver. As for why the maneuver went on, it should be because I heard that Zhou Hang had an absolutely perfect plan. Lu Ming still wore a smile and responded with a wry sense of humor. And naturally, his response caused a burst of applause from the stage. Afterwards, the reporters asked a few more questions. It was only then that this press conference entered the stage that everyone was most concerned about. Director, the live broadcast of this exercise has now exploded all over the internet. The netizens are wondering if there will be other maneuvers next? The reporter finished asking. The entire room was tacitly quiet. Everyone looked at the director with anticipation, hoping to get a reply from the director. After all, this was not an entertainment program. The purpose of the exercise was to improve the strength of the entire team. The most important thing was, a drill is not a small amount for both manpower and material resources. And, the city council's workshop protects people's lives and property. A city wasn't small and had a large population. The workload of the city council was also extremely large. Therefore, it was not possible for the maneuvers to be carried out season after season like a variety show. This, is probably going to disappoint everyone, to be honest, conducting this drill has put me personally, and the entire city council, under a great deal of pressure. The police officers inside the city council all have their own jobs and lives. Therefore it's impossible for us to be like the troops and conduct exercises and drills on a regular basis. So, unfortunately, there was a moment of silence. The director smiled and shook his head. The moment these words came out, a short silence fell in the middle of the large conference hall. It was obvious. The crowd of reporters were doubly lost. Originally, they had thought that they would be able to see Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's wonderful performance next. However, they hadn't expected it to become completely extinct. When Lu Ming heard this, he even sighed. One had to know that his system was a god-tier playing system. In the previous exercise, the task was to play the role of a robber. Now the system was just getting started and had given him some skills. As a result, the maneuver was over. Lu Ming didn't know if the system would release another mission next. At this moment, he was as helpless as if he hadn't even stepped out of the novice village yet, only to realize that the wild monsters weren't refreshing. But just at this moment, the director's words changed. Everyone doesn't have to be so disappointed, although it's impossible for our city to continue the maneuvers. But given that this kind of real-world battle-like exercise can help us know our own shortcomings, therefore, after a meeting from above, it was decided that this type of drill will be extended to all parts of the country. We will also specially hire Lu Ming as a crime expert on the team to conduct this type of live crime drills across the country. Which city will go to at that time? We'll announce it on the official live broadcast. At a later date, the commander-in-chief's words fell. The entire scene was in an uproar. No one had expected that the above would make such a bold decision. Letting Lu Ming and Zhou Hang be the touchstone and have the opportunity to go to other places to conduct maneuvers. After the press conference ended, 
The director was in no hurry to let Lung Ming and Zhou Hang leave. Instead, he brought the duo to his office. Upon pushing open the door, only to see a magnificent back standing in front of the window with his arms folded, it inexplicably gave people a sense of pressure. The man turned around with a serious look, having a pair of knife-like thick eyebrows. Perhaps it was because he was always skimming his mouth, so much so that two lines divided his face into three parts. Although his hair was already gray, he was hale and hearty with a refined look. Elder Yen, these two guys, I brought them for you. The director spoke in a respectful manner. In front of this man, there was not the slightest hint of his previous majestic appearance. There was no need to think about it to know that this Elder Yen must be a character. Although it's not as smart as your brother, but being able to take his work seriously and not engage in formalism that way is very rare. It's a general talent. Elder Yen sized up Zhou Hang and opened his mouth appreciatively. Zhou Hang hemmed and hawed, but in his heart, he muttered straight away, Is this a curse or a compliment? Who are you old man saying is not smart? The IQ of himself and brother Ming, isn't that just half a caddy? Of course, the thoughts in his heart, in front of Yen Lao, he ultimately didn't dare to say it. You, resourceful and calculating, bold and tactful, a handsome talent. Elder Yen looked at Lu Ming and did not mince words of praise. As he spoke, there was a faint smile on his face, obviously, for Lu Ming was extremely appreciative. All sit down, I have something to say to you too. After Yen Lao complimented the two, he signaled Lu Ming and Zhou Hang to sit down. He then personally picked up the teapot on the table and poured two cups of tea for the two of them. You all heard what the director said just now, right? Elder Yen opened his mouth with a smile on his face and asked. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang nodded. I'm very satisfied with your performance this time. Maneuvers are just like that. The director may not have had the time to tell you that in order to incentivize you guys. In the future, as long as you win, the income from every live broadcast in the future will all be granted to you as rewards. Elder Yen slowly lifted his teacup and glanced at the duo. When Zhou Hang heard this, his eyes instantly glowed. With a mischievous click, he stood up straight. Don't worry Elder Yen, we will definitely do our best and will never let you down. Zhou Hang spoke solemnly. He saluted towards Elder Yen. Afterward, with a face full of smiles, he asked, Elder Yen, how much income does that live broadcasting room usually generate? Yen Lao smacked his lips, putting down the teacup in his hand. After a little thought, he returned, with the current level of hotness, each maneuver is conservatively estimated to be a few million, right? Elder Yen looked at the director, wanting to know if his estimate was accurate. There, that's still counting towards the lesser amount. The director nodded with great certainty. Hearing this, Zhou Hang slowly sat down, his entire being confused, no longer able to hear anything. A few million dollars, so much money, don't even know how to spend it oh, what a happy worry. However, Lu Ming did not show any excitement. He just looked at Yen Lao in front of him with a calm face. After all, Lu Ming was clear that it would definitely be exceptionally difficult to get his hands on such a generous reward. Elder Yen, this time, letting us go to other cities to practice, it shouldn't be that simple. Lu Ming frowned and spoke thoughtfully. The words were spoken in a non-condescending manner. The expression was also rather bland. That's natural. This time for you to conduct a national drill. It's more than just robbing a bank. You'll be playing all types of criminals. Remember it's all types. All you have to do is, play your roles well and do your best to win the drill. The more beautiful the win, the happier I am. Elder Yen spoke with a smile on his face. When Lu Ming heard this, he couldn't help but freeze for a moment. A national maneuver? At first, he hadn't known what the position of crime expert actually did. It was thought to be an idle position such as an advisor. As a result, he now realized that this was treating him as a crime specialist. It's no wonder that on his way to escaping the commander-in-chief's pursuit, the criminal talent shown is really breathtaking. Whether it is kidnapping, false testimony, or fraud, everything is easy to do. If it is not to see that they have not committed any crime, and in the army has a file, estimated now, has long been handcuffed and interrogated. I see. Then, Elder Yen, can I know what city the next exercise is going to, and what prisoner to play? Lu Ming frowned slightly, wanting to know some useful information from old man Yen. That way, he could also prepare himself. You'll know when the time comes. It shouldn't be too difficult for the two of you. After all, you guys even managed to rob a bank successfully. I still believe in you. Do well. I still have some things to do. So I'll leave first. After Yen Lao finished speaking, he got up and prepared to leave. Elder Yen, I'll see you off. The director followed to see Yen Lao off. While walking out of the doorway, Yen Lao lingered for two seconds. Glancing at the two people sitting on the sofa, a meaningful smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Only then did he turn around and leave. Brother Ming, let's go too. Tired for days, 
Zhou Hang opened his mouth with a yawn. At this moment, he just wanted to go back and get a good night's sleep. Lu Ming nodded and stood up. Just as the two were about to leave, a police officer walked in. With a smile on his face, he came to Lu Ming. Mr. Lu, Brother Zhou, please take a fingerprint. The police inspector's smile was as warm as the spring breeze. Zhou Hang and Lu Ming were not in a position to refuse. One after another, they pressed down with their fingers. After recording their fingerprints, only then did Zhou Hang speak curiously. Brother, what is the purpose of recording our fingerprints? Oh, the police messenger carefully put the two plates inside a plastic bag. With a smile on his face, he returned, for taking fingerprints, to prepare a case for you guys. Hearing this sentence, Zhou Hang and Lu Ming were filled with black lines. Cursing, they walked out of the director's office. This criminal of theirs was acting. As a result, it was now good that it was directly filed for them. After parting ways with Zhou Hang, Lu Ming returned home. He, who had long been impatient, immediately opened the system's interface. The light blue curtain of light unfolded before his eyes. The sense of technology was full. Godly play system. Host, Lu Ming. Attribute panel. Physical, 28. Intelligence, 23. Spirit, 31. Charisma, 25. Average of ordinary people is 10. Novice mission, play as a robber and win the current maneuver. Winning will result in a generous reward. Current task completion progress, 100%. Some of the rewards have been sent to the host's backpack. False witness mastery, beginner. Stealing mastery, beginner. Fraud mastery, beginner. Talent skill book natural talent. Host's comprehension is increased by 50%. And memory is increased by 50%. Permanent effect. Lu Ming opened the system's backpack with great anticipation. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the item. Ability Enhancement Liquid. Enhances all abilities by 5 points. Permanent Enhancement. Skill. Lockpicking Mastery. Rank Intermediate. Lu Ming looked at the items given after winning the mission. His heart pounded with excitement. One was a consumable that boosted all ability values. Although it was only 5 points. But in a situation where all his ability values were more than normal. This 5 point boost was terrifying. As for this lockpicking proficiency skill. Surprisingly. It was an intermediate skill. Although, the skills given by the system seemed to make Lu Ming go further and further down the path of breaking the law. But an intermediate skill, Lu Ming was still very satisfied. Looking at the intermediate level skill rewarded by the system, Lu Ming couldn't wait. Lu Ming looked around for a place to test it. A turn of the head. He saw the locked chest on his nightstand. His heart stirred. That lock was like an x-ray film in Lu Ming's eyes. He was able to see through the blockage. The internal structure of the lock cylinder could be seen clearly. This was simply a perspective hanging. Lu Ming's heart was stunned and overjoyed. At the same time, the knowledge about this lock cylinder instantly flooded into his mind. Grade A lock. The number of cylinder bullet slots is 5. Single row of bullet slots. Lock opening techniques available. Wire unlocking method, estimated time 3 seconds. Tinfoil unlocking method, estimated time 2 seconds. Hammer unlocking method, estimated time 1 second. Although Lu Ming had never learned about this area. But after obtaining the intermediate skill, lockpicking proficiency, the system prompts appeared and he was immediately able to comprehend them. Looking at the system's prompts, Lu Ming couldn't help but twitch the corners of his mouth slightly. This system was still thoughtful. Surprisingly, there was still the hammer lockpicking method. Indeed, if it wasn't his own family's nightstand, with such a simple lock, there was no easier and faster way than going down with a hammer. But the problem is that this is his home. You don't have to buy it if you break it. So the last way. Don't even think about it. Just pass it. As for the tinfoil unlocking method, Lu Ming didn't have any tinfoil at home. He could only try to use the first wire unlocking method. Lu Ming got up. Quickly inside the toolbox at home, he found a wire, as well as a flat blade screwdriver. He first followed the system's prompts and first used a whetstone to slightly narrow it. Then he used the pliers to bend the driver. The principle of using a wire to open a lock was actually relatively simple. A grade lock like this one that uses a single row of bullet slots when it is locked by the key. The spring-loaded poppers on the lock slot will reach into the lock cylinder and housing. This traps the lock cylinder. When the key is inserted, the uneven groove of the key, the spring inside the lock cylinder is ejected to its initial position, allowing the lock cylinder to turn inside the lock groove, thus opening the door lock. That is to say, open this kind of door lock. As long as all the bullets can come out from inside the lock cylinder, you will be able to open the lock. The wire is there to pivot the spring-loaded poppers inside, and the driver is used to turn the lock cylinder. Of course, with the assistance of the system, Lu Ming didn't have to try the force like other professionals. He only saw him inserting the wire in. While turning the driver, he quickly topped up the slot of the bullet inside the lock cylinder. 
After topping up all the bullets inside to the right position, Lu Ming slightly turned the driver held in his other hand, only a click could be heard, and the box that was originally locked up was really opened smoothly by the simple tool he used. If he didn't count the time spent making the tool, that entire process took less than two seconds. This was still the first time Lu Ming had tried to open a lock. Perhaps it was the first time he felt the magic of the system. Lu Ming relocked the box and tried again. This time, he took out the timer on his cell phone and began to calculate the time he took to unlock the case. Each time the speed increased. From close to three seconds in the beginning, it was shortened to two seconds. By the fifth time, the wire was inserted, and it was estimated that the chain didn't even react. Lu Ming had already opened it. That speed, it was comparable to a master teacher. Zero. 95 seconds. Not bad. This kind of lock is no longer much of a challenge. Try another one. Lu Ming picked up his cell phone and put it back in his pocket. Carrying the toolbox, he began to look for locks inside the home. But how could there be so many different types of locks for him to open? Finally, he placed his eyes on the security door of his home. B-level lock. The key is a flat key. Double-sided double row bullet groove. Accompanied by a leaf next to it. Lock gallbladder for the precision number bullet and shaped bullet interface. Using technology to open. Must be dialed at the same time. Otherwise it will be automatically locked. Lock cylinder by a variety of shaped marbles combined. Through the arrangement of combinations can be compiled 1 billion kinds of key numbers. To eliminate mutual open. The lock cylinder has a lateral inward pressure side column pin. To prevent violence and strong twisting. Optional locking methods. Tool unlocking method. Estimated time 10 minutes. Cat's eye unlocking method. Estimated time 5 minutes. Hammer unlocking method. Estimated time 3 minutes. Lu Ming saw the familiar hammer unlocking method again. It was really a bit of a crying shame. Although this last method sounded stupid. It was not unreasonable. After all, there was no way that was simpler and faster than a few hammers going down, but at least this was his own door. Lu Ming categorically would not use this method to open the lock. The cat's eye unlocking method is actually much the same as the hammer unlocking method. It is to use the cat's eye of the security door as a breakthrough. Chisel open the cat's eye, and then reach into the curved iron bar or other tools. Open the door lock from the inside. Belongs to the lock opening method without much technical content. Compared with these two methods, the tool unlocking method will take some effort. After all, the structure of the B-class locks, far more complex than the A-class locks, with the previous wire unlocking method and tinfoil unlocking method, certainly is not feasible. Therefore, before opening a B-grade lock, you have to prepare some lock-picking tools beforehand. Lu Ming was a man of action. In order to test just how strong his lock-picking proficiency could be, he immediately started working on the tools. Following the system's tips, in less than two hours, Several gadgets used to specifically open B-grade locks were successfully made. He carried the toolbox and walked out of the door with confidence. However, out of the gate, Lu Ming was squatting down to tie his shoes. A strong wind blew, and only a bang was heard. The gate closed smoothly. I don't seem to have my keys. Lu Ming hurriedly touched his pockets and found that the only thing inside was his cell phone. He couldn't help but frown. However, he had come out originally for the purpose of trying out the intermediate skill rewarded by the system, locksmithing proficiency and there were also tools made, a raised eyebrow, in his heart, he didn't panic much, crouching down, Lu Ming took out the lock picking tool from the toolbox, he began to drum against the security door of his house, why are you such a naughty child, I told you not to run around, there are a lot of bad people now, last time you were carried away by the police uncle, haven't you learned your lesson yet, where are there so many bad guys, you find one for me to see, at this time, a mother and child came from the stairway, the child saw Lu Ming squatting and drumming by the door, not knowing what he was doing. Very curious, he asked. Mom, do you see what that brother is doing? The words just fell. The vegetables his mother was carrying in her hand fell to the ground in one smooth motion, hurrying to cover the child's mouth. Lu Ming heard the commotion behind him and turned his head, since Lu Ming had always been a loner, even the residents of a building. Today was also the first time they had ever met each other. Looking at the woman's terrified face, with a smile on his face, Lu Ming pointed at the locked security door and said, This is my house. The woman nodded resentfully, holding the child in her arms. She quickly ran downstairs as if she was fleeing. You don't even want the dishes? Lu Ming looked at the woman's dishes that had fallen to the ground and frowned helplessly, continuing to lower his head to open the lock. Lu Ming didn't think much about it. Squatting by the door, he continued to hold the tool and kept drumming on the door lock. This outside temperature was just too hot. It made him dip out a lot of fine sweat on his forehead. At this time, if he went to the side of the aisle and looked down by the window, he would definitely see quite a few people gathering downstairs from him. These people were holding all sorts of tools in their hands. There were brooms, 
mops, and there were even people holding anti-wolf sprays, exchanging words, they seemed to be discussing something, not much time, a police car drove over, the woman who had just run down with her child in her arms rushed over, there's a thief, I saw the thief, it's upstairs, the woman opened her mouth in panic, obviously, she was scared to death, after all, once the thief was discovered, there was no telling what he might do, on which floor, the taller police officer, with a frown on his brow, spoke in a deep voice and asked, while speaking, he also looked up at this residential building, fourth floor, 402, when I bumped into him, he was still unlocking the door, the woman hurriedly returned, while speaking, she kept pulling her child tightly, obviously, for the scene she had just seen, she still had palpitations, all right, we'll go up and arrest him now, for safety's sake, everyone just stay downstairs and lock the door downstairs so that he doesn't escape, the tall police officer barked a word to the surrounding residents, immediately removing the handcuffs pinned to his waist, he then rushed into the residential building with his colleagues, I have to say, this B-grade lock is really hard to open, it's not even close, Lu Ming wiped the sweat from his forehead and continued to try to get the lock open, although there was help from the system, but opening something like a lock still required a certain amount of skill, after all, as the old saying goes, the paper is the best way to learn, and the best way to learn is to do it, there are some things, even if the teacher teaches you hand in hand, you will not necessarily do, still have to personally go to the hands, to skill, locking this kind of technical work, more so, at the same time, the elevator on the third floor slowly opened, two police officers came out from inside, in order not to scare away the thief upstairs and prevent him from jumping and escaping, they didn't reach the fourth floor directly, after all, this floor wasn't too high, and sometimes thieves dared to do anything for fear of being caught, it wasn't as if there were no examples of people jumping to their deaths, later, you block the stairway, I'll quietly go over and cuff him, no problem, this guy, he dares to burglarize a house in broad daylight, his guts are too fat, the two police officers discussed the matter, tiptoeing towards the upper floor, like two cats that saw a house sparrow, afraid to make a little noise and scare away the thief, at this time, as they walked in the middle of the stairwell, they could even hear the sound of locks being opened upstairs, obviously, as the informant said, the thief was still unlocking the door, it was also at this time, after continuous attempts, the door lock finally issued a soft click, Lu Ming slowly pulled open the door, and a cool breeze, blew in his face, it made him breathe a huge sigh of relief, when he was about to go home, he only heard a stern cry behind him, what are doing you, don't move, Lu Ming's heart was startled and he turned around sharply, he only saw that the police officer who was still at the stairway suddenly lunged towards him, Lu Ming was baffled and subconsciously dodged, after all, he was a veteran of the point guard, and his physical quality was already good, coupled with the ability enhancing liquid given by the system, it made him now reach a jaw dropping level of both strength and speed, only to see his body sideways, avoiding the police officer's hand that was trying to grab his shoulder, the police officer obviously didn't expect this man's reaction to be so fast, the body that was leaning forward instantly lost its center of gravity, uncontrollably, he fell forward, Lu Ming smoothly grabbed his wrist and bent it backwards, with his other hand, he grabbed the police errand boy's shoulder, in the process, he pressed him into a half crouch on the ground, the other police officer, on the other hand, was shocked at the sight, immediately pulled out the baton he was carrying, going forward to help, just at this moment, Lu Ming frowned and hurriedly shouted, what are you doing, it was only then that the police officer in the back saw Lu Ming's appearance clearly, the baton in his hand hung in midair, Mr. Lu, why are you here, what are you, the police messenger was astonished, a head full of question marks, looking again at the toolbox at Lu Ming's feet, he instantly took a wary step backward, one hand held the walkie-talkie on his shoulder, making a move to call for reinforcements at any time, what do you mean why am I here, this is my home, Lu Ming hurriedly made an explanation, as he spoke, he had a helpless expression on his face, at this moment, he had also guessed the matter to a T, it was presumed that the mother and son who couldn't even bother to take the dishes away just now had called the police, your house? The police messenger was skeptical and glanced at the toolbox again. It was no wonder he didn't believe it. Who didn't use a key to enter their home, but instead used a toolbox to unlock the door? Lu Ming sighed helplessly, letting go of the police messenger in his hand. He quickly stepped into the house. A few moments, he came out of the house, holding a photo of himself when he was discharged from the army. This is my photo. It's not my house. How could there be a photo of me? The stupid big guy next to this is Joe Hang. Now you believe it's my house right? Lu Ming pointed at the person in the photo and spoke helplessly. The two police officers looked at each other. Only then did they breathe a sigh of relief. 
Subsequently, the residents gathered downstairs were dismissed. The woman who had just called the police also held her child and came over to apologize to Lu Ming and the police inspectors. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've caused you guys trouble. It's because I didn't ask clearly at that time. The woman apologized repeatedly, feeling guilty. After all, it was such a hot day that caused the police messenger to make a trip for nothing. She also almost arrested the wrong person, and she felt very sorry in her heart. It's fine. I'm the one who made you misunderstand. Lu Ming spoke with a bitter smile. After all, being here alone with a toolbox to open the lock, it was also true that it was easy for people to misunderstand. Brother, did you use these to open the door? Can you teach me? I want to learn too. That child hid at his mother's side, staring wide-eyed at the toolbox by the door. Extremely excited, he opened his mouth. Obviously, being able to open the door with these things was a marvelous thing in the eyes of a small child. Lu Ming was about to smile and agree. The woman's face immediately pulled down and sternly scolded. What are you learning? Hurry home and do your homework. Sorry, the little child doesn't know what to do and is disturbed. After rebuking her own child, the woman looked at Lu Ming again and opened her mouth to apologize with apologies. The words fell. Only then did she lead her child up the stairs while walking and lecturing. Brother Lu, you hit too hard. Almost didn't pop my arm here. The police officer who had just been subdued by Lu Ming. Rubbing his shoulders, he spoke with a bitter smile. He sort of knew why Lu Ming was so hard to catch in the first place. With this body strength, it was estimated that without coming to four or five strong men, he simply couldn't hold it. Subconscious reaction. Don't take offense. Wait for me. Lu Ming responded with an apologetic smile. After saying that, turning around, he walked into the house. When he came out, he handed the bottle of medicinal wine in his hand to the police officer. Rub it with this medicinal wine. It's very effective. The police sergeant still wanted to be polite, but Lu Ming forced it into his hand. And the other police officer looked at Lu Ming's toolbox. He was also a little bit in tears and laughter. They also didn't expect that Lu Ming would be so versatile. After being locked out, he actually opened the lock himself. It also almost caused a misunderstanding. I'm really sorry about today. It's because we didn't investigate clearly. Brother Ming, we still have some things to do, so we'll leave first. The police messenger clapped his hands and turned around to press the button for the elevator. Lu Ming knew that they were busy with their official duties, so he couldn't be bothered to stay, and just politely said, come sit at home sometime, inside the elevator. The two police officers nodded with smiles on their faces, waiting for the elevator to close. The taller police officer hurried, pressing the intercom. Call, add another line to Lu Ming's file to information. Proficient in unlocking locks, Kunjiang City, Investment Promotion Office, Wu Dong. As long as you are willing to build your new factory in our city, I can grant you that piece of land in the east of the city. I sincerely hope you'll consider it. A middle-aged man handed out his investment plan. There was a smile on his face as he spoke. The words were sincere. It's not that I'm unwilling. I also know that the policy is very good. It's just that building a factory is something that doesn't just mean having a piece of land will work. Equipment, manpower, logistics. These all need to invest a lot of money in the early stages. I'm afraid it's a bit difficult ah. The man in a suit on the opposite side of the room opened his mouth with a difficult expression on his face. His brows were slightly locked. Receiving the investment plan did not directly read it. Instead, he pressed it on the table with that wide right hand. What requirements do you have? Feel free to put them forward. As long as it's within our ability and doesn't touch the bottom line, we'll do our best to satisfy you. The middle-aged man heard something in Wu Dong's words and asked out bluntly. It was obvious. He desperately wanted to go for Wu Dong's consent. After all, the fact that a $100 billion enterprise of the Golden Rock Group could land in Kunjian would be of great help to the local employment and economy. Definitely won't make things difficult for you. It's actually quite simple. Just want to see if our city can apply for a drill? Wu Dong put away the difficult look on his face and instead smiled with a raised eyebrow. While speaking, he took out his cell phone, tapping on the video that had been recorded long ago. What was playing inside was precisely the image of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang robbing a bank. Exercise? Does this have anything to do with whether you build a factory or not? Are you thinking that our city's law and order is not working? The middle-aged man was surprised. He did not understand why Wu Dong wanted the city to carry out drills. After all, this drill and the building of the factory were completely unrelated. Truth be told, letting the city carry out drills ah, it's for the sake of my son. Wu Dong mentioned his son. He was instantly filled with sorrow. His eyebrows were twisted into a knot. You mean Wu Pong Ah? I know. What happened to him? The middle-aged man gestured for Wu Dong to continue. While speaking, his face was still filled with a puzzled expression. What's wrong? All day long he doesn't study, either playing games or going to a bar. This month, 
I've spent a few million dollars on just chartering the bar. Jean Peng is my life's work. My greatest hope in this life is for Wu Peng to be able to take my place and continue this career. But he's like this. How dare I hand over Jean Peng to him? Wu Dong said here, shaking his head and sighing. Obviously, for his own son who is no good, he is extremely helpless. Young people, it's normal for them to love to play a little. It'll be fine when he matures in the future. The middle-aged man gently patted Wu Dong's hand and comforted. Similarly, as a father, he could well understand this kind of feeling of looking forward to his son. I'm over 60 now. My body is getting worse by the day. How long can I wait for him? I've scolded and beaten him. What should be is still what should be. It's funny. I can manage tens of thousands of employees in Jinpang, but I can't do anything about this asshole. Until I saw this live broadcast that day. Wu Dong finished, gently tapped his finger on the cell phone on the table. That cell phone screen stayed above the image of Lu Ming looking squarely at the camera. The middle-aged man glanced at it. Reaching out, he scratched the top of his eyebrows. This live broadcast of the bank robbery drill. Ha, huh, I've seen it too. But this doesn't seem to have anything to do with your son, right? The middle-aged man still didn't understand. A puzzled face. Where is it not related? Think about it. In order for a person to completely change, then he must experience a heavenly event, preferably something that can threaten his life. Only then will he realize that life is short and won't waste his time in a muddled manner. Look at the hostages inside this live video. What kind of scared were they by these two robbers? What do you think they were thinking? Definitely thinking. I still have so many things left to do. Why am I going to die here? If God gives me another chance, I will cherish my old life. There is a good song. Darkness descends only to think of the light. Suffered from the cold will miss the warmth. Wudong's eyes narrowed slightly and said word by word. He was quite excited when he spoke. There was a thick smile on his face. Then what do you mean? The middle-aged man frowned slightly. Vaguely, he felt as if there was some truth in what Wu Dong said. My request is simple. The city starts a drill and then ties up that brat. Wu Dong slapped the table, unable to hide the excitement on his face. It seemed that he had already seen the appearance of his son regaining his life. Hearing these words, the middle-aged man could not help but be startled as well. And the corners of his mouth could not stop twitching slightly. Looking at Wu Dong's excited look, in his heart, he was thinking, this is really a pro dad, absolute pro father, actually thinking of tying up his own son. This, will scare Wu Peng at that time I'm afraid it's not good, right? These two robbers do things but very serious. The middle-aged man was still a little uneasy. After all, he had also watched the live broadcast of the maneuver. And Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's performance was naturally clear. Fear not, scared silly. I'll admit it. Big deal. I'll raise him for life. Otherwise according to his development trend. He'll be a scourge in the future. It's just to be true. According to the actual battle, there can't be any perfidy. If you can grant me this request, not only will I build a factory in Kunjiang City, I'll also donate an additional $1 billion for the cause of love in Kunjiang City. Wu Dong opened his mouth with great wealth. He was extremely serious when he spoke, with a look of a promise. Obviously, money he did not care. As long as he could rehabilitate his son, he could accept whatever amount of money was spent. Good. I'll apply to the top. It just so happens that we will also practice our team in Kunjiang City. Hearing this, the middle-aged man didn't even think about it and agreed to the matter in one breath. Wu Dong spread his face and smiled, before picking up the plan on the table. Kunjiang City, TG Bar. In the center of the dance floor, the DJ playing the disc suddenly stopped the music. All the lights turned off. The scene was plunged into total darkness. The young boys and girls who were dancing hotly in the venue could not help but be in a commotion. They didn't know what was going on. Just at this moment, the DJ picked up the microphone and roared with a hoarse voice. Everyone hold on. I have a good news to announce. The venue then lit up with several lights. Swimming over the people. The entire venue today, paid for by Mr. Wu. Let's toast him together. The DJ's words fell. All the lights focused on the second floor VLP card seat there. Only to see a fair-faced young man with a light smile on his lips. Raising the wine glass in his hand high. A mountainous cheer rang out across the room. The stage suddenly erupted with brilliant fireworks. The music, which had just stopped, suddenly became incomparably powerful. It shook the floor beneath their feet. Under the stimulation of this kind of music, people's hearts beat faster and were excited. Like a group of demons dancing, they were twisting their bodies crazily. And Wu Peng looked at the crowd under the stage and revealed a satisfied smile. Under the rhythm of the music, shaking his head, he walked back to the card table. On his left was a blonde girl, and on his right was a long black girl. As soon as he sat down, his group of foxy friends, toasted him. The girls on both sides also whispered in his ear with a fawning face. A few cups of wine went down. The crowd played even more crazily. 
but just when Wu Ping shook the color, but suddenly felt an inexplicable coolness hit his heart, it made him shiver. His hand was placed on the color cup, and he did not open it for half a day. When the crowd saw his appearance, they were very surprised. Opening his mouth, he asked, Young Wu, what's wrong? Wu Ping came back to his senses and only thought that he was overthinking. He violently uncovered the color cup. Three sixes, drink, drink, drink. The next day, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who had just rested for two days, then they received an invitation to the maneuvers. On that day, the two of them took the airplane and arrived in Kunjiang. Kunjiang City, City Council, Conference Room. At this moment, the serious face director entered the door with a faint smile on his face and waved his hand to signal the people to take their seats. This drill meeting officially began, and the purpose of this meeting, it was mainly to hand over to Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, about matters related to the maneuvers. This time, your mission is not to rob a bank, but to kidnap someone. The director spoke rather seriously. The words fell. He turned on the conference room's projector, the person who appeared on the curtain. It was none other than Wu Dong's son, Wu Peng. This person is called Wu Pang, the only son of the chairman of the Golden Rock Group. Your mission is to kidnap him and then extort a ransom of $5 million from his family. The condition for you to win is to get the ransom and successfully leave Kunjian City. And the winning condition for us police officers is to rescue the hostage and bring you to justice. Both of you are people who like to be serious. So everything will be required according to the real battle. This is also what Wu Dong wishes to see. After the director finished speaking, his eyes looked towards Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. That perennially serious face carried a smile. Obviously, for Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who had been invited over to participate in the exercise, he was still relatively polite. If you guys still have any questions or requests, feel free to raise them. There was silence for two seconds. The director raised his hand, signaling Lu Ming and Zhou Hang to speak. I have a question, and that is, if everything follows the actual battle, will it scare the kidnapped hostages? Lu Ming frowned slightly and spoke with some concern. After all, suddenly being kidnapped by someone, if the hostage had a heart condition and was scared to death, they couldn't afford to take the responsibility. Moreover, the target was still a rich second generation. This is naturally even more troublesome. Don't worry about that. You guys go ahead and scare him. If he gets scared silly, it means he's a coward. I'll admit it even if it's silly. Wu Dong, who was sitting on the side, spoke in a firm tone. Obviously, this time, in order to be able to make Wu Peng change, he was ready to break the ice. This one is? Lu Ming glanced at Wu Dong and asked the director suspiciously. This person had followed the director in. However, looking at that appearance didn't look like someone from the police messenger system. Oh, haven't introduced you guys, this is Wu Peng's father, the chairman of the Golden Rock Group, Wu Dong. The reason why our city invited the two of you over for the exercise this time is still his strong request. The director heard Lu Ming's words, and only then did he react to the fact that he hadn't introduced them to Lu Ming. Only then did he put on a smile. He hurriedly introduced Wu Dong's identity to Lu Ming. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang heard that the man in front of them, who was already in his prime, was actually Wu Peng's father. First, they were slightly stunned. Then the corners of their eyes couldn't help but twitch a few times, thinking to themselves that this rich man's thinking was really different. Spending money to find someone to kidnap his own son. What a ruthless person. At that moment, hearing that other people's old man had no opinion, Lu Ming naturally had no other concerns. Since it's going to be conducted according to actual combat, then I'll also talk about my requirements. First of all, I need weapons. And since I'm a kidnapper, military standard rifles are exempt. 2 AK-47S, 500 rounds of 7, 62 ammo, 2 Type 92s with 200 rounds of 9mm ammo. This is not too much to ask for, right? Lu Ming picked up a pen and recorded on the paper as he spoke. After saying the basic requirements, he raised his head and asked the director. Obviously, ready to see the director's attitude first. The bullets are a bit much, but they are still within the acceptable range. Not excessive. The director slowly nodded his head, sort of agreeing to this request from Lu Ming. He could still agree to these things. Of course, having a gun isn't enough. If I'm really a robber, I might consider the various combat situations I'll face during the crime. So, I also need 20 demolition grenades, 10 concussion bombs, and 5 smoke bombs, also infrared night vision, cold gun detectors, a miniature unmanned reconnaissance aircraft, tactical glasses, a grenade launcher with 5 more grenades, 5 isn't enough, 10 would be good. And, Lu Ming said as he wrote down his list of needs, not caring in the slightest that the chief's expression had changed subtly, nor did he feel that he wanted more equipment. After all, with his cautious character, without these things, it was really impossible for him to kidnap someone. 
Zhou Hang on the side was even more enthusiastic to hear it. Both fists were clenched. There seemed to be stars twinkling in those gleaming eyes. On the contrary, the corners of the secretary's mouth could not stop twitching. Straight away, he called out good guy. So much equipment. Those who didn't know thought that they were going to perform some kind of beheading operation. It's almost armed to the teeth. Even the local special task force was not this fully assembled. All right, all right. Aside from the guns, bullets and grenades, these equipment. I'll try to fulfill you, but I can't guarantee it. The director waved his hand and hurriedly interrupted Lu Ming. Only then did he open his mouth with a difficult expression on his face. Already, he was beginning to regret agreeing to carry out this exercise. After all, what Lu Ming wanted was simply too exaggerated. If this was allowed to go on, hell knows what else would pop out of his mouth. That's it then. Lu Ming was very sorry and handed the list he had written down to the director. If it was possible, he even wanted the top to grant him an Apache helicopter gunship. This would make it easier to escape. But looking at the director's stingy look, there didn't seem to be much hope for this. So he simply stopped talking about it. Can you buy it by spending money? Why don't I help you guys prepare? How much will I pay? Next to the Wu Dong who had been listening to the confusion, opened his mouth and asked out tentatively. As a law-abiding citizen, he really didn't know anything about these things. Just looking at the director seems to be very difficult. If he could pay for it, it would not be a problem at all for himself. Can buy, can buy. Lu Ming was overjoyed at his words and nodded repeatedly. It had to be said. Rich people were generous. If Wu Dong was next, his own helicopter would probably be there. Wu Dong, these things can't be bought. They are all controlled. The director hurriedly stopped Wu Dong. He was afraid that he would really go and prepare for Lu Ming. After all, Lu Ming's mind was already difficult enough to deal with. If he were to be given these things, I was afraid that even he, the director, would be tied up together during the maneuvers. It's a pity. It's a pity. Wu Dong shook his head straight with a regretful face. After finalizing the matter of the equipment, Lu Ming once again made a request. Since it's according to actual combat, then we need a bit of time to prepare. As for the time of the operation, I'll set it myself. This is no problem, right? Lu Ming put down the pen in his hand and opened his mouth to ask the director. The director did not have any objections to this. After all, what kind of kidnapper would notify the police messenger beforehand before he wanted to kidnap someone? No problem. This request is not excessive. The director nodded his head and agreed to Lu Ming. Subsequently, the people discussed some more issues that needed attention. Only then did they end the meeting. When it was time to leave, Wu Dong hurriedly caught up with Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, two young brothers. For this drill, please make sure to follow the actual battle. Don't let that bastard boy in my house see that this is a drill, please. Wu Dong spoke solemnly. Obviously, he was afraid that he would be seen by Wu Peng on the way to the drill. Wasting his hard work for nothing. Don't worry, we're not like others. We're absolutely fidelity. Zhou Hang patted his chest in assurance. With the experience of the last bank maneuver, Zhou Hang was bursting with self-confidence. Ro, with your words, I'm relieved. After tying up that kid, you guys can do whatever you want. As long as you don't beat him to death. Beat him to death. This is a small token of appreciation. You guys accept it. You also need money these days. After it's done, I'll be sure to thank you too properly. I still have some things to do, so I'll leave first. Wu Dong's face was filled with gratitude. He was quite excited when he spoke. The words fell. He handed Zhou Hang a check. Only then did he leave with the bodyguard following him. Zhou Hang picked up the check and took a look. Good guy. A whole $200,000. Enough for him and Lu Ming to spend for a while. Kunjiang City. Jade Bamboo Villa. Wu Family. A red Ferrari supercar slowly drove into the garage. The engine was turned off. Wu Peng, who had a weak pace walked out of the garage. The nanny inside the house hurriedly greeted him, smelling the smell of alcohol on his body. His brows instantly wrinkled. Little Pang, why is the smell of alcohol so strong? Did you drink again last night? And drunk driving? If this is known by your father, he will definitely have to beat you again. The nanny spoke with a worried face. The words were full of concern. Obviously, this nanny had a good relationship with Wu Pang. Hey, had a small gathering with a few friends last night. Wu Peng smiled. While opening his mouth to speak, he took the car keys to Aunt Huang. Looking at this drunken appearance of Wu Peng, Aunt Huang took the car keys and let out a long sigh. The worried look on her face intensified a few more points. You, you're over 20 years old. It's time to understand things. Go and hang out with those people outside less. Aunt Huang spoke bitterly. She knew that although Wu Peng was a bit playful, his nature was not bad. So she also didn't want to see Wu Peng degenerate day by day. However, she was just a nanny and couldn't say too much. Don't worry Auntie Huang, I know what's in my heart, 
Wu Peng had a smile on his brow. It seemed like he was still immersed in yesterday's revelry. Shaking his head as he was about to walk into the house, Auntie Huang hurriedly called out to him, Your father is at home, don't look so hungover. Aunt Huang pulled Wu Peng's sleeve, worried that Wu Peng would be scolded again if he went in. Wu Peng heard that his old man didn't go to the office today. His heart thumped, it was half cold. He frowned and hesitated for two seconds, still hardened his head and walked into the house. As soon as he entered, he saw Wu Dong sitting on the sofa, sipping tea. Wu Peng took a deep breath and tiptoed around before trying to sneak into the room from behind Wu Dong. Just at this moment, his father suddenly opened his mouth and almost didn't scare Wu Peng's soul away. Back, why don't you even say hello? Wu Dong slowly put down his teacup, his body sitting straight. He didn't turn around. His eyes were just staring at the teacup that had just been placed on the table. Dad! Wu Peng skimmed his mouth. Without good humor, he shouted out. He was smelling of alcohol and only came home now. He was already prepared in his heart to be scolded. Come and sit. Wu Dong slowly opened his mouth and patted the sofa, signaling Wu Peng to come over and sit. Wu Peng swallowed the saliva in his mouth, lowered his head and walked over, sitting next to Wu Dong. Habitually, he wanted to cross his legs, but was forced back alive by Wu Dong's eyes. Why didn't you go home again last night? Wu Dong suppressed the fire in his heart and tried his best to speak calmly. The tone was calm though. However, his brows still couldn't help but wrinkle slightly. A few good friends got together and played a little late. I'm such a big man. It's normal to have a bit of my own circle. Wu Peng looked out the window. His tone was impatient. It seemed. Simply speaking a few words with his father made him very uncomfortable. Tired after playing all night? Auntie Huang. He drank all night. It's not good for his stomach. Please go to the kitchen and bring over that bowl of freshly made soup to warm his stomach. Wu Dong picked up the teacup and took another sip before continuing to speak in a calm tone. Hearing this, Aunt Huang nodded respectfully. Then she brought a bowl of soup and placed it in front of Wu Peng. Wu Peng glanced at the bowl of soup on the coffee table and then looked at Wu Dong. That look was like seeing a ghost. I went and drank all night, and my dad is actually worried if I'm tired? And let me drink soup? Wu Peng hurriedly raised his head to look at the sun. This towards is also not out of the west ah? Is it possible that the wine has not yet woken up? Or perhaps, he thinks I'm wasted. Want to poison me with soup and delete my number to practice again? The problem is that the old man is almost 60. This physical ability cannot keep up ah. Wu Peng really can't figure out why his father, who has always been strict with him, at this time will become so kind. This sudden change, let him really difficult to accept. It also made him more uneasy. I know you're angry. Don't pretend. Beat if you want to. Curse if you want to. Don't inflict this kind of mental violence on me. It's no fun. Really. Wu Peng stood up and spoke bluntly. It was like a warrior who faced the storm straight on. However, the chastisement and cane that Wu Peng was expecting did not come as expected. Only to see Wu Dong hear his words. Not only did he not get angry. Instead, an amiable smile appeared on his face. How could I be angry? Like you said, you've grown up. It's normal to have a bit of your own circle. Wu Dong lowered his head to Wu Peng with an apologetic face. Frightened. Wu Peng, hurriedly took a step backward. At this time, Wu Dong stood up and walked towards the panicked Wu Peng with a smile on his face. Taking Wu Peng's hand, it's been a long time since I held your hand. The last time I did was when you were five years old. At that time, you always held my little thumb and asked me repeatedly, why is the sun round in the sky? Why do the stars shine? This mix ah, you are so big. When that small palm, now have become bigger than me. Wu Dong quietly opened his mouth the light of memories flickering inside his eyes. After saying that, he inhaled a deep breath of cool air. In the past, it was dad who was wrong, always interfering in your life. Dad apologizes to you. From today onwards, you can do whatever you want, play as long as you want, and tell dad when you run out of money. Isn't it all for your sake that daddy earns so much money? As long as you can be happy, is dad's greatest happiness. The true feelings of Wu Dong. Said here, two drops of clear tears dripped on the back of Wu Peng's hand. Dad, is so good to have you, feeling the temperature of Wu Dong's palm. Wu Peng also could not help but have a sour nose, fiercely jumped into Wu Dong's arms, cried out in pain. Well, don't cry, yesterday's money is used up, right? This card you keep, the password is your birthday, there are 5 million dollars inside, make it up as much as you can, call me when you run out, as long as you can be happy and joyful. Wu Dong gently stroked Wu Peng's head, that look, more than a loving father, well, don't worry dad, I will definitely run out soon. With tears in his eyes, Wu Peng nodded heavily. A hand took the bank card in Wu Dong's hand and put it inside his pocket. Afraid of slowing down for a second, Wu Dong will backtrack as if, drink the soup and have a good rest. I still have things to do. 
I'm leaving first. Wu Dong gently patted the back of Wu Peng's hand, then he turned around and left. When he was about to get into the car, he also looked back at Wu Peng, seeing Wu Peng leaning against the door, his eyes full of tears, reluctantly bidding him farewell. Very comfortably, he shook his hand towards Wu Peng, quickly go inside, rest early, remember to call me when the money runs out. Only after Wu Dong finished speaking did he get into the car, let the driver drive away. When Wu Peng saw his father walking away, he was suddenly in his original form. There was no trace of the prodigal son's return in tearful appearance just now. Crap, this old man is enlightened. I was prepared to use entrepreneurship and cheat some more money from him to spend, but it turned out that he actually sent it to his door himself. Goddess of fortune, thank you for your favor. Mua. Wu Ping raised the bank card in his hand high and kissed it fiercely. Humming a little song, he bounced back to the living room, picked up the still warm soup on the coffee table and drank it in one go. Afterwards, he also did not sleep, drove the car and was ready to go out in style again. City council, target practice range. At this time, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were waiting here. It wasn't long. The director walked in through the door along with two police officers. This is all the weapons and equipment I can provide for this exercise of yours. Other than the grenade launchers and drones, the others are matched according to your requirements. The director spoke with a serious expression. The words fell. The two police agents placed their handbags on the ground. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, who had long been impatient, immediately walked forward. The moment they unzipped the zipper of the backpack, both of them couldn't help but see a light in their eyes. That look. It was a soldier's love for weapons. Try it out? Zhou Hang twisted his head to look at Lu Ming. The corner of his mouth hooked into a light smile. The expressionless Lu Ming didn't talk nonsense. He directly started loading bullets. Seeing this, Zhou Hang was not willing to show weakness. The bullets were loaded inside the magazines. Both of them moved extremely quickly. Almost only the remnants of their fingers could be seen. After the AK's bullets were loaded, the two quickly loaded the magazines. Pulling the bolt, they quickly ran to the front of the target range with their guns and aimed at the target of the target practice range. The entire action did not have half a bit of procrastination and was extremely rapid. Let the director and police officers next to him, watching jaw-dropping. What amazed them even more was that the two men's movements in raising the gun were different. Lu Ming was holding the gun with his hand, eyes, sights, and target. Three points. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, was pressing the gun with his hand, with the gun in his hand in a right-angle triangle. AK has a high recoil. It's not ATO. It's a pressure. Zhou Hang glanced at Lu Ming. In a broken Cantonese, he opened his mouth and teased. Just point and shoot. Lu Ming stared at the target with a serious face. Subsequently, the two pulled the trigger at the same time. In a blink of an eye, fire flashed inside the target practice range, and the sound of gunfire was deafening. Zhou Hang pulled the trigger, not stopping for a moment, and the bullets shot out like a storm. Lu Ming, on the other hand, was as steady as Mount Taishan, and every time he pulled the trigger, the bullets accurately hit the ten rings of the target. The sound of gunfire came to an abrupt end. Only then were the two satisfied and removed the magazines, took the gun and walked back. The director and the two police officers turned their heads to look at the two targets on the range, only to see the target that Lu Ming shot at. The pigments inside the blanks all landed accurately at the ten ring position. As for Zhou Hang's target, the accuracy was relatively poor. The entire target was covered in pigment. However, in a short period of time, the entire magazine was exhausted. The two gun grip positions had their own advantages and disadvantages. One was for precision strikes, and the other was for fire coverage. This was in line with the character of the two. Watching the back of the two returning, the chief's expression was grave, realizing that he was probably in a big mess. Just at this moment, an applause rang out. Beautiful. No wonder the last drill was able to achieve victory. This marksmanship is indeed good. A police messenger walked slowly. He was around 30 years old, with a wheat-colored complexion and a short inch. His face was angular and handsome. He was seen carrying a black and tight 95 assault rifle in his hand. The same walked to the front of the shooting range. While violently lifting the gun up, his gaze became extremely sharp. Bang bang bang. Fingers pulled the trigger and bullets shot out from the muzzle. The recoil of the gun did not affect his shooting accuracy in the slightest. Every shot accurately hit 10 rings. After firing a round of bullets, he held the gun and slowly walked towards Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, Captain Fan Yun of the Criminal Investigation Brigade of Kunjiang City. For this exercise, I will be the chief commander of the operation. Nice to meet you. Fan Yun spoke with a smile on his face. The words fell. He held a gun in one hand while the other hand was stretched out in front of the two. Obviously, although they would be incompatible opponents next, but for this first meeting, he still intended to act friendly. Lu Ming, Zhou Hang. 
Lu Ming and Zhou Hang spoke in unison. They also reached out their hands to shake his hand respectively. As the saying goes, stretching one's hand does not make one smile. Since people had shown their goodwill, it was naturally impossible for Lu Ming and Zhou Hang to hit them in the face. I won't delay the two of you from getting ready. I came over today just to take a look. I'm looking forward to sparring with the two of you. Fan Yun continued to speak with a smile on his face. Under the words, he removed the gun he was holding in his hand and handed it to one of the two police officers as he passed by. Then he walked out of the target practice range without looking back. Subsequently, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang also walked out of the city hall with their equipment in a calm and relaxed manner. Crap, brother Ming, this kid is a ruthless corner. He can still shoot so accurately. We're probably not going to make it this exercise. Zhou Hang opened his mouth sheepishly. The thought of the hand that Fan Yun had just revealed. Zhou Hang's heart instantly lost its confidence in this drill. The 95 stabilization is better than the AK. No need to make a fuss. Lu Ming remained calm. There was quite a bit of calmness that still the wind blows and the rain hits, and I am standing tall and still. It's a little bit reasonable. Zhou Hang nodded slightly, finding a bit of confidence. After all, with Lu Ming around, it was fine for him to follow and lie down to win. Turn around and glance with your afterglow to see if that Fan Yun is behind us? Lu Ming spoke calmly. His face was calm as he spoke, but the tips of his eyebrows were raised. Oh, Zhou Hang sniffed and didn't think much about it. Turning back to look, just in time, he saw Fan Yun standing at the entrance to the city office, watching them leave with a smile on his face. In, damn it, still smiling at us, Zhou Hang turned back resentfully and muttered in a low voice. His brows were deeply furrowed as he spoke. It seemed like Fan Yun's smile made him uncomfortable. Then walk faster, Lu Ming said, quickening his pace, turning the corner ahead. Lu Ming directly carried his bag and ran. Brother Ming, wait for me. Zhou Hang froze for a moment. After reacting, he hurriedly followed. The two who had gotten the equipment left the city office. Lu Ming didn't go to the hotel to get a room to rest. Instead, he went directly to the scrapyard. Brother Ming, what are we doing here now? Zhou Hang looked around, looking at the piles of garbage. It was very puzzling. Something useful earlier. Of course, Lu Ming was looking around for something. Without turning around, he casually opened his mouth and responded to Zhou Hang. Useful? These are all things that people don't want. Would someone else throw them away if they are useful? Zhou Hang frowned, even more puzzled. This place was a scrapyard. What useful things could there be? What we're going to do is a kidnapping, not a treat. When the time comes, if the hostage's family doesn't cooperate and chooses to call the police, the police messenger will definitely go all out to search for people and cars that have come into contact with the hostage. Lu Ming didn't stop. While searching, he patiently explained to Zhou Hang. What does that have to do with you looking for trash here? Zhou Hang was still a bit disgusted. After all, this place stank to high heaven. Adding to the fact that it was summer, some of the food would soon rot and emit a foul odor. Staying here for even one more second was torture. It's precisely because other people don't want it that it's more difficult for the police messenger to track it down. In the market, no matter if we buy or rent, as long as we look for clues, we will always be found. Lu Ming said as he found a cell phone that had been thrown away from inside the trash. With force, he blew off the layer of ash covering it. Then he uncovered the battery plate and checked the circuitry inside. He casually threw it into the bag he was carrying, then searched low in the junkyard. Where is this amazing? The last time you robbed a bank, you didn't see you being so careful, even picking up a cell phone inside the garbage dump. Even with a cell phone, how do you solve the phone card? Zhou Hang felt that Lu Ming was a bit overly concerned. Who knew? At this time, Lu Ming walked to the side of a small cabin built with broken wooden boards. He gently knocked on the door. The door of the room opened with a creak. What do you, you guys do? A beggar with a pitch black face. His eyes stared straight at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang with a hint of trepidation in his vigilance. Police officer, we now suspect you of stealing. Please show us your ID. Lu Ming looked at the beggar with a serious face, speaking in a proper voice. And hearing these words, the beggar was instantly scared out of his wits, froze for two seconds. Only then did he turn around and go inside the house to take out his ID card. Both hands handed it to Lu Ming. I, I didn't steal anything. I didn't steal. The beggar's face was filled with a look of horror. Even his voice was trembling as he spoke. The body could not stop shaking. However, that beggar quickly realized something. How come you, guys aren't wearing uniforms? You're not police officers. Give me back my ID card. He looked at Lu Ming and they opened their mouths with a horrified face. While speaking, he was about to go forward to grab his ID card. Lu Ming raised an eyebrow. A cold stare looked over. The beggar was clearly stunned. The hand that had reached out to grab the ID card froze in midair. Seeing this, Lu Ming pulled open the zipper of the handbag, revealing a section of the gun inside. At once, 
The beggar was so scared that he sat on his butt on the ground, 10,000 times terrified. He looked at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. We are plain clothes. Well, stealing is not you. It's okay. Lu Ming looked down at his ID card. Only then did he ease his face and opened his mouth to comfort the beggar. Saying that, he handed the ID card back. The beggar took the ID card, put the ID card back into the dirty and broken big cotton jacket he was wearing. The words fell. Lu Ming reached out and patted the beggar's shoulder. It seemed to express his apology, and then he directly turned around and left. Zhou Hang, who was standing on the side, frowned and glanced at the shocked beggar, and then looked at Lu Ming's back. A puzzled expression filled his face. However, he also rushed to catch up with Lu Ming. Brother Ming, what are you doing scaring a beggar over nothing? It's not like they're messing with us. Zhou Hang had a curious look on his face. Obviously, he was puzzled by what Lu Ming had just done. He wasn't some abusive person. However, teasing fools and bullying beggars and these things, he was still somewhat unable to look at them. Of course it's for this. Lu Ming calmly opened his mouth and responded. As he spoke, he stretched his hand out. Only a white card was seen, held between his two fingers. It was none other than the ID card he had just gotten from the beggar. Identity card? Didn't I see you give it back to him just now? Zhou Hang was surprised. He clearly saw Lu Ming hand the ID card to the beggar with his own eyes, and the beggar even put it back in his pocket. But why was it still in Lu Ming's hands now? Some small maneuver. Hurry up and find the other one. You'll have to return it to the person later. Lu Ming didn't explain too much. This was a skill that the system had given him. With stealing mastery, it was really easy to steal an ID card from a beggar. Subsequently, the two walked to another cabin. Lu Ming did the same method again. Got another ID card. After the ID card arrived, Lu Ming didn't stay at the dump. He left the dump. He took a taxi and brought Zhou Hang back to the city. He found a well-equipped copy store. Under the pretext that he wanted to make confidential documents and was worried about leaks. Proposed to charter the entire copy store for half a day for $5,000. The boss heard that just borrowing half a day would be $5,000. And, he didn't have to put in a bit of effort himself, so he was naturally very happy to do so. After handing the copy store over to Lu Ming, he took out his cell phone and played a game outside. Lu Ming closed the door to the copy store, immediately took out the two ID cards that had just arrived and started making them. With the skill rewarded by the system, fake ID proficiency, Lu Ming wanted to create two ID cards that were merely identical in appearance. It wasn't too difficult. Less than three hours, two fake ID cards that looked exactly the same as the original ID cards were created. Brother Ming, you're really getting penalized. Zhou Hang picked up the two fake ID cards that were good enough to pass off as real in terms of appearance. He couldn't help but open his mouth to sigh. Lu Ming didn't say much. Taking out his cell phone, he scanned the store's collection code and directly transferred 5,000 to the boss. When he came out, casually threw the key to the boss of the copy store. The boss heard the arrival notice and cheerfully greeted Lu Ming when he received the key. Buddy, next time you need to use the equipment. Remember to come back to my house. However, if he had known that Lu Ming had borrowed his store to make a fake license, probably he wouldn't have been so enthusiastic. After leaving the copy store, Lu Ming brought Zhou Hang and went to the supermarket to buy some things. It was all some milk, bread and other food. Two whole big bags were sold. When they came out of the supermarket, the two of them didn't even have an idle hand. One hand was carrying the bag with the equipment. The other was carrying the food. Lu Ming took a taxi on the side of the road and returned to the junkyard. Once again, he knocked on the door of the beggar from earlier. The beggar who was not quite normal in spirit. Seeing the two again, so scared that he couldn't even speak just kept shaking his head. I'm sorry, the thief has been found. We shouldn't have suspected you. As compensation, please accept these things. Lu Ming spoke with a guilty face. The words fell. He handed the milk bread he was carrying in his hand to the beggar. The beggar looked at the things in Lu Ming's hand. He wanted to pick it up but didn't dare to do so. Incredibly timid, Lu Ming directly put those things by his door, putting down the things. Lu Ming reached out and patted the beggar's shoulder again, retracting his hand at the same time. He put the fake certificate that had long been hidden in his hand into the beggar's pocket. I am really very sorry. Lu Ming once again apologized to the beggar. Only then did he leave with Zhou Hang. Seeing the two of them walking away, the beggar hurriedly dragged the bag of food home, closing the door tightly, separately returned the two fake certificates to the two beggars, after sending them some more food as compensation. Only then did Lu Ming and Zhou Hang walk out of the junkyard. Brother Ming, since you've got their ID cards, why do you still need to go and make a fake card? and come back to return the fake cards to them? Wouldn't it be fine to just return the real ones to them directly when our mission is over? Anyway, these scavengers won't be using their ID cards, so it's okay to borrow them for a few days. 
So why go through all the trouble of running around? Zhou Hang once again turned back to look at the garbage dump not far away. Only then did he look at Lu Ming to ask about the doubts in his heart. To be honest, Zhou Hang really felt that Lu Ming's approach was completely unnecessary. And, it was a waste of too much effort to go back and forth. A fake is a fake after all. What we're going to use is that real ID card in their hands. The key to the security of the ID card is that chip inside. I can't build this one. As for why we have to come back to return the ID. The main reason is to prevent them from realizing that their ID cards are missing. After all, once they run to lose it, then these two in our hands will become real scraps. That's why we gave them two fake ones first, so that in the event that they don't use their ID cards often, they won't realize that the cards in their hands are fake. We'll also be able to take over their identities. Lu Ming was very patient as he explained his reason for traveling back and forth. The scavengers at the garbage dump were truly a marginalized group of people in society. They barely had any contact with the outside world. In this way, the frequency of using an ID card could almost be said to be zero. Lu Ming had precisely seen this point and chose to use a fake ID to transfer the real ID on them. A handful of cats were swapped for princes. Of course, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's appearance was completely different from what was on their documents. To really use this document in their hands, they also had to rely on the makeup techniques that Lu Ming had learned. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang returned to the city. The two of them went to a cosmetics store to purchase some cosmetics. Subsequently, with the help of the cosmetics, the two men's appearance was already 7 or 8% similar to the person on the ID card. Although they couldn't fool those experienced old criminal police officers, but in the eyes of ordinary people, the two of them were the same person on their ID cards. In this way, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang could completely rely on their false identities to do a lot of things. Redoing a few phone cards would not be a problem at all. Relying on the identity cards of those two beggars, Lu Ming not only did two phone cards, but also rented two vans. The first time the car arrived, he drove to the garage and unloaded all the back seats. Only then did he drive the altered vans to the city with Zhou Hang. The moment the car started, Lu Ming's originally indifferent eyes suddenly became sharp, together with his face, which was now slightly vesicified. The entire person exuded a vicious vigor. Only his fingers gently caressed the buttons on his collar. The live broadcast room that had been silent for a few days. There was finally a picture. In addition to the blocked city of Kunjiang, almost all of the country's viewers in the live broadcast room saw the live broadcast room screen. Crap, it's actually on the air. I thought it would take a while after the last time it ended. Ha ha. It's a good thing I set up an open broadcast reminder and rushed over at the first opportunity. Front row front row. Yoo hoo. There's only a thousand people in the live room. Is this me coming early? Or has Lu Ming's live room cooled off? Are the maneuvers finally here again? It's not in vain that I've been waiting for the past few days. I can finally see this high quality maneuver again. I'm surprisingly in the front row. Without further ado, the rockets come first. Surprisingly, the gift function has been turned on. I didn't realize that Lu Ming De has also started raking in the cash. Oh oh oh. Laughed me to death. Lu Ming would have been able to directly rob. Now also give you guys to watch live before receiving some gifts. Has been very conscientious. I have a monthly salary of $3,000. Stay $200 to eat steamed bread. The rest to Lu Ming greatly all brush. Just to be able to let the strongest robber rob me once. I wonder if this drill is still a bank robbery. Robbing banks every day? Lu Ming is really happy. Robbing three times a month and not having to be responsible. I'm jealous. The first person ever to legally rob a bank and open a live broadcast. Seeing maneuvers live broadcast reopened. Quite a few viewers soon flooded in. With the foundation from last time. This time, the number of online viewers reached tens of thousands in just a few minutes. And, this number, was still soaring. The audience in the live broadcast room was surprised to find that this exercise had even opened the live broadcast reward function. A time. Various special effects gifts floated the screen in the live broadcast room. This also made the live broadcast room more enthusiastic. At the same time, this time, the inside of the live broadcast room was also specially labeled with a live broadcast announcement. This exercise is a simulation of actual combat, and no one shall do anything to disrupt the exercise, including and not limited to revealing news of the exercise, disturbing the personnel participating in the exercise according to the live broadcast screen. Otherwise, you will bear all the consequences of disrupting the exercise. Thank you for your cooperation. Although the above had already done a regional block on Kunjian City, however, it could not be ruled out that there were fanatical fans who personally traveled to Kunjian City by car to commit acts that would disrupt the drills. That's why the official specially went on air and made a solemn warning. Of course, the vast majority of viewers also knew that this drill was not easy to come by. It was going to take a lot of manpower and material resources, so they all abided by the rule. Plus at this time, there was the deterrent of the official notice. Even if there are people who want to cause trouble, 
they have to consider whether they can adapt to a few years of prison life, the news blockade, as well as the regional protection of the live broadcast, so that basically no one in Kunming City knows that the city has conducted a drill. Of course, because the live room is only opened at this time. Plus, the content of this live broadcast had not been publicized online before. Therefore, at this time in the live broadcast room, the audience was also not clear about what the content of this drill was. Kunjiang Municipal Bureau The police messenger's perspective live broadcast room had not yet been opened. After all, this was an exercise that simulated a real battle. So before receiving the alert, the police officer team didn't know Lu Ming's time to make his move. It was still business as usual. What should be done on weekdays was still being done now. At this time, as the chief commander of the police force for this exercise, Fan Yun was sitting in his office, flipping through the case file. He did not realize that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had both prepared to make their move. One could only quietly wait for news from the police. Kunjiang City, downtown. A second-hand van was following the traffic unhurriedly above the main road. It was also at this time. Lu Ming's mind heard the system's cold and mechanical prompt. Godly play system. Mission release successful. Current mission, kidnap Wu Peng, extort $5 million in cash, and then successfully escape from Kunjiang City. Mission progress, 0%. Seeing the mission prompt in front of him, Lu Ming couldn't help but have the corners of his mouth rise slightly. There was some anticipation in his heart. The last mission completion had given him quite a few rewards. This time there was no telling what it would give him. He only hoped that he wouldn't be given those divine skills where the higher the rank, the higher the sentence. Brother Ming, where are we going now? Zhou Hang drove the car and looked around somewhat bored. Only then did he look sideways at Lu Ming. Casually, he asked Lu Ming about his next plan. Of course it's to find Wu Peng. Lu Ming looked flatly ahead, looking at the receding poplar trees on both sides of the road. He spoke calmly. At this moment, he had clearly begun to bring into character. The aura on his entire body had undergone a subtle transformation. By the way, the above only told us who to kidnap. They haven't told us where this person is yet. Did the director screw up and forget? There has to be at least one photo, right? Why don't I ask the chief here? Zhou Hang slapped his head, then remembered that the director hadn't given much information about Wu Peng. The photo was on the PowerPoint in the conference room at the time. Though, however, having just glanced at it at that time, Zhou Hang had forgotten what that Wu Peng looked like at that moment. If the person couldn't be found, then what was there to tie up? He won't tell you even if you ask. Since it's according to the actual battle, of course it's up to us to find it. A lot of people know this kind of rich son of a rich family. Just ask and you'll know. Go to the Golden Rock Group first. Lu Ming spoke calmly. If he wanted to ask he would have asked long ago. Wouldn't he have waited until now? The reason why he didn't ask. It was because he knew that this was the first problem that the director had left for them. After all, if they couldn't find Wu Peng, or if Wu Peng had someone to protect him, how to tie up someone is a very headache-inducing thing. But if this could make it difficult for Lu Ming, that would be underestimating him too much. It might be hard to find an ordinary person in the city of Kunjiang, which had a population of millions. However, if he were to find a son like Wu Peng, it would be a very easy thing to do. After all, he was the son of the boss of the Golden Rock Group, and would become the center of attention wherever he went. Lu Ming thought of starting with the employees of the Golden Rock Group, to see if he could inquire about Wu Peng. Of course, to put this exercise in accordance with the actual battle, Wu Dong, at the request of the director, did not directly tell Lu Ming what places his son usually liked to go, and Wu Dong had wanted to take advantage of this exercise to properly make Wu Peng change his face, and he was afraid that when he saw the details of the maneuver, he couldn't help but be soft towards his son again. Therefore, after leaving from home, simply turned off the cell phone, to his wife and company employees declared that he took a plane to go abroad and had a very important meeting to attend. About half an hour's drive, Zhou Hang followed the guidance of the navigation, parked the car in the downstairs parking lot of Jinpeng Group. Zhou Hang turned off the engine and parked. He took out the pistol that was attached to his waist and checked the magazine. Then he loaded the magazine, put it back on his waist, and organized his clothes. After confirming that the clothes could cover the gun, it would not be discovered. Only then did he open the door and get out of the car. Brother Ming, wait for me. I'll go bring Wu Peng down. Zhou Hang spoke with confidence. While speaking, he also looked up at the lofty building. This building holds at least two to three thousand people. Do you know where Wu Peng is? Moreover, can you guarantee that Wu Peng is inside this building? Even if Wu Peng is in this building right now, we can only wait for our chance in the parking lot. You can't just go in with a gun. There are security guards and security checks there. You're going in with a gun. Are you trying to have a firefight with them? Lu Ming looked ahead and spoke calmly. Finished speaking. Lightly, 
He glanced at Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang frowned and sucked in a breath of cool air after hearing Lu Ming's words. Turning his head again, he looked at the two security guards at the door. Thinking about it, he still felt that Lu Ming was right. He hurriedly opened the car door, sat back down. Then what should we do? Is it hard to just wait here? Zhou Hang looked at the security guard at the door and really couldn't think of any other way. It seemed that the only way was to wait here for Wu Peng to come out. But, it was unknown whether Wu Peng was in the building or not. They couldn't keep waiting here and wasting time. Could they? Wait for me in the car. Lu Ming spoke calmly. As he spoke, he opened the door and got out of the car, walking straight towards the entrance of the underground parking lot next to the building. He had just arrived at the entrance to the parking lot, inside the guard booth. The security guard responsible for watching the railing called out to him. Who are you? How do you enter from here? With a cold face, the security guard walked out from inside the guard booth. Looking at Lu Ming, he had a displeased face, even some superior posture. Oh, I'm Wu Peng's friend. He drank too much last night and couldn't remember where he parked his car, so he asked me to come to the company to take a look. Lu Ming spoke with a very natural expression and a smile. You mean Wu Dong's son? Did he park his car at the company? That can't be right. But he never comes to the company. The security guard's face instantly changed when he heard Lu Ming say that he was Wu Peng's friend. That one face was piled with smiles. Nodding his head, he spoke with a puzzled tone. Big brother why don't you help me look for it? Or ask the brothers who were on duty last night? Lu Ming walked forward and said as he pulled out a cigarette from his pocket and handed it to the security guard, and took out a lighter to light it for him. There's no need to look for it. Neither he nor Wu Dong's parking space will park another car. Don't you see that it's empty there? The security guard received the cigarette very politely, and after lighting it and smacking it, pointing to the empty parking space not far away, he spoke. When he spoke, he acted very intimate with Lu Ming. After all, this was the boss's son's friend. Surprisingly, he also gave himself a cigarette. This matter was enough for him to blow up among his co-workers for a while. In that case, then it's probably because he remembered it wrong. But where exactly is this car parked? Lu Ming put the lighter back inside his pocket. Pretend to be difficult to open the mouth. This is going to ask you guys. You often drink together. So I guess you forgot which bar you parked at. The security guard cheerfully opened his mouth. He didn't know much about the boss's son. He only knew that he was a drunkard. Although he didn't come to the company much, but rumors about him could still be heard often in their security team. Alright, thanks then. I'll ask him again. Causing me to make a trip for nothing. Lu Ming finished speaking and turned to leave. After circling around, he dug headfirst inside the van. After all, he couldn't let that security guard see himself getting into this crappy van. Otherwise, the matter of disguising Wu Peng's friend's identity would not be allowed to reach Wu Peng's ears. Go, Wu Peng isn't inside the building. Go to the city's bar and look for him. Lu Ming gathered up the fake smile from earlier. With a calm face, he opened his mouth. While speaking, fastened his seatbelt. How did you know? Zhou Hang was surprised. After all, Lu Ming had only been out for a few minutes, and he knew whether Wu Peng was inside the building or not. This speed was a little too fast. The security guard told me. Drive. I'll tell you how to go later. Lu Ming spoke calmly, not explaining too much. Instead, he took out his cell phone and began searching online for information about bars in Kunjian City. From the guard's mouth just now, he had snared two useful pieces of information. The first, was that Wu Peng never came to the company. The second, that was that Wu Peng liked to drink and often frequented bars. In this way, to find Wu Peng, will be much simpler. And, with Wu Peng's identity, he definitely wouldn't go to a small bar. Most of the wrong options were screened out for Lu Ming again. After passing through the search, Lu Ming finally locked in on three bars, TG, Suwa and Shepard. Let's drive to the TG bar first. Lu Ming put his cell phone back in his pocket and told Zhou Hang to drive towards the TG bar. Live stream. After the audience saw Lu Ming's maneuver, the pop-ups began to come alive. Crap. This kidnapper is really scary when he uses his brain. This dude can be ah. This brain is quite bright. And he didn't say that he went to find Wu Peng. He directly went to the parking lot to look for a car. And as a result, in three words, he knew whether Wu Peng was inside the building or not. Very strong. Worthy of being the strongest robber. Please accept my knee. That said, why isn't the person driving the car Zhou Hang? Is this a change of teammates? It seems like he's changed. But Bean, he looks similar to Zhou Hang. Come on. Zhou Hang is much more handsome than him. But listen to this voice. It's Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. It's not makeup. Is it? It's possible. In the last drill, Lu Ming wore makeup when he disguised himself as a doctor. That makeup technique is awesome. Crap. This makeup technique is too awesome. Right. People can't even recognize it. It really deserves to be one of the four evil arts. 
It's just that I don't know if they can find Wu Peng anymore. In case people Wu Peng doesn't want to go drinking today, the viewers were talking and discussing in the live broadcast room. It felt that Lu Ming definitely didn't tie up Wu Peng so quickly. At this time, it had been more than half an hour since the live broadcast had been turned on, and the audience in the live broadcast room had also soared to 50, 000 people. The popularity of the live broadcast room was rising like crazy, and the number of gifts being sent had also increased. Judging from the trend at this moment, after the feverish fermentation online, the heat of this maneuver live broadcast seemed to be higher than the last one. Not much later, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang parked their car not far from the entrance of the TG bar. This location not only avoided the surveillance outside the bar, it also maximized the extent to which the street surveillance could not illuminate their car. As it was only 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the bar was still closed. Zhou Hang simply leaned back in his chair and fell asleep. Lu Ming, on the other hand, took out a pen and paper and while flipping through the information on his cell phone, he didn't know what to write on the paper. Time passed bit by bit, because Lu Ming had deliberately instructed Zhou Hang to try not to get out of the car as long as he didn't want it to be convenient. So during this period of time, the two had only come down once. And, when Zhou Hang got off the bus to go to the public restroom, Lu Ming also deliberately gave Zhou Hang a walking roadmap, following that roadmap to walk to the restroom. They didn't have to appear in the street surveillance images at all. This also did its best to minimize the trail they left behind. When Lu Ming bought food from the supermarket earlier, deliberately bought more, giving two bags to the beggar. He also left some behind. Now he and Zhou Hang, relied on these bread and water to quench their thirst. The sun, without realizing it, slowly moved to the west. The remnants of the sun hung between those tall buildings. A deep yellow halo wrapped it. The golden afterglow was sprinkled over the clouds, which was beautiful. The pedestrians on the road also gradually increased. Wait until the sun completely set. The entire city was shrouded in darkness. The light signs of the bars and other stores on the street snapped on. The brilliant neon instantly lit up the night sky. Teenage boys and girls, one after another, arrived. Time to wake up. Lu Ming pushed Zhou Hang, who was lying on the steering wheel huffing and puffing. He himself stretched out. It had to be said. Sitting in this car all afternoon was quite tiring. Um, Zhou Hang, who was sleeping, propped himself up, moving his neck that was stiff from sleeping. Both eyes looked ahead listlessly. It seemed like he hadn't slowed down yet. Let's go. It's time for us to go in. Lu Ming clapped his hands and opened the car door. Zhou Hang came back to his senses and hurriedly followed. The two of them arrived at the entrance of the bar, and Lu Ming and Zhou Hang bought tickets. Quickly, they walked in, only to see the lights flashing inside. More soothing music was playing on the stage. Everyone was either chatting or holding their drinks and swaying slightly to the music. Zhou Hang did not often go in and out of these places. As soon as he entered, he felt uncomfortable. His eyebrows were always twisted into a knot. Uncle, you're so serious oh. A young girl walked past Zhou Hang and opened her mouth half-jokingly. After saying that, she let out a burst of silver bell-like laughter. Leisurely, she walked past him. Lu Ming looked around. Seeing a sexily dressed girl with a head of red hair sitting on a stool spinning around in a bored manner. Wait for me. Lu Ming patted Zhou Hang's shoulder and combed his hair with his fingers. Walking towards the girl. Alone? Lu Ming sat next to her. His fingers crossed on the bar. With a smile on his face, he spoke. Uncle, you're not my type. The girl lightly glanced at Lu Ming and disdainfully skimmed her mouth. Lu Ming knew that he had put on makeup and wasn't annoyed. With a thick skin, he continued, just making a friend. Do you often come here to play? The girl saw that although Lu Ming was a bit older, his speech didn't make her hate him. Solely, she nodded. Then you must know Wu Peng. Does he often come here to play? Lu Ming proceeded to pry into Wu Peng's news. A rich person like him who packs the venue as soon as he comes. How would I know him? He comes here almost every day these days. Why are you asking? The girl turned her head and was about to ask Lu Ming. Lu Ming had already disappeared. In front of the TG bar, Wu Peng had just gotten out of the car. A group of bar staff surrounded him. A large group. At least more than 20 people. Wu Peng threw the car keys. Immediately someone to catch. With a smile on his face, he ran to help him park the car. After all, these people all know that Wu Peng is generous. Therefore, as long as they hold him up, they will be able to reap the benefits. In this bar, Wu Peng was completely and squarely God. Surrounded by a group of bar staff wearing white shirts and black vests, Wu Peng walked towards the bar rather enjoyably. Young Wu, do you have any other arrangements today? The bar manager followed at the side and opened his mouth with a fawning face. Nodding his head, he took out a cigarette and handed it to Wu Peng, and very respectfully took out a lighter to light it for him. The old rules, it's all on me. Wu Peng held the cigarette in his mouth, flung his six-parent pace, and walked towards the gate. 
surrounded by the crowd. Just as he was about to enter the door, he suddenly thought of something. Stopping his footsteps, he turned around to look at the manager at the side. Right, when you bars let people in, can you grow some eyes? Those old men who come to dabble in drinks, let them go play elsewhere. Put more beautiful women in, that would be fun. Wu Peng held a lit cigarette in one hand and pestled the manager's shoulder with one hand. Only then did he speak with a smile, although laughing while speaking. However, that tone was not kind. Good, good, I'll go and arrange it now. The manager nodded repeatedly, not daring to be disobedient. He was afraid that if he did a little bit poorly, he would annoy Wu Peng, the god of wealth. Only then was Wu Peng satisfied and turned towards the inside of the bar. As soon as he entered the bar, only to see many people put down the glasses in their hands, their eyes looking towards Wu Peng, the crowd was boiling and shouting. Wu Peng was enjoying this feeling of being surrounded by stars. The corners of his mouth always carried a smug smile. This kid is so high profile. Zhou Hang raised one eyebrow and spoke in a whisper in Lu Ming's ear. It had to be said. He was really a bit displeased with this appearance of Wu Peng. Without a high profile, how could we find him so easily? Lu Ming gave an expressionless response. He plopped down on the bar, shaking the wine in his cup. He was observing Wu Peng through the reflection of the cup. However, this guy is followed by a group of people wherever he goes. So I'm afraid it's not too good to tie him up. Zhou Hang looked back at Wu Peng again. It just happened to meet Wu Peng's eyes. Vulnerable. He hurriedly turned his head back. Wu Peng sighed in addition to clustered a lot of bar security, waiters and these people. There were also 10 or so people that he had brought here. Wanting to help him was indeed not an easy task. Just know where he is. He has a lot of people now, but he can't even go to the restroom or sleep with a bunch of people, right? Lu Ming spoke calmly. It wasn't worried about not being able to tie up Wu Peng. However, while saying this, he was also thinking about what kind of opportunity to create in order to kidnap Wu Peng with the least amount of commotion. But just at this moment, one of the bar's waiters came over. Sorry, today our bar may not be able to receive the two of you for the time being, we may have to ask you to leave. As compensation, here are two 998 liquor cards, please accept them, both of you. The waiter looked at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang with an apologetic face and spoke. While speaking, very respectfully, he handed Lu Ming and Zhou Hang two cards, although the words were well spoken. Compensation was also made, but it just made Zhou Hang very uncomfortable. Who wants your liquor card? It's not like I don't have money. Zhou Hang snorted coldly. From inside his pocket, he fished out the 10,000 in cash that he had just withdrawn today and slammed it on the bar. Lu Ming on the side was silent, but the cold expression on his face already showed his attitude. Brother Ming was now very angry. Seeing that both Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were not to be messed with, the waiter took a somewhat timid step back. The people watching around them also quieted down at this moment. The security guards inside the bar squeezed in from the crowd and surrounded Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. At this time, the crowd split into a path. The arrogant Wu Peng arrived in front of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Taking a look at the cash that Zhou Hang had placed on the stage, he revealed a very surprised expression. Such a thick pile, rich people ah. As soon as his words left his mouth, those young teenage boys and girls around him immediately let out a burst of laughter. Subsequently, Wu Peng snapped his fingers, called the little brother next to him over. That little brother was carrying a bag in his hand. Once the zipper was unzipped, it was full of cash. Wu Ping took out a bunch from it and placed it on the stage. Is it enough? Not enough? Then I'll give you another pile. So at this point Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were sitting on chairs. Wu Peng was standing on the side. It just happened to form a condescending stance. He looked at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang with contempt and spoke with extreme arrogance. Piles and piles of cash were placed on the stage by him. However, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang didn't have any reaction. Wu Peng sneered. Solely, he poured a whole bag of cash all over the stage. Is it enough now? It's not enough I'll go get it again. The corners of Wu Peng's mouth rose as he opened his mouth to provoke Zhou Hang. As he spoke, he directly threw the bag containing the money aside. Those money piled up like a mountain, illuminated by the mesmerizing light, making everyone's eyes glow. The surrounding young boys and girls, at this time began to coax, let out a neatly harmonized cry. Zhou Hang saw that the arrogant and domineering Wu Peng even smashed him with money, violently stood up. Both fists clenched. Staring at Wu Peng with glaring eyes, the group of people clustered around Wu Peng were also not willing to show weakness and stepped forward. Some inside their hands were even carrying bottles of wine. Why are you not convinced? Here are all my people. One person and one bottle will smash you to death. I advise you to think clearly. Wu Peng relied on the large number of people and opened his mouth without fear, spreading his hands as he spoke. A contemptuous smile filled his face. And it was just when Zhou Hang was about to have a fit. Lu Ming, who hadn't said anything stood up, he gently patted Zhou Hang's shoulder, go away, 
It seems that we are not welcome here. Lu Ming finished speaking, then he directly turned around and left. When he was about to walk past Wu Pang, he stopped in his tracks. Listen to my advice. Young people shouldn't be too angry. Lu Ming spoke with deep meaning. The words fell. He then walked towards the outside of the bar without looking back. Not too exuberant? Is that still called being young? Wu Peng's movements were exaggerated as he spoke very arrogantly. While speaking, the body was undulating along with the voice. That appearance. It really had a somewhat neurotic feel to it. The crowd looked at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's distant backs and let out a burst of boos. After Lu Ming and Zhou Hang walked out of the bar. Inside, powerful music began to play. The young boys and girls, once again, began a night of revelry. Brother Ming, if you hadn't stopped me just now, I would have definitely fucking taught this unselfconscious bastard a good lesson. Outside the bar, Zhou Hang looked back inside the bar's front door again. At the scene of red lights, he opened his mouth in a rather unpleasant manner. When he thought of Wu Peng's condescending appearance just now, he was furious. It's not like we're here to fight with him. You too, what's the point of fighting with him? Think you're Bruce Lee, wanting to fight one against a hundred? Don't forget, we still have things to do. After Lu Ming finished speaking, he patted Zhou Hang's shoulder again. He then walked down the steps without haste. Zhou Hang, who was suffocating in his heart, looked back at the bar, sighing heavily. He hurriedly followed Lu Ming's footsteps. On the other side, in a five-star hotel suite, Wu Dong, who had lied that he was traveling on business, was seeing the scene through a live broadcast with his assistant. Wu Dong had a calm face. On the contrary, it was the assistant who was worried. Wu Dong, why don't we terminate the maneuver? Compensate as much as we should. I am truly worried that this maneuver will leave a psychological shadow on him. The assistant stood on the side, looking at the live content on the computer screen. Frowning, he opened his mouth to give a suggestion. Hearing the words, Wu Dong waved his hand and picked up the tea on the table and took a sip. It's time to leave him with a little psychological shadow, or else you won't flip out in the future. Lousy gave him five million dollars. If he doesn't spend it, he won't suffer. He really didn't let me down. Look at his arrogant and domineering appearance just now. If we don't teach him a lesson, he'll be a scourge in the future. The exasperated Wu Dong was very determined and even more convinced to continue this maneuver. Originally, he was not prepared to watch this live broadcast, fearing that his heart would go soft. But after seeing the scene just now, Wu Dong had a belly full of anger. He couldn't wait for his son to be tied up by Lu Ming and Zhou Hang in a hurry. Early morning, the stores on both sides of the street had long since closed. Drunken boys and girls, one after another, came out from the bar. Some took a taxi and went straight to the hotel. Some fell on the side of the roadside flower beds, vomiting wildly. Wu Pang and a few little brothers support. He staggered out from the door of the bar. Brother Pang, then we'll leave first. Sixth son, keep an eye on Brother Pang. If anything goes wrong with Brother Pang tomorrow, I'll rip your head off. Wu Pang's group of juniors said goodbye to Wu Pang one after another. Apart from a few staff members, only Wu Pang and his little brother named Sixth Son were left outside the entire bar. You drive. Wu Pang spoke with his eyes closed. After fumbling in his pocket for a bit, he pulled out the car keys and threw them directly to Sixth Son. He then walked towards the front with hobbling steps. Brother Pang, wait a moment, I'll have someone fetch the car. Sixth Son hurriedly went forward to support Wu Pang. Afterwards, he threw the car keys to the parking junior in front of the bar. Not much time, the car was fetched over. After settling Wu Peng in the passenger seat and fastening the seatbelt, Rocco circled around and sat in the driver's seat, holding the steering wheel of that sports car. He stepped on the gas. Only a buzzing roar could be heard. The car drove away from the bar. And just as the sports car had left the surveillance range of the bar, a van parked outside followed closely behind. At this time, sitting in the car drunk Wu Peng opened the window, let the wind outside the window pour into the car. Perhaps it is the reason for drinking too much. Blown by the wind feel even more dizzy, directly put his head out of the window, vomit more than wildly. Zhou Hang, who was following behind, saw the vomit floating in the air. He hurriedly turned the steering wheel to avoid it. Accelerate! Lu Ming frowned slightly and spoke in a deep voice. Zhou Hang nodded heavily and stepped on the gas. Although the van's performance was far inferior to a sports car, but this was the city, and Wu Peng's sports car wasn't driving too fast. At this time, after vomiting for a while Wu Peng, the wine sobered up a bit. Looking up from inside the rearview mirror, he saw that the van behind him was about to catch up, lifted his hand violently and slapped Sixth Son's head. What kind of hook eight car are you driving? Even the van is going to overtake you. Give gas, give gas. Speed up. Wu Peng spoke impatiently. He did not perceive any danger. It was just that he felt that a broken van was trying to overtake his car. This made him very upset. 
Sixth Son sniffed and glanced at the rearview mirror with his eyes. There was Wu Peng backing him up. He wasn't worried about getting fined for speeding in the city. He slammed his foot on the gas. The sports car once again let out a roar. Buzz. The entire car sped away like a rocket. Ye roar. Under the stimulation of alcohol, Wu Peng was excited to let out a strange cry. Feeling the strong wind whistling past his ears, opened the car speakers, shook his head in the sound of powerful music, very arrogantly put his hand out of the window and gave an international friendly gesture to Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Shit, don't let me catch you. Zhou Hang's temper was already explosive. How could he take this anger? The foot that was on the gas pedal was almost completely stepped on. The van's turf was already high, and under this kind of full acceleration, the slightest incline could make the car fly. There's a curve ahead. Force him to stop there. Lu Ming's gaze was like a torch as he spoke in a deep voice. Wu Peng, who originally still had a smug look on his face, turned back, seeing the bend in front of him. Drunkenness woke up a few points and grabbed the seatbelt with both hands. Panicked, he shouted, slow down, decelerate, it's going to crash. He was playing crazy, but not stupid. So when seeing a curve in front of him, still hurriedly told Sixth Son to slow down. Sixth Son was also worried about a crash and hurriedly slammed on the brakes. Just as the speed of the sports car dropped sharply, the van driven by Zhou Hang had already overtaken the sports car from the side. Zhou Hang even made a sharp turn, making the van make a 180 degree turn. The tires rubbed violently against the ground, accompanied by an ear-splitting whistling, leaving four car tracks on the road. With the front of the car aimed at Wu Pang, the headlights turned on, and the blinding light illuminated Wu Pang almost unable to open his eyes. Damn. Dare not don't my car. Sixth son get out of the car. Wu Peng cursed angrily, then he pulled out a throwing stick from inside the sports car. He slammed the door with Sixth Son. Wu Peng held the stick in one hand, and one hand was in front of his eyes to block the blinding light. Through the gap in his fingers, he vaguely saw two figures slowly walking towards him, waiting for these two silhouettes to get closer. Only then did he finally get a good look at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. He only saw that at this time, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had already put on their hoods, but the ruthless eyes. It still made Wu Peng's drunkenness instantly wake up seven or eight points. What do you guys want? Wu Peng opened his mouth in surprise. There was some apprehension in his heart. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang glanced at each other. The corners of their eyes carried smiles. Zhou Hang, who was on the side, wrenched his fingers to a crunch. Step by step, he approached him. Quite bold. Dare to stop our car. Don't panic. Wu Xiao, let me teach them a good lesson. Lu Zi was originally a gangster, and fighting bravely was his strong point. Saying that, he threw away the throwing stick in his hand. Then he walked towards Zhou Hang, only to see him take a step forward and raise the swinging stick in his hand towards Zhou Hang's head. But the stick was slow to fall. It was just hanging in midair, taking a closer look, only to see that his wrist had been firmly grabbed by Zhou Hang. This all happened too quickly. That sixth son's eyes were immediately filled with panic. He immediately exerted his entire body, trying to pull his hand out of Zhou Hang's clutches. However, Zhou Hang's hand was like an iron clamp. It firmly grasped his wrist. And even with all of Sixth Son's efforts, he was unable to shake it even by a hair's breadth. Seeing that he could not withdraw his hand, he simply used his other hand to swing his fist, trying to force Zhou Hang to let go. But Zhou Hang would not give him a chance. Turning a split second, he swung out a fist, hitting Sixth Son squarely in the face. It instantly hit Sixth Son's eyes and covered his stomach as he took a few steps back. He then collapsed on the ground and spat out a puddle of bitter water, almost failing to catch his breath. When Wu Peng saw Zhou Hang's skill, he could not help but have his eyelids jump. The alcohol also woke up a few points. What do you guys want? I'm the son of the boss of the Golden Rock Group. If you guys move me, think about the consequences. Wu Peng said while backing up. At this moment, he was extremely fearful in his heart, and even his voice was shaking. After all, these two people were wearing hoods. It was as if they had prepared for this earlier. They just didn't know what they wanted. If they wanted money, one's own hands still have a few million, but also can be dispatched. If seeking revenge, how dare we touch you? It's just that we want to invite you to be a guest. Lu Ming spoke calmly. He walked over to Wu Peng's side. Wu Peng was instantly so scared that his legs went weak, and he didn't even have the courage to run away. The entire person was dumbfounded. Go, get in the car with me. Lu Ming's hand rested on Wu Peng's shoulder. Leading him, he walked towards the van. The frightened and disoriented Wu Peng didn't have the slightest thought of resisting or escaping. He was lifted into the van by Lu Ming like a small chicken. What about this one lying on the ground? Should we do it? Zhou Hang spoke in a calm tone, pointing at the sixth son on the ground. He opened his mouth. After all, the target of their mission this time was Zhou Pang. This punk was dispensable. Hearing this, Wu Pang, who was sitting in the car, 
couldn't stop his body from shaking, do away with? These two people were even masters who dared to kill at will? Tie them up together, they'll be useful in the future. Lu Ming calmly spoke in response, he had always been careful in his actions. Naturally, he would not let Sixth Son leave alone. As for doing away with him, for the time being, there was also no need for that yet. Brother, brother, I was wrong, don't you be like this. The one with money is Wu Pang, my family has no money. Sixth Son couldn't care about the pain in his stomach. There was also no longer the arrogant and domineering, dog-like appearance from before. He knelt on the ground, folded his hands, and with a sobbing voice, begged for forgiveness from Zhou Hang. Anyone with a discerning eye knew that Zhou Hang and Lu Ming were kidnapping. How could he not be afraid? After all, the examples of really being helped by people, taking the robbers in order to avoid pursuit, taking the money and then tearing the ticket, abound, and look at the ruthlessness of the two men in front of him. Killing this kind of thing is definitely capable of doing it. At this moment, Zhou Hang looked at Sixth Son who was on the ground begging for mercy. Self-consciously, he fished out a black cloth bag and a strip of cloth from inside his overalls, stuffing the strip of cloth into Sixth Son's mouth, and put the blackened cloth bag over Sixth Son's head. Don't be afraid, we don't want your money. Zhou Hang tried to make his tone as gentle as possible. Opening his mouth, he gave a comforting cry. After all, this person was not the target person of the maneuver. If he scared the person, then he would be held responsible. But this sentence was exported. But it made Sixth Son, whose eyes were dark, thump in his heart, completely cold. Do not want money? This is ready to take his life ah, survival instincts, so that he immediately climbed up from the ground and wanted to escape. But Zhou Hang's hands were already good. He was in close proximity to Sixth Son, with such a close distance. How could he be allowed to run away? Only to see Zhou Hang backhandedly grab Sixth Son who had just run out two steps. Another punch was thrown at Sixth Son's stomach, a punch that knocked Sixth Son down without injuring his life. The force was grasped just right. Subsequently, Zhou Hang tied the Sixth Son up and threw him directly into the car. The van was in the compartment with the back seat removed. Wu Peng looked at the Sixth Son at his feet who was bound like a dumpling and lying curled up in a ball. The knot in his throat moved, swallowing the saliva in his mouth. The body shrunk inside the corner again, just as Zhou Hang was about to give Wu Peng a bondage package as well. The very sensible Wu Peng opened his mouth and said, Brother, no need to trouble you. You give it to me, I'll do it myself. Subsequently, Wu Peng himself stuffed the cloth into his mouth and wrapped it with tape a few times. Again, he wrapped his feet and hands with the rope himself. A whimpering sound came out of his mouth, signaled Zhou Hang to tie him up. Zhou Hang who originally wanted to teach Wu Peng a lesson, seeing Wu Peng's well-behaved and understanding appearance, he immediately cried and laughed a little, tied the hemp rope tightly then used a black cloth bag to cover his head, then collected two people on the body cell phone watches and other electronic products. Only then did he get out of the car with Lu Ming. Is it tied up? Lu Ming asked, blowing in the gentle night breeze. Lu Ming's brows were filled with enjoyment. It had to be said, in the early hours of this summer morning, the temperature was still very comfortable. Don't worry, it's tied to death. It's no problem to use it to tie up a pig. What should we do next? Zhou Hang looked at the sports car parked in the middle of the road. He cheerfully opened his mouth and asked. It was late at night, and this road was relatively remote. There were only these two cars parked along the entire road. You drive the car first and take them to the place I said beforehand. I'll take his car. Lu Ming frowned and looked at the sports car. Only then did he speak thoughtfully. Drive his car for what? Zhou Hang didn't quite understand Lu Ming's intentions. According to him, the car would just be thrown here. The police messenger would definitely find someone to tow it away after finding it anyway. When someone realizes that Wu Peng is missing and calls the police, the police messenger will immediately launch a search. At that time, the surveillance cameras along the route will be accessed to see where his car drove to. I'll take his car back now and park it somewhere else. It will buy us a lot of time when the police messenger searches. Alright, hurry up and take the two of them over there. Be careful. Don't let anyone get away. That would be a joke. Lu Ming patted Zhou Hang's shoulder and walked towards Wu Peng's sports car after admonishing him. Subsequently, the two cars drove off in different directions. It wasn't long. Lu Ming drove Wu Peng's sports car and drove around the city a few times. Then he drove towards the outskirts again. It wasn't until he passed by a road with no surveillance. Only then did he turn the steering wheel and drive the car to the side of the road inside the dense bushes. Stop the car and turn off the engine. Get out of the car and go. Before leaving, also looked back. After confirming that the passing cars could not see that there was a car hidden here. Only then did Lu Ming follow the path in the countryside and leave. At the same time, Zhou Hang drove the van and also arrived at an abandoned factory building. Since this factory building was built in the suburbs, it had been abandoned for a long time. 
there were also no people in the vicinity. Therefore, basically, no one came here. As a hiding place, it was the best. Once out of the car, Zhou Hang first looked back to see if there was anyone around. After determining that no one was there, only then did he open the car door. But the moment he walked to the back of the car, he was dumbfounded. Inside only tied into Dumpling 6, but there was no sign of Wu Peng. Crap, let this cub escape. Zhou Hang slapped his head. His face was full of shock. He was truly surprised that this rich second generation who only knew how to get drunk on paper had such a skill. Zhou Hang hadn't found anything unusual along the way. Surprisingly, he was able to let him run away. For a moment, Zhou Hang hurriedly felt out his cell phone and called Lu Ming. He shouldn't have gotten far. Look for him in the neighborhood. I'll be right over. Lu Ming frowned and gave an explanation. Hanging up the phone. Using the lockpicking skill given by the system, he opened a bicycle that was locked on the side of the road. Then he rushed back without stopping for a moment. At this moment, the outskirts of the city, the moon was like a thin veil, a clear light. As the night wind blew through, the grass that was taller than a person, set off a wave of green that rose and fell. The night scenery was ethereal and starry. A figure was in the grass, running desperately, breathing like thunder. Under the reflection of that moonlight, what appeared was Wu Peng's face, only to see him running faster and faster. Looking back from time to time, the terrified look was mixed with a little bit of celebration. Shit, still want to tie up old me. When I call someone over, I'll have to hang you guys from a tree and get you killed. Wu Peng panted violently, cursing as he ran. Although he was already exhausted, he did not dare to stop for a moment. Before, just now, he put on a submissive appearance, but it was just to paralyze Zhou Hang. When tying the rope for himself, he deliberately used some brains. A kind of live sleeve was used. This kind of live condom could seemingly be tied very tightly, but by pinching the other end of the rope one would be able to easily untie it. Having untied the rope, he took advantage of Zhou Hang's inattention, jumped down from the car. Even Zhou Hang did not expect that this seemingly uneducated rich second generation could have so much brain, but Wu Peng ultimately lacked exercise, plus spent all day drinking. Ultimately, he was emptied of his body by alcohol and sex. Before he ran a few steps, he was tired and panting. Both legs are like lead. Heavy incomparable. No, we have to run quickly. Despite the 10,000 reluctance in his heart, he thought of what would happen after being caught by Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. He still dragged his tired body forward with difficulty. But just at this moment, a beam of light crossed over his head. Frightened, he hurriedly crouched on the ground. Covering his mouth, he didn't even dare to make the sound of breathing. The grass around here is crushed. I knew you were hiding here. Lu Ming spoke calmly. The voice was not loud, but it managed to just reach Wu Peng's ears. It immediately caused the terrified Wu Peng's heart to pound wildly. It's tiring, isn't it? We don't want your life. As long as your father obediently pays the money, we guarantee that you'll be safe and sound. If you continue to hide, I'm going to get angry. Lu Ming continued to put pressure on Wu Peng with his words. Following the crushed grass, he had already confirmed where Wu Peng was hiding giving Zhou Hang a direction. Let Zhou Hang go around to prevent Wu Peng from escaping. Next, Lu Ming did not speak again. Wu Peng thought that the two could not find him and had already left. He was about to let out a sigh of relief. Two people wearing hoods suddenly appeared in front of him. Found Yuo, outside the abandoned factory building. Grabbed Wu Peng back and tied him to a concrete pillar in the middle of the abandoned factory building, determining that he could not break free. Only then did Lu Ming and Zhou Hang walk outside the factory building. The two stood in the open space smoking cigarettes and discussing their next plan. Brother Ming, aren't we going a little too far? It all scared the piss out of this kid. Zhou Hang remembered Wu Peng's appearance just now. It was inevitable that he had a look of contempt. Originally, he had wanted to teach Wu Peng, who had attempted to escape, a good lesson. But he didn't know whether it was Lu Ming's found you sentence that was too scary, or whether this bastard Wu Peng was too timid. Anyway, the two of them appeared in front of Wu Peng, before even doing anything, Wu Peng was scared to pee, really pissed, directly fainted to death. In the end, he let Zhou Hang carry him back. Isn't this exactly the result his father wanted to see? Lu Ming, who had a cool gaze, flicked the ashes of his cigarette with his finger before speaking calmly. Anyway, Wu Dong himself said scared silly that he recognized it. This statement could be witnessed by the director. Therefore, Lu Ming wasn't worried about whether he would scare Wu Peng out of his wits. Alright, it's time to ask for money next. Lu Ming threw away the cigarette in his hand and stretched his back after stomping it out with his foot. He looked up at the moon in the sky before turning around and walking towards the factory building. In the middle of the factory building, Lu Ming picked up the water cup on the table. Without haste, he walked over to Wu Peng and poured the cup of water that had already cooled directly onto Wu Peng's head. 
The unconscious Wu Peng awoke, panting heavily. He was covered by a cloth bag over his head. He was in a state of panic. The whole person could not stop shivering. Big brother, my dad is rich. As long as you guys don't kill me, how much money is fine? How much money he is willing to give? Lu Ming had just removed the cloth bag on Wu Peng's head and tore off the tape on his mouth. He then hurriedly opened his mouth with a sobbing voice and begged for forgiveness, fearing that if he slowed down for a second, his own little life would be gone. Very good. Keep up the current state. Now I'm going to make a call to your home. You truthfully tell them your current situation. Lu Ming calmly looked at Wu Peng and nodded as he spoke. Obviously, he was extremely satisfied with Wu Peng's performance. He took out Wu Peng's cell phone and pressed Wu Peng's finger on the fingerprint sensing area. After unlocking it, after rummaging inside the address book and finding Wu Peng's mother's phone number, he immediately dialed it. At this time, it was already 5 in the morning. However, the phone was still picked up after ringing for a while. Why did you suddenly think of calling mom? Did the money run out again? Before Lu Ming could say anything, a middle-aged woman's voice rang out on the other end of the phone. The tone was full of favor. Even when she was woken up in the middle of the night, there wasn't a single complaint. M.S. Wu. Your son is in our hands now. He's safe for now. Prepare 5 million in cash immediately. Otherwise, I can't guarantee his safety. Wu Peng, have a word with your mom. Lu Ming smiled and spoke. However, the words were filled with a threatening flavor, giving off a feeling of an outlaw. The words fell. He squatted down, grabbed Wu Peng's hair with one hand, and with one hand brought the cell phone microphone to Wu Peng's mouth. Because of being pulled by Lu Ming's hair, Wu Peng could only maintain a tilted head posture. At this moment, on the other end of the phone, Wu Peng's mother could only hear Wu Peng's heartbreaking cries. Mom, save me, be sure to pay them. I don't want to die yet. Wu Peng cried and opened his mouth before he could finish his words. Lu Ming took the phone back. Hear that? Your son doesn't want to die yet. Quickly prepare the money. Pay attention to keeping the phone open. I may call you at any time. Lu Ming finished this last sentence and directly hung up the phone, looking at the phone number. Then with two hands, he wrenched that phone to pieces putting it into the cup on the table that had just been filled with water. Wu family. Wu Peng's mother heard the news that her son was kidnapped. In her hand, she held the phone that had been hung up by the robbers long ago. The brain went blank. The shocking bad news had left her entire body in a daze. It took a long time to come back to her senses. The first time she reacted was to call Wu Peng's father. However, Wu Dong's phone was always off. Even his assistant's phone could not be reached. Before, Wu Dong claimed to have gone abroad to attend an extremely important meeting. The phone cannot be reached. Naturally, it is impossible to contact him. Under the helplessness, Wu Peng's mother could only get up in a hurry, calling people to get $5 million in cash ready. $5 million was nothing to their family. However, it was now more than 5 in the morning. Trying to prepare such a large amount of cash would definitely take quite a bit of time. At 8 in the morning, only then did a secretary rush in and place two bags of cash right in front of Wu Peng's mother. At this time, waiting for the robber's phone call, she was anxious pacing back and forth in the house, while waiting for her phone to ring again, let someone hurry to find a way to contact Wu Dong, but Wu Dong's cell phone was still off, which made her even more anxious, Sister Zhang, why don't we just call the police, looking at Wu Peng's mother in this state, Auntie Huang, the nanny on the side, opened her mouth and proposed, hearing this sentence, Wu Peng's mother was stunned, call the police, she hesitated again and again, and finally shook her head, can't call the police, what if we anger the kidnappers and tear the ticket? They just want five million dollars. Just give it to them. Our family is the only child of Xiaopeng. If something happens to him, no amount of money can change it back Ah, Wu Peng's mother sat on the sofa and spoke with a pale face. Saying this, she obviously thought of Wu Peng, and couldn't help but sob for a while. Sister Zhang, if we don't call the police, Xiao Peng might be in more danger. Do you think that after the kidnappers take the money, they will let Xiao Peng go as agreed? In order not to reveal their identity, they'll probably tear the ticket. If we report to the police, as long as we can catch the robbers, Xiao Peng will be saved. Aunt Huang also spoke with a sad face. As she spoke she squatted beside Wu Peng's mother and handed her a few tissues. She had worked in the Wu family for many years and had practically watched Wu Peng grow up. Naturally, she also hoped that Wu Peng would return safely. Hearing this, Wu Peng's mother's sobbing voice lessened a bit. Indeed, what Auntie Huang said was not without reason. Kidnapping cases were full of examples of people who got the money and then tore up the ticket. Call the police earlier. It might only be good for Wu Peng. Then, it's better to call the police. Wu Peng's mother was silent for a moment before she made a difficult decision. Murmuring, she responded to Aunt Wang, police intelligence center. After receiving the news that Wu Peng was kidnapped, 
The case was transferred to the temporary command of the police messenger for this exercise in the first instance. Three minutes later, the case was notified to Fan Yun's office, who was the chief commander of this exercise, by the police officers of the temporary command. Have they finally done it? Receiving the case. The quarters of Fan Yun's mouth hooked into a light smile as he threw the pen in his hand back into the pen holder on his desk. Only then did he get up. Without haste, he walked out. The command level of the police force team that participated in this exercise had already arrived at the case analysis room long ago. Seeing Fan Yun enter, all of them stood up violently. Neatly, they saluted Fan Yun. What's the situation now? Fan Yun walked in front of the crowd, his gaze cold and calm as he opened his mouth to ask out. As he spoke, he looked at the whiteboard in the middle of the analysis room, because it hadn't been long since the case was first reported to them, the team of police officers still had very little at their disposal, therefore, there was only a picture of Wu Peng on top of the whiteboard, chief team, 20 minutes ago we received a report that Wu Peng was kidnapped, the informant is Wu Peng's mother, the only information that can be determined for now is that Wu Peng was drinking at a bar yesterday, but no report was received from the bar, so he should have been kidnapped after coming out of the bar. Right now we have sent two squads, one headed to Wu Peng's home to calm his family and assist at the scene, the other squad headed to the bar Wu Peng's mother described to find out what happened yesterday. The technical department also applied to the transportation department for permission to use the road cameras near the bar. That police errand boy stood beside the commander-in-chief, his expression serious as he reported on the current progress of events. Fan Yun, who was the commander-in-chief, sniffed and nodded. These were all routine deployments at the first moment after receiving a report and did not need to be agreed upon by him as the chief commander. Well done, Fan Yun, the chief commander, sniffed and nodded with considerable satisfaction. After all, receiving the report until now, it was only 20 minutes. To be able to do this, the action was already considered extremely swift. Now check Wu Peng's basic information, as well as social relations. Determine if it's an acquaintance who committed the crime. After all, kidnapping for ransom and these things, it's not uncommon for acquaintances to commit the crime. The chief commander found a chair and sat down, before looking at the police officer beside him and opening his mouth to give orders. Although, he knew that the ones who kidnapped Wu Peng were Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, and the group of police officers present also knew that this was just a drill. However, since it was an actual combat drill, then even if they knew, they had to act as if they didn't know. Everything was in accordance with the standards of actual combat. Therefore, the step of investigating social relations, naturally still need to do a little. These were all procedures. Yes, the police officer beside him heard this and hurriedly saluted in response. At the same time, he turned around and went out to convey the commander-in-chief's order. Wu family. A team of police officers quickly rushed to the Wu family villa. The female police officers in the team first calmed down Wu Peng's mother and then asked for more details. A detailed statement was made. This team of police officers would remain in the Wu family villa until the end of the exercise, protecting the safety of Wu Peng's mother and nanny. After all, since the robber dared to kidnap Wu Peng to extort money, it could not be ruled out that he would not directly come to the Wu family villa to threaten the lives of others. Therefore, sending a team of people to protect and to calm the family's emotions was still a necessary thing to do. Abandoned factory. Lu Ming was sitting in front of a dilapidated desk, holding a map as well as a notebook, writing and drawing on it from time to time. Zhou Hang did not know what exactly he was doing. However, seeing his preoccupied appearance, Naturally it was not good to disturb him. Standing in the doorway, he smoked a cigarette. Zhou Hang yawned and walked over to Wu Peng who was tied to a pillar. At this time, Wu Peng's high level of fear had faded. Having not slept for nearly 24 hours, sitting on the ground with his back against the pillar, he could not help but doze off. Zhou Hang walked over and kicked the pillar behind Wu Peng with a bang. Wu Peng, who was drowsy, was violently awakened. With a horrified face, he looked at Zhou Hang. You kid. Weren't you quite capable of bouncing around in the bar yesterday? Now that old me is still awake, how dare you want to sleep? Give me some spirit, or else I'll cut off one of your fingers first and pickle it up with salt for you. Zhou Hang stared at Wu Peng and spoke viciously. Yesterday, Wu Peng's arrogant appearance in the bar Zhou Hang could still remember clearly. It was natural to torture and torment him now. Goo. Wu Peng swallowed his saliva with some difficulty. With a face full of fear, he did not dare to say anything more. Looking at him in this manner. Zhou Hang was quite satisfied and stretched his back before he walked towards where Lu Ming was. Brother Ming, when are we going to get the money? He came over to Lu Ming's side and looked at the map and notebook on the table. Only then did Zhou Hang leisurely open his mouth to ask. They had made the extortion call at 5 in the morning. By now it was nearly 9 in the morning. So it was thought that the ransom on the Wu family side should have been ready long ago. 
there's no rush, let those police officers be busy for a while first, the ransom can be taken slowly. Lu Ming lifted his head and moved his neck for a bit before he calmly opened his mouth and gave a response. Hearing his words, Zhou Hang froze slightly, keeping the police messenger busy for a while? Brother Ming, do you mean that the Wu family side called the police? How dare she call the police, does she not want her son to live? Zhou Hang looked at Lu Ming with a surprised expression as he opened his mouth, frowning as he spoke. The words fell, and then he looked back at Wu Peng who was tied up not far away, he spoke in a loud voice, therefore, Wu Peng over there naturally also heard his words, and at this time, the terrified expression on his face worsened by a few more points, obviously, he was afraid that these two robbers would do something unfavorable to him because they thought his family had called the police, it is precisely because they want his son to live that they called the police, these rich people, they're smart people, they weigh things, even though they are concerned, when they react, they must know that the only way to call the police is to call the police, and their son's chances of staying alive will be infinitely greater. When we call to blackmail, his mother may not call the police in the first instance because she is concerned, but in preparing the money, more people will surely join in this matter. People will discuss and come up with ideas, and they will see this matter clearly, and the chances of calling the police will be high. Lu Ming spoke calmly, stretching as he spoke, a night of tossing and turning. He was also quite tired. For the matter of whether to report to the police or not, he didn't care. Damn it, how dare you call the police. I'm going to go cut off one of his fingers and send it to his mom, so that his mom knows what happens when you call the police. Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming's words and turned back to look at Wu Peng with gritted teeth. As he spoke, that expression was like he wanted to eat Wu Peng alive. Wu Peng looked at such a situation and trembled in fear. Don't, don't, my mom definitely won't call the police. She won't, this is all just your speculation. Wu Peng shook his head frantically and opened his mouth trembling. That look was clearly fearful to the extreme. All right, don't toss and turn. It's now nine in the morning. You go and sleep for two hours first, and come and change my shift later. There are a lot of things coming up. We have our hands full. Lu Ming responded calmly to Zhou Hang. The words fell. He then lowered his head again and placed his gaze on top of the map on the table. Zhou Hang sniffed and nodded as he glanced at the watch on his wrist. This was an exercise. It was naturally impossible for him to really go over and cut off Wu Peng's fingers. Therefore, Lu Ming's seemingly dissuasive words were just right. It allowed himself to scare Wu Peng and not reveal himself. Right, the guy in the car remember to feed some water. Don't get the money by then, but the person will die first. As Zhou Hang walked towards the van outside the factory, Lu Ming opened his mouth without lifting his head to give a reminder. After Wu Peng was captured yesterday, he was tied up in the factory by Lu Ming and the others. As for that little brother of his, Sixth son, he had instead remained in the van. After all, separating the two hostages, it was also able to make them less inclined to escape, and could save Lu Ming and the others a lot of trouble. Got it, Zhou Hang responded, then walked towards the outside of the factory without looking back. Lu Ming, on the other hand, was once again writing and drawing on his notebook. As for the Wu Peng who was tied to the pillar, he sat on the ground and watched the developments and couldn't help but let out a slight sigh of relief. Of course, at this time, the fear in his heart for these two kidnappers had deepened a few more points. After all, in terms of their behavior of being ready to cut someone's finger without moving, it was estimated that they were really the kind of masters who would tear the ticket after taking the money. A time, Wu Peng felt that his hope of survival became a little slim. P.S. Recently, fewer people read the book. Ask for a wave of small gifts. 20 gifts plus one more. Uncapped. Everyone can support it. Hijackers Perspective Livestream. Watching Zhou Hang's intimidation of Wu Peng. The audience in the live broadcast room exploded. I realized that Zhou Hang is becoming more and more like a tough guy now. He's really been brought down by Lu Ming. Indeed. Just the words he said just now. I was a little scared when I heard them. There's one thing to be said for Zhou Hang. Although he's naive most of the time. His acting and execution skills are first class. This Wu Peng. I'm willing to call him the most miserable rich second generation in the entire network. I have to say that his father really knows how to play. Brothers. How long do you think the police messenger will be able to catch the two robbers? Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, this time? I remember a star kidnapping case in China. From the time the case was all over, the police messenger spent less than 24 hours in total. Although Lu Ming is very powerful, I estimate that he would only be able to last a day. Indeed, kidnapping isn't like robbing a bank. The difficulty of detection feels much lower. At this time, the live broadcasting room had been open for more than 30 hours. The number of online viewers had already surpassed the half a million mark. With such a horrifying number of people, the viewers were also extremely active. The number of pop-ups was naturally extremely terrifying. At the same time, the two people, 
Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, played the role of kidnappers, and the audience was quite recognized, therefore the number of gifts for the live broadcast was also quite high. As of now, the amount of gifts received in the live broadcast had reached more than 700,000, and, this number was still growing wildly. Hotel, in the suite on the top floor, Wu Dong, who was watching the situation through the live stream, frowned slightly, a pair of eyes stared at the live broadcast, he reached out and rubbed his brow and couldn't help but suck in a cool breath. These two people playing the role of kidnappers are too professional, aren't they? Wu Dong was silent for two seconds. Only then did he look back at his assistant and spoke with a grave expression. He had seen Lu Ming's in their last maneuver. There was still a certain amount of imagination about the two playing kidnappers. However, at this moment, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's performance was just beyond his expectations. Indeed, the TV staging wasn't even this real. Mr. Wu, are these two really police officers? Normally. Will there be any part-time jobs or something like that? The assistant looked at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang in the live screen. His brows were deeply locked as he spoke. There was a scornful look in his eyes that was hard to hide. No way. They are serious police officers. Hearing the assistant's words, Wu Dong couldn't help but laugh. As he spoke, he glanced at the assistant with contempt. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were both invited over by the director of the Kunjiang Municipal Bureau. Therefore, even if they no longer looked like robbers, Wu Dong naturally wouldn't suspect their identities. However, there was a short silence for two seconds. Wu Dong looked up at the assistant at the side again and hesitated for a moment before opening his mouth. Turn around. You hire a few more bodyguards for me. Looking at the hostile Zhou Hang in the live broadcast, Wu Dong's brows were deeply locked. An unspeakable expression filled his face. Still need to hire a few more? The assistant opened his mouth somewhat hesitantly. Obviously. For Wu Dong this request is really some surprise. After all. Wu Dong's side is always six bodyguards configuration. And then a few more please. Isn't it a little too much? Well, with fewer people, I feel unsafe. Wu Dong spoke quietly, picking up the hot tea on the table and taking a sip. The air conditioning in this room was also only turned on to 20 degrees, but it always made him feel a vicious chill in his back. Okay, I'll turn around and do it. The assistant nodded and responded to Wu Dong, putting down the teacup in his hand. Wu Dong leaned on the sofa, watching the live broadcast. He murmured to himself, these two people usually don't really go into any side business after work, right? Kunjiang Municipal Bureau, the case analysis room dedicated to the exercise. At this time, the clues everyone had were still relatively small. Therefore, most people were not very busy. The entire case analysis room seemed slightly lazy. All cheer up, strive to catch the kidnappers within 24 hours. Chief Commander Fan Yun looked at the situation and clapped his hands, speaking forcefully. When everyone heard this, they all rushed to cheer up, each looking for something to do. The CCTV footage of the road near the bar was looked over and over again by the police messenger for fear of missing a single clue. Chief squad, there's a discovery. It wasn't long. A police inspector from the technical department walked up to Fan Yun and spoke rather excitedly. After all, this was considered to be one of the few developments in the 40 minutes or so since the report was received. Speak up. Fan Yun sniffed, slightly raising his eyebrows. He also opened his mouth rather excitedly. We retrieved the surveillance outside the bar and along the road, and found that there was once a van following behind the sports car driven by Wu Pang, that police messenger said, pulling up the images from the surveillance. The projector projected the image onto the huge white cloth in the case analysis room, the picture in the video. It was just fixed at the time when Wu Pang's car left the bar. Press the play button. The video began to play. In the middle of the picture, the sports car had just driven out shortly before a van followed it but the two vehicles separated after driving into the development zone. Another CCTV footage from the development zone showed that only Wu Peng's car was in the car when it came out, and after driving into the outskirts of the city, his car didn't appear in the surveillance footage again. The screen played. That police messenger opened his mouth to continue reporting the situation. Did you send someone to check the road in the outskirts of the city? Fan Yun frowned slightly and pondered for two seconds before. Only then did he raise his head and speak thoughtfully. Group 6 has already gone over to check and should have results soon. A squad leader sniffed and hurriedly opened his mouth to respond. The commander-in-chief sniffed and nodded. At this moment, he lowered his head and frowned, clearly thinking about something. However, it was also at this time that the landline on the table rang. A squad leader answered the phone, and after briefly responding a few times, he hurriedly looked at the chief commander. Commander-in-chief, there's news from Group 6. Wu Peng's sports car was found inside the bushes on the roadside on the outskirts of the city. It was initially determined that this roadway was the crime site where Wu Peng was kidnapped. Hearing these words, in the eyes of the people present, they couldn't help but flash a trace of delight. 
Finding Wu Peng's car. This was a major discovery. After all, knowing where the hostage was kidnapped could greatly narrow down the scope of the search. The first crime scene could also find quite a few useful clues. Should we center our search around this? The other squad leader got up and looked at the commander-in-chief. Opening his mouth, he asked Van for instructions on his next move. However, Chief Commander Fan Yun's brows were locked deeper. The muscles in his cheeks throbbed slightly, obviously clenching his teeth to ponder something. During the period from the time Wu Peng's car drove into the suburban roadway, there were at least 40 to 50 cars passing by before and after. If Wu Peng was kidnapped during this time, then all of these cars are within the scope of suspicion. This road section only has surveillance at the head and tail. It is indeed a good place to start. But, why did Wu Peng drive here? Fan Yun spoke leisurely after a few seconds of silence. A puzzled expression filled his face as he spoke. Obviously, he felt that Wu Peng's car appeared in this place. It was really a bit abnormal. Could it be that Lu Ming bought off that little brother called Sixth Son beside him? After all, through the CCTV footage outside the bar, you can see that it was that Sixth Son who drove the car. In that case, Wu Peng's car appearing here can be explained clearly. Another squad leader boldly put forward his own conjecture. Indeed, kidnapping this kind of thing. Examples of colluding acquaintances to commit crimes abounded. We can't rule out this possibility. Pull up the surveillance of the section Wu Peng drove into the development zone again and I'll take a look. Fan Yun pondered slightly and suddenly thought of something. Immediately, he let the police messenger from the technical department call up the previous section of the surveillance video. In this surveillance video, Wu Peng's car drove into the development area, and the van that came out of the bar followed similarly. After about 17 or 18 minutes, Wu Peng's car drove out from the exit of the development zone. This didn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary. However, Fan Yun looked at it three times over and over again. Immediately afterward, he had the police messenger pull up the video of Wu Peng leaving the bar. This way, he watched it carefully before letting the police messenger pause it. Subsequently, Fan Yun drew out the neutral pen inserted inside the pen barrel and began to quickly write something down on the paper. Midway through writing, he looked up to the police messenger and asked, how many kilometers in total between entering the development zone and leaving? About five kilometers. A police messenger whose family lived in the development zone returned without hesitation. After Fan Yun heard this, he heavily dropped a stroke on the paper. Picking up the piece of paper, he stood up. Look everyone, on this journey, his car has never traveled at a speed lower than 40 kilometers. Even when the speed changed, it accelerated and didn't slow down. The entire section of the development zone is only five kilometers and according to his previous speed, it would only take him 8 minutes at most to pass. Then what was he doing during those extra 10 minutes or so? The chief commander, who had detected the clues from the video, raised the question in his mind to the crowd. That one van had been following Wu Peng's car. This was not a coincidence in the eyes of chief commander Fan Yun. He was drinking at the time. Perhaps he stopped on the side of the road to vomit. Or perhaps he urinated? There was silence in the case analysis room for a moment. It was only then that a squad leader spoke tentatively. The rest of the people sniffed. There were also a number of rather agreeable nods. Thinking that stopping the car in the middle of the day didn't feel strange. The conjecture raised by this squad leader. A part of the people agreed. While another part of the people who just heard it perhaps felt that it was a bit comical. But after a slight pondering, they also still felt that it was quite reasonable. After all, this was for most people who drank alcohol. This was a very normal thing. After a person drinks alcohol, his blood circulation speeds up. When he sat inside the car and was blown by the wind, blood vessels will quickly contract, causing an increase in blood pressure in the head. Naturally, this would be accompanied by dizziness, vomiting and such. There is indeed this possibility. Chief Commander Fan Yun nodded in agreement. The conversation then turned. Then can we also put forward a bold hypothesis? In case Wu Peng was not stopping or slowing down for these reasons at that time, the Chief Commander's cold eyes looked around, sweeping over everyone present. These words exited. It caused the crowd to fall into a short silence. Indeed, since you were able to suspect that during these extra 10 minutes or so, Wu Peng might have stopped and rested because he drank too much, then why can't you suspect that Wu Peng didn't stop the car for this reason? If that is the case, then there is only one possibility. Wu Peng was tied up in the first place. It was not on the outskirts of the city, but on this road in the development zone. Captain, do you mean to say that Wu Peng's car had been changed when he came out of the development zone? One of the squad leaders. Based on what Fan Yun had said, another possibility quickly came to mind. The kidnappers didn't leave with the hostages at the first opportunity after kidnapping the people. Instead, they chose to split up in two ways. One drove Wu Peng's car out of the development area and parked elsewhere to attract the attention of the police officers, deliberately creating a false first location of the crime, while the other left with the hostages. 
Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Lu Ming is tricky, and if you're slightly negligent, you'll be led by the nose by him, so don't let any of the details slip. Group 3 went to the outskirts of the city to cooperate with Group 6 in the investigation, and Wu Peng's car was found in the bushes by the roadside. Then use this as the center to start a search. The surrounding residential houses, as well as the passing vehicles during this period of time, all have to be checked. Group 4 head to the development zone and carefully investigate the reason for Wu Peng's sudden stop during that period of time. All move. The golden time for rescue. We can't afford to waste it. Fan Yan clapped his hands and spoke emotionally. Under his leadership, the entire team of police officers was enthusiastic. It was filled with confidence. After his order was given, the several squad leaders in the middle of the case analysis room also quickly went to carry out his order. Abandoned factory building. Wu Peng, who was tied to a pillar, was unable to move his body for a long time. His hands and feet had long been numb. The slightest movement was like tens of thousands of ants crawling on his body. He had never suffered such a crime. Surprisingly, he cried sadly. He is now in his heart regret. If he did not move his old man gave that five million, perhaps in the first time of being kidnapped, you can give money to go away, which will be like now, tied to the pillar, cannot move, he who had never regarded money as money, only now did he understand the saying that money is seldom used until it is used, oh, coochie, grunt, grunt, he wanted to cry, but was worried that he was crying too loudly, it made Lu Ming and Zhou Hang unhappy, and so, in wanting to cry and forcing himself not to, he made some incomprehensible sounds from time to time. This kid was so bold before, but now he's such a wimp. Zhou Hang glanced at Wu Peng who was tied to the pillar. With a contemptuous gaze, he spoke. He had just spent two hours sleeping in the car and was now preparing to come and replace Lu Ming. Seeing Wu Peng in this state, he naturally couldn't help but spit out a few words. It's better to suffer before it's too late. I hope this time will teach him a lesson. Lu Ming spoke with a bashful face, putting down the pen in his hand and falling into deep thought. He didn't care in the slightest about educating the rich second generation, only concerned about whether he could achieve victory in this maneuver. After all, only by winning would he be able to receive the system's rewards. Money could be earned, but the system's reward was priceless. No one dares to guarantee that after this maneuver, there would be another one. Therefore, Lu Ming's attitude towards this drill was extremely serious. If he wasn't wrong, right now, the police officers inside the city council, they must be searching for Wu Peng's whereabouts. The car that he had hidden in the bushes had probably been discovered by them. Once the car is found, the police team will definitely take that place as the center and start searching. If that Fan Yun was smarter, perhaps they could have reacted to the fact that they actually kidnapped Wu Peng in the development zone. But no matter what, this had bought him a lot of time to get the ransom money. Lu Ming walked over to Wu Peng and pulled out the cell phone that he had picked up at the garbage dump earlier. The cell phone at this time had already been repaired by Lu Ming, although it was not as good as the one that had just left the factory. However, it was used to make phone calls without any problems. Now, I will call your mom. If the ransom isn't ready, I'll tell her where you're buried. Lu Ming spoke with an icy voice. A pair of eyes were full of hostility as they stared tightly at Wu Peng. As soon as these words left his mouth, he immediately scared Wu Peng's face to death. Big brother, don't worry. As long as you guys don't kill me, my mom will definitely give money. Wu Peng spoke with a sobbing voice. The face was distorted. Tears and snot couldn't stop coming out. It flowed into his mouth. I hope so. Lu Ming spoke lightly. At that moment, he stopped talking, taking the worn out old age phone. He dialed Wu Peng's mother's number according to his own memories. The current Lu Ming was completely unforgettable. So, even if he had already disconnected Wu Peng's phone, still able to accurately remember Wu Peng's mother's number. Do, do, two busy sounds passed. The phone was connected. Inside came the anxious voice of Wu Peng's mother. I've prepared the money. I need to know if my son is still safe? Wu Peng's mother spoke with a trembling voice. That tone contained a mother's worry for her son. Don't worry. I'm a man of principle. He's fine now. Come, Wu Peng. Say something to your mom. Lu Ming spoke without haste, then handed his cell phone to Wu Peng. He looked at Wu Peng with a calm expression. However, at this moment, Wu Peng didn't even have the courage to look at Lu Ming because of his fear. Mom, you must give them the money, or else they will really kill me. Mom. You must save me. Wu Peng cried out hoarsely. That appearance was as pitiful as it could be. The previous arrogant and domineering look was completely gone. Son good boy, don't cry. Mom will redeem you right away. Wu Peng's mother's voice rang out with sobs. However, the words hadn't even finished. Lu Ming put the cell phone back. Hear that. This is your son's voice. Ma'am, you don't want your son to suffer here either. Do you? Lu Ming spoke with an icy voice. He moved his neck as he spoke. 
I will fulfill any request of the, please let my son go. Wu Peng's mother begged bitterly, fearing that Lu Ming would torture Wu Peng. After all, it was not difficult to hear from Wu Peng's words that he was in a bad state. Obviously the kidnappers had not treated him favorably. Very well, next, I'll tell you what to do. As long as you behave yourself, I'll make sure he's fine. Have someone bring the money to this place, I'll notify you of the location by text message. Keep the phone open at all times. Lu Ming finished speaking and hung up the phone. After sending a message over, he immediately turned off his cell phone and removed his calling card. After doing all this, Lu Ming stretched his back and looked over to where Zhou Hang was over there. Only then did he realize that Zhou Hang's expression as he looked at himself had changed a little bit subtly. There was also a smile stifled on his face. What's wrong? Lu Ming asked with some surprise. Nothing, it's just that what you just said. It seems like I've heard it before inside certain movies. Zhou Hang's face slightly reddened, scratching the back of his head as he cheerfully opened his mouth. Lu Ming didn't have the heart to skim Zhou Hang, without having to ask. He knew, what Zhou Hang thought of must be some not so good study materials. Read less of those things, it has an effect on intelligence. Lu Ming stretched out his right hand and tapped his temples with two fingers, shrugged his shoulders. Very contemptuously, he looked at Zhou Hang and opened his mouth. Ha ha, actually, I don't don't often look. Right, brother Ming you go take a rest. It's my turn to take over. Zhou Hang scratched the back of his head and responded with a somewhat awkward smile. Only then did he tell Lu Ming to go rest with a concerned tone. Lu Ming hadn't closed his eyes for quite a long time. Therefore, Zhou Hang hurriedly ran over to change shifts with Lu Ming after squinting for two hours. After all, Lu Ming was the brain of their team of robbers. If this brain had to go off because he hadn't rested enough, their team would probably be finished. However, Lu Ming waved his hand when he heard this. It's too late. We have to hurry now. I'll just squint in the car for a while later. Lu Ming calmly responded to Zhou Hang. He then began to pull out grenades from the backpacks that contained their weapons, making preparations to leave. At this moment, Wu Peng, who was not far away, watched Lu Ming unexpectedly take out a grenade from his bag. A moment ago, he was still crying in pain. His brain suddenly went blank. He stared blankly at the round thing on the table. His eyes were filled with disbelief. This kidnapper is also too exaggerated, right? Surprisingly, he even had a grenade? After seeing the real thing, his fear of Lu Ming added a few more points. His heart became even more terrified. Right yo, if his mother really called the police, that police messenger must have tapped into his mother's phone. And if you called just now, they will definitely be able to find out where we are in a short period of time. Then we do have to run away in a hurry. But, brother Ming, if we're running away, why did you bring out the grenades? Zhou Hang slapped his head, remembering the call Lu Ming had just made realizing that their hiding spot had been exposed, but couldn't figure it out. Why was Lu Ming still so calm, and had even taken out the grenades? What was he preparing to do? I know, you're trying to blow up Wu Peng so that we don't have any hostages to run away. His grandma, daring to call the police, it's time to let his mother know what happens when she angers us. No need for so many grenades, one is enough, I'll send him to his death right away. Lu Ming did not answer Zhou Hang. However, Zhou Hang creased his brows in thought, tapped his head, and seemed to have figured it out. While opening his mouth extremely seriously, he picked up a grenade on the table. It was ready to pull the pull ring and throw it towards Wu Peng. Wu Peng heard these words. The whole person dead stared at the grenade in Zhou Hang's hand. In this June day actually scared out of a cold sweat. The body was like sifting chaff, unable to stop shivering. However, just as Zhou Hang was about to make a move to pull out the pull ring, Lu Ming grabbed Zhou Hang's wrist. Who said I was going to blow him up? The money hasn't arrived yet, and if we blow him up, who are we going to ask for the money? Lu Ming frowned and spoke, stopping Zhou Hang who would be wrong. While speaking, he removed the grenade in his hand. Wu Peng who was tied to the pillar. He only felt that he had walked on the bridge of Naiha, and let out a big sigh of relief as if he had been pardoned. Cannot help but hit a cold shiver. A face without the slightest blood color. It is also good that he did not drink any water this whole day. Otherwise, however, just when he was glad that he had escaped death. What Lu Ming said next once again caused Wu Peng to be surrounded by fear. Carry that one called Sixth Son over. It's him I want to blow up. Lu Ming spoke calmly. No emotion could be heard in his tone. This lightly spoken sentence. It was more chilling than any threat. It seemed to no longer take human life seriously. Wu Peng thought he knew many big brothers in society. But even those who had been in jail for more than 10 years. They are not even a millionth of Lu Ming. This kind of disregard for life. Without a dozen or two lives on his hands. Could he say such cold words? At this time, Wu Peng was about to be scared silly. Scared to a certain extent. He had already forgotten to cry. Just staring blankly at the front. 
As if his soul had already gone out of his body, there was only a shell left that was still tied to the concrete pillar. However, he didn't know that Lu Ming was able to be so indifferent solely because of his personality. Plus, in Lu Ming clearly knew that this was supposed to be a drill. No one would die at all. How could there be that kind of timidity and scorn before killing? But in Wu Ping's eyes, but Lu Ming became the image of a murderous devil. It seemed that Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's entire faces were covered in black. There were only two pairs of scarlet eyes that made him tremble in fear as they flickered. Ah, Wu Pang let out a strange cry. In the midst of his own fantastical fear, he directly fainted. Why does this brat let out some strange shrieks all day long? Zhou Hang glanced at Wu Pang and saw that he seemed to have fainted. At that moment, he skimmed his mouth. Very incomprehensible. He opened his mouth. Don't worry about him. Go and carry the guy in the car down. Lu Ming ignored it and instead took out the pre-prepared fishing line and wrapped it around the grenade pole ring. Zhou Hang nodded and hurriedly followed Lu Ming's instructions, trotting out of the plant, inside the van compartment. At this moment, Sixth Sun was writhing on the ground like a maggot, biting a nail clipper in his mouth. He attempted to use the end of the nail grinding to break the rope, but the nail clippers were just too pocketable, and he was tied up too tightly due to it. Each time, he could only grind off a small, fiber of the rope. But fortunately, the effort was not enough, and under his unremitting efforts, finally, the rope was ground off a small opening the size of a fingernail cap. If one persists for another hour or two, definitely able to grind off the rope. The desire to survive made his gaze incomparably determined. He had never insisted on one thing in his life like he did today. He he he, broke another one. Rocco watched dramatically as the fibers of the rope were worn down by another one, and was overjoyed, breathing heavily. But just when he thought he was one step away from hope, a large, merciless hand cupped the back of his neck. What do you think you're bothering so much for? Zhou Hang took out a new rope from inside the trunk, replacing the rope in Sixth Sun's hand that had been worn out with a small gap. After confirming that it was tied securely, he reached for the nail clippers in Sixth Sun's mouth. Good boy, loosen your mouth. Don't bite it. Beware of scratching your mouth. Zhou Hang spoke calmly and reached out to pull it out, only to see that Sixth Sun was dead set on biting the nail clippers, not letting go of his mouth no matter what. A whimpering sound came out of his mouth. Two lines of clear tears even more unwillingly slipped from the corners of his eyes. That look was as if he was questioning Zhou Hang. Why did you show up at this time? Knowing how much effort he had gone through in order to wear a small gap in the rope. Life is like that sometimes. Good boy, give it to me quickly or I'll get angry. Zhou Hang spoke sympathetically. The force on his hand increased by a point. Sixth son had been biting the nail clippers, and his teeth had long been sore. With a gentle pluck by Zhou Hang, he took away the nail clippers. Looking at his nail clippers being put inside Zhou Hang's pocket, a big man in his twenties, at this moment even aggrieved to howl. Oh, you give me back my nail clippers, you give it back to me. Sixth son skimmed his mouth, tearful eyes, crying extremely sadly. It was like a child who had been robbed of a toy. It was obviously straight up broken. Zhou Hang pulled him over with one hand, carrying him on his shoulder. He walked straight towards the plant, letting Sixth son cry and fuss on his shoulder. Those who didn't know thought that it was some kind of adult that was bringing a bear child home. People have been brought. This kid didn't know where he got a nail knife from. When I went, the rope was worn out by him with a small cut. Joe hanged directly through the Rocco he was carrying on his shoulder onto the ground. Exhaled a breath. Only then did he place the tools of the trade on the table and opened his mouth without a good mood. P.S. Yesterday begged for gifts. The number is a bit out of my expectation ah. Uh, crying. First add a chapter. The rest owed. The follow up slowly pay back on. I guess the hands have to code broken to afford it. Ooh hoo. And then weakly ask for a wave of gifts. I hope you more support. Don't be too nervous. We won't hurt you for now. Lu Ming looked at Sixth Sun's snotty appearance, slightly raising his eyebrows, speaking in as calm a tone as possible, giving him a comforting cry. After all, this state he was in now would affect his next operation. Thirsty, right? Drink some water first, then eat something to fill your stomach. Lu Ming picked up a mineral water bottle and a loaf of bread in half squatted in front of Sixth Sun. With a calm face, he opened his mouth. Sixth Sun had long been hungry enough. The things were just handed over, and he hurriedly took them. A mouthful of water and a mouthful of bread, wolfing down the food. After eating them, the way he looked at Lu Ming underwent some subtle changes. It wasn't fear, but gratitude. It was as if he was a loyal dog that couldn't wait to wag its tail at Lu Ming. It seemed that Lu Ming was not the kidnapper who had kidnapped him. Rather, it was his benefactor in general. Brother, you're a good man. Thank you. Sixth son used his hand to push the breadcrumbs around his mouth into his mouth. Only then did he swallow his saliva. Looking at Lu Ming with a grateful face, he opened his mouth. There's no need for thanks. This is what I should do. After all, 
In my plan, you shouldn't be starved to death. However, this is the only meal I can guarantee. Let's tie him to the one stool. Lu Ming smiled with a bland expression. He clapped his hands and stood up without haste. To sixth son, he spoke lightly. After saying that, only then did he signal Zhou Hang to tie the person to the stool. Sixth son's brows were deeply locked, carefully speculating on Lu Ming's words. Soon, he seemed to be reacting. Fear immediately crept onto his face. For a moment, Sixth son's entire body froze like a wooden chicken. Only one meal? This was a severed head meal. Sixth son's body couldn't stop trembling, and it was as if an earthquake had occurred in his contracted pupils. Don't kill me, brother, don't, kill me. He hurriedly cried and begged bitterly, his voice miserable and incomparable. But Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were indifferent. Indifferent to the point of being chilling. Zhou Hang disliked the non-stop crying sixth son for being a bit annoying. After tying him to the stool, he frowned again and sealed his mouth with tape. Sixth son's mouth was sealed. A short silence fell in this abandoned factory. Zhou Hang smiled with satisfaction and clapped his hands, just as if he had accomplished something refreshing to the mind. He stretched his back before walking over to Lu Ming. At this moment, Lu Ming had already strung the three bombs on the table together with fishing line. Then he took two nails that were not so badly rusted from those unwanted wooden boards in the abandoned factory. Subsequently, Lu Ming picked up the steel bars on the ground again. He chiseled out two small pits in the concrete floor of the doorway. After confirming that the pit was just the right size, he walked out of the factory and dug out two balls of yellow mud in the muddy ground not far from the factory. Putting the yellow mud into the pit, he slightly added a little bit of water. Immediately following, inserted the two nails that he had just taken down from the wooden board onto the yellow mud. Tie a fishing line to these two nails and pull the end of the line out. Finally, bring another board of the right weight and cover it over these two nails. The nails are just enough to hold up the weight of the board, without being pressed into the yellow mud. In order to be on the safe side, Lu Ming also gently pressed the board with his hand to make sure that the strength was appropriate. There was no need to increase the hardness of the yellow mud. Only then did he straighten the two fishing lines tied to the nails horizontally. It was pulled all the way to the back of the post. Bring me the tape. Lu Ming reached out and shouted to Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang on the side was watching intently. And when he heard this shout, he hurriedly picked up the tape on the table. He handed it to Lu Ming. Lu Ming took the tape, took out the grenade inside his pocket, and used the tape to tie it behind the pillar. He then returned the tape to Zhou Hang, tying one end of the fishing line to the pull ring of the grenade. Glancing along the fishing line, the entire line was taut. Since the grenade and the nail on the ground were almost at the same level, although the fishing line was taut, it was just enough not to pull apart the grenade's pull ring. Only after doing all this did Lu Ming clap his hands in satisfaction and stood up, picking up the three grenades that were threaded with the fishing line on the table. Tie that fishing line behind the door. As long as someone entered this abandoned factory and touched this fishing line, these three grenades would detonate. When passing by the gate, Lu Ming was very careful to avoid the wooden board that he had placed at the entrance before. Zhou Heng saw this maneuver by Lu Ming. It was not strange. After all, he clearly remembered the military exercises back then. The traps that Lu Ming had made during the jungle combat had given the other side a headache. It even set a record of one person eliminating 30 people. All right, now take Wu Pang and leave. Don't use the front door. Use the window. Lu Ming looked and reminded Zhou Hang. He was afraid that Zhou Hang would accidentally trigger the trap. That way then they would become a joke to the national audience. He really didn't want to see playing the role of a robber to make a trap, and actually blew himself up. Such a headline. Appearing on the next day's news headlines, Zhou Hang nodded heavily undoing the rope on Wu Pang. He directly carried Wu Pang and jumped out of the window. Lu Ming glanced back at Sixth Son and did not say anything more. He also jumped out of the window, after throwing Wu Pang into the car, in order to prevent him from escaping again. Zhou Hang used an extra rope this time. After trapping Wu Pang like a cicada chrysalis, he nodded in reassurance. Of course, in order to prevent Wu Pang from shouting, Zhou Hang naturally also used tape to seal his mouth. Brother Ming, next, where are we going? Zhou Hang sat back in the driver's seat and fastened his seatbelt at the same time. Only then did he look sideways at Lu Ming and ask out. Lu Ming didn't tell him about the next plan, and he didn't ask much about it either. Anyway, he had absolute trust in Lu Ming. He would fight wherever Lu Ming pointed. Go to People's Square. Lu Ming gazed ahead and spoke calmly. After moving his neck a bit, he took out the cell phone that he had previously called Wu Peng's mother and pressed the on button. After the cell phone turned on, quickly, he edited a text message and sent it over. There was only a simple line on it. Joy Luck Mall. This was the location where Lu Ming had notified Wu Peng's mother to pay the ransom. With Lu Ming's intelligence, he naturally wouldn't be foolish enough to just go there to get the money. After all, he guessed that Wu Peng's mother had already reported to the police. 
and if he hadn't guessed wrong, now if he really arrived at the location he had notified, it was estimated that as soon as he appeared, the police team would immediately be surrounded. Even if he and Zhou Hang had weapons, it would be difficult to escape. So the location on the text message was just an attempt to tire off the police guards. Okay. Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming say the location. After calling up the navigation, he directly kicked the gas and drove the car off. Following the potholed path, he drove all the way to the main road. At this time, there just happened to be a van slowly driving past. Follow this vehicle. Keep the same speed as it. Lu Ming said and opened the car window. As Zhou Hang picked up speed and kept the same speed as the van side by side, Lu Ming threw it with vigor, only to see the cell phone fall precisely into the pile of cargo in the van's compartment. Turn at the intersection ahead. Lu Ming closed the window and spoke in a cold voice. Although Zhou Hang sometimes couldn't turn a corner in his head, God had closed the door for him and kindly didn't seal the window shut. Both his physical fitness and car skills were top-notch. At this moment, hearing Lu Ming's instructions, he jerked the steering wheel, smoothly and quickly. He separated from the truck at the intersection in front of him. At the same time, the police officer who was listening to Wu Peng's mother's phone calls at Wu's house, seeing the red dot appearing on the map, they were overwhelmed with excitement, hurriedly informing the command level in the middle of the case analysis room, reporting to the general team, the kidnappers have now moved and are traveling towards the neighboring county. Is an interception in progress? In the case analysis room, the group of squad leaders and the chief commander, Fan Yun, were all quite elated to hear the report of the robbers' movements over the intercom. However, a slightly puzzled expression soon appeared on Chief Commander Fan Yun's face. What is he doing in a neighboring county? Isn't the scope of our maneuvers in Kunjiang City? What does Lu Ming he want? The Chief Commander frowned and murmured in a rather puzzled manner. Lu Ming's actions, it really made him a little puzzled. Immediately set up barricades at the intersections and make sure to stop him. However, after only a few seconds of hesitation, Chief Commander Fan Yun gritted his teeth giving the order. Originally, they had already determined the location of the kidnapper through the phone call between the kidnapper and Wu Peng's mother. They were about to carry out the arrest, but then they received the news that the robbers had moved. This had to make the plan change. Highway. The truck driver was sitting in the wobbly driver's seat, was chewing beetle nut and humming a little song. It was as if he was in a good mood, and sitting next to him was a heavily made-up woman. At this time, that woman was holding an eyebrow pencil and was fully concentrating on trying to aim for her eyebrows, but the car was really shaking badly. Just as soon as she dropped the pencil, she drew her eyebrows crookedly. Can you drive slower? I can't even draw my eyebrows. The woman looked huffy and glared at the truck driver. Without good humor, she opened her mouth, finished speaking, stretching out the little finger of her right hand again. She carefully wiped off the crookedly drawn eyebrows. You are a fairy in my eyes without the need to draw. The truck driver spoke cheerfully with a face full of smiles. While speaking, there was also not some dishonestly stretching out his hand. Come less, just will be oily. If you let the tigress in your family know about it, we'll not cut you off. Drive properly. The female extended her hand to knock down the driver's unfaithful hand that reached over, gave him a blank look. Only then did she open her mouth with a smile on her face. After saying that, she put the eyebrow pencil and mirror in her hand back into her bag, very proudly tilting her face. That tigress won't know. What would have taken two trips to haul? I filled it up in one trip. With this save time, we can have a good quickie for a few days. The truck driver raised an eyebrow with the woman as he drove. It was hard to hide the excitement in his eyes. He deliberately pulled both loads in one trip. The car that could only hold five tons was hardened to hold ten tons. This way, he could do it unnoticed. Use the extra time to have a private meeting with your lover. Dead ghost. Just you have many ghost ideas. The woman pouted and opened her mouth fiercely scraping the truck driver. At once, the driver's bones were crispy. He couldn't wait, and the gas pedal under his foot stepped a few points deeper. At this moment, can't wait for this van of his to have an extra pair of wings, fly directly to the destination. However, at this time next to this woman, a moment later, she touched him intentionally or unintentionally, and a moment later, she intentionally sprinkled water on him. Such actions really made the smile on his face a few more points thicker. Whatever, just stop here on the side of the road. The truck driver glanced at the rearview mirror, seeing that there weren't any vehicles passing by on this stretch of road, and that the neighborhood was deserted. There were no homes. Solely, he stopped here. What are you stopping suddenly for? We're not there yet? The woman looked at the driver with a monkey face and opened her mouth plausibly. She, who was drinking water, glanced at the driver. What for? What do you think I'm going to do? Hey, the driver laughed, and reached up to wipe the drool off his face. Meanwhile, a kilometer behind this road, seven or eight police cars were speeding here. 
Attention all three groups. Positioning shows that the kidnappers are stopping at Section 301 in the neighboring county. Roger that. Rush to the destination immediately. The team leader leading the third group picked up the walkie-talkie and informed the situation. Putting down the walkie-talkie, he took a deep breath of cool air. Turning his head, he looked at the several team members traveling with him in the car. Load the bullets. Don't let the kidnappers escape. Only then did he load his bullets. Be ready to fight at any time. Inside the truck's cab. At this time in that crowded cab, the two people, the driver and the woman, were still completely unaware. A large number of police messengers still have a few minutes to arrive at the scene. Don't. Let people see how bad it is. The woman frowned. Some nervousness towards the car window to see at the same time. Push away the driver. Obviously. Is afraid of this big road with cars passing by. This highway in the middle of nowhere. Where are there any people ah? The truck driver ignored it. Not worried in the slightest. A smile was piled on his face. However. Seeing that the woman still refused. The van driver let out a long sigh. Started the car again. At this time. The police messenger who had heard the news. It was already only a hundred meters away from the van. Seeing the van parked on the side of the road. And glancing at the positioning sent by the technical department. Determined that the kidnappers are inside the van. They were about to get out of the car to make an arrest when they saw the van suddenly start. Hurrying to close the car door. Don't let him get away. Hurry up and chase after him. The team leader of the third group frowned and spoke nervously. The order was given. The police car pulled the alarm. Ula Ola screamed endlessly. All seven or eight police cars followed the driver of the truck in a dead heat. The driver heard the alarm and saw the police cars appearing inside the rearview mirror. Although he didn't know how so many police cars inexplicably appeared. However, thinking about their own car is already overweight. This time pulling the goods inside also helped people with two extra gas canisters. Caught not only to be fined plus six points. It is likely to be detained for several days. Solely gritted his teeth and stepped on the gas. Started accelerating, wanting to get rid of the police messenger behind him. The kidnappers are starting to accelerate. Set up a barrier at the intersection ahead. Don't let him get away. The team leader, whose eyes were like a torch, had a grave expression. He picked up the walkie-talkie and hurriedly gave the order in a deep voice. The police officers who set up barriers in front received the order. Immediately, they laid out the road spikes that had been prepared long ago and set up the roadblocks at the same time. The truck driver at first was lucky that he got rid of the police car behind him. But when he turned his head and saw the roadblock in front of him, and the heavily armed police officers with long guns, he was completely confused. The whole person was completely confused. He was just helping someone to bring two extra gas canisters. As for arresting him with such a big battle, there were even guns. He swallowed his saliva. Confused, he quickly came back to his senses. Hurriedly slamming the brakes on, the speed of the van slowly dropped. By the time it was only a meter away from the road spike, it had come to a complete stop. Hands on your head, get out of the car. A police officer with a charge ran outside the cab and pointed his gun at the driver. He spoke in a forceful tone. At this point, the driver, who had already been stunned, where would he dare to be half-heartedly disobedient? He hurriedly opened the car door and jumped out of the car, holding his head. The other two police officers then came over and quickly searched the driver's body. Only then did they let him and his lover squat on the ground. Subsequently, the police officer led the wolf dog and opened the carriages. After some searching, the cell phone that Lu Ming had thrown into the car was found. Leader, I only brought two gas canisters for someone. There's no need to make such a big scene to arrest me, right? I promise. I'll never be overweight in the future. And I'll never pull contraband. The truck driver opened his mouth in tears. The fat on his face was trembling. It was not hard to see that he was very scared in his heart. After all, these police messengers could all be armed with guns. What's going on with this cell phone? The team leader took Lu Ming's cell phone and stood in front of the driver. Condescendingly, he looked at the driver. With a deep frown, he opened his mouth and questioned in a stern voice. I don't know. When did an extra cell phone come out of my car? The driver looked at the somewhat old cell phone in the group leader's hand and shook his head like a rattle. A face of confusion. He indeed had no idea where it came from. It doesn't look like he's lying. It should have been thrown into his car by the kidnappers. The police messenger next to him shot a glance at the truck driver squatting on the ground. He came to the group leader's side and spoke in a low voice. After all, this was just a drill. Even if this person helped Lu Ming hide his cell phone, it was not a crime of harboring. Let the traffic department come and fine him. I'll report the situation here to the general team. The team leader sighed before speaking with a somewhat helpless frown. The words fell. He turned around and pressed the talk button on the intercom. In the case analysis room, hearing the news that the three groups had swooped in, Chief Commander Fan Yun did not feel very surprised. Because, previously, after the kidnappers used Wu Ping's phone to contact his family, 
Wu Peng's phone was turned off. This shows that Lu Ming kidnappers have a strong sense of counter-surveillance, knowing that the police messenger can be located through the phone. Therefore, he suddenly and blatantly exposed his location. It can only mean that Lu Ming did it intentionally. Of course, in order to prevent any misjudgments caused by subjective assumptions, Fan Yun still had the three groups take a look at what was going on. Therefore, now such a result, it was also considered within his expectations, the chief commander of this exercise, Fan Yun, to be able to become the captain of the criminal investigation team in his 30s, it was entirely by virtue of his outstanding personal abilities, whether he was investigating a case or deploying for an operation, he was extremely outstanding, when it comes to case detection, never letting go of any minutiae, therefore, when sending out the three groups of officers to go after Lu Ming's real-time cell phone positioning, he gave the order at the same time, let the personnel of the six groups, head to the location where Lu Ming's cell phone was first located, after all, in a kidnapping case, for the sake of safety, when the kidnappers went to get the ransom, definitely wouldn't bring the hostages along, rather, they choose to hide the hostage in a certain place under the watchful eye of an accomplice, in this way, if the person taking the ransom fails to return safely, then his accomplice can also use tearing up the ticket as a threat, making the police messenger throw in the towel, Therefore, this first location, is likely to be the place where the hostages are hidden, and that cell phone just now, it's obvious that the kidnappers are only doing it deliberately to attract the attention of the police, so, Chief Commander Fan Yun's greater hope was still placed on the personnel of Group 6, at this time, outside the abandoned factory building, the special agents had already ambushed the surrounding area, in order to prevent rushing in rashly and jeopardizing the safety of the hostages, before breaking through the factory building. The special agent hiding under the window took out an endoscope camera. From the hole in the broken window glass, the tube of the endoscope camera was carefully inserted. At the same time, the special agent in ambush outside also passed through the laptop connected to the camera signal, saw the picture in the middle of the factory building. The team leader of Team 6 stared at the picture with a deep frown, fearing that he would miss a single detail. Not much time passed. He pressed the talk button of the intercom in his hand. Chief Team, there is only one hostage in the abandoned factory building. No kidnappers have been found for the time being. Is the hostage to be rescued immediately? The team leader reported the situation to the chief commander, and also inquired about the next action. Only one hostage? Chief Commander Fan Yun listened to the report over the intercom. Frowning, he murmured with a puzzled expression. It was logical to say, the kidnappers always had to leave behind an accomplice to keep an eye on the hostage, while preventing the hostage from escaping they could also ensure that another companion could safely get the ransom. It would never be possible to leave the hostage behind. If, before the kidnapper threw the cell phone into someone else's car to attract the attention of the police messenger, it's because the kidnappers knew that this place had been exposed. So both kidnappers evacuated. Then why would the kidnappers leave the hostages in this place when they evacuated? This is really illogical. Unless, this hostage is a bait, deliberately luring them over? Thinking of this, the expression on Chief Commander Fan Yun's face immediately became grave. The factory building is most likely a trap left behind by the kidnappers. Be careful when rescuing the hostages. He hurriedly picked up his walkie-talkie and solemnly opened his mouth to give the order. The hostages could be bait. Even though they realized this, the police task force still couldn't leave the hostages unattended. After all, this was their responsibility. Therefore, when the commander-in-chief gave the order to free the hostages, all he could do was to remind his colleagues to be careful. Roger the order was received. The team leader of Team 6 responded calmly. He then took a deep breath of cool air before putting down the walkie-talkie in his hand. All be careful. There's likely a trap inside the plant. Start rescuing the hostages. He turned back to look at the team members beside him who were hiding their forms and spoke earnestly. The words fell. He waved his hand to signal action. The order to act was given. The special agents who had already been standing by began to move. The crowd methodically drew closer to the plant, arriving at the edge of the plant. Two special agents broke the window and observed the surroundings. After realizing that there was no danger, they made a safe gesture towards your people outside. The other two special agents enter through the front door. Just as one of the special agents was about to step over the gate with one foot, the other police messenger pulled him back. Wait, look here. The special agent pointed at his feet with the barrel of his gun. When his colleague fixed his eyes on it, he saw that there was a transparent fishing line in the air. If one didn't look carefully, that step across just now was bound to trip over this fishing line. They looked along the fishing line, only to see both sides behind the door. Both had grenades hanging from them. The two who were glad to have escaped were greatly relieved. Being reminded of the special messenger compared a few hand signals, signaling the two to jump straight over the fishing line. The other special agent almost nodded. 
The two leapt and lightly jumped over that fishing line. However, when they landed, one of the special agents stepped right on the wooden plank in front of him. He immediately realized that there was something underneath the plank. Hurriedly, he gestured at his teammates. However, the teammate just looked over, only to see white smoke begin to rise from a pillar not far away. Suddenly, there was a loud bang. The entire inside of the abandoned factory was filled with colorful smoke. Sixth son, who was tied up on the solitary stool, was even fainted from fear. The special agents outside looked at the smoke and dust that filled the plant. Facing each other, they looked at each other. Five special agents whose bodies were covered in paint then walked out from inside with gray heads. The expressions on the faces of several people were not very good. Motherfucker, I'm really convinced of Lu Ming. This old six, you two too. I told you that there was a trap in here. And you would still step on it. Who would have thought? He planted a bomb at the door and made an improvised mine. That's because you went in through the window. If you had gone through the front door, the mine might have exploded before you stepped on it. Don't talk about it. Hurry up and find water to wash it. Or it won't come off. The five special agents cursed and walked out from inside the abandoned factory building. Indeed, the team leader had warned them that there was likely a trap here. They were also extra careful. But they didn't expect that this Lu Ming had even more heart. Obviously, he had already planted a bomb. But he was still unsure. He used iron nails to make another simple mine. Even if you saw that fishing line across the door. If you lift your foot to cross it, you'll have to step on the wooden board at the door just the same. Double insurance in place. It's hard not to get hit when you come in through the front door. This mine was actually quite simple. The yellow soil Lu Ming used had a somewhat higher viscosity and a certain hardness. A nail was inserted into it, just enough to reveal a small section. And the fishing line was tied to it and the other end was tied to the bomb's pull ring intensed. As long as the nail is stepped down, the fishing line will naturally pull apart the bomb's pull ring. Now, the hostages have not yet been rescued. Five members of the special duty unit had been killed in action. And that was under the premise that the commander-in-chief and the team leader had warned to be careful of the traps. As the first batch of people to be eliminated from this maneuver, they naturally had a very hard time. It made sense that they couldn't help but spit on Lu Ming for being an old six. However, at this time, although five members of the team had already been killed in action, but the hostages still had to be rescued. It was just unknown how many other traps Lu Ming had laid out in the middle of this factory building. Outside the abandoned factory building, the leader of Team 6 had once again organized special agents to enter the factory building to rescue the hostages. Having suffered a loss once, when they entered the factory building again, all the special agents in action were more cautious. However, this time, they didn't encounter any situation. It didn't take long. A few special agents managed to free the tied up sixth son. I, I'm saved? You guys must catch those two kidnappers. They are simply not human. The sixth son, who had been rescued, was extremely excited. Grateful tears opened his mouth. When he mentioned the kidnappers while speaking, his face was still filled with a look of fear. Obviously, he was really scared by the two kidnappers. At this time, the team leader of group 6 looked at his emotional appearance. It was also not good to tell him that this was just a drill. It's alright. You're safe now. We'll send you to the station now. You tell us everything you know. So we can bring the culprits to justice as soon as possible. The team leader patted Sixth Son's shoulder and opened his mouth to comfort him for a few moments. Then he ordered for someone to bring Sixth Son back to the station. The others searched the scene to see if they could find a little useful clue. At the same time, on the way to People's Square, Joe Hang was driving according to the map and traveling unhurriedly. It wasn't long, while passing by a small road. Lu Ming asked Joe Hang to drive the car and along the small road, although he didn't know what Lu Ming wanted to do. However, Joe Hang still followed Lu Ming's request and drove the car into the small road. The worn-out van drove extremely bumpy on the uneven path. Lu Ming. On the other hand, took advantage of this gap and pulled out a brand new cell phone from his pocket. After inserting the card, he dialed a phone number. Hello, I contacted you two days ago. I've arrived now. Okay, I'll wait for you for a while. The phone was connected. Lu Ming opened his mouth in a calm tone and said a few words. Zhou Hang glanced sideways, obviously curious as to who Lu Ming was calling on this call. However, Lu Ming didn't seem to have the intention to tell him, so he didn't ask. Two minutes later. The car drove to the end of the road, and Zhou Hang stabilized the car with a kick of the brakes. Brother Ming, there's no road here. Pulling up the handbrake, Zhou Hang only then looked at Lu Ming and opened his mouth, looking at the dead-end road in front of him. For a moment, Zhou Hang wondered if Lu Ming had pointed to the wrong road. Wait a while, people will be here soon. Lu Ming reached out and rubbed his temples, casually responding to Zhou Hang. Just now, although he had squinted for a while in the car, but the sleep hadn't been long. The severe lack of sleep had caused some hidden pain in his temples. 
Zhou Hang sniffed and nodded. He reached for two bottles of mineral water and handed one to Lu Ming, and then opened a bottle himself and took a few sips. The car fell into a brief silence. About five or six minutes later, in the middle of the overgrown path ahead, a man wearing slippers and a white undershirt walked quickly from the side of the road. From afar, he waved and greeted this side, and after that, quickly ran to the car. Older brother, want to go over to see the house? I'm telling you my house is remote, but it covers a large area. It's perfect for a warehouse. You pay the utility bills yourselves. As for the rent, it's at the price we agreed before. Monkler Outlet Online happily opened his mouth, obviously in a good mood. After all, although his house is big, this place is really too remote. At first he was contracted over here to build a shed, before building this house here. Who knows that the shed business is yellow, but the house cannot move away. This place, at night, not to mention people, not even see a ghost. So the house is always idle. I didn't expect him to post a rental ad on the internet last year, and now someone even contacted him, and the rent was still high. Therefore he was naturally extremely happy. There's no need to look at the house. As for the rent you can give it to you now. Give him $10,000. Lu Ming responded to that landlord grandpa, and then turned back to look at Zhou Hang, signaling him to pay out the money. Although it was unclear what Lu Ming was doing. However, Zhou Hang still nodded, handing the $10,000 that he had previously taken out from the bank to that landlord. Looking at a large stack of cash, that aged landlord's eyes instantly glistened, hurriedly reached out and took the money over, counting the money with a smile that made his mouth close up. After counting the money twice, only then did the landlord hurriedly pull out his handwritten rental contract. Lu Ming signed Wu Peng's name where the tenant's signature was. In duplicate, this one is for you. I'll leave if there's nothing else. The landlord spoke with a smile on his face, handing over one of the contracts. After watching Lu Ming nod in response, he then hurriedly took the cash in his hand and left quickly. That appearance. It was as if he was afraid that Lu Ming would regret it. Lu Ming tore up the handwritten contract and casually threw it on the car. He put the pen he used to sign the contract into his pocket. Only then did he look at Zhou Hang. Let's go. Go and see where we'll land next. Stretching his back, Lu Ming then looked at Zhou Hang and spoke calmly. The words fell. He opened the car door and got out. Seeing this, Zhou Hang hurriedly followed. The two of them walked forward without haste for a distance of more than 20 meters before they saw the building in front of them. It was a small two-story building. The entire house was surrounded by weeds that looked to be more than a meter high. There wasn't a single household around it. It was so desolate that it was just like those old houses in ghost movies. Although it was a bit eerie, but Lu Ming was very satisfied. There were no households around, reducing the risk of exposure. At the same time, there was no obstruction around the house, and standing on the roof, they could see the roadside. If the police officers appeared, they would be able to notice and escape at the first opportunity. Brother Ming, how did you find this place? This is so much better than that factory building from before. I didn't even realize there was a house in here when I passed by the road. It's just that this house is also too eerie. There won't be anything unclean, right? Zhou Hang looked at the old house in front of him and first spoke excitedly. After all, this geographical location was really too suitable for them to use as a landing point. It was really not easy for the police messenger to find this place. However, looking at the house's dilapidated appearance, he couldn't help but feel scared in his heart again. The main reason was that this house did have a bit of a haunted house vibe to it. I saw the rental information on the internet. After looking at the location he provided on the map, I contacted the house owner. All right, you bring Mu Peng inside and keep an eye on him. I'll go get the ransom. Looming through the set of keys given by the landlord to Zhou Hang before speaking calmly. After saying that, he turned around and walked towards the van. Opening the driver's door, he sat in. Soon after, Zhou Hang then brought down Wu Peng, who was lying in the back compartment. Watch him well. If he plays tricks, shoot him in one shot. Big deal. No money. Lu Ming spoke with indifferent eyes. What appeared to be words with Zhou Hang was actually spoken to Wu Peng. After all, putting out the attitude that he could do without the money. It was believed that Wu Pang would be much more honest. As expected, as soon as Lu Ming said this, that Wu Pang was instantly shocked to the point that his pupil shrank and he nodded repeatedly. Brother Ming, you can rest assured that I'll do my job. Zhou Hang heard Lu Ming's words and also hurriedly patted his chest in assurance. That face was filled with a confident smile. Saying that, he kicked Wu Pang and rushed him towards the house over there. Lu Ming glanced at it, then also started the vehicle. The somewhat dilapidated van, traveling down the curved path driving the vehicle. Lu Ming frowned slightly, clearly thinking about something. He was very clear that although he had created a series of false impressions to interfere with the police messenger in the beginning, letting the police messenger mistakenly believe that Wu Peng was kidnapped in the outskirts of the city, 
but this man of his own had been following Wu Peng's car since the bar. So, the police officer naturally will not let go of this suspicion, and will certainly track down this van, as long as tracing, based on the license plate number of this car alone can also be traced to the rental car company, and in order to prevent the car from being stolen, the rental car company will generally install the vehicle positioning, that is to say, it won't take much time for the police messenger team to check on this van, therefore, this van has to be abandoned as soon as possible, however, in order to hide his previous whereabouts, Lu Ming deliberately drove the car around some detours. After driving the van all the way around and traveling about 20 to 30 kilometers, only then did he park the van on the side of the road. Then he walked nearly 2 kilometers on foot. Only then reached out and stopped a passing cab. Let the driver go to People's Square. It was not long after this cab Lu Ming took drove out. Two middle-aged men came to the side of the road. One was short, with a slightly bald head and a sharp tongue. One had a face full of horizontal meat and a big waist with a thumb-thin gold necklace hanging around his neck. Brother-in-law, is this person you contacted reliable? Don't let him call the police to arrest us both when the time comes. The shorter middle-aged man was carrying an LV Logo Cottage handbag. He was tired and panting. People are specialized in this business. Professional. Understand? Tens of millions of dollars of business have been done. Still care about us a few million? The tall and strong middle-aged man was also sweating profusely from the heat of the weather. He kept lifting his collar. Without good humor. He blankly glanced at the short man. Then why don't you drive? Brother-in-law, had to take a taxi. The short man forcefully lifted the bag in his hand. With a complaining tone, he opened his mouth. After all, this bag was less than a few dozen pounds, and he was the one who carried it all the way. And the burly man next to him was the one who was shrugging it off. What kind of car to drive? This all the way is monitoring. Photograph the license plate. You and I cannot run. Say you're an amateur and you still don't believe me. The burly man was a little annoyed by the question, and his voice couldn't help but rise a few degrees. The shorter man bristled with disdain. After thinking about it, he frowned and said, Brother-in-law, why don't you help me carry the bag? The dozens of pounds of watches in here. It's just too heavy. I can't lift it anymore. However, his words did not fall. The back of his head received a crisp slap. Are you stupid? Afraid that people don't know what we do for a living, right? If it wasn't for your sister begging me to take you on, I shouldn't have taken you on as a simpleton. If these things are found out, you and I will go to jail for at least 10 years. Be careful. Hurry up. The cab is coming. The hot-tempered burly man shouted at the other man. The short man was uncomfortable in his heart, but he only dared to mutter in a low voice to express his dissatisfaction. The burly man then raised his hand to stop a cab. With a smile on his face, he said to the driver, Master, go to People's Square. The driver glanced at the two men through the rearview mirror. Although looking at the two men they didn't look like any good people, but still drove towards People's Square. Case analysis room. After the abandoned warehouse also pounced, the police messenger went through the surveillance of the time period of the crime, soon found out that Lu Ming's van. Although, the information used to sign the contract when renting the car was not Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's ID cards. However, the team of police officers still checked this one vehicle. After all, they couldn't rule out the possibility of Lu Ming using someone else's identity to rent a car. According to the rental car company's location, the van that had been abandoned by Lu Ming was found on the side of the road. In this way, the previous conjecture was corroborated, but the police messenger's clues were completely broken at this moment, because, according to the CCTV footage along the way, this vehicle had stopped and gone to many places along the way, and most of these places don't have any surveillance. This greatly increased the scope of the search. There's not much time left for us, the kidnapper will be coming for the ransom soon, and by then, whether he gets it or not, the lives of the hostages will be in danger. Intensify the search. Don't let go of any suspicious places along the way. Chief Commander Fan Yun held a pen in his hand and circled all the places that needed to be lined up on the map. Only then did he frown and speak seriously, although it had been less than 10 hours since the report was received. However, he already had a certain sense of urgency. That's right, have the brothers at the Hilarity Mall keep a close eye on them. As long as the kidnappers dare to show their heads, take them down immediately. Taking a deep breath of cool air, only then did Fan Yun open his mouth to give the order once again. However, this order caused the junior captain at the side to be a little worried. Captain, if the kidnappers have accomplices, will we be threatening the lives of the hostages this way? Why don't we let the kidnappers leave with the ransom first, and we'll follow them along the way and find where they're hiding the hostages before giving the order to arrest them? That squad leader frowned and opened his mouth to voice out his concerns. After all, if the kidnappers were a multi-person operation, when the person who took the ransom did not return by the specified time, another kidnapper would most likely realize that something had gone east. 
By then, it is highly likely that they will directly strike at the hostages. For the safety of the hostages, the plan proposed by the junior captain was undoubtedly much more prudent. No way, the kidnapper's goal is money, and after the money arrives, the hostages will be in even more danger. Commander-in-chief Fan Yun categorically rejected the proposal of the police squad leader. The kidnapper's goal was money, and after the money was in their hands, who could guarantee that they wouldn't tear the ticket? Expecting every kidnapper to be as trustworthy as a certain Jean Brigand, it's unrealistic. After all, the reason why the Zheng name of the bandits to keep their word, for the next time the business is better, and now the robbers, only ready to do a job. Then the possibility of getting the money and tearing up the ticket is even greater. In this way, it would be better to directly control the kidnapper who came to get the ransom and let him drag his accomplices, then force out the whereabouts of the hostages, send out special task force members to rescue the hostages, then let's do what you said. Chief, I'll send some more manpower to the Joy Luck shopping center. The squad leader next to him nodded heavily. He then turned around and went to make arrangements. Joy Luck shopping center. As a relatively large shopping mall in Kunjiang city, this place was bustling with people coming and going. But the people who came to the mall today were exceptionally numerous. They were either chatting and laughing, or carrying large and small bags for shopping. Everything seems normal, but these people have a common characteristic, that is the eyes are always observing the surrounding, inadvertently always glance to the fountain in the center of the mall, and there at this time is standing a charming middle-aged woman. Next to her is a suitcase. At this time, she was always looking down at her cell phone, and the sales not far away that were promoting tea drinks, as if she was waiting for someone. Xiao Lu, go over and tell Wu Peng's mother to stop looking at me all the time. The police messenger who was disguised as a salesman promoting tea drink sales, lowered his head and spoke in a low voice to the microphone on his clothes. A lady pretending to come shopping, carrying a bag on her shoulder as she passed by Wu's mother, accidentally dropped the bag in her hand on the ground, taking advantage of picking up the bag, hurriedly reminded, don't be nervous, don't always look at our co-workers, this will reveal their position, try to relax. The lady finished picked up the bag on the ground, and naturally walked towards the inside of the mall. This was surrounded by dark sentries laid down by police officers. As soon as the kidnappers appeared inside the mall, the first time, the kidnapper could be pressed to the ground. Time passes little by little, but Wu Peng's mother's phone was late in ringing. Wu's mother, who had been worried about her son's safety, was so anxious that she had tears in her eyes. It was hard to sit still, stomping her feet from time to time. Just at this time, a beep finally came from her cell phone. Opening it, it was a text message from Lu Ming. Change location and arrive at People's Square within 10 minutes. Wu Peng's mother saw this message, hurriedly dragging the suitcase containing the money out of the mall. The police officers were surprised to see Wu Peng's mother leaving. It was good that the technical department monitored Wu Peng's mother's cell phone, knew the content of the text message she received. The kidnappers have changed the location of the ransom payment to People's Square. Those at the mall should not act rashly. Proceed with the disguise. The police messengers at the mall heard the instructions and did not immediately follow them. After all, this message was most likely a test from the kidnappers. If the kidnappers were now observing the mall from a short distance away, once so many people suddenly left, it would definitely alert the kidnappers that something had changed. By then, the hostage's life will be in danger. So, Chief Commander Fan Yun, at the very first moment, notified the police officers at the mall not to act rashly. At the same time, he informed the other team to change into civilian clothes. Head to People's Square. It was nearly two kilometers from the Joy Luck Mall to the People's Square. Wu Peng's mother dragged her suitcase out of the mall. Let the driver who has been waiting outside for a long time hurry to drive to People's Square. At this time, Lu Ming had already appeared in the center of People's Square. He observed the surrounding area and finally fixed his gaze on the building not far away. Afterwards, he walked straight towards that building. He had just left with his front foot when two middle-aged men one tall and one short, walked over to where he had just stood. Brother, did you ask what that person looks like? The short middle-aged man, panting, opened his mouth. The first time he came out with his brother-in-law to do this smuggling business, he really didn't have a clue in his heart, always afraid of being caught. After all, if he was caught with this bag of watches in his hand, he would have to sit in jail for seven or eight years. Asked, but people didn't say, let us wait at the fountain. Someone will come. The others are professionals, don't worry. The burly man was hot and panting, looking around from time to time. At this time, the short man saw Wu Peng's mother dragging her suitcase over from afar. He hurriedly elbowed his brother-in-law. Brother, people are coming, why is it a woman? The short man was thrilled to see Wu Peng's mother. After all, this dragged a suitcase and was in a hurry. At a glance, it looked like the appearance of coming to do business with them. 
look at that wimpy look of yours, never seen the world, it's the women who are not easily suspected. The burly man spoke disdainfully, his eyes glancing at his brother-in-law with contempt. Then let's give the goods to her now and take the money and go, right? The short man spoke eagerly. What's the rush? Do you know the rules? One has to confirm the identity of the other party first. Only then can we make a transaction. The burly man pulled his brother-in-law back. He opened his mouth in an unfavorable manner. Taking out his phone, he was ready to call the other party to confirm whether the woman in front of him was the object of their transaction this time. And at this time, in the public restroom in People's Square, a flower-armed man was swiping his cell phone while squatting in the pit. With a sparse sound, a look of enjoyment appeared on his face. But when he was about to get up to get some paper, his cell phone suddenly vibrated. He was startled. The cell phone slipped out of his hand. It fell directly into the toilet. What the hell? Looking at the cell phone inside the toilet bowl, the flower-armed man's face showed a difficult expression. Wanting to pick it up, he looked disgusted. Just then, the conversation that rang out outside made him unable to resist perking up his ears. I'll keep a close eye on it don't let anyone get away. How can I? As long as he dares to show his head, the first thing I'll do is press him to the ground. The flower-armed man hurriedly opened the door a crack, stealing a glance at the two people outside. With a twist of his eyeballs, a sudden realization dawned on him. In his heart, he was glad that he was lucky that he was delayed for some time in the toilet with diarrhea, did not go to the transaction. Otherwise, it would definitely have been caught by the ambush cops. The flower arm man waited until the people outside left. Frightened cell phone also do not want. Carrying a handbag with money and run. When he came out of the toilet, he almost didn't bump into the two police officers who were just conveniently in the toilet. He frowned. Frightened. He hurriedly reversed his direction toward the building next to People's Square. At this time in the center of People's Square, the burly man made several phone calls one after another, none of which were answered, putting the cell phone back inside his pocket, looking at Wu Peng's mother who was only a dozen meters away from him, secretly speculated, brother-in-law, did the call go through? The slightly shorter brother-in-law next to him, somewhat anxiously opened his mouth and asked, after all, this weather was really hot, standing in the square in the sun made him sweat all over, it was really hard, no, the other party is not answering ah, uh. the tall man stroked his chin in thought, it was also the first time he had encountered such a situation where the person kept not answering the phone. Could it not be this woman? Brother-in-law stretched his neck, took a glance, and opened his mouth in doubt. His brother-in-law had made so many calls, but this woman didn't move at all. It wasn't like the phone was on her. Shouldn't be. You see, inside that suitcase should be the money. And it's now 5 minutes and 3 seconds after the said time. Have you seen anyone else standing here besides this woman? The tall man, with a flurry of analysis, opened his mouth fervently. No, brother-in-law shook his head repeatedly, casting an adoring gaze at his brother-in-law, thinking to himself that this person in big business is really different. The brain is just good. Just don't answer it if you don't. I'll go over and give her the watch and bring the money. After his brother-in-law finished speaking, he was about to carry his bag over. But he was stopped by the tall man. How many times have I told you? Rules. We were able to guess her. Didn't she guess us? And pretended not to see it when she saw it and didn't even answer the phone. That can only mean one thing. Being careful is a good thing. People are observing. Observing whether the surrounding is safe and whether we are reliable. That's professionals. Don't act rashly. Stay calm. The tall man finished with a perky voice and took a seat next to the fountain. At this moment, in the building next to People's Square, Lu Ming walked into a cafe on the third floor. Finding a seat by the window, he ordered a latte. Turning his head towards the window, he looked out. He could just see Wu Peng's mother standing in the center of the square. Now do as I say. Walk over to the vending machine and buy a bottle of coke to hold in your hand. Lu Ming quickly edited a text message and sent it over. Wu Peng's mother picked up her cell phone and saw this one message. Not daring to have a moment's delay, she hurriedly dragged her suitcase and went to the vending machine not far to her right to buy a bottle of coke. Sitting next to the fountain waiting for the transaction of the two men. Seeing Wu Peng's mother to go. Hurriedly followed forward. After seeing her take out a bottle of coke from inside the vending machine, the tall man's eyes narrowed slightly and his face was a bit gloomy. Brother-in-law, what's wrong? The brother-in-law next to him opened his mouth in surprise, not understanding that the other party just bought a bottle of coke. Why would his brother-in-law's face become so ugly all of a sudden? Alas, people are laughing at us. The tall man sighed quietly. It was very self-condemning. For what? The short man was confused. In his eyes the other party clearly did nothing just bought a bottle of water. Look at what she's holding in her hand. Coke, coke, coke. Doesn't that mean we're ridiculous? It's probably because she knows that you've just been staring at her. This is a bit hard to get. The tall man frowned, 
rather chagrined. Then brother-in-law, what do we do next? The short man anxiously opened his mouth. Thinking about the first time he came out to do business with his brother-in-law, he went wrong because of himself. The heart was incomparably guilty. The other party is only giving us a downward spiral right now, and hasn't turned around and left yet, which means that it's still leaving us a chance to turn around. The tall man opened his mouth with conviction after analyzing it slightly. The two then dared to act even more rashly. Lu Ming, who was inside the cafe at this time, sent another text message asking Wu Peng's mother to keep dragging her suitcase around the fountain in a circle. She couldn't stop without hearing from him. Instead, he took the opportunity to observe the reactions and expressions of the people around him, most notably the eyes of the passers-by around him. After all, if the police messengers ambushed the surrounding area, they would naturally pay close attention to the actions and movements of the family members. Even if they tried not to look at the family members, subconsciously their eyes would still be cast towards the family members' side. Relying on observing the expressions of these people, Lu Ming could almost discern which of the people around him were police officers. Together with the two that have been following behind, a whole 38 police officers, is this Fan Yun not afraid of being recognized by me and directly tearing the ticket? Lu Ming picked up the coffee on the table and looked at the police officers who were disguised as ordinary people. Blowing the floating foam on the coffee, he murmured and opened his mouth. In his heart, he was pondering on how to take the ransom money while surrounded by police officers. But just as Wu Peng's mother was circling the fountain, the two men were also spinning after her. The kidnappers have appeared. Attention all teams. Not far away. The police messenger who was disguised as a cleaner saw the two men. Immediately notified the others inside the intercom. However, Fan Yun, the chief commander in the case analysis room, saw the video footage coming from the scene. However, he hurriedly called out to the police officer who was about to take action. Don't be in a hurry to make a move. The body types of these two people are different from the ones that appeared in the surveillance. It's likely that the kidnappers deliberately arranged to come over to test us. Hold steady for now. We've already located the kidnappers' location through our cell phones in the building right next to us. Fan Yun's reminder caused the police officers to come to a realization. Only then did everyone continue to hunker down and wait for an opportunity to move. The other group, on the other hand, began to rush into the building next to the plaza, searching for the kidnappers. The plaza fountain. After following Wu Peng's mother around and around, the two were really losing patience, only to see the tall man step forward. He blocked in front of Wu Peng's mother. I said sister, let's pay with one hand and deliver with the other. Okay, why is it so troublesome? Mocking me with a coke and circling around three times left and right. Aren't you tired in this heat? Now I'll ask you, do you still want the goods? The tall man wiped the sweat from his forehead and spoke without good humor. He had seen a lot of rules, but he had never seen so many rules. The phone does not answer even if, but also has been around the fountain. When this is the forbidden city temple of heaven, rest here to pray for blessings? Wu Peng's mother froze at the word. Hearing the other side asked if they want goods, immediately thought of Wu Peng. Two, I definitely want it. The money is in the box. Wu Peng's mother spoke warily. After saying this, she moved the suitcase in her hand toward. The two middle-aged men looked at each other, placing the bag containing the smuggled watches in their hands in front of Wu Peng's mother, pulled up the suitcase and ran. People Square. The technical department of the police force had just successfully located Lu Ming's cell phone signal. A group of police officers were about to go to the building next to the square to find the kidnapper in hiding. But just in the next second, someone was seen taking Wu Peng's mother's suitcase. In a flash, all the police officers rushed to action. A swarm of people rushed up to stop the two. Stop, move again and shoot. The police officers on the square removed their disguises one after another. They surrounded the two men. When the tall man saw that he was surrounded by police officers, he was immediately terrified. He ran as fast as he could. Because of the speed, the suitcase was loaded on the steps next to him. Both wheels were knocked out. The suitcase with five million dollars was more than a hundred pounds. Without the wheels, it immediately became heavy. However, as for this situation now, the tall man no longer cared about the money threw down the box and ran. The police officer chased after him. Passersby have to avoid. The entire people's square was a mess. In the building next to the square, Lu Ming, who was sitting in the cafe, looked at all that was happening in the square. He could not help but frown. A look of confusion filled his brows. Knowing that I'm in the neighborhood and putting on this show, what's the purpose? Lu Ming opened his mouth and murmured. The scene that had suddenly occurred above the plaza truly made him somewhat confused. However, he didn't intend to continue thinking about it either. Just now he had sent a message to Wu Peng's mother through his cell phone. Naturally, he also knew that his cell phone would be located. That was why he deliberately chose this building next to the square. This place had a wide view. The most important thing was that there were quite a few shopping malls and entertainment venues inside. 
Even if the police messenger located him through his cell phone, he wouldn't know which floor he was hiding on, it would take quite some time to find him, and this time was already enough for Lu Ming to get the ransom from Wu Peng's mother. But now the sudden emergence of the unexpected situation had completely disrupted Lu Ming's plans, the deployment of the police officers had all rushed out. If he continued to stay here, he was afraid that he would create a problem. Thinking about this, Lu Ming decided to make further plans. He put down the coffee cup in his hand and called the waiter over. After settling the bill, he got up and left. And the cell phone was also stuffed inside the gap of the sofa by him. It was also at this time. A flower-armed man carrying a bag walked into the cafe in a hurry. He brushed past Lu Ming, who was just about to leave. When Lu Ming left, his cool eyes glanced at the man with the flower arm. Then he walked to the elevator. He entered the elevator. But the elevator had just reached the next floor when several sharp-eyed police officers walked in. The elevator that Lu Ming was originally the only one riding in was instantly crowded with people. Faced with such a situation, even Lu Ming, who had always been calm, couldn't help but feel a little nervous. With so many police officers, if they found him, even if he was the god of elevator war, he wouldn't be able to escape. At this time, the flower-armed man came inside the cafe. He found a seat by the window and sat down. It just happened to be where Lu Ming had just sat. He raised his hand and spoke to the waiter. Waiter, come over here. Sir, may I ask what you would like to drink? The waiter spoke with a smile on his face. Give me a latte. By the way, can I borrow your? Because the cell phone fell into the toilet. The flower-armed man was about to borrow the cell phone from the waitress when he was about to do so. Suddenly, he felt something pinch him under his butt, turning his head to look. Surprisingly, it was a cell phone. Then immediately changed his words. No, just a latte will do. The extra is a tip. He pulled out $200 bills from inside his bag and placed them on the waiter's plate. Then he took out Lu Ming's cell phone that he had previously stuffed into the crack of the sofa. My damn luck is too good today. Really should go buy a lottery ticket. The flower-armed man grinned, quite happy. Flipping through the cell phone, he found that there was no password set. Then he immediately used his cell phone to dial the number of the boss who told him to come to the deal. After two busy sounds, the call was connected. Ah Chang, how's it going? The goods arrived, right? A hoarse voice came from the other end of the phone. The flower-armed man, Ah Chang, sniffed and first glanced around vigilantly, seeing that no one was paying attention to him. Only then did he hurriedly say, Boss, don't ask. Those two people are cops. I almost got caught. You hurry up and run with your things. Hearing this, the boss on the other end of the phone was startled. I don't know if it was anger or fear. Even his voice was shaking. Fuck, I told you. A few million dollar watch. Shit one million and agreed to go out. I thought it was a mountain gun. But it turned out to be a cop. Ah Chang, you also hurry to run. Safe and then contact. After the boss finished speaking, he immediately hung up the phone. Obviously in a hurry to run. At this moment, Ah Chang, who was inside the cafe, was worried about being arrested, and the outside was full of police officers. He naturally did not dare to leave the cafe, just wait for the wind to pass, and then go again. In his heart, he is glad that his luck is really great today. First, he had diarrhea in the toilet, just heard a police officer talking outside, after the phone fell into the toilet, in this cafe and picked up a cell phone, to report to their boss, it was like God's help in the underworld. Bored, he picked up that cell phone, started to play it, but when he saw the text message sent inside, the whole person was like being struck by lightning, as if petrified, froze in place on the spot, kidnapping, kidnapping, ransom, Ah Chang stuttered and opened his mouth, they sell smuggled things, the most they can be sentenced to 7 or 8 years, good behavior can also reduce the sentence, but this kidnapping, at this time, Ah Chang gritted his teeth, in his heart, he was already blessing the kind person who put the cell phone inside his bag. I can really end percent dollar hashtag at old man percent dollar hashtag and who the hell screwed me? This kidnapping screw up was going to be a gunshot. Panicked, he looked around, want to cry without tears, is ready to hand the cell phone, find a place to hide. Several police constables who came to search based on the location walked in. We are police officers. We now suspect that there are suspects hiding here. Everyone cooperate and take out all your cell phones, put them on the table. A leading police inspector, clapped his hands, shouted loudly, signaling everyone to take out their cell phones and place them on the desktop. When Ah Chang heard this, his entire body seemed to be sweating non-stop as if he was drenched in heavy rain. Looking back at the cafe's fire escape, subconsciously, he stepped back. The police officer who had just entered the door quickly noticed his unusual behavior, bypassing the people in front of him, coming towards him. Seeing this, Ah Chang turned around and ran. 
The police messengers hurriedly caught up with him while shouting inside the intercom. Suspect found in the cafe on the fourth floor. He is fleeing towards the fire escape. A minute before, the police officers standing inside the elevator looked at Lu Ming's back. It always felt somewhat familiar. A hand was already hanging in midair, ready to tap Lu Ming's shoulder. The atmosphere suddenly became unusually depressing. Quiet. So quiet that they could hear each other's breathing. And one of the police officers had already placed his hand on the handcuffs pinned on his waist, ready to strike at any time. But just at this moment, a colleague's voice came from inside the intercom. Suspect found in the fourth floor cafe. He is fleeing to the fire escape. A few people heard this and it was too late to question Lu Ming again. Only waiting for the elevator to stop at the third floor. They rushed out in a swarm. They wanted to block the fleeing suspect. Lu Ming saw that none of the police officers in the first elevator had left. Only then did he secretly let out a sigh of relief. Then he pressed the elevator button leading to the first floor. At this moment, Ah Chang who was about to escape from the fire escape, seeing the police officers running up from below, pushed to the brink. He turned his head to look at the window next to the building. Although the floor wasn't too high, only the third floor, but it was still dangerous to jump from here. However, the thought of being arrested, it was estimated that he would have to go in and squat for at least a few years, solely clenched his teeth climbed up to the windowsill. The police officers who followed closely saw A Chang standing on the windowsill, hurriedly shouted, Don't jump, dangerous. However, the words just fell. The flower-armed man, A Chang, had already jumped. The whole person landed on the air conditioning unit on the second floor and bounced. It was again caught by the rain shelter on the first floor, finally broke through the awning and fell hard to the ground. Not caring about the severe pain on his body, he bared his teeth and got up from the ground, limping, he fled down the alleyway. The police officers lay on the windowsill and looked at Keiko who ran away, glanced at each other, commending them in succession. See what it means to treat a drill as a real battle? How dedicated. It's almost 10 meters high. Jumping when you say so, just like a real kidnapper. It's just a drill. There's no need to play so hard to get, right? There's nothing to say. Admire it indeed. Hurry down and have someone go after them. A few police constables praised a few words, notified the police officers on the first floor. The news of the kidnappers escaping was then reported to Chief Commander Fan Yun. At the same time, those two men who were previously by the fountain had already run inside the vegetable market next to them. It was unknown where they had hidden. Case Analysis Room Chief Commander Fan Yun's face was grim when he learned of the news of letting the kidnappers escape. The muscles in his cheeks were tense, and he was obviously clenching his teeth. A police force of nearly 50 people still let the kidnappers escape. Is there any point in continuing this maneuver? Fan Yun, the Chief Commander questioned the people present with a stern tone. As he spoke, he directly threw the marker in his hand on the table. Obviously, such a result was a bit difficult for him to accept. The moment these words came out, the police officers bowed their heads in fear of touching Fan Yun's brow. Chief team, the main thing is that this kidnapper is completely desperate now. A floor more than 10 meters high, he just jumped when he said he would. A squad leader stammered and spoke. In his opinion, this was always a drill. There was no need to risk his colleague's life. If he dares, why wouldn't we dare? Since we want to treat this drill as a real battle, we have to see him as a real kidnapper. If we let the real kidnapper escape, do you know what the consequences will be? The consequence is that he goes back now and immediately tears the ticket. Let us collect Wu Peng's corpse for him. Chief Commander Fan spoke with a loud voice. The expression on his face as he spoke was extremely serious. After speaking, he took a deep breath of cool air before the expression on his face eased a few points. Originally, he was thinking of taking the opportunity to catch the kidnappers while they were taking the ransom, but he didn't expect Lu Ming to have helpers. Actually, thinking about it carefully, he had also entered a preconceived misconception. At first, he thought that there were only two kidnappers, but in reality, if this drill was treated as a real battle, he simply couldn't rule out the possibility that the kidnappers had other helpers. So, when two men who did not match Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's body types appeared next to the fountain, as well as the appearance of cell phone positioning information in the building next to the plaza. Fan Yun subconsciously ignored those two men, focusing the search on the building next to it. This was what caused when those two men took the suitcase in Wu Peng's mother's hand. The police messengers were simply too late to react. So, he also had an unshirkable responsibility for this arrest being so frazzled. Now eight hours have passed since the time of the crime. It is reasonable to say, after releasing Lu Ming, the hostages were in danger of having their votes torn. But if Lu Ming chose to tear the ticket, he wouldn't be able to win this maneuver. Therefore, the possibility of Lu Ming tearing the ticket would not be very high. However, the next step was only to wait. Wait for the search team to find out where the kidnappers were hiding the hostages. 
waiting for Lu Ming to demand ransom from the hostage's family again. But this time, the hostage's family may not cooperate with the police messenger. After all, the police have already let the kidnappers go once. It was much harder to gain the family's trust again. Inside the private room, Wu Peng was currently tied to a stool. Due to his mouth being blocked, he was only making whimpering noises. Zhou Hang, who was sitting on the opposite side, was a little impatient by his noise. Standing up, he walked forward, tearing the tape on Wu Peng's mouth. Can you be fucking quiet? Zhou Hang spoke viciously. That appearance was really like a murderous lord. Brother, can you give me some water to drink? I'm thirsty. Wu Peng licked his dry and cracked lips, only feeling that his throat felt like it was on fire. It was difficult to open his mouth. Zhou Hang walked to the side, lifted the teapot, and after pouring a cup of tea, it was poured down Wu Peng's mouth, only to see Wu Peng's lips just touching the tea. The whole person hastily dodged like an electric shock. Hot, hot, hot. Wu Peng quickly spat out his tongue, his mouth a little red and swollen from the tea. I forgot that this is freshly boiled tea. Zhou Hang laughed dryly and scratched his head. He then blew twice and started feeding Wu Peng water again, looking at Wu Peng's mouth that was scalded red. Zhou Hang was also too embarrassed to put tape on Wu Peng again. It just threatened viciously. Now I won't block your mouth, but don't scream, or else I'll shoot you with one shot. Zhou Hang finished and patted the gun above his belt. Only then did he return to sit across from Wu Peng again. Both eyes were once again staring intently at Wu Peng. Wu Peng was also sensible. After being threatened, he did not dare to yell out. Silence fell in the private room. After a short moment of silence, the two people who didn't sleep well last night, simply dozed off on the stool. This private room was in disrepair, and the creepers even blocked the sunlight outside the windows. Those old wooden furniture around them were full of stories. A cool breeze rushed in through the window. It blew that piece of creeper brush straight. The wooden door of the house creaked. Startled awake Wu Peng hurriedly turned back. Zhou Hang also hurriedly raised his eyelids when he heard the commotion and wiped off the saliva at the corner of his mouth. Brother, do you feel that this house is not too clean? Why don't you guys just change the place? The timid Wu Peng opened his mouth in a vain manner. The main reason was that this place was really too eerie. Even in broad daylight, it made people feel a chill on their backs. Hearing this, Zhou Hang glanced at him with disdain. Don't give me any wrong thoughts. See the gun in my hand? If you dare to scream or run away, within a hundred meters, I'll shoot you in the head. Zhou Hang weighed the pistol in his hand and returned with a threatening tone. On the other side, the two middle-aged men who had managed to hide in the vegetable market drilled inside a van selling vegetables, due to the fear of being caught. The two men never dared to show their heads. Then the food van slowly started, drove about more than half an hour, only then stopped a few hundred meters outside the Zhangjia village. At this time, from the driver's side of the car, two people came down. One of them was Lu Ming. I have to deliver vegetables to the city every day. This place is rather remote, so you can catch a ride with me if you want to go to the city in the future. The middle-aged man spoke enthusiastically. Thanks then, thanks to you for giving me a ride today. Lu Ming nodded with a smile on his face. What's the point of being polite? To be honest, I'm still overjoyed that my dad rented the house to you. From now on, we are all friends, so feel free to say anything. I'll go back first. We are now living in Zhangjia village a few hundred meters away over there. The road over there is blocked and the car can't go. So it just so happens that we are parked over here today. The middle-aged man finished speaking and parked his car on the side of the road. Then he left from the other road. This man was the driver that Lu Ming had accosted in the vegetable market, and had wanted to borrow his car to leave the People's Square side. He had wanted to borrow his car to get out of People's Square, but when he got into the car and chatted, he found out that he was the son of the previous landlord. Lu Ming then also took his car back, and in the middle of the private house Zhou Hang heard the commotion, climbed to the roof of the building to look this way. He saw Lu Ming get out of the car, but he didn't bring anything with him. Hurrying down the stairs, he ran over along the path. Where's the ransom? How come we didn't get it? Zhou Hang frowned and spoke. For Lu Ming to return empty-handed was obviously a bit of a surprise. After all, when Brother Ming made a move, it was rare for such a situation to occur. Lu Ming glanced around to make sure no one was there before he returned. Don't ask. The hostages didn't run away. Did they? Nope. It's fine. Zhou Hang spoke with certainty. Okay, then go back and talk. The two then followed the path back to the private house. At this time, the two middle-aged men who were trapped inside the carriage and couldn't get out, hearing the conversation between Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, they were overwhelmed with shock. More than an hour after Lu Ming left, the door of the carriage of the van parked on the side of the road was finally pried open by the short man with a stick. The two men hiding in the carriage jumped down. Brother-in-law, those two people just now seem to be kidnappers. Should we call the police? 
The short man remembered the previous conversation between Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. A wave of fear washed over him. A worried look still filled his face as he spoke. You're stupid, calling the police to arrest yourself? The tall man slapped his brother-in-law's head again and spoke with some hatred. They were hiding in the carriage just to hide from the police. Now calling the police. Wasn't that completely bumping into the muzzle of a gun by themselves? It was also at this moment. Perhaps he had eaten too much radish inside the car. The words just fell. The tall man suddenly couldn't help but fart twice. He frowned, somewhat embarrassed. Then what should we do now? The short man opened his mouth with a sad face, pinched up his nose as he spoke. His body leaned back, trying to get as far away from his brother-in-law as possible. This time, following his brother-in-law out to do business, he had even taken his wife's capital with him. Thinking of high risk, high return, after one job, he will go home to marry his wife. But I didn't expect to fall into the ditch for the first time. And even the capital fake watches were taken in, if not run fast, now is estimated to have been in the Bureau of Fingers, counting their own to be sentenced to a few years. The city cannot go. Now it is estimated that all of them are arresting us. This place is relatively remote. Let's hide for two days first. The tall man glanced around, thoughtfully opened his mouth, thinking that this neighborhood was relatively remote. Hiding here the police should not be able to find them for a while. As long as they wait for the wind to pass, then take the opportunity to escape back home, they will be able to rest on their laurels. Let's first see if there's anything to eat in this neighborhood. After eating radishes for a day, it's like I'm raising a frog inside this stomach. After the tall man finished speaking, he led his brother-in-law down the path. He wanted to see if there were any farmers in the neighborhood, so that he could take a sheep by the hand and throw a chicken to wrap his belly. After walking for about a few dozen meters, he finally saw a two-story residential building. The tall man was overjoyed. He hurriedly pulled his brother-in-law and hid in the corner. Go over and see if anyone is home. The tall man pushed his brother-in-law and instructed him to go over. He himself hid in the corner, sneakily looking around. Although the short man was 10,000 times reluctant in his heart, he didn't dare to go against his brother-in-law's words, only have to go over, lying on the courtyard wall, looking towards the house, see the yard inside the weeds, even on the stone mill are full of moss. Only then did he come back to the tall man and said, brother-in-law, no one seems to live here, no one lives here, then you can't even steal some food if you want to, however, the tall man was overjoyed at his words, he was worried about not having a place to hide, and saw that there was now an empty house, immediately drilled out from the corner, took his brother-in-law over the wall and entered, thud, the two jumped from the wall to the ground, at this time, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang who were on the second floor heard the commotion outside, they were startled, Lu Ming hurriedly raised his hand, signaling Zhou Hang to go get the gun while he crouched and crouched by the bed. He looked downstairs. Upon seeing the two men's appearance, he immediately recalled it. These were the two people who had followed Wu Peng's mother at noon, then glanced around again. Seeing that there were only these two people in the vicinity, he immediately frowned. He called Zhou Hang to his side and said in a low voice, These two people are police messengers. There is no one else in the vicinity. It seems that they are not sure that we are in the neighborhood. Wait for them to come up and tie them up together. Zhou Hang sniffed and nodded heavily. Subsequently, the two men loaded their pistols and guarded the door. At the same time, they glared viciously at Wu Peng, full of threats. The timid Wu Ping did not dare to make any sound at all, just shrinking his head and shivering. Brother-in-law, there really doesn't seem to be anyone here. If we hide here, the police messenger definitely won't be able to discover us. The short man cheerfully opened his mouth. While speaking, he pushed open the door of the room on the second floor. There was a creak. Just as the door opened, two guns were aimed at his head. The tall man behind him saw this. He fell to his knees with a thud. Don't shoot. I plead guilty. I'm willing to go to jail. The tall man fell to his knees and begged for mercy. He looked up just in time to see Wu Peng, who was tied up inside the room. A sudden realization dawned on him. Originally, it was you guys. He reached out and pointed at Lu Ming and spoke with a trembling voice. Obviously after seeing the hostages, he recognized that these two were the robbers who had been talking outside the car earlier. However, before his words fell, Zhou Hang took a step forward, grabbing his arm. He directly pushed him to the ground. Rope. Zhou Hang spoke in a deep voice, looming through the rope hanging on the door, only to see. Zhou Hang moved very skillfully and tied up that tall man five times, and Lu Ming didn't stay idle and tied up the short man as well. At this time, Lu Ming was also a bit confused. After all, these two people who suddenly barged in did not look like police officers. Just now, he had also heard them say something about hiding here so that the police officers wouldn't be able to find them. Then why had they appeared in People's Square before? In order to figure out what had happened, Lu Ming immediately interrogated them. Speak up, what do you guys do? 
Why are you hiding from the police officers? Lu Ming spoke with an undeniable tone and an icy voice. While speaking, that pair of hostile eyes looked towards the two. This gaze directly scared the two into a shiver. We are in the smuggling business. We really didn't know you were here. If we knew you were here, I wouldn't have dared to come even if I had a hundred guts. The tall man's voice trembled as he returned. Falling into Lu Ming's hands could scare him even more than being caught by a police officer. After all, being caught with their crime would only result in a few years in jail. But seeing the robbers kidnapping people, there was no guarantee that they would be silenced. Smuggling? Lu Ming opened his mouth in confusion. Instantly, he understood exactly what had happened. Thinking back to what the two had done in the square earlier, it should have been mistaking Wu Peng's mother for someone who was trading with them. It was also their appearance that had disrupted Lu Ming's as well as Fan Yun's plans. Lu Ming had never dreamed that he, the person who acted as a criminal, would one day meet a real criminal. However, now that he was also considered a police officer, he might as well take this opportunity to set a set of words from the other side. See if you can dig out the person above this criminal. It might even be possible to solve a big case. Who do you hang out with? Who is your big brother? Lu Ming spoke calmly with a cold expression. From time to time, he played with the gun in his hand. I don't have a big brother. The career has just started. Today is the first order. The tall man had tears in his eyes, and his voice trembled as he returned. The short man next to him heard this, doubly surprised. Brother-in-law, didn't you say you've been doing this for more than 10 years, and that I had to invest all my wife's capital in it? You give me back my hundred thousand dollars. The short man cried bitterly on the ground. Had he known it was like this, he shouldn't have invested all his money. It's been more than 10 years of work, but that's transportation. It's also almost. The tall man opened his mouth sheepishly. It was obvious that he had punked his brother-in-law. Looming saw that the two did not look like they were lying, putting the gun in his hand away. Walking over to the tall man, he squatted down. So it's little Yakuza, since you don't have a big brother to cover you. Just wait for death. Looming gently patted the tall man's face. He was about to turn around and leave. The tall man, who was scared white, hurriedly moved out of the way. I have, I have. Li Hongbing is my big brother. Li Hongbing, the one who engaged in smuggling in Kunjiang. He is my big brother. I have his phone number. Call him. The tall man was afraid of being silenced by Lu Ming. In desperation, he directly brought out his opponent's big brother in this transaction. In his heart, he thought how our business partners, the other side cannot even refuse to help themselves to say a good word. Right? P.S. Rating is too low. The author of The King Good Hard. So weakly ask for a wave of ratings. The authors greatly can give a five-star praise. Mama Mia. An hour and a half ago. Case analysis room. Chief Commander Fan Yun sat at the conference table, staring at the map on the table with a grave expression. At this time, the arrest operation on the People's Square side was still continuing. The kidnappers had directly escaped by jumping out of the window from the third floor, but hadn't completely shaken off the pursuit of the police agents. As far as the police team's deployment in People's Square was concerned, since the kidnapper had exposed his position, it wasn't easy to completely get away. However, for the pursuit dozens of kilometers away, all the commander-in-chief could do was to wait for the final results to come in. Of course he wasn't idle either. On top of the map on the table was marked the range area where the hostages were likely to be held after they filtered through the surveillance. While waiting, the commander-in-chief with a marker pen was screening these places again. According to the information they had, there was more than one robber who had come to fetch the ransom, and it was very likely that Lu Ming had found helpers. However, the hostages must not have appeared. In other words, the robbers moved the hostages from the abandoned factory building to abandon the car and leave. Lu Ming must have hidden the hostages somewhere in the middle. Although after capturing the kidnappers, the police team could try to force the location where the hostages were hidden out of the kidnappers' mouths. However, the commander-in-chief could not pin all his hopes on forcing the point of questioning the kidnappers. After all, if the hijacker kills and doesn't let go, or just say some fake locations to make the police team exhausted, they don't have that much time to spend. Chief Team the one who jumped out of the window to escape has been caught. Just as Chief Commander Fan Yun frowned and drew across on top of a location circled in a circle on the map, a squad leader hurriedly ran to the side of the Chief Commander and eagerly opened his mouth to report the situation. At the sound of his words, the Commander-in-Chief let out a slight sigh of relief. Finally, a kidnapper had been captured, so this operation by the police team couldn't be considered to have made no progress at all. Was it Lu Ming or Zhou Hang? The Chief Commander looked up at that squad leader. Although he had tried his best to keep his face as calm as possible, there was still an expectation in those eyes that was hard to hide. After all, once one of these two was captured, it would be a great progress for the police squad. Neither. The person who was caught is called Zhao Chang, a local of our city who was in jail six years ago for theft. 
According to him, he doesn't know Lu Ming. We found the robber's cell phone on him, but he said that the phone was just something he picked up at a cafe. The junior captain frowned and reported the situation he received as it was. Hearing this, the chief commander instantly frowned deeply. Where is that Zhao Chang person? There was silence for two seconds before the chief commander asked out with a raised eyebrow. At this moment, his face was filled with a puzzled expression. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were the people that the director had invited from the provinces to participate in the maneuvers, which meant that they should be unfamiliar with this city. The operation in People's Square. More than one kidnapper inexplicably appeared. Chief Commander Fan Yan only thought that it was the director who had assigned additional manpower to Lu Ming in order for the exercise to be more in line with actual combat. But if it was the director's additional manpower, how could it be someone with a criminal record? The brothers of Team 6 have already rushed back with their men. That squad leader hurriedly responded. Sniffing, the chief commander frowned and nodded. This matter really made him feel puzzled. However, if he wanted to figure it out, he could only wait until the captured person was brought back to the city council. Twenty minutes later, in the interrogation room, that flower-armed man Zhao Chang had already been brought to the interrogation chair and sat down. At this moment, he had a terrified look on his face, and his face still had scuff marks on it. Uncle police officer, you really arrested the wrong person. I'm not a kidnapper. He had just sat on the chair and was handcuffed. Zhao Chang then hurriedly opened his mouth to defend himself. However, the police officer didn't pay any attention to him, and after locking the handcuffs on, he quietly stood aside. At the same time, in the small room behind the one-way glass of the interrogation room, Chief Commander Fan Yan stared at Zhao Chang behind that glass for a few moments and frowned. Still, he went out of the small room towards the interrogation room. The live video of Lu Ming's last maneuver. Chief Commander Fan Yun had seen it many times before this one began. Lu Ming had used makeup techniques to disguise himself and managed to enter the hospital as a doctor under another identity. This was something that the chief commander was extremely impressed with. It was also because he knew that Lu Ming had such a skill. When Zhao Chang was brought over, the chief commander even thought for a time that this Zhao Chang could possibly be Lu Ming in disguise. However, after seeing Zhao Chang himself, this bit of doubt was dispelled. This Zhao Chang was too thin. There was almost no meat on top of his cheeks and his jawbone was very short, differing greatly from Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's faces. If Lu Ming and the two of them wanted to disguise themselves as him, it was estimated that they would only be able to cut their bones, and they would not be able to achieve the disguise effect at all with their makeup techniques. Crunch, the door to the interrogation room was opened. A nervous Zhao Chang watched as two police agents walked in, and seeing the shoulder badge of the leading one, Zhao Chang's heart thumped. Third grade police superintendent. This was a deputy bureau level cadre. The person who came to interrogate himself was such a big leader? If you don't explain yourself clearly, you can't guarantee that you will really have to eat peanuts directly. Leader. Leader, I was wrongly accused. I really am not a kidnapper ah. Before the commander-in-chief Fan Yun sat down, Zhao Chang rushed to explain without tears. The chief commander didn't pay any attention to him. He just sat down on the chair with a calm face, picking up the information on the table. He glanced at it. Zhao Chang. Arrested for theft six years ago and imprisoned for a year and a half. Why did you appear in People's Square? After reading the information twice, Chief Commander Fan Yan threw the file on the table before looking at Zhao Chang with a cold face and asking out. Treating a suspect, attitude naturally had to be taken out. Leader, I, I just went to People's Square to buy something. That Zhao Chang swallowed a mouthful of saliva before he opened his mouth with a somewhat less natural look. Earlier in the restroom, he heard the police messenger talking. Zhao Chang still thought that the police guards were there to catch them trading smuggled watches. At this time, he was caught. Naturally, he also knew that the police officers were actually catching the kidnappers. He himself was just picking up the kidnappers' cell phone, which was how he was mistakenly caught in the city office. Buying something? Just happened to pick up the kidnappers' cell phone again? The chief commander sniffed, slightly raised his eyebrows, and looked at Zhao Chang as he calmly spoke. When speaking, the face was a few points kinder. Right, right. That's it. Leader, I'm really. Zhao Chang hurriedly nodded his head frantically like a chicken pecking at rice. It was like being amnestied. The expression on his face relaxed quite a bit. In his heart, he pondered, worthy of being a leader. He hit the nail on the head. However, before his words were even spoken, the commander-in-chief, Fan Yun, violently slapped the table. Do you take me for a fool? If you just picked up the robber's cell phone and didn't have a ghost in your heart, what did you run for when you saw the police messenger? and jumped from the third floor window to escape. Your life is on the line, and you're telling me you just went to buy something? The chief commander looked at Zhao Chang coldly, speaking with a righteous face and a sense of oppression. At the sound of his words, Zhao Chang's heart thumped. Say, what's your relationship with Lu Ming? 
Before Zhao Cheng could speak, the chief commander once again spoke coldly, an oppressive aura, coupled with that irrefutable tone. Instantly, it could cause great psychological pressure. However, hearing his words, Zhao Cheng was a bit confused for a moment. Lu Ming? Leader? I don't know any Lu Ming. Are you guys mistaken? Zhao Chang opened his mouth with a confused expression. Lu Ming was a name he really had never heard of before. The chief commander's pair of deep eyes stared closely at the micro-expression on Zhao Chang's face. After hearing his reply, he slightly raised his eyebrows. What exactly did you go to People's Square for? Confess to leniency. If you give an explanation now, we can count you as having surrendered. The commander-in-chief was silent for two seconds before speaking again. His expression was extremely serious when he spoke. It gave people a feeling of not being angry and authoritative. The criminal police officer originated from him. The interrogation skills were still very strong, and between one and the other, he was able to quickly break down the criminal's psychological defense. I, I just went there to do some small business. Zhao Chang sniffed. The expression on his face was quite ugly. Swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Only then did he grit his teeth and swallow his words. With himself being arrested now, he knew that even if he bit the bullet and didn't let go, it wouldn't help. And if he has not been telling the truth, I'm afraid I can't get rid of the relationship with the kidnappers. And when it comes to the kidnapping case, the plot can be too serious. As soon as he heard that the explanation now can be counted as surrender, he was ready to tell the truth. Doing business? What kind of business? You don't want to say that you went to People's Square just to set up a stall, right? Hearing this, the commander in chief did not speak. Instead, it was the small captain on the side who coldly opened his mouth to ask out. I just, went to trade some smuggled watches, with someone, Zhao Chang scratched the back of his head before he coyly opened his mouth to tell the truth, hearing this, the commander in chief's brows instantly furrowed, he sucked in a breath of cool air and stood up, ready to leave, find two people to take a statement from him, and detain the person first, the case will be transferred to the criminal investigation team's side to follow up, before leaving the house, he looked at the police errand boy who was now next to the interrogation chair and opened his mouth to command two voices, that police messenger sniffed and hurriedly saluted in response. The chief commander nodded. Taking the squad leader with him, he turned around and left the interrogation room. Chief commander, do you think this kid is telling the truth? On the way back to the case analysis room, the squad leader followed beside the chief commander and tentatively opened his mouth to ask out. The chief commander sniffed and sighed slightly. Eight or nine is not too far off. He has a criminal record on him, and for that alone, he can't possibly be the teammate that the chief added to Lu Ming's team. He's a local, and according to the information we have, Lu Ming hadn't come to our city before the exercise, which means ruling out the possibility that the two knew each other before, and from the expression on his face as he answered the question, it indeed doesn't look too much like he was involved in the kidnapping case, while walking unhurriedly towards the case analysis room, the chief commander spoke calmly while doing so, he was the chief commander of the criminal investigation unit, and was naturally an expert level in terms of criminal investigation, when interrogating a prisoner, he was able to determine many things from the prisoner's micro-expressions. Therefore, when he asked the name Lu Ming just now, he had been paying attention to Zhao Chang's expression. From Zhao Chang's expression, he was basically able to determine that Zhao Chang didn't know the person Lu Ming. Of course, it was also possible that Lu Ming had intentionally not said his name or used an alias when he was looking for these associates. But the chief commander's short interrogation of Zhao Chang made him feel that it was unlikely that Zhao Chang was involved in the kidnapping case. It was likely that it was really just a coincidence. The operation at People's Square. The two men by the fountain took the ransom prepared by Wu Peng's mother. But judging from their size, it wasn't the two men, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang either. The suspects caught through cell phone location, and they have nothing to do with the kidnapping. Then where are Lu Ming and Zhou Hang? They didn't come to People's Square? Or did they come to People's Square in some way, but weren't discovered by the police team? The commander-in-chief was filled with worry. He had thought that by using this opportunity of the robbers coming to get the ransom money, he could end the maneuver. Who knew? Surprisingly, he hadn't even seen the faces of the two criminals, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. This feeling of being completely toyed with really made the commander-in-chief's heart quite upset. Back to the case analysis room. At this time, the various squad leaders and the police messengers from the technical department were all busy in their own ways. The chief commander clapped his hands and drew everyone's attention over. The suspect who jumped out of the window and escaped has been captured. And after interrogation, it's basically certain that there's no connection to the maneuvers. The abandoned warehouse swooped in. And Lu Ming and Zhou Hang then completely disappeared with the hostages. We haven't made any progress in the maneuvers so far, which isn't good news. Next, over at the technology department. First retrieve the surveillance near People's Square during the time period of our operation. 
I want to know whether Lu Ming and Zhou Hang arrived at the square or not, and if they did, when they left, inform the comrades over at the Wu family villa to try to appease the emotions of Wu Peng's family, and at the same time listen in on the family's cell phones to determine when the kidnappers will next demand ransom. Brothers from Group 2 and Group 5, follow the locations marked on top of this one map to conduct a sweep to see if there are any traces of the kidnappers hiding. The Commander in Chief's expression was serious, and his medium voice slowly echoed in the middle of the case analysis room. While speaking, his sharp gaze swept over all the police officers. Yes, the Commander in Chief's words fell. The crowd of police officers present responded in unison as they saluted towards the Chief Commander. Subsequently, then they each went to carry out the orders that the chief commander had just given. In the live broadcast of the police officer's perspective, watching the police guard's team's action in People's Square lose, and hearing the action orders just given by the general commander, a frenzied discussion began in the live broadcast room. The pop-up surged. It made the heat in the live broadcast room directly soar to a new peak. Ha ha. Laughed me to death. I guess the commander-in-chief didn't even think to death that the people they found in the People's Square were all personnel that had nothing to do with this maneuver. The police force can't say that there's no progress at all. Right. At least they caught an offender who was engaged in smuggling. Indeed. Carrying out an exercise that actually busted a real criminal gang. Commander in chief this deed is enough for the marketing number to blow a wave. This drill is truly wonderful ah. The wonderful thing is that it actually appeared something that Lu Ming and the chief commander were not expecting. The stupid thief mistakenly entered the exercise. Jumped out of the window to escape after or was captured. This even the drama are not the plot nah. Really is the reality then the TV is still wonderful? In fact, I still want to know. That smuggling criminal if he knows that he was caught because of a drill. He will be what kind of mood? Ha ha. This drill tells us not to pick up the cell phone dropped by others. Or else we will have to go to jail if we are not careful. The number of people online in the police officer's perspective live room was less than 100. 000 though. However, after seeing what happened to the tattooed man Zhao Chang, the audience was quite active. And most of the pop-ups at this time were poking fun at this matter of real criminals bumping into drills and getting caught. After all, this matter was really dramatic. It really deserved the saying that reality was far more exciting than the script. The commander-in-chief Fan Yun's order was given. The case analysis room began a new round of busy. The technical department retrieved all the surveillance footage from the cameras in People's Square. Using face matching, they searched for Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. However, because People's Square covered a large area, and as a commercial center, the flow of people was also extremely terrifying. Under such circumstances, even though the distribution of cameras above People's Square was already relatively dense, but it was still difficult to capture everyone's figure. In addition, many of the figures that appeared in the surveillance were wearing hats and masks, which was another great obstacle to face matching. Therefore, trying to find a person from amongst such surveillance footage was not an easy task. Chief Team, the flow of people in People's Square is just too big, and many places above the square are camera dead spots. If Lu Ming intends to avoid the cameras, it's probably hard to capture him. Shouldn't we think about checking from other directions? The small captain of the technology department looked at the computer for a face comparison for a moment. Only then did he walk over to the commander-in-chief. Frowning, he opened his mouth to give his suggestion. The current effort was undoubtedly looking for a needle in a haystack, and it was still uncertain if the needle was truly in this sea. Efforts in such a situation would most likely do nothing but useless work. The chief commander sniffed and frowned. Where was that Zhao Chang found? It was only after two seconds of silence that the chief commander looked at the other squad leader beside himself and spoke. He was the one who had previously reported Zhao Chang's capture to himself. It seems to be in the cafe on the fourth floor of Hyaming Mansion, next to People's Square. That squad leader thought for a moment before he hurriedly opened his mouth. The chief commander sniffed. His right hand clenched his fist and slammed it on his left hand. Zhao Chang said that he picked up the cell phone at the cafe. If this is true, one of those two kidnappers must have been to the cafe. Contact the brothers who are in People's Square Aftermath and hurry to the cafe to retrieve the surveillance video. You technical department. Take the cafe on the fourth floor of Hyaming Mansion as the center and retrieve the surrounding CCTV footage that we have access to, and determine as much as possible the route that the robbers took to leave. The chief commander opened his mouth rather excitedly. When he had given the order earlier, he had asked the technical department to check the entire People's Square surveillance footage. This was indeed too generalized. Not only was the workload too great, and it would hardly serve any purpose, the technical department squad leader's suggestion had instead given him a wake-up call. Since they could determine where Lu Ming had been, they would start checking from here. The goal would be too precise. Yes, the technical department squad leader sniffed and rushed off to convey the chief commander's orders with a response. The chief commander leaned against the conference table. Taking in a deep breath of cool air, he raised his wrist and looked at the time on his watch. 
Nine hours had passed since they received the report. The robbers didn't get the ransom though. However, as time passed, the threat to the hostages' life and safety became greater. Therefore, the pressure felt by the commander-in-chief was not small. Ten minutes later, the technical department received the surveillance video of the coffee shop that was transmitted back from the police messenger who was still making good over at People's Square. The chief commander and several squad leaders stood in front of a display screen as the footage began to play. Stop. Back up a little. Pause. Chief Commander Fan Yun commanded the technical department's police messenger and operated the playback of the surveillance footage. Eventually, it was fixed on the image of Zhao Chang and a person rubbing shoulders at the door. Looking at this person, the chief commander frowned deeply for a moment. Is this Lu Ming, or is it Zhou Hang? It doesn't match the photos we have at all either? Can it be that they really do have an accomplice? A squad leader next to him looked at the picture on the display and spoke with a rather puzzled voice. This person on the screen. It did look completely unlike Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. In the middle of the last maneuver, Lu Ming used his makeup skills to disguise himself as a medical doctor, even concealing himself from the hospital's director and successfully applying for a job as a doctor. The commander-in-chief wrapped his hands around his body, his eyes staring intently at the picture on the display. A calm voice rang out. When the crowd of squad leaders heard this, they all turned back to look at the chief commander in unison. They all knew about the maneuvers later than the chief commander. Therefore there was no time to do their homework. So, at this moment, when they heard the chief commander say this, they were all extremely shocked. Nowadays, makeup techniques could be so bullish, directly being able to transform oneself into the likeness of another person. He was sitting in the southeast corner of the cafe before, and Zhao Chang was sitting in the same position after he came in. From the surveillance footage, it does look like Zhao Chang picked up his cell phone after sitting down. Zhao Chang didn't lie. So this person is the robber. The chief commander took a deep breath of cool air and spoke seriously once more. While speaking, that pair of eyes sharp eyes were still dead set on the person in the middle of the surveillance screen. So is he Lu Ming? Or Zhou Hang? A squad leader gulped down his saliva before he asked out in a rather shocked voice. For the news that Lu Ming actually had makeup technology that could be described as face changing. Obviously they still had some difficulty accepting it for a while. Lu Ming is 182 tall, and Zhou Hang is 175 tall. I've just seen Zhao Chang, he's also around 175 tall, and the person in the video is a head taller than him. He's Lu Ming. The commander-in-chief raised one eyebrow, his face calm, and spoke with extreme certainty. These words exited. The group of squad leaders present all had their brows deeply locked in shock. At this moment, they were still somewhat incredulous that this person was Lu Ming. After all, the difference between this appearance and looming was simply too great. Intercept the photos on the surveillance video and perform a face comparison with looming. At the same time, the technology department determines this person's departure route through the surrounding surveillance footage. Since the robber's cell phone was left by him in the middle of the cafe, then even if he's not looming, he's definitely an accomplice of the kidnappers. By uncovering him, we'll be able to find where they're hiding the hostages. The chief commander stood up straight, his gaze leaving from above the display. After scanning the crowd present, only then did he speak in a loud voice. The words fell. The technical department's side was once again busy. Using makeup technology one is able to make oneself change one's face. Lu Ming, you're really good at this. After the chief commander exhaled a mouthful of turbid air, he once again looked at the picture framed on the display screen. The surveillance screen was always a bit blurry. Therefore, the chief commander might be able to recognize the made-up Lu Ming if he had actually run into him. But through this surveillance video alone, it was really impossible to see anything. However, he vaguely felt that this person was Lu Ming. For a moment, it was as if he saw hope. After all, once he was able to determine that the person who appeared in this surveillance was really Lu Ming, then it would be far too easy to draw out the next threads and try to find out exactly where he had fled to. P.S. Weekly ask for a wave of small gifts. There are readers greatly support it? Mama Mia. Case analysis room. After the commander-in-chief gave the order. The small team leader of the technical department hurriedly let his subordinate police officers intercept the surveillance screen and compare it with Lu Ming's photo. Above the computer screen, the numbers jumped. In the end, the similarity stopped at 70%. This person is really Lu Ming? Looking at the results after the face comparison, the technical department's junior captain murmured and spoke with a shocked face. The chief commander stood on the side, looking at the final result that appeared on the computer. His tightly locked brows stretched a few points. As long as it could be determined that Lu Ming had come to People's Square, then the next step would be to look for the route he left through the surveillance footage, following the vine to find the melon. It wouldn't be difficult to find where he was hiding. Chief Team, this Lu Ming is too good, right? A big man with makeup skills that can completely transform himself into another face. This can even be called demonic magic. 
Another squad leader on the side also came over to look at the data on the computer. Only then did he open his mouth in a rather shocked manner to exclaim. It wasn't that they hadn't seen strange and extraordinary people with various exaggerated abilities. Like there was a portraitist inside the provincial hall. Even according to the human skull can directly restore the appearance of the person in life. The accuracy rate could reach 90%. This is naturally much stronger than Lu Ming's makeup technique. However, he was a professional portraitist. He had spent his entire life studying these things, and with his outstanding talent, it was only reasonable that he had achieved admirable results. But on the contrary, Lu Ming, he was a big man who had been a soldier before. It was impossible to have too much time to study makeup techniques, right? Therefore, Lu Ming could possess such heaven-defying makeup techniques. Naturally, it made people feel very shocked. The similarity is 70%. Combined with this height, and the two points of leaving the robber's cell phone behind, we can basically determine that he is Lu Ming. Next, what we need to do is to find out the route he left, and follow the trail to find where the kidnappers hid the hostages. The chief commander let out a long breath of turbid air, the look on his face relaxing a few points. Only after standing up straight did he speak seriously with a serious face. As long as Lu Ming's evacuation route was locked in the surveillance video, then the police team would no longer be so passive. Moving a little faster, it could even directly end the maneuver before Lu Ming's next ransom demand. In the private house, at this moment, Lu Ming was sitting on a worn wooden chair. Zhou Hang, on the other hand, was standing on the side with his gun, staring viciously at the two people on the opposite side. The two smugglers who had mistakenly barged in were tied up and kneeling on the ground, and the tall one was looking at Lu Ming with a smile on his face. Brother, you see can you look at the face of my big brother Li Hongbing, let us both a way out? We are all children of the Jianghu, if you let the two of us go today, and if there is a place where we can be used in the future, we will definitely die by all means. After the tall man moved Li Hongbing out, Lu Ming took down the phone number, but did not call it. He just sat on the chair with a calm face and looked at them. The tall man only thought that Lu Ming knew Li Hongbing. After hearing the phone number to confirm that he hadn't lied to him, there was a bit of a dilemma. At that moment, he couldn't help but feel secretly happy in his heart. He didn't expect that the person he traded with this time would be so famous. However, this also made him couldn't help but be a little worried. If that Li Hongbing knew that the smuggled watches he was going to sell were all fakes, it was estimated that he would be in big trouble. It was good that those fake watches were all gotten rid of by the police officers. Li Hongbing couldn't possibly know that he was preparing to trap him from the start. What kind of shit Li Hongbing? In my brother's place, even if Li Hongbing's grandfather came, he wouldn't have any face. As the taller man's words fell, Lu Ming didn't open his mouth. He just remained expressionless as he looked at them, playing with the gun in his hand. Instead, it was Zhou Hang next to him. He directly stepped forward, spat, and spoke viciously. Those two people instantly shivered in fear at the words. Did you hear my brother's words? Li Hongbing isn't weighty enough. Is there anything else that's weighty enough? If there isn't, then get ready to hit the road. Lu Ming stretched and stood up, looking at the two men with a leathery smile as he opened his mouth. The words fell. He directly loaded the gun in his hand. The icy cold muzzle was pressed against the tall man's head. There, there, brother don't shoot first, I have other big brothers. Lu Wenjie, who makes in traffics and counterfeits in the South Lake District. He is also my big brother. We have always worked together. The tall one's eyes were dead closed, a face with an expression worse than crying. Feeling the cold touch of that gun muzzle on his head, he hurriedly opened his mouth in a loud voice and burst out the asshole who sold his fake watch as well. Lu Wenjie had been making and selling counterfeits for many years. He was also considered a famous number one in the city. Not enough. Lu Ming's cold voice sounded again. The gun that was pressed against the tall man was pushed a few more points harder. The tall man instantly shivered. Lu Ma Zi who was engaged in smuggling cigarettes over the north city gate and cells, over the east city, with a crying voice, the tall man almost said all the people he knew who could be counted on the road, it didn't matter if they were familiar with themselves or not, as long as they felt they could have some face, they all spat it out, afraid that if he said a second slower, his own little life would be gone, it's not enough, Lu Ming spoke again, a pair of eyes were filled with hostility, and the short man kneeling next to him couldn't help but shiver, the tall man instantly collapsed, a rough face was covered in teardrops and snot, brother, you just spare me, I'm really just a little Yakuza, I don't want to die yet. The tall man's psychological defense had completely collapsed and directly cried out loudly. While crying, he also crazily begged for mercy. However, Lu Ming sniffed but squatted down and patted his shoulder. If you shut up now, I can consider sparing your life. Lu Ming frowned, he spoke in a calm tone. After all, this bastard was truly too noisy. Although this house was a few hundred meters from the nearest village, 
it was unlikely that his cries would attract anyone. However, that cry shook Lu Ming's eardrums. If Lu Ming was really a kidnapper, he would probably consider shooting him directly, so that the world would be quiet. However, his identity as a kidnapper was fake. The guns were all just blanks, and shooting wouldn't solve the problem. I shot up. I shot up. Hearing Lu Ming's words, the tall man hurriedly gritted his teeth to stop crying. Frantically, he nodded his head at Lu Ming in response, with that ability to put and take away. Lu Ming couldn't help but raise his eyebrows at the sight. Aren't you kidnapping for wealth? How much do you want for the lives of the two of them? I'll buy it. And when you demand ransom, just ask my mom directly. Killing people is not good for you guys either. It was also at this time that Wu Pang, who was tied up not far away, opened his mouth. Although he was more fearful of the two kidnappers, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. However, when he spoke, he also still clenched his teeth and braced his guts, making himself look as tough as possible. The moment Wu Peng's words left his mouth, the few people in the middle of the room all turned around to look over. Brother Ming, sorry, when I fed him water earlier, it swelled his mouth, so I didn't seal it up. Zhou Hang scratched the back of his head and took the lead in opening the short silence. While speaking, it was ready to walk over and seal Wu Peng's mouth up again. However, Lu Ming pulled his sleeve and stopped Zhou Hang's move. Let me introduce you guys. This is the Golden Rock Group's young proprietor, Wu Peng, and his father is the chairman of the Golden Rock Group. People's old dads, they're weighty enough than those big brothers of yours, right? But in my case, it's still not good enough. But since he's willing to pay for your lives, you two won't have to die for a while. Thank him properly. Lu Ming put one hand on the tall man's shoulder, and with the other hand, he held the gun and pointed at Wu Peng who was not far away. Leisurely, he opened his mouth. The words fell. He stood up and placed the gun in his hand back on the table. Thank you. Thank you. The tall man who had come back from the dead after hearing Lu Ming's words, he who was already kneeling, rushed to turn around and cowed out two times fiercely towards Wu Peng. After all, this was a true life-saving favor. That Wu Peng looked at the scene that was happening in front of him and smiled somewhat awkwardly, sort of responding to the other party's kowtow. In fact, he didn't really want to save these two smugglers. It was just that he thought that if the kidnappers killed someone, after carrying a human life on their backs, they would probably be even more vicious. The likelihood of tearing the ticket after getting the ransom would also be greater. Therefore, it was said to be saving these two unrelated people. It would be better to say that it was in self-preservation. In the suite on the top floor of the hotel, Wu Dong watched everything that was happening in the robber's perspective livestream through the huge screen. A pair of pale eyes were filled with hot tears. The assistants saw the situation. Hurriedly handed over two tissues. This brat, finally a bit of growth. It seems that this exercise really wasn't arranged in vain. It's worth spending as much money as possible. Wu Dong took the tissue in his hand and wiped the tears from the corners of his eyes. He opened his mouth in a rather gratifying manner. Obviously, for Wu Peng's performance just now, he was extremely satisfied. Yes, little Peng he was actually willing to stand up for the lives of two strangers. It has indeed changed. The assistant stood at the side and with a smile on his face, he opened his mouth to echo a cry. However, hearing his words, Wu Dong was coldly snorting. Bullshit standing up for two strangers' lives. This kid is doing it for himself. He's afraid that after the kidnappers kill the two people, the likelihood of getting the ransom and tearing up the ticket will be greater. He stabilized the kidnappers and saved the lives of these two people, leaving room for the kidnappers to circle back, which is also more favorable to him. Squeezing the tissue in his hand into a ball and throwing it into the trash can next to him, only then did Wu Dong open his mouth with a calm face. It was said that knowing one's son was like fathering one's son. The little bit in Wu Peng's heart, even through the screen, Wu Dong could see it clearly. This, hearing Wu Dong's words, the assistant's mouth twitched slightly, a face full of embarrassment. Standing in place, he didn't know what he should say for a while. There's nothing bad about it. At least this proves that this kid's mind isn't all mush. He's starting to use his brain. The maneuver is even useful. Besides, egoism is good. Businessman, if you want to hold on to this part of Jean Peng's industry, you can't be a womanizer. Wu Dong picked up the teacup on the table and took a sip of tea. Only then did he speak leisurely. He was a businessman, a capitalist. Therefore, for the fact that Wu Peng's act of saving people was actually for his own survival, he did not feel anything bad. On the contrary, the fact that his own son was able to do so was precisely the point where he was pleased. In the private room, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang walked to the window and looked at the situation outside. It's all been filmed, right? Picking up a bottle of mineral water, Lu Ming unscrewed the cap and took a sip. Only then did he look sideways at Zhou Hang and ask out. Before, he had intentionally set that smuggler's words, so naturally he had to leave a bit of evidence behind. While controlling the two men, 
Lu Ming searched out the cell phones on them and gave Zhou Hang a wink as he handed them over, with the tacit understanding of the two men. What Lu Ming meant, Zhou Hang naturally understood instantly. Therefore when placing the cell phone on the table, while opening the camera, he adjusted the position just enough to be able to capture everything that had just happened clearly. You can rest assured that I'm doing my job. It was filmed so clearly. I didn't expect that kid to explain so much. Brother Ming, you said we've given this side of the city council so much credit. Mustn't we give some rewards or something after the exercise? Even if there's no reward, treating us to a meal is still something we should do. Zhou Hang cheerfully opened his mouth. As he spoke, he handed Lu Ming the cell phone that had taken the video. The cell phone belonged to the tall man and didn't have a password lock set on it. Lu Ming had also discovered this after searching the phone before directly giving it to Zhou Hang. He opened the phone and looked at the video. Although the picture wasn't quite as high definition, it was sufficient as evidence. Only then did Lu Ming nod with considerable satisfaction. We've tossed their city council's team around enough. Even if we invited you to dinner would you dare to go? Lu Ming looked at Zhou Hang with a smile on his face and spoke, patting his shoulder as he spoke. The words fell. Lu Ming then directly turned around and walked towards the table over there. Hearing you say that, even if there's a meal, it would have to be a Hongmen banquet, then I really don't dare to go. Zhou Hang frowned, obviously savoring Lu Ming's words. He patted his head with an expression of sudden realization. He skimmed his mouth as he spoke. After speaking, he hurriedly followed Lu Ming and walked over to the table, only to see Lu Ming pull out a map. Grabbing a marker pen on the table, he frowned again and began to study the map. Zhou Hang reached out and scratched the top of his eyebrows. He didn't know what Lu Ming was still studying the map for. Wasn't this hiding place they were in now quite good? It was hidden. There weren't many people nearby. How could the police team find this place so easily? Pack up our things, let's get ready to withdraw. Just as Zhou Hang felt a bit bored and was about to turn around to find something to eat, Lu Ming spoke calmly. As he spoke, his pair of eyes were firmly fixed on the map. However, his tone was quite serious. Withdrawing? Brother Ming? Didn't we just rent this place this morning? The rent of $10,000 was paid, and we're pulling out so soon? Zhou Hang looked at Lu Ming, extremely shocked. He opened his mouth. Such a good hiding place, to give it up just like that? Of course, it wasn't impossible to give up. But the $10,000 of rent that was paid in the morning, it was only a few hours of hiding time, and then it was withdrawn? Zhou Hang is really heartbroken that a large sum of money, after all, that was several months of his salary. Lu Ming was spending money like this, and if the city council over here didn't reimburse him after the exercise was over, Zhou Hang estimated that he would be so angry that he wouldn't be able to sleep for two nights. I originally planned to hide here until the end of the maneuvers as well, but the ransom matter has disrupted my plans. There's a good chance the police messenger will find this place, so we can't afford to be unguarded. Pack up! Lu Ming calmly responded to Zhou Hang. He didn't even raise his head as he spoke, still staring at the map on the table, writing and drawing. Lu Ming wasn't really sure if the police messenger could definitely find this place. However, he was already a cautious person, so as long as this matter was not unlikely in his mind, he definitely had to respond. Zhou Hang sniffed. After hurriedly nodding, he went to pack his things as Lu Ming requested. He had unconditional trust in Lu Ming. The main reason why he had been shocked to ask just now was because he was heartbroken about the $10,000 in rent. Now since Lu Ming had said the reason, then he naturally rushed to do as he was told. Hijacker's Perspective Livestream At this time, looking at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang surprisingly prepared to change hiding places again, the viewers were all discussing it enthusiastically. There's one thing to say, isn't Lu Ming being too cautious? Right now the police messenger hasn't even found their hiding place yet, and he's preparing to withdraw again. Indeed, it's only been a few hours, it's changed a few places, he's not tired I'm tired just watching. This is the reason why you guys can't do great things. People call this being careful to sail a boat for 10,000 years. That's right, if it was according to your ideas, you would have been caught in the abandoned warehouse. I Lu Ming greatly deserves to be the strongest robber in history, always one step faster than the police team. The police team has not yet come, he is ready to withdraw. I have to say, watching Lu Ming's maneuvers is just awesome, because he is always able to think ahead of the police team and seems to always be leading others by the nose. Brothers upstairs don't blow hard, okay? This time when Lu Ming went to get the ransom, didn't all the plans get messed up? No way. Can this even be hacked? The ransom didn't go smoothly. And it wasn't because of the inexplicable intrusion of these stupid thieves? Ha ha. I wanna laugh when you guys talk about these stupid thieves. This stupid thief is really miserable. The deal was inexplicably caught. And after escaping, he also fell into Lu Ming's hands. Although it's funny, I also quite sympathize with them. To have fallen into Lu Ming's hands. This is a fake kidnapper. 
but it's much more terrifying than a real kidnapper. Who would have thought that Lu Ming was invited to participate in an exercise, and even helped someone solve a big case along the way? We can't say it's a big case either. Isn't it just two people selling smuggled watches? They can only be called petty thieves. It's not true that they are petty thieves, but after falling into Lu Ming's hands, how many people did they give up? Ten must be there. Indeed, those big brothers he mentioned, pulling out the carrots and bringing out the mud. At least a dozen dens can be smashed. Lu Ming is definitely the first credit. I'm quite curious. They confessed so many people in such a situation. Whether it is considered to be a meritorious offense, can the sentence be reduced? Ha ha. Whether the sentence can be reduced or not I don't know. I only know that they are miserable. All the big brothers have been offended. The pop-ups roll through the live broadcast in black, proving the fire of the robber's perspective live broadcast. At this time, the number of online viewers in the live broadcast room had already reached as many as one and a half million. Lu Ming's brilliant performance in the middle of this maneuver, coupled with the smuggler who had mistakenly barged in, making this exercise fun and interesting, it naturally exploded again online, attracting even more viewers. A large number of audience influx at the same time. The number of gifts in the live broadcast room also skyrocketed by a wave. Half an hour's time, directly skyrocketed millions of gift income. However, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were unaware of everything that happened in the live broadcast room at this time. City Bureau, Case Analysis Room. After a period of waiting, the technical department side finally determined Lu Ming's departure route from People's Square based on the surveillance video. Chief Team, after Lu Ming left the cafe, he detoured all the way from the square into the vegetable market. Although he dodged the cameras along the way as much as possible, there were still quite a few clues that were captured. This was captured by the camera at the entrance of the vegetable market. The face is still relatively clear. It can be determined that it's Lu Ming after the disguise. There are cameras at the entrance and exit of this vegetable market in People's Square. According to the surveillance footage from these cameras, Lu Ming hasn't come back out since he went in. The small captain of the technical department stood beside the commander-in-chief. Reporting all the information that the technical department's personnel had grasped after exhausting the surveillance footage. Hearing the words, the chief commander nodded seriously. His eyes also fell on top of the entrance to the food market in the screen image. Chief commander, do you think it's possible that Lu Ming is still hiding in the middle of the food market? Right now, over at People's Square, there are still brothers from Group 6 making good. Should we blockade the vegetable market first? The small captain of the technical department looked at the silent commander-in-chief and tentatively opened his mouth to give his thoughts. However, it was only then that he spoke. The chief commander then shook his head. Lu Ming isn't a sitting duck like this. If he had stayed hidden there after ducking into the food market, he wouldn't have been called a highly intelligent robber by the netizens. He must have run away. I just don't know exactly in what way he left from the vegetable market. Chief Commander Fan Yun took a deep breath of cool air and responded while tapping his fingers on the desktop. Obviously. He was thinking about Lu Ming's method of departure. Can you determine that this vegetable market doesn't have any other exits besides the two entrances and exits with cameras? A moment of silence. Only then did the chief commander raise one eyebrow and open his mouth to ask out. Can you determine that this vegetable market is relatively closed? Other than the two entrances at the front and back, it's surrounded by a fence with a roof above. The small captain of the technical department hurriedly responded with a voice. The chief commander nodded, raising his head. He once again looked at the surveillance image of the entrance of the food market that was being played on the screen. People were coming and going in the middle of the screen. Where are the vehicles? Are there any vehicles coming in and out of this food market? Just after looking at it for two seconds, he suddenly turned back to look at the small captain of the technical department again and asked. This vegetable market is right next to People's Square. Next to it is basically a pedestrian street. And most of the vehicles are parked in the underground parking lot of People's Square. On the contrary, there are food delivery trucks that occasionally enter the vegetable market to deliver food. Listening to the commander-in-chief's questioning, the small captain of the technical department hurriedly responded. But just after he finished speaking he also reacted immediately. A food delivery van. This was the most perfect way for Lu Ming to leave the vegetable market without appearing in the surveillance footage. Hurry up and check. I want information on all the vehicles that entered and left the vegetable market after Lu Ming entered it. The chief commander rushed to speak. And as he spoke, there was a hard-to-conceal excitement on his face. After all, he himself was now getting closer and closer to Lu Ming. From the time he received the report until now, it was only 10 hours out. As long as you find out which car Lu Ming is traveling in, he would be able to catch him through the surveillance. If we want to catch him, we'll be able to end the drill. It wouldn't take too much time. Yes, the technical department's squad leader responded to the chief commander. Then he hurriedly instructed his men to check the vehicles that entered and left the food market during that time period. In the private house, 
Lu Ming stared at the map on the table with a calm expression for a long time before putting down the marker in his hand. With his eyes closed, he reached out and pinched his brow, exhaling a long breath of turbid air. Brother Ming, do you want to rest for a while first? Zhou Terminal was at the side, looking at Lu Ming's state at the moment. He couldn't help but speak with concern. There weren't many things they needed to pack. Therefore, Zhou Hang had already packed up in just a few minutes. It had been standing by the side waiting for Lu Ming. I can still hold up. Let's go. I guess it won't be long before the police messenger notices this place. Lu Ming moved his neck. After calmly speaking to Zhou Hang, he stood up. In nearly 30 hours, he had only squinted in the car for a total of half an hour. He was indeed very tired, but now was not the time to rest. Putting away the map that had a lot of things drawn on it, Lu Ming didn't leave immediately. Instead, he picked up the tall man's cell phone and dialed a number. In the case analysis room, the small captain of the technology department handed over the data that had just been tallied to the chief commander. Chief commander, it's all checked out. After Lu Ming entered the vegetable market, there were a total of six vegetable delivery vans that came out of the market. At the same time the chief commander received the documents. The technical department squad leader opened his mouth to report the basic situation. The chief commander nodded, flipping through the pictures of those six vans in the middle of the file as well as the license plate numbers. No surveillance screenshots of the driver's cab? The chief commander finished reading the document. Only then did he raise an eyebrow and ask in a rather puzzled voice. The surveillance screenshots of the six vans in the middle of this document were all screenshots of the rear of the vehicle. Even though the license plate numbers could be seen, the surveillance cameras are all directly above the food market and the vehicles are coming out of the food market, so they can only take pictures of the wagons and the rear. But tracking the license plate number, from the surveillance cameras on the road, there should be ones that can capture the driver's side, but it will take a bit more time. The small captain of the technical department seriously opened his mouth to respond. After counting the trucks that came out of the food market, he had already instructed his men to trace the license plate numbers. It was estimated that it wouldn't take long to have news. The commander-in-chief sniffed and nodded. Placing the document in his hand on the table, he imperceptibly exhaled a mouthful of turbid air. At this moment, he himself was already getting closer and closer to Lu Ming. The nerves that had been tightened due to the immense pressure couldn't help but relax a few points as well. Head, there's a discovery. Just at this time, a police messenger from the technical department sat in front of the computer and looked at the chief commander and the technical department's junior captain and opened his mouth. The two hurriedly walked over quickly upon hearing this only to see that the picture on that computer screen was fixed on the cab of a van. The picture wasn't exactly blurry. It was able to clearly see the two people in that cab. That's him. Looking at the figure on the passenger seat, the junior captain of the technical department spoke rather excitedly. The chief commander at the side nodded. A smile that was hard to hide also surfaced at the corner of his mouth. Finally found you. Taking a deep breath of cool air, he slowly exhaled. The chief commander murmured his opening in a low, inaudible voice. At this moment, he was also quite excited in his heart. After all, this was considered to be the biggest progress of the police team so far in this maneuver. He could vaguely feel it. There was already only one step away from ending the maneuver. Check down after this one vehicle and see where it ended up going. Right. Right now we can't rule out the possibility of Lu Ming having gotten off midway to switch to another vehicle. Everyone put more care and keep an eye on this one vehicle. In his excitement, the chief commander also hurriedly opened his mouth to give the order. The crowd of police officers from the technical department sniffed. With a response, they hurriedly tracked the direction of the van Lu Ming was traveling in through the surveillance footage along the way. The CCTV was fast forwarding at four times the speed, and the computer screen was filled with traffic. The police officers from the technical department stared at the screen without changing their color. They were all rigorously trained. Therefore the four times speed of the surveillance screen would not be missed anything in their eyes. It only took ten minutes. The police officers from the technical department had already tracked down the section of the road where this van had disappeared from the surveillance footage. Report, the van finally disappeared at the 408 to 438 section of the Hustle Sky First Class Highway. The police messenger who had tracked the van hurriedly opened his mouth to report the situation. The commander-in-chief raised an eyebrow, hurriedly picked up the map on the conference table, checking that section of the road. Section 408 of the Hustle Sky First Class Highway, that was a national highway in the suburbs because there were very few traffic accidents. There were very few cameras distributed along this section of the road. He disappeared into the 408 to 438 section of the road. That is to say, the cameras on the 408 road section took pictures of the truck, but the cameras on the 438 road section didn't see the truck appear. He got off the state highway within those 30 kilometers. From the map, next to this 30 kilometers of national highway, there are a total of five villages, each of which is not a small area. 
looking at this area. But Commander in Chief's brows locked a few points deeper. It was because in the morning, they had lined up Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's trajectory of driving the van through the surveillance and guessed the locations where the robbers were likely to hide the hostages. This area was being among them. Can you confirm that Lu Ming didn't get out of the van before it disappeared? The chief commander circled all of that area on the map with a red marker. Only then did he frown and look at that technical department police officer and ask out. It can be determined. This truck did not deliberately avoid the cameras in the city. Basically the whole time can leave a trace in the surveillance video and did not see any personnel getting out of the vehicle. That technician hurriedly responded. Sniffing, the commander-in-chief nodded. His eyes returned to the map. Five villages. If they were to be searched one by one, the labor and time consumed would be too great. Was there a way to narrow down the search some more? Check the license plate number of the truck. See if you can find the owner's information. After pondering for two seconds, the commander-in-chief's eyes landed on the photo of the license plate number that the small team leader of the technical department had just sent. The business of delivering food was basically done by locals. Therefore, this one van disappeared near this village. It was very likely that he was someone from these villages. And since Lu Ming didn't get out of the car, it was highly likely that he was also hiding in these villages. The owner's name is Zhang Wei. He's from Zhangjia village. Not long after the commander-in-chief's words fell, the police messenger from the technical department over there had already pulled up the owner's information through the license plate. On hearing this, the chief commander's gaze fell on the Zhangjia village in the middle of the red circle on the map, a highly probable reason. This was where Lu Ming was hiding. The chief commander took a deep breath of cool air and placed the marker he was holding in his hand on the table. However, just as he was about to give the order for people to go to Zhangjia village to search for the two kidnappers, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, the walkie-talkie on the table suddenly rang. Report, chief team, Wu Peng's mother's side is suspected to have received a call from the robbers. Amidst the intercom, the rather urgent reporting voice of a police officer on the Wu family villa's side rang out. The robbers basically changed their phone number with every call. Because of receiving calls from unfamiliar numbers, they could only say that it was a suspected robber call. They couldn't be sure if it was a robber or not. Roger. The commander-in-chief hurriedly picked up the walkie-talkie and responded. At the same time, he gestured and signaled the police officer from the technical department to open the eavesdropping software previously installed on Wu Peng's mother's cell phone. Soon. The phone over there was connected. Hello? The first thing that rang out was the anxious voice of Wu Peng's mother. At the same time when the phone was connected, the fingers of the police officer from the technical department were already rapidly tapping on the keyboard. Attempts were being made to obtain the location of the kidnappers through cell phone signals. Mother Wu, it seems like you really don't want to see Wu Peng being able to return in one piece now. How dare you choose to call the police? Could it be that in your eyes? This little life of Wu Peng is not worth five million dollars? The other end of the phone was silent for two seconds. Only then did Lu Ming's ice-cold voice ring out. The words were full of threatening implications. I, I, as long as you don't harm Wu Peng, the matter of ransom is negotiable. I can pay more ransom. Lu Ming's words had only fallen. Wu Peng's mother's urgent voice then rang out. Obviously, she was very afraid that the robbers would do something to harm Wu Peng. Listening to the incoming conversation, the commander-in-chief couldn't help but frown. His face not looking good. The operation in People's Square had failed. Plus, the kidnappers had terrorized Wu Peng's mother a bit. Estimation. Wu Peng's mother's trust in the police force would be greatly reduced. And the next time the robbers demanded a ransom, they would want her to cooperate with the operation. Estimates are already unlikely. Because of this, the police contingent had to take down the kidnappers and end the maneuver before the kidnappers demanded the next ransom transaction. The good thing was, now that he had grasped Lu Ming's hiding place, there shouldn't be much of a problem trying to take him down before a single ransom transaction. Prepare $30 million in ransom before 6 o'clock in the evening. I'll contact you when the transaction location arrives. Mother Wu, this will be your last chance. If I see the police messenger again at the time of the transaction, you'll be waiting to collect Wu Peng's corpse. An icy voice rang out without haste. After saying that, he then directly hung up the phone. Listening to the busy sound coming from the middle of the phone, the chief commander hurriedly turned around to look at the police messenger from the technical department over there who had been tracking the kidnapper's cell phone signal all morning. The police officer made an okay gesture over here. Then he clicked the enter key. Positioned, the robbers are now 200 meters outside Wangjia village. Two seconds later, that police messenger looked at the data on the computer and hurriedly reported the situation. At the sound of the words, the chief commander excitedly slapped the table and stood up. This matched perfectly with the location they had tracked down earlier. Sure enough, Lu Ming was hiding in Wangjia village. Have the brothers from groups 2 and 5 who are lining up in the neighborhood rush to Wangjia village and block off the nearby roads as much as possible without spooking the snakes. 
Lu Ming and Zhou Hang are both veterans with extremely strong combat abilities and have numerous firearms in their hands. The special duties squad quickly rushes over to reinforce them. Make sure to catch Lu Ming before they realize something is wrong. The chief commander hurriedly gave orders one after another. Operational deployments were made to the robbers' hiding places. The personnel sent out by groups 2 and 5 to investigate were basically ordinary police officers, although their numbers were large. However, they had run into Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, two tough bandits who held heavy weapons and had extremely strong combat abilities. It was very likely that there would be casualties. Therefore, the commander-in-chief let the second and fifth teams go over and just block off the surrounding roads as much as possible, waiting for the special duty squad to go over before making an arrest. After the order was given, the group of squad leaders in the case analysis room then also acted quickly. The commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air, turning back to the picture of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang hanging above the whiteboard directly in front of him. His face was grave. After all, this was the biggest chance they had of catching Lu Ming and Zhou Hang since the start of the maneuver. Therefore this operation could be said to be crucial. On the hillside behind the private house, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were each walking behind Wu Peng carrying a huge backpack. The rope that had tied up Wu Peng earlier had been untied. They were now without a car and had no choice but to walk. If they tied Wu Peng up again, if they were seen, they would probably call the police immediately. Therefore, Lu Ming untied the rope. It was only a remote control bomb that was tied to Wu Peng's body, which was used to control Wu Peng. Although the bomb was tied, after Wu Peng put on his jacket, he basically couldn't see anything. And Wu Peng was also a person who was afraid of death. By coercing him with the remote control bomb, he wouldn't dare to do anything rash. As for the two smuggling thieves, on the other hand, they were left in the private house by Lu Ming. The location had been exposed. It shouldn't take long for the police force to come to the door. Those two stupid thieves were also considered a great gift that Lu Ming had left for Chief Commander Fan Yun. Brother Ming, if you say let's withdraw, let's withdraw. Why did you still make that call to expose our position? Wouldn't we have more time to evacuate without exposing our position? Zhou Hang walked next to Lu Ming and took a sip of mineral water before looking at Lu Ming and asking curiously. Only then did he look at Lu Ming and asked curiously. He had been very curious when Lu Ming had called earlier. It was just that he was busy with the evacuation at that time so he didn't ask much. If we want to win the maneuver, we have to get the ransom. That means this call for the ransom must be made. Since we're already preparing to evacuate here. It's better to make this call ahead of time now to expose this location than to make another call later to expose a new hiding spot. Lu Ming's face was calm. While walking towards the front without haste, he opened his mouth to respond to Zhou Hang. Now that he was fleeing, there was plenty of time. Therefore, he didn't mind talking more with Zhou Hang. So that's how it is. Zhou Hang nodded his head in realization as he heard this. Sure enough, every step Brother Ming made had his considerations. These smart people were truly terrifying and seemed to be calculating all the time. Brother Ming, then why don't we get a car? It's such a hot day and we have to evacuate on foot. Isn't this a waste of energy? Zhou Hang took two steps and looked up at the sun high in the sky. The sunlight was poisonous. It gave a burning pain on the skin. To have to flee on foot in such weather was indeed not a wise choice in Zhou Hang's opinion. I don't know how far the police messenger team has come. If Fan Yun's eyes have already been placed on the van I took, then if we choose to leave by car again, our whereabouts will be completely exposed. I looked on the map. This mountain behind Zhangjia village stretches for several kilometers and is surrounded by roads. If we go over this mountain and then hitchhike, the area they need to line up will be huge. Moreover, if they surround Zhangjia village without finding any trace of us, their first reaction will be to think that we've hidden in the mountain, and they'll most likely spend a lot of effort searching the mountain. Wasting their efforts is creating an opportunity for us. Lu Ming spoke calmly. While speaking, he pulled out a loaf of bread from his pocket and opened the package to eat the bread casually throwing the bread's packaging bag on the road next to him, casually leaving something behind for the police force, perhaps, can play an unexpected result. Outside Zhengjia village, several police cars were parked at the only dirt and stone intersection leading to the outside world. More than 20 police agents guarded both sides of the road. These were the first two groups of police officers to rush over after the commander-in-chief gave the order. The remaining five groups were heading this way. After the second group arrived at the location designated by the commander-in-chief, they turned on the cameras they were carrying. At the same time, in the case analysis room, the projector that received the uploaded signal from the camera projected the image on top of the huge screen. The chief commander, Fan Yun, sat on a chair and watched all of this with a grave expression on his face. A moment, he picked up the map on the table. Zhengjia village was surrounded by large mountains on three sides, and only the terrain directly in front of it was slightly flat. It was also in this direction that a dirt and stone road connecting to the national highway was constructed. According to the positioning obtained from Lu Ming's cell phone signal, 
His position was at the very front of the entire village, very close to this road. If he wanted to get close to this place, he could only go in through this dirt and stone road. Therefore, wanting to form a huddle to surround Lu Ming, it was almost impossible. After the second group arrived at the scene, the only thing they could do was to block this only dirt road, preventing Lu Ming and the others from driving away. Everything, we can only wait for the special duty squad to arrive at the scene. The chief commander couldn't help but murmur after looking at the map and pondering for a few seconds. He was the decision maker of the police squad. If the entire police squad was a giant, then he was the brain of this giant. But at this moment, all that he, the brain, could do had already been done. For the next arrest, he could only wait. The police officer's perspective live broadcast room. At this moment, looking at the chief commander of the police officer team who had a grave face and was almost a bit fidgety. The audience in the live broadcast room was also talking. It can be seen that the commander-in-chief is very tense right now. His current mood looks almost the same as when I checked my scores on the college entrance exam two days ago. Ha ha. Brother upstairs are you going to laugh me to death? You guys don't talk nonsense. People commander-in-chief of the high school exam score checking is estimated to be not so nervous. After all, today can go this far. When it was certainly a school bully. The college entrance exam is not a sprinkle of water? I have to say. The chief commander of this exercise's police team has been very strong, because Lu Ming's ransom deal made a bit of a mistake. It directly tracked down Lu Ming's hiding place. Very strong indeed. But nah, the opponent he met was Lu Ming. Lu Ming is too cautious, changing his hiding place several times a day. It's really hard to catch him. This is called the cunning rabbit has three holes. I Lu Ming greatly not only cautious, but also cunning, otherwise how can be worthy of the title of the strongest robber ever? You guys say that after the special duty squad arrived at the scene and realized that Lu Ming had already run away. What kind of mood would the commander-in-chief be in? It shouldn't be too bad. After all, Lu Ming left him with two real smugglers, laughing and crying. That's right. Lu Ming was greatly invited to participate in the exercise, and even helped the commander-in-chief solve such a big case in passing. The commander-in-chief mustn't be so moved that he cried bitterly? You guys are too bad. Really are all the fun people chanting, are waiting to see the fun in this live room? The commander-in-chief has already done a good job. I can only say that Lu Ming is too cunning. Indeed, the commander-in-chief in the open. Lu Ming in the dark. The commander-in-chief can do so I think it's quite bullish. If the identity of the transfer, Lu Ming may not be able to catch the commander-in-chief. I agree with the words of the brothers upstairs. But now that the maneuvers have not started for long, everything is not easy to say. That's right. It can't be said that Lu Ming made a mistake at the back and fell into the net. It feels like the next ransom deal is the greatest opportunity for the commander-in-chief. Audiences who had God's perspective and were able to watch both live broadcasts at the same time. At this point, they naturally already knew that Lu Ming had run away long ago. Therefore, a portion of the audience couldn't help but poke fun at the chief commander's nervous appearance at this moment. Of course, most of the audience still recognized the chief commander's ability. After all, although the chief commander was a step slow, but he had indeed caught Lu Ming's mistake when he took the ransom and had directly locked Lu Ming's hiding place. His ability naturally could not be denied. Of course, the live streaming pop-up screen's comments about himself were invisible to the chief commander. At this time, he was still frowning as he waited for the special duty squad to rush to the scene. Almost half an hour later, several special duty squad's bombproof cars finally arrived at the dirt and stone road that led outside Zhang's house. The doors of the vehicles opened and more than 10 heavily armed special agents came down from the vehicles in an orderly manner. The special agent in the lead walked quickly across to the second team leader. How is the situation over here? Wearing a hood that only revealed two eyes, he looked at the leader of team 2 and calmly asked. Since team 2 was the first to arrive at the scene, it must have scouted the nearby situation. And from them they should be able to obtain some useful information. According to the positioning given by the general team's side, we probed. And the robbers should be in a private house 150 meters west of here. This place is still some distance away from the village and this is the only house around. The van that the robbers took is parked at the end of the road ahead, because we didn't dare to approach for fear of spooking the snakes. This is all we have for now. The leader of that second group hurriedly opened his mouth, telling the special agent in front of him all the things he had grasped. Good, leave the next thing to us. That special evil team leader nodded and reached out to pat the shoulders of the second team leader. Opening his mouth, he responded. And then, he turned around and walked towards the group of special duty team members. Utilizing the limited information that he had learned from the second team leader, the special difficulties team leader formulated a rough plan of action. The crowd of special difficulties nodded after hearing this. This time, the target is a veteran, possessing extremely strong combat abilities as well as anti-surveillance capabilities. We must be cautious in our actions. 
At the same time everyone must be on their toes after entering the private houses. Beware of the traps Lu Ming has set up. Before the operation, the special duty team leader looked at the group of team members again and spoke with extreme seriousness. Previously, he had failed in the abandoned warehouse. Although Lu Ming had already run away, the traps left behind had still eliminated several special agents. With a lesson like that, naturally, no one dared to belittle Lu Ming's abilities. Yes, after the group of players heard the words, they all hurriedly nodded their heads in response. Everyone was extremely serious. Action! That special duty team leader waved his hand and opened his mouth to give the order. The words fell. He then led a dozen or so special duty team members to maintain their formation, advancing in an orderly and swift manner towards the private house where Lu Ming was hiding. At the same time, in the case analysis room, the chief commander and a group of commanding levels, through the images transmitted back from the cameras, were all looking at this operation with a grave expression on their faces. After all, they could all be expecting this operation to be able to capture the two kidnappers and rescue the hostages. If they could really end the maneuver with this, then they would also be considered to have proved the ability of their city council under the gaze of millions of spectators. Therefore the importance of this operation was self-evident. In the images transmitted back from the cameras, a group of special agents quickly arrived at the van parked at the end of the dirt and gravel road. Three special agents were left to guard and inspect the vehicle. The rest of them, then continued to rapidly close in towards the private house. Soon, a dozen special agents arrived outside the fence. While approaching towards the private house earlier, they had been observing the situation in the private house. They didn't find anything going on. The private house was extremely quiet. On the contrary, it made the special agent team leader feel that something was not normal. After all, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were both veterans and had extremely strong counter-surveillance abilities. The special duty squad had surrounded them like this, and they hadn't noticed a thing? However, now was not the time to think about this. Looking at all of the special duty team members, they were clinging to the fence, looking at themselves in a strict stance, waiting for them to give the order. The team leader took a deep breath of cool air, raised his right hand and gave the order to act with a gentle wave. The fence of this private house wasn't very high, it was only about 2 meters. As soon as the team leader's order was given, all of the special task force members were quickly climbing up the fence and lightly tumbling into the courtyard. After landing, the team members did not act immediately. All carefully checked the situation in the middle of the courtyard, fearing that the kidnappers had laid traps. However, all of them did not find any abnormality, confirming that it was safe. The team leader once again gave a hand signal, and the dozen or so special agents marched in groups, leaning towards the various rooms of the private house. Case analysis room. The chief commander looked at the images uploaded back from the big screen. His brows were deeply locked and his expression was grave. The action of the special duty squad was too smooth, so smooth that it made him feel surprised. After all, Lu Ming was an extremely cunning and cautious person. At this moment, the special duty squad had all entered the civilian houses without encountering a single bit of resistance. If Lu Ming was still completely unaware that his position had been exposed, he would have had his accomplices on sentry duty in a high place. But the special duty squad hadn't found a sentry. Or did Lu Ming already run away? Thinking about this, the chief commander couldn't help but take a deep breath of cool air. He realized that he had overlooked a very important point. The ransom deal in People's Square. Lu Ming knew that Wu Peng's mother had already reported to the police and was working with the police force. But under such a premise, he still made the call to demand the next ransom from his hiding place at this time. The police team was able to locate Lu Ming through his phone call. Lu Ming was a smart man. Naturally, he was also able to realize this. But he still made that call. This meant that he had already prepared to change his hiding place when he made the call. He himself was still one step behind him after all. Thinking of these, although the commander-in-chief's pair of eyes were still staring at the scene of action on that big screen, but still, he couldn't help but clench his teeth without moving. Lu Ming really wasn't an easy opponent to deal with. Above the large screen, the members of the special duty squad acted swiftly as they kicked open the doors of each room in the private house, but they were all empty. It wasn't until they reached the second floor that two figures finally appeared in the screen. The commander-in-chief immediately had a delighted expression on his face when he saw this, but only for a second. That happy expression disappeared again, because he saw clearly that the two figures that appeared in the screen were currently tied to chairs. It clearly couldn't be Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Ooh, oh oh. As soon as the two people in the middle of that image saw the special messenger appear at the door, they rushed to struggle frantically, because their mouths were stuffed with something. At this moment, they could only make whimpering sounds. Seeing this, a group of special difficulties first checked if there were any traps in the middle of the room, after determining that it was safe. Only then did they lean towards the two people who were tied up in an orderly manner. The two special agents held their guns aimed at the two people who were tied up, 
keeping a lookout. The special agent team leader, on the other hand, walked over and ripped out the things that were stuffed in those two people's mouths. Finally someone has come to save us. Thank you. Thank you. After the thing in that tall man's mouth was taken out, two lines of hot tears hung on his face as he opened his mouth with extreme excitement. However, because the thing was just taken out, the speech was still a little slurred at this time. With the experience of escaping from death at the hands of two kidnappers, even though there was a possibility that he would be sent to the prison, looking at the police messenger in front of him, he still felt very cordial. After all, they did smuggling, and at most, they would be sentenced to seven or eight years. It was too much better than losing their little lives. Team leader, a cell phone was found on the table over there. Just as the team leader looked at the tall man in front of him and wanted to ask something, a special agent walked over with a cell phone. Sniffing, the team leader hurriedly picked up the cell phone. Pressing the bright screen, he found that the phone did not have a password set. He was a bit puzzled. However, still, with a raised eyebrow, he slid the screen to unlock the phone. The phone jumped to a video interface, and the special duty team leader tapped it, and the video began to play. Watching that video, the special duty team leader looked back at the two men still tied to the chair. If they weren't wearing hoods, that tall man would have been able to see that wonderful expression on the team leader's face. Chief team, the search of the private rooms has been completed, and Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were not found. There are only two smugglers who were tied up by Lu Ming. Sighing somewhat helplessly, the special agent team leader grabbed the walkie-talkie on his own shoulder, pressing down the talk button, reporting the situation to the chief commander in the case analysis room. Because the camera that transmitted the signal to the case analysis room was the camera above the team leader's helmet, therefore, the video played by the special task force leader just now, the commander-in-chief and the group of team leaders in the case analysis room could all see it clearly through the large screen. Roger. First, let the brothers of Team 2 escort the two smugglers back to the city office to transfer them to the criminal investigation brigade. You special duty squad and the rest of the brothers, visit Zhangjia village and see if you can find any traces of Lu Ming. The chief commander picked up the walkie-talkie and gave the order quickly and decisively. Roger. A response from the special duty squad leader quickly came over the walkie-talkie. The chief commander placed the walkie-talkie back on the table. His brows were deeply locked. Lu Ming had indeed run away. It was just that the chief commander hadn't expected Lu Ming to leave him such a big gift while participating in the maneuver, catching two smugglers for their city council. Of course, from the images transmitted back, the chief commander also recognized these two smugglers. They were the two who had appeared in People's Square before, taking the ransom from Wu Peng's mother and running away. They had appeared at Lu Ming's hiding place. This made the chief commander unable to help but be a little curious. Could it be that these two men were really the accomplices that Lu Ming had found? With some kind of benefit to make them agree to go out and fetch the ransom for themselves? It was just that the plan had failed. These two people would be useless in his hands. So he just tied them up and left them in the middle of the private house to wait for the police messenger to find them. However, none of this mattered for the time being. At this time, Lu Ming had already run away. What the chief commander needed to do was to find Lu Ming's escape route as soon as possible and catch him before he found a new landing spot. Zhang Jia Village's back mountain. Wu Peng dragged his heavy steps breathlessly walking forward with difficulty. The entire leg trembled as each step fell and was raised again, as a rich second generation who spent the whole day drinking and being intoxicated by paper. His body had long been emptied out by alcohol and color. When he exercised a little bit on weekdays, he couldn't even come up for air, not to mention, in such hot weather. Also marching on foot in the mountains for more than 40 minutes, he had already reached his limit. Two big brothers, can you rest for a while? I'm dying. Wu Peng swallowed hard and drooped his eyelids as he looked back at Zhou Hang and Lu Ming and opened his mouth. As he spoke, those pale lips trembled slightly. That appearance. It was as if he would not be able to breathe at any time. How far has this fucking gone? You could less give me lazy. Hurry up and move fast. Zhou Hang sniffed and chided a few times with a ferocious expression. While speaking, he also directly raised his foot and kicked towards Wu Peng's butt. And it was this kick. It directly kicked Wu Peng to the point where he staggered and ran a few steps forward. Falling on top of the hillside, Wu Ping rolled his eyes and spat out some foam from his mouth. He instantly fainted. Crap. Brother Ming. I fainted this kid with this kick. What can we do about this? He shouldn't die here. Right? Zhou Hang watched as Wu Ping fell to the ground without moving, and hurriedly ran over and squatted next to him to take a look. Only after seeing Wu Ping's condition did he rush to look at Lu Ming and open his mouth. Just now, Wu Ping said that he was dying. Zhou Hang only thought it was because he wanted to be lazy. Who knew? This was just a kick, and this bastard even directly fainted. It seems, to be really close to dying. This can be just participating in a drill himself. Really do not want to carry a human life. A time, 
Zhou Hang was a bit flustered. Lu Ming heard, also walked up, squatting on the ground to prop open the eyelids of Wu Peng to look at, and then touched the pulse on Wu Peng's neck. Not much of a problem. It should just be some mild heat stroke from being too tired and lack of water. He's just asleep right now. Lu Ming stood up and calmly spoke in response. In the middle of the last maneuver, Lu Ming had read quite a few medical books in order to enter the hospital and disguise himself as a doctor. Therefore, it still wasn't too much of a problem to read some simple symptoms. Falling asleep? I thought that the bodies of rich kids are all so weak nowadays that a kick can kill someone. But I have to say that this bastard's heart is really big. Being able to fall asleep under such circumstances. After hearing Lu Ming's words, Zhou Hang's hanging heart finally relaxed. He skimmed his lips and opened his mouth to complain twice. Only then did he prop Wu Peng's head up, pulling out a bottle of mineral water from his bag and preparing to pour it in for him. Brother Ming said that he was a little dehydrated. Thinking about it, it was true that after he tied him up, he had only fed him water two or three times in more than ten hours. Thinking about this, Zhou Hang couldn't help but feel a little weak. It's not that he has a big heart. It's estimated that before I was kidnapped by us, he hadn't slept for a while, and after being kidnapped the spirit has been in a state of high tension. It's like a string that, after popping to its limit, will break at the slightest touch. Lu Ming got up and calmly responded to Zhou Hang at the same time. He looked around vigilantly. At this moment, they were in a flat grassy field, and there weren't any tall trees around. If one stood higher than them, they would easily be able to see them. Not exactly a good place to rest. Brother Ming, so what now? This kid looks like he won't wake up for a while. Should we rest for a while? Zhou Hang poured a bottle of mineral water all into Wu Peng's mouth. Reaching out, he patted his face hard, seeing that he still didn't move at all. He then looked up at Lu Ming and spoke. It's not safe here, and I'm afraid it won't be long before the police officers search the mountain. We need to leave as soon as possible. Put him on your back and keep going. Lu Ming shook his head and calmly responded to Zhou Hang. As he spoke he took the backpack containing weapons and ammunition on Zhou Hang and carried it in his hands. The intent was obvious. I'll carry your equipment for you. You carry Wu Peng. The corner of Zhou Hang's mouth twitched slightly, obviously not really satisfied with this distribution. However, since Lu Ming had said that it wasn't safe here, then he naturally didn't dare to delay. Grabbing one of Wu Peng's hands, he turned around and carried Wu Peng on his back with a single push. The two of them continued to travel with their weights on their backs, without Wu Peng slowing down their speed. The things that both of them were carrying on their backs were heavier, but their speed was a lot faster than before. In the hotel suite, watching everything that was happening in the robber's perspective livestream, the assistant standing beside Wu Dong couldn't help but frown. After hesitating for a few seconds, he still turned his head to look at Wu Dong who was sitting on the sofa. Chairman, is Xiao Peng's current state not too suitable to continue participating in the maneuvers? Why don't I have someone send a helicopter to bring Xiao Peng back for treatment, or send a medical team to treat him, and wait to make sure that Xiao Peng is fine before continuing the maneuvers? The assistant spoke with considerable concern. After all, Wu Peng had all but fainted and looked to be in a very bad state. This, coupled with the attitude of those two kidnappers towards Wu Peng, made him quite worried. Do you think this drill is child's play? Didn't you hear the kidnappers say that this kid can't die yet? Besides if he really dies there like that, I'll admit it. Let him just drink and pick up women all day long on weekdays. 26 17 people. The body cannot even compare to me as an old man. Really die is also deserved. As soon as he heard the assistant's words, Wu Dong directly slapped the cigar in his hand fiercely in the ashtray. Only then did he frown and speak sternly. Hearing his words, the assistant couldn't help but suck in a breath of cool air and didn't dare to say anything else. Wu Dong turned back and his gaze fell back to the screen that was broadcasting the live feed. To be honest, seeing his precious son in this state, Wu Dong's heart was also quite worried. After all, that is his own only son. If really cool in the exercise, his own body, his Wu family is afraid to be extinct. But before the exercise he promised, even if his son was scared crazy stupid he also recognized. Set out words, how can he go back on his word? What's more, really want this kid to make a little change from the bone. Also have to let him experience some despair. Therefore, even if the heartache Wu Peng, Wu Dong also still gritted his teeth and insisted on not bothering, letting the maneuvers unfold. If this kid can't make it after going through this, then I'm afraid that Jean Pang will be going without the surname Wu in the future. Grabbing the cigar on the ashtray, Wu Dong took a drag and spat out the smoke. Only then did he murmur to himself. He had watched the entirety of this maneuver, and the two kidnappers were indeed very real. Wu Ping could be said to have come back from the dead a few times. If he hadn't changed after such an experience, then expecting scolding to make him change was even more fanciful. Therefore, watching the live broadcast, although heartbroken Wu Peng, but for Wu Peng's change after the end of the exercise, 
Wu Dong also held great hopes. Beside the highway, Lu Ming was holding two backpacks and Zhou Hang was carrying Wu Peng, were standing on the side of the road ready to hitchhike. After a few private cars passed by ignoring them, a large truck came from the distance. Lu Ming hurriedly stretched out his hand at the big truck and made a hitchhiking gesture. It wasn't long. The big van slowed down and stopped beside the two. Brothers, where are you going? The driver looked at Lu Ming and the others and cheerfully opened his mouth to ask, appearing very enthusiastic. Indeed, encountering a hitchhiker on the road. Van drivers were always a little more willing to help people than private cars. Big brother, we're going to the city. Do you think you can give us a ride if it's on the way? Lu Ming was also smiling as he looked at the big brother driver in his early 40s and politely opened his mouth. While speaking, pulling out a cigarette from his pocket, he handed one to that big brother driver. Get in the car. This car of mine doesn't go to the city, but it will be able to take you slightly to the edge of the city. There you will be able to get a cab. It will be much easier for you to go to the city then. The driver's elder brother took the cigarettes and spoke with a kind smile. Gesturing Lu Ming, they got into the car. Thanks. Lu Ming smiled and thanked the driver before opening the car door and taking the lead to get into the car himself, placing the two backpacks on the sleeper at the back of the cockpit. Only then did he pick up Wu Peng from behind Zhou Hang and place him on top of the sleeper in the back as well. He and Zhou Hang then sat in the front passenger seat. You friends, why does it look like you fainted? The driver's elder brother smoked a cigarette and watched Lu Ming and the others fiddle with Wu Peng, but Wu Peng was not moving much. At that moment, he raised his eyebrows and spoke with some curiosity. Alas, don't mention it, the three of us are donkeys, hiking out from the city to climb the mountain, and as a result, this brother fainted from heatstroke. This mountain can't be climbed anymore, so we can only hurry to hitchhike back to the city. Lu Ming sighed. Only then did he frown and open his mouth with a worried face. That appearance. It was indeed like a good brother who was worried about his sick friend. This heatstroke thing can be big or small. Why don't you guys hurry up and call an ambulance? This can't be delayed. If it's serious, it can take a life. The driver's big brother heard his words and looked back at Wu Pang lying on the sleeper behind him. Obviously was more worried. After all. He just wanted to kindly give them a ride. If this person died in his car, it would be a big deal. It's not that serious. He just had a mild heat stroke, coupled with walking too tired. This half dizzy, half asleep. It won't take long to wake up. Don't you see this is moving? It's probably having a beautiful dream. Lu Ming cheerfully explained. While speaking the sleeping Wu Peng apparently slowed down, just in time to smash his mouth. Seeing this, the driver also just put down his heart. I say you youngsters. It's not good to stay at home and blow the air conditioning on such a hot day, preferring to come out to climb the mountain. Isn't this looking for sins? The big brother driver laughed, shaking his head and opening his mouth to tease a few sentences. At the same time, he also started the car, started driving towards the city. The truck was traveling fast on the national highway, although there was no air conditioning on. The wind pouring in from the window also dispelled the heat in the car. The driver was quite a talkative person. On the way, he chatted with Lu Ming who was extremely cooperative and responded from time to time. As for Zhou Hang, who was sitting on the side of Lu Ming, he looked a little nervous. After all, if this truck driver knew about the drill, it was impossible to say that he would directly drive his car into the circle of the police team. At that time, they would be unable to escape. However, Lu Ming wasn't worried. The live broadcast of this drill was shielded from Kunjiang City, which meant that the live broadcast could not be seen within Kunjiang City. Therefore, there were very few people within Kunjiang City who knew about this drill through the live broadcast, and it was estimated that it hadn't been more than 12 hours since the police messenger received the alarm from Wu Peng's mother. Such a short period of time, the team of police messengers wouldn't have spread the news out either. Plus, Lu Ming had intentionally chosen a van when he had hitchhiked on the roadside earlier. The van drivers were all quite busy and spent the entire day driving, barely having time to play with their cell phones. Therefore, there was also a lag in receiving news from various networks the likelihood of knowing about the maneuvers was even less. And, after Lu Ming got on the bus, he had been observing the driver's demeanor. The driver acted very naturally. Therefore, Lu Ming was basically able to determine that the driver did not know about the drill. There was also no suspicion towards the two of them who were hitchhikers. Almost 20 minutes or so later, the driver kicked on the brakes, and the van slowly stopped at the roadside. Brothers, can only slightly you guys to hear. There are often cabs passing by at the intersection right next to there. By then you guys will be able to take a taxi to the city. The big brother driver smiled and spoke, pointing Lu Ming in the right direction. He had a good conversation with Lu Ming on this journey. He was clearly in a good mood. All right, thank you big brother. This is $300. Count it as the cost of our ride. 
Lu Ming nodded and prepared to get out of the car as he pulled out $300 and handed it to the driver. This can't be allowed. It's just a ride along the way. How can I charge you? If this gets out, where will I put my face? The driver hurriedly reached out and pushed away the money Lu Ming handed over, opening his mouth to bashfully refuse. But Lu Ming insisted for two more rounds. That big brother driver then also scratched the back of his head and cheerfully took the money over. Zhou Hang got out of the car. Lu Ming first handed him two backpacks containing weapons and ammunition. Then he reached out and patted Wu Peng's face. Wu Peng had also slept for some time on this journey, so he guessed that waking up would not be much of a problem. As expected, Lu Ming patted Wu Peng's face a few times. After Lu Ming patted him a few times, Wu Peng blinked his eyes and woke up, opening his eyes and seeing Lu Ming's face. He instantly shivered in fear. Get off! Lu Ming's pair of eyes were filled with threatening implications as he stared at Wu Peng. However, when he spoke, it was with a smile on his face. After all, this truck driver was still sitting on the side, so he couldn't let him see any clues. Young man, you fainted climbing the mountain. It's your companion who hitched a ride back with me, and now it's almost downtown. You guys go to the side of the road and take a cab to rush to the hospital. The driver looked at the dumbfounded Wu Pang and smiled as he opened his mouth to remind. Perhaps it was because of the money received. His tone was more kind when he spoke. A ride? Then master driver. How much do you think is appropriate to give for this hitchhiking fee? Is 95 enough? 110 is fine. I'll transfer it to you on my cell phone. Wu Peng heard someone else's voice and hurriedly sat up. Seeing the unfamiliar driver sitting in the driver's seat, he hurriedly opened his mouth excitedly. Said those cry for help code words that he had swiped on the short video in his head, hoping that this driver would call the police to save his little life. However, hearing his words, the smile on the driver's face grew a few points more intense. The hitchhiking fee your friend gave. You young man, your speech is a bit confused. It seems that the aftereffects of the heat stroke are still not well. Grab some time to go to the hospital. The driver cheerfully opened his mouth, obviously not reacting to Wu Peng's meaning at all. For a while, Wu Peng was somewhat in tears. As expected, those things on the short video were all fucking lies. He turned his head with a face of despair. Just in time, he saw Lu Ming looking at him coldly, and that icy cold look made him shiver. Watching the van go away in a cloud of dust, Wu Peng, who was standing on the side of the road, couldn't help but gulp down his saliva. His face filled with an expression of despair. Just now he followed the method that seemed to be on the short video, passing the distress code to the driver. That truck driver was completely unintelligible and didn't react at all. However, Lu Ming understood his intentions. Therefore, Wu Peng was very clear. These two vicious kidnappers would definitely not let him go. Barf. The van had just walked away. When Lu Ming's wide and powerful palm landed on Wu Peng's neck, on this three-volt day, Wu Peng even felt a chill in his heart. It couldn't help but shiver. Big brother, don't misunderstand. Just now I just, with a stiff smile on his face, Wu Peng turned around and tried to explain. However, the words were not yet finished. Lu Ming's palm that landed on the back of his neck had already begun to exert force, like an iron clamp. It slowly tightened, squeezing the back of his neck in death. Hiss. Wu Peng ate the pain and couldn't help but suck in a breath of cool air, but also did not dare to struggle. After all, these two kidnappers were masters who regarded human life as grass, although now they hadn't gotten the ransom yet. The probability was that they wouldn't kill themselves, but really annoyed. Things like unloading one's own pinky would definitely be able to do it. Brother Ming, is this kid playing any tricks again? He's in this fucking shape, but he's still not honest. Why don't we break one of his legs, so he won't think about escaping and we'll have less trouble? Right at this moment, Zhou Hang, who was standing next to him, noticed the commotion over here. He hurriedly came over and looked at Lu Ming with a rather curious question. When he said the last sentence, he also glared viciously at Wu Peng. This brother of mine doesn't have a good temper. If there's a next time, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to persuade him. If you obediently cooperate with us, I guarantee that after you get the money, you'll be able to go home in one piece. Lu Ming clamped the back of Wu Peng's neck, pulling him to his side. He then came to his ear and coldly opened his mouth. The voice was not loud, just at a level that Wu Ping could hear. That icy cold tone, and the threatening implication in those words, it made Wu Ping couldn't help but swallow his saliva. No, won't. Wu Ping hurriedly responded with a shivering cry. Lu Ming sniffed, with a smile on his face. He nodded with considerable satisfaction. He released his hand and patted Wu Ping's back. This person, Wu Ping, was not a hardcore person. The actions that would occur just now were only because he thought he saw an opportunity and was brainwashed by those retarded short videos, thinking that using such a cryptic way of asking for help would be able to send the distress signal out. Actually, such a way of asking for help as long as one uses one's brain, 
one knows that it is completely unreliable. After all, passersby are completely unaware of the situation. For these numbers interspersed in the words, it is difficult to will react. The kidnappers, on the other hand, can hear your intentions. Using this brain dead way to ask for help is far better than directly crying out for help. Of course, Wu Peng didn't have the guts to cry out for help, because he is afraid of death. As long as there is still a trace of the idea that the robbers will release him after getting the ransom, he will not go out. Therefore, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang's joint intimidation should be able to keep him honest, not daring to cause any more trouble. Keep an eye on him. Lu Ming looked at Zhou Hang and gave an explanation before he walked towards the roadside. He was ready to stop a cab to go back to the city. Okay. Zhou Hang sniffed, carrying two backpacks and looked at Lu Ming in response. Lu Ming had just taken two steps out. Zhou Hang yelled under his breath. I told you to be dishonest. Believe it or not. I'll kill you. Such words. At the same time, he directly raised his foot and kicked Wu Ping twice. Wu Ping did not dare to have the slightest resistance, was kicked to stagger a few steps, and hurriedly stood up straight. It was a proper beating to stand up straight. As Lu Ming listened to the commotion, the corner of his mouth couldn't help but twitch slightly. In his heart, he wondered if Zhou Hang's kid was a little too deep into the drama. Although Wu Peng's father had said when he invited them over for the exercise that he would recognize it if he was scared silly, but also did not say that you can feel free to beat up Wu Peng. The person's father guessed that the whole time or watching this exercise it, it is not possible to watch his own baby son was beaten, already ready to settle scores. If so, that can be a trouble. The robber's perspective live broadcast room, the fermentation of the heat caused more and more admirers to appear in the live broadcast room. Even on this weekday afternoon, the number of online viewers had also surpassed the 2 million mark. Such a terrifying number. Herculeanly, the robber's perspective live room had become the hottest live room on the entire platform. At this time, in the live broadcast room, the viewers were discussing feverishly. Ha ha, laughed me to death. Wu Peng has personally practiced for you guys that the distress codes taught in those trash short videos are all lies. Wu Peng is the real comedian. 95, 110, cell phone. The driver's big brother did not react to any of them, although people did not react to the driver brother, but the kidnapper Lu Ming reacted to Ah, directly to Wu Peng to a warning package. In fact, before watching those short videos I have long wanted to spit. You said that those cryptic words are counting on passersby to understand that you ask for help, but the robbers do not understand? This is not a joke? That is, this kind of secret language if you call the police phone can still try. The road to find a person to say these things. Might as well directly call for help out loud forget it. Wu Peng can be too miserable. Paul a top rich second generation. Now simply be tortured to human appearance or not. Can only say that Wu Peng his father really know how to play? I don't know when the exercise is over. Wu Peng knows that this is just an exercise. What kind of mood will it be? I don't know what kind of mood he is in. But I know that if I can give him a close up shot at that time. I should be very happy. Ha ha. Brothers be individuals. Look at how miserable others Wu Peng and then look at how damaged you are. But then again, Zhou Hang this playing hostage is not a little too much. After all, this is just a drill. There is no need to really move your hands and feet, right? Indeed, it feels like Zhou Hang is a little too deep into the drama. It is not just kicking two feet. Is it possible that the prince of this large group cannot even kick? It's not called being too deep in the drama. It's called being dedicated to your work. And playing a tough guy doesn't mean you have to be polite. A few kicks won't do any harm. They won't even cause flesh wounds. And playing a bandit. Isn't it more realistic to be a bit grumpy? I have to say. Zhou Hang's performance in this exercise is too much stronger than the last one. It's getting more and more of the flavor of a tough bandit. The pop-ups rolled madly in the live broadcast room. The screen full of pop-ups illustrated the high enthusiasm of the audience in the live broadcast room. Looking at the rather miserable hostage Wu Pang. Most of the viewers didn't feel sorry for him. But instead swiped flirtatious pop-ups. After all. This kind of rich second generation who only knew how to squander money and spend it all day long. The viewers were quite happy to see him suffer. The enthusiasm of the audience in the live broadcast room was high. And the earnings from the gifts were naturally not small. Various floating screen gifts continued in the live broadcast room. The total income from the gifts had also reached an extremely terrifying figure. If Zhou Hang could see the gift earnings in the live broadcast room at this time. He would truly understand what Lu Ming had said. High risk. Low profit. Robbing a bank is something that only a fool would do. After all, the income from this live broadcast can be much faster than them robbing a bank. In the case analysis room, the chief commander and a group of squad leaders sat around the whiteboard with a map hanging on it, discussing Lu Ming's possible escape route. The special duty squad had already canvassed Jiangjia village and harvested not many clues, in addition to finding the landlord who rented the room to Lu Ming, and the landlord's son who came back from People's Square. 
There were no other useful clues. There were no other useful clues. You guys said that Lu Ming actually escaped into the mountains. Or did he escape from the national highway before the second team members arrived at Zhangjia village to blockade the scene? A squad leader frowned and stared at the map for a moment. Only then did he open his mouth to ask out. From what we have now, the kidnapper did not have a means of transportation. The white van he was driving before was abandoned on the side of the road before Lu Ming went to People's Square to collect the ransom. The smuggler who mistakenly entered People's Square not only disrupted our deployment, but also affected the kidnapper's rhythm, so that he didn't have time to prepare a new mode of transportation. Therefore Lu Ming's chances of escaping from the national highway are not high. Another squad leader glanced at the notepad in his hand and spoke out the information as well as his own guesses. Chief Commander Fan Yun listened to their words. It did not make a sound. Just a pair of eyes remained fixed on the map on the whiteboard, as if he was pondering over something. Without transportation, they can hitchhike to the side of the highway. Previously, when Lu Ming escaped from the People's Square food market, didn't he also hitchhike on a food delivery truck? We located the signal in Lu Ming's hand at 1.23 through the last call he made to demand ransom, and it was already 1.35 when the brothers of Team 2 arrived at Zhangjia village to blockade it. If Lu Ming had acted after making the call, 12 minutes would have been enough time for him to hitchhike away. The technical department squad leader also raised an eyebrow and spoke out his thoughts. The rest of the people sniffed. All of them nodded in a rather agreeable manner. Obviously, everyone felt that it was more likely that Lu Ming would leave by car from the national highway. After all, Lu Ming and the others were carrying quite a lot of equipment on them, and these things were not light in weight. Taking these things plus a hostage to escape on foot, it was really too much of a hassle. I do think that Lu Ming will choose this path. Right at this moment, the chief commander spoke up. He stretched out his right index finger and pointed at the back of Zhangjia village's mountain on the map. His brows were deeply locked as he spoke, and the expression on his face was extremely serious. At the sound of his words, the crowd of squad leaders all looked at the chief commander, but none of them opened their mouths. Obviously, they were waiting for the chief commander to explain the reason. Lu Ming is a smart person. He must have known that he would expose his position if he made the call to demand ransom. But he still made the call. Why is that? The chief commander stood up straight and spoke with a serious expression on his face. After speaking, he turned to look at the group of squad leaders. However, none of those squad captains opened their mouths, only frowning in a thoughtful manner. Because he knew that the people's square ransom demand failed, we would definitely find out where he was hiding. And when we received the call, we also happened to check into Zhangjia village. This is what makes Lu Ming so powerful. He always manages to get ahead of us. The chief commander spoke again, unable to hold back a sigh as he spoke. He did not hide his recognition of Lu Ming in the slightest. After sparring with Lu Ming, only then did the chief commander truly realize how powerful this Lu Ming, who had been called the strongest robber ever by countless netizens, really was. He was a genius. A criminal genius. He had an extremely sharp sense of counter-surveillance, and a terrifying ability to plan and deploy, doing a true job of anticipating the enemy. Chief team, but this doesn't conflict with whether or not Lu Ming will escape from the national highway. Ah. Uh, a squad leader pondered over the chief commander's words carefully. Only then did he open his mouth in a rather puzzled manner. Lu Ming had guessed that they were able to track down Zhangjia village, thus not fearing that he would expose his location and make the ransom demand call. However, he still had plenty of time to escape from the national highway. This has to be connected to Lu Ming's character. Escaping by hitchhiking from the national highway does seem like the most time and labor efficient method. But Lu Ming, he's an extremely smart and extremely cautious person. He's smart so he knows that his position will be exposed. But even though he's smart, he can't be sure exactly when we'll find out where he's hiding in Zhangjia village. Not being able to determine the progress of our lineup, he also can't be sure if we've already taken action against Zhangjia village by the time he's ready to withdraw. Even in his mind, it's unlikely that we had already blocked off Zhangjia village by the time he was preparing to evacuate. But with his cautious character, he still wouldn't take the risk of leaving from the front national highway. And since he's carrying hostages, if he chooses to hitchhike, the risk of exposure is too great if the hostages don't cooperate. Therefore, I feel that Lu Ming is instead likely to choose the safer back of the mountain. The chief commander opened his mouth seriously and spoke out the inference he had made after pondering for a long time. The moment these words came out, the group of squad leaders in the middle of the case analysis room were all wide-eyed, with expressions of sudden realization. Obviously, the chief commander's flurry of analysis made everyone feel extremely reasonable. Chief commander. Then what you mean is that the kidnappers and the others are most likely hiding in this mountain behind Zhangjia village right now? The junior captain of the technical department, while shocked, hurriedly opened his mouth along with the commander-in-chief's meaning. These words exited. All of the squad leader's gazes reverted back to the chief commander. The chief commander nodded with a calm expression. Next action. 
Search the mountain. Taking a deep breath of cool air, the chief commander stood up and spoke with an extremely serious expression. The moment this decision was exited, all the squad leaders present were slightly stunned, followed by a look of desire to speak. After all, the mountain behind the Zhang family village was not considered to be that high, but the area covered was not small. Once the order to search the mountain was given, it would definitely be extremely labor-intensive for the police patrol team. If Lu Ming and Zhou Hang were not hiding in the mountain, then the consumption of large manpower would definitely have a huge impact on the follow-up of the maneuver. Chief team, is this mountain searching maneuver a matter of further deliberation? After all, once we start searching the mountain, there's too much manpower to take up. And if Lu Ming asks for a ransom deal at this time, I'm afraid our manpower will not be enough. The group of squad leaders all looked like they were about to speak. And one of them, after hesitating for a moment, still frowned and opened his mouth to give a reminder. Although the possibility of Lu Ming hiding in the mountains was not small, however, it was not certain that he was definitely in the mountains. Searching the mountain on a large scale under such circumstances was really not a wise choice. The maneuvers hadn't ended yet. The mobilization of manpower should naturally be considered. Otherwise, if anything goes wrong, the police team would be faced with a situation where one wrong step would result in a total loss. Searching the mountain is a must, and of course it can't take up too much manpower. Hearing that squad leader's discouragement, the chief commander smiled before speaking seriously. The group of squad leaders froze slightly. Chief commander, do you mean for show? Another squad leader raised one eyebrow and spoke tentatively. The chief commander nodded seriously. He then took out a marker pen and on the map, circled the entire mountain behind Zhengjia village. Everyone can see that if Lu Ming were to go up the mountain from the back of the private houses, after going over the mountain, he would have at least four or five locations where he could reach the highway to hitch a ride. But as I said before, Lu Ming is cautious and the risk of being exposed by hitchhiking with a hostage is too great. That's why I think the hostages must be hidden in the mountains and guarded by Zhou Hang. And Lu Ming himself will most certainly hitchhike back to the city over the mountain. It's highly likely that he's also waiting for us to search the mountain. After all, once we search the mountain it proves that we've invested a large amount of manpower. And by then the city will be empty of manpower. So it's a good time for him to get the ransom money. And once the ransom arrives, he will let Zhou Hang tear the ticket. With Zhou Hang's ability, such a big mountain, it's really not easy to catch him. So why don't we just use this as a trick? Pretend to search the mountain. Make a show of it to Zhou Hang. And let Zhou Hang release the signal to Lu Ming that we are searching the mountain. At that time, we'll do our best to capture Lu Ming who is fetching the ransom. And when Lu Ming is caught, then we'll consolidate our manpower to truly search the mountain. The chief commander pointed at the map and spoke extremely seriously. After a flurry of plans were said, all the squad leaders had nodded their heads frequently. Obviously all of them were extremely agreeable. After all, the commander-in-chief's analysis was well-reasoned, and almost everything was accounted for. The action deployment was also extremely meticulous, completely not giving Lu Ming an opportunity to take advantage of. Chief Commander, then is searching the mountain directly utilizing the manpower that still remains in Zhangjia village? One of the squad leaders hurriedly spoke up. Right now, the members of Group 5 and the Special Duty Squad were all over there, adding up to a total of 40 or so people. If it was just for show, then these people were already completely sufficient. Have Team 3 send a few brothers to send some police dogs over. The brothers of the special duty squad are all pulling back, and the operation to search the mountain will be taken care of by the brothers of Group 5 in Zhangjia village. Make the commotion as big as possible. What we want is to scare the snakes. The chief commander spoke seriously. After all, the special duty squad was the strongest fighting force, and capturing Lu Ming, who had taken the ransom money was the chief commander's most important deployment. Thus he still decided to pull back the special duty squad. Only five groups of team members would be used to search the mountain. The words fell. A group of squad leaders hurriedly responded in unison and began to carry out the commander-in-chief's operational deployment. In the case analysis room, it was once again busy, and the chief commander inhaled a deep breath of cool air, leaning on the conference table and looking at the whiteboard in front of him. A pair of sharp eyes stared tightly at the picture of Lu Ming hanging on the whiteboard. His brows were deeply locked. It was unknown what was on his mind. In the live broadcast room of the police messenger's perspective, after listening to Chief Commander Fan Yun's flurry of analysis, as well as the deployment of the operation, the audience opened up a heated discussion. Chief team, you're confused. What's the point of searching the mountain? Isn't this a waste of manpower? Lu Ming and the others are no longer on the mountain. Upstairs brother, you're just opening God's perspective. If you look at it from the commander-in-chief's perspective alone, there's no problem at all with his decision to search the mountain. Indeed, the safest way to hide the hostages is to let Zhou Hang hide on the mountain with the hostages. Lu Ming went to fetch the ransom by himself alone, 
There's no problem with this idea at all, I have to say. I feel that the chief commander of the police dispatcher team is already very impressive, but it's a pity that the opponent he met was Lu Ming. He was able to become the chief commander of the criminal investigation team at a young age. How could he not be bullish? I can only say that Lu Ming's character has changed too quickly. Before he was indeed cautious. Who knows that now he's suddenly not cautious again. Right. The only thing that the chief commander miscalculated was that Lu Ming didn't dare to take the hostages for a ride because he was cautious. You can't say that either. It feels like Lu Ming is still as cautious as ever. Nei Wu Peng, the hostage, has been scared silly. That's why Lu Ming dared to take him for a ride. This chief commander and Lu Ming's confrontation is just really a fight between the gods. I even suspect that they stole each other's scripts. Not much else to say. Anyway, I Lu Ming greatly yyds. The strongest robber in history is not a false name. I admit that Lu Ming is quite bullish. But this time the commander-in-chief of the police team is not a generalized person. So I feel that Lu Ming still has the risk of overturning the car. Regardless, it feels like the next ransom deal is the biggest opportunity for the police force. There is a chance, but it feels like Wu Peng's mother's trust in the police team has greatly diminished, and it's hard to say whether or not she will continue to cooperate with the police team. Indeed, if Wu Peng's mother is guarding against the police team and is bent on paying the ransom to save her son, the police team won't have much of a chance. The police officer team's livestream was not as hot as the robber's perspective livestream. Although it was not as hot as the robber's perspective livestream, but the number of pop-ups was still quite high. Although most of the viewers already knew from the hijacker's perspective livestream that the kidnappers and hostages were not on the mountain. However, the analysis and action deployment of the chief commander Fan Yun was still extremely admired. After all, he had almost guessed 70 to 80 percent of Lu Ming's plan. The only point that was miscalculated, that was that Wu Peng, the hostage, was simply too good to control. He had long since been scared out of his wits by Lu Ming, and in order to stay alive he was extremely cooperative with the demands of the robbers. It was also because of this. Lu Ming wouldn't be too cautious to take him for a ride. Naturally, he wouldn't leave him on the mountain. Of course, the commander-in-chief did not make the next step of searching the mountain the absolute center of gravity, and sent out no more than a small team of people. The kidnappers and the police team's next step in the game. The center of gravity are still placed on the ransom deal. And this. It is also precisely the police perspective live broadcast room, the audience believes that the police team want to win must fight for the opportunity. It's just that everyone understands. After the loss of the action in People's Square, the point of Wu Peng's mother has become not so controllable. It was highly likely that it would become the biggest hidden danger amongst the police team's operational deployment. Of course, at the time when everyone understood this point, the commander-in-chief was naturally clear about it as well. Downtown. In the middle of a noodle shop with old decorations and dismal business, Lu Ming, Zhou Hang and Wu Peng were sitting around a table covered in oil. The obese middle-aged boss wearing a somewhat yellow t-shirt quickly came out with a bowl of noodles and placed it in the center of the table. Looking at the bowl of noodles, Lu Ming and Zhou Hang didn't move, and Wu Peng looked at the two of them with a look of wanting to speak. What? I said that you, a rich young man, can't get used to eating this kind of fly tavern, right? Do you want me to take you to a star restaurant for a good meal? Zhou Hang looked at Wu Peng's look and only thought it was because Wu Peng disliked the things here. At that moment, he frowned and opened his mouth viciously. The moment these words were uttered, that Wu Peng, who was already like a scared bird, directly swallowed his saliva in fear. Eat first. Lu Ming sat across from Wu Peng and casually opened his mouth without even raising his eyelids. Wu Peng sniffed. He hurriedly brought the noodles in front of him, not caring about the heat, and directly ate it with a big mouthful. He was just afraid of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Therefore the two didn't speak, and he didn't dare to move this first bowl of noodles that was brought up. In more than 20 hours, he had eaten just two loaves of bread. He was already so hungry that both of his eyes were green. Even if the hygiene of this noodle shop was indeed not great, he naturally wouldn't mind. The boss who brought over the second bowl of noodles saw Wu Ping eating like that. He immediately stared with wide eyes and a shocked expression. His own craftsmanship has become so good? It is hard to believe that. The small broken noodle shop of his is not going to be on fire? In the noodle shop, the weather was hot. There was only a dirty fan in the entire shabby noodle shop. The fan blades accompanied the rattling sound of rattling, turning breathlessly, but that weak wind couldn't dispel the dry heat in the air at all. At this moment, Wu Peng in front of the table was like he couldn't feel the temperature. In this sweltering little noodle shop, he was like a hungry ghost gorging on noodles. In less than a minute, the noodles had been stripped clean, swallowed the contents of his mouth. He also picked up the bowl with an unfulfilled appetite and drank a few mouthfuls of the steaming noodle soup, when he put down the bowl and raised his head. It was only then that Lu Ming and the others saw that Wu Peng's face was covered in bean-sized beads of sweat. The noodle shop owner, holding the noodles in his hands, 
stood by the side all dumbfounded, a look of shock on his face that did not dissipate for a long time. After all, operating this small broken noodle shop for so many years, it was really the first time he had encountered a customer like Wu Peng who was so sure of his own craftsmanship. Facing the gazes of the three people, Wu Peng did not care. Drawing a few paper towels from the table, he wiped the sweat from his face, a satisfied expression on his face. Little brother, how is my noodle? Flavor? Watching Wu Peng put down his bowl, the noodle shop owner then slowed down. He swallowed a mouthful of saliva. With an expectant face, he looked at Wu Peng and asked out. It's so delicious. This is the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. It's so much better than the things in those Michelin restaurants. Boss, can I have another bowl? Wu Peng first looked at Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, seeing that they had no intention of stopping him from speaking. Only then did he look at the noodle shop owner and open his mouth with extreme sincerity. This bowl of noodles. It was indeed the best bowl of noodles he had ever eaten in his life. After all, Wu Peng had grown up in fine clothes and food, and had been clothed and fed. He had never been starved to this extent. Hungry to the extent that he was. As long as it was something that could fill his stomach, it was naturally a delicacy on earth. You eat this bowl first. Count it as my treat. The noodles for the remaining two brothers will be sent up soon. The noodle shop owner heard Wu Peng's comment and excitedly opened his mouth while placing the noodles in his hand in front of Wu Peng, and then hurriedly walked quickly towards the back kitchen to continue cooking noodles for Lu Ming and Zhou Hang. Is this noodle that good? Zhou Hang couldn't help but frown and mutter as he looked at Wu Peng's appearance. At the same time he spoke. Wu Peng had already picked up his chopsticks and was ready to continue eating the noodles in front of him. However, the chopsticks had not yet reached into the bowl. Zhou Hang suddenly reached out and knocked down the chopsticks in his hand, and moved the bowl of noodles in front of himself. Wu Peng gulped, and did not dare to say anything more, just shrunk his neck and obediently gave the noodles to me Zhou Hang. Zhou Hang picked up his chopsticks and took a bite. He couldn't help but frown. Brother Ming, isn't this kid Wu Peng a rich second generation? How come he's so unseen? What kind of crappy noodles is this? It's surprisingly the best thing he's ever eaten in his life. It seems that the taste of things in those Michelin restaurants is really not good. Fortunately I don't have the money to go to those places. Zhou Hang skimmed his lips and came to Lu Ming's ear to mutter in a low voice. He hadn't been to any Michelin restaurants. After all, before enlisting in the army, Zhou Hang was a poor boy from the countryside. So naturally he didn't have the chance to go to any upscale places. Michelin restaurant he had heard of, anyway, is quite a powerful restaurant. But now listen to the words of Wu Peng just now. Heart for those upscale restaurants instantly greatly discounted. That's because he was abused by you and starved. Lu Ming raised one eyebrow and somewhat helplessly opened his mouth to respond to Zhou Hang. At those words, Zhou Hang had an embarrassed expression on his face. He scratched the back of his head and smiled sarcastically. As a poor and vicious kidnapper himself, he treated the hostages. It must be on the line of keeping the hostage from starving. How could he possibly feed the hostage to the fullest? After all, Wu Peng this kid is not honest. Feeding him will give birth to the idea of escape. Starving him, his legs are weak. Even if he had a chance to escape, then he wouldn't have the strength. Twenty minutes later, the three of them settled the bill and came out of the noodle shop. Under Lu Ming's leadership, the few people came to a nearby rotten building, for a temporary hiding place in the city. Lu Ming pondered for a long time. In the end, he chose this rotten building on the edge of the city. This place was farther away from the downtown area. However, because the rent was relatively cheap. The people living in the neighborhood were basically young people who worked in the city. Therefore, in addition to commuting time, this side has very little foot traffic and is more suitable for hiding. At the same time, rotten buildings because once was a construction area, the perimeter is surrounded by baffles. Hiding in them is not easy to be discovered by passers-by. Entering into the rotten building, after tying Wu Peng to the pillar, Lu Ming explained to Zhou Hang to keep an eye on Wu Peng and asked him to feed him some water and food at any time, before leaving the rotten building. Next, he had to start preparing his plan to fetch the ransom for the second time. If he wanted to win this maneuver, getting the ransom was the most important point. Therefore, the next plan was extremely important. After all, if the ransom plan failed twice in a row, he would be unable to win this maneuver. I'm afraid that it would be unlikely. In the case analysis room, the chief commander was sitting at the conference table. Staring at the map on the table with a grave expression, the special duty squad on the Zhangjia village side had already retreated back. The remaining five groups of team members had been searching the mountain for some time. However, yet there was no news coming back. For a time, the commander-in-chief began to wonder if there was a problem with the direction of his deployment. Perhaps Lu Ming really did escape by hitchhiking directly from the national highway. Chief commander, there's a discovery on the side of the group five brothers. They found a bag of bread on the mountain. 
and judging from the breadcrumbs left in the bag, it should have been discarded within 24 hours. There's a huge possibility that it was discarded by the kidnappers. Just at this time, a squad leader excitedly ran over and reported the latest situation to the commander-in-chief. Sniffing, the chief commander did not move and exhaled a mouthful of turbid air. It seemed that his direction was not wrong. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang had indeed taken the hostages up the mountain. Then the possibility of hiding the hostages in the mountains was extremely high. Continue searching. Make as much noise as possible. Make sure to make the kidnappers on the mountain think that we have put most of our manpower on searching the mountain. The chief commander spoke extremely seriously. Since there was nothing wrong with the direction, it was only necessary to make a commotion for the kidnappers on the mountain to notice. Lu Ming should be about to start moving as well. As long as he was able to capture Lu Ming, it would be as easy as pie to end this exercise. Thinking of this, the commander-in-chief couldn't help but let out a slight sigh of relief. Yes, hearing the commander-in-chief's words, the squad leader responded. He then hurriedly turned around and went to convey the instructions. Downtown, after Lu Ming left the rotten building, after avoiding the cameras as much as possible again, he walked out towards the front for some distance, at the same time, confirming that he was not within the range of the nearby cameras. Only then did he reach out and call a car, to Huang Jiang Park, getting into the car. Lu Ming spoke calmly, taking advantage of the time when the vehicle was moving. He then directly closed his eyes and squinted in the car for a while. It wasn't much longer. The car arrived at Huang Jiang Park, which was 5 kilometers away. This was a free park, and because the location wasn't that bad, there were often many people who came here to exercise and cool off. Lu Ming walked to an unoccupied corner of the park and sat down on a bench. He opened his backpack and pulled out a black plastic bag. The plastic bag contained a large bag of cell phones. Roughly looking at it, he estimated that there must be at least a dozen of them. This was during the preparation time before the drill started. Lu Ming and Zhou Hang went to the second-hand market to buy them. They were all rather old used cell phones. Although the appearance and color were not good, the basic functions were still usable. Taking out one of the cell phones, Lu Ming inserted it into the phone card that he had made using the homeless man's ID card, turned on the phone. After editing a text message and setting up a timer to send it, he set up the cell phone with a timer to turn it on and off. Only then did he turn the phone right off and wrap it in a plastic bag. Finally, he placed the plastic bag wrapped with the phone in the green bush. After determining that the people passing by here would not be able to easily discover the cell phone, only then was he quite satisfied and left, leaving the park. Lu Ming took another car and squinted for a moment in the car. When he woke up again he had already arrived at a river 10 kilometers away, as before in the park. Lu Ming pulled out a cell phone set everything up and hid the phone in a corner. For an entire afternoon, Lu Ming almost took a car and ran through the entire city, distributing the cell phone amongst the various corners of the city. After doing all this, it was already more than 6 o'clock in the evening. At this time, Lu Ming was sitting in a restaurant next to People's Square, quietly waiting for the dishes he ordered to be served. At the same time, in the middle of the Wu family villa, Wu Peng's mother, who was waiting anxiously, suddenly received a text message. Within an hour, drive yourself to Huang Jung Park to trade the ransom. Out of time. In addition to Wu Peng's mother and the nanny in the living room, there were also quite a few police officers. Therefore, when Wu Peng's mother received the text message, the team of police officers naturally knew about it at the same time. The case analysis room. The police officers from the technical department hurriedly reported the matter of the ransom demand SMS to Chief Commander Fan Yun. The chief commander was quite pleased when he received the situation report. After all, they had been conducting the mountain search operation for five hours in order to scare the snakes. According to his own anticipation, Zhou Hang, who was guarding the hostages in the mountain, should have informed Lu Ming of the mountain search operation long ago. However, Lu Ming had been slow to move to demand the ransom. Good thing, now Lu Ming had finally made his move. Huang Jiang Park? The chief commander glanced at the location where the kidnappers had demanded a transaction on the content of the text message and couldn't help but raise his eyebrows slightly as he murmured. He hurriedly brought over the map on the conference table. Huang Jiang Park was more than 30 kilometers away from the Wu family villa. It was now rush hour after work. The road was congested with traffic. The kidnappers had asked Wu Peng's mother to drive there herself, and it would definitely be too late in an hour. Chief team, this Huang Jiang Park is so far from the Wu family home. An hour is definitely too late. Could this be just a fake location put out by the kidnappers? A squad leader stood next to the chief commander and also saw the distance on the map. At that moment, he rather doubtfully opened his mouth to ask out. Within an hour Wu Peng's mother would definitely not be able to make it over. This kidnapper should also know that. But the kidnappers still asked for this. Therefore, this was most likely just a smokescreen put out by the kidnappers, deliberately saying a fake location so that the police team would go over and pounce. 
Such a tactic, Lu Ming had also used it in the last ransom deal. It's very likely. Can we track the kidnapper's cell phone signal based on the text message? The chief commander nodded, then looked at the police officer from the technology department in front of him to ask out. Tracking the signal would be able to determine the kidnapper's location. It would also be able to know if the kidnappers were really prepared to make a deal at Huang Jiang Park. Trying. If the kidnapper's cell phone is still on, it is possible to track the signal. That technical department police officer almost nodded, responding to the commander-in-chief while his fingers were crackling on the keyboard. The eyes under the thick glasses were firmly fixed on the computer screen. From the moment they obtained the text message on Wu Peng's mother's cell phone, the police officer from the technical department was already trying to trace the kidnapper's cell phone signal. At this time, it was already at the end of the process. As that police messenger hit the enter key, a grid map appeared on the computer screen. The kidnapper's cell phone signal is in Huang Jiang Park. That police messenger from the technical department hurriedly turned back and looked at the chief commander to report the situation. The chief commander sniffed and nodded with a raised eyebrow. The kidnappers are really prepared to trade the ransom in Huang Zhang Park, but this one hour of time. That squad leader was slightly stunned, then opened his mouth rather surprised. Unexpectedly, this second ransom transaction, the kidnappers were not prepared to play tricks, but this wasn't quite like Lu Ming style nah, or was it really as the chief commander had expected? The kidnapper Lu Ming, after receiving the news from his accomplices that the police had already searched the mountain, thought that the police force in the city was empty of manpower. That's why he let his guard down and prepared to get the ransom quickly? If that was the case, this was a great opportunity for the police force. One hour's time. Lu Ming is trying to create a sense of urgency for Wu Peng's mother. The eagerness to save her son. Coupled with the fact that there isn't enough time. And the loss in People's Square must have caused Wu Peng's mother's confidence in our police force to plummet. Then he'll ask for Wu Peng's mother to be allowed to drive alone. In this way, the point of Wu Peng's mother will become even more uncontrollable and Lu Ming will have more opportunities to exploit. The chief commander inhaled a deep breath of cool air and placed the map back on the table before speaking seriously. The squad leader next to him nodded with deep thought as he heard this. He couldn't help but sigh in his heart, this Lu Ming fellow, his control over human nature and hearts was really terrifying. Chief Captain, then how do we act next? After sighing in his heart, that squad leader hurriedly asked the chief commander about his next action deployment. After all, Lu Ming's request for time was very tight. On the Wu family's side, Wu Peng's mother had probably already moved. If there was any more delay on this side, I was afraid that they wouldn't be able to keep up. Have the brothers at the Wu family first drive and follow Wu Peng's mother from afar. This side sends a special task force to Huang Zhang Park to meet up with them. Time is running out for us to deploy to Huang Zhang Park, but we must capture the kidnappers before they get the ransom. The commander-in-chief raised an eyebrow and quickly ordered the deployment of the operation. That squad leader nodded in response. Then he hurriedly turned around to mobilize the personnel. At the same time, in the middle of the Wu family villa, with the help of the police officers, several large boxes of cash were moved onto Wu Peng's mother's car, and then Wu Peng's mother drove away from the villa. A few private cars driven by police officers followed Wu Peng's mother's car from afar, next to People's Square, looming slowly and leisurely after finishing his meal. He took a walk on the side of the square. The square was quite lively with bright lights and people coming and going. It was around 7 in the evening. At this time, the pedestrians on the square were basically not as busy as they were during the day, and everyone was quite relaxed. On the side of the square, there were already quite a few mobile vendors who had set up barbecue stalls and various food stalls. Quite a few young couples in between the stalls walking around, talking and laughing. The large people's square had more fireworks than during the day. Lu Ming stretched his waist. He found a place to sit down next to the fountain and calmly watched the bustle of the square. He looked extremely relaxed. Kidnapper Perspective Live Streaming Room because the camera in the live broadcast room was on Lu Ming. Therefore, the picture in the live broadcast room at this time was naturally the same picture that Lu Ming saw. The live broadcast room was buzzing with activity. Crap, Lu Ming today is also too brave. Right, right now the police team is searching for him. And as a result, he ran to the street to hang out. Brothers, take a good look. Did you find this place a bit familiar? Isn't this the place where the ransom was first traded at noon? At that time, Lu Ming also had Wu Peng's mother circling around this fountain, and then the two stupid thieves took Wu Peng's mother's ransom. It's really that fountain. If you guys didn't say it I really didn't realize it. Lu Ming's wave is really bold. He came here in a big way. Worthy of being the strongest kidnapper in history. This wave I'm willing to call Lu Ming a true extra-legal fanatic. I, Lu Ming greatly is indeed a bit arrogant. Is this showing us what it means that the most dangerous place is the safest place? Alas. It is estimated that the commander-in-chief would never have imagined to death that Lu Ming would actually run and sit here. That said, Lu Ming was in People's Square, 
So how did mother Wu Peng receive a text message from Huang Zhang Park? The brothers upstairs really haven't watched the live broadcast properly. In the afternoon Lu Ming went to Huang Zhang Park and left a cell phone there. Warm tip. The cell phone has a timed SMS sending function, so as long as you set a time, you can send it whenever you want. Worthy of being Lu Ming Ah. This wave of operation is a real show, completely playing everyone for fools. This live broadcast is really wonderful, but whenever I leave for a while in the middle and come back, I won't be able to watch it. Lu Ming went to more than one Huang Zhang Park today. I saw him take a taxi and almost spare a few hours and put seven cell phones. It's too awesome. If the commander in chief can't react, the police police team mustn't be tossed around by Lu Ming, but it feels like although Lu Ming did this and was able to toss the police team around, as long as the commander in chief keeps sending people to follow Wu Peng's mother closely, Lu Ming still won't be able to get the ransom off. Indeed, although Lu Ming's operation is very showy, I still don't see any hope that he can get the ransom. Brothers, with that brain of yours, you definitely won't be able to guess what Lu Ming wants to do. Just watch Lu Ming's operation without fear. That's right, you only need to always believe in Lu Ming, and leave the miracle making to him. Lu Ming greatly, yyds, please accept my knees. In the face of Lu Ming's brilliant maneuver, the live broadcast room completely exploded. All of the viewers went crazy, after all. Regarding Lu Ming's current situation, everyone thought that he should find a place to hide properly and wait for the ransom deal. But Lu Ming was just like a person who was fine, leisurely wandering around the square. The most important thing was, this square was also the place where the ransom deal failed at noon. This extremely shocking move to everyone naturally drove the enthusiasm of the discussion among the audience of the live broadcast. At the same time, it also secured a huge wave of gift rewards for the live broadcast room. The heat in the middle of the live broadcast room surged madly. On the viaduct, Wu Peng's mother drove her car and looked at the road that was gambling into a mess in front of her. She anxiously pressed the horn and honked. However, such actions were also completely useless. The traffic ahead was still only moving at a very slow turtle speed. Looking down at the time, 20 minutes had passed since receiving the kidnapper's text message. In this 20-minute period of time, Wu Peng's mother drove a distance of only 4 kilometers. Wanting to arrive at Huang Zhang Park in the remaining time was just as unlikely. At this time, Wu Peng's mother was so anxious that she could not cry, can only once again keep pressing the horn, praying that the vehicle in front of you can make a road. Case analysis room. Through Wu Peng's mother's car camera transmitted back to the screen, the commander-in-chief looked at all this with a calm face. He did not say anything. After all, Wu Peng's mother did not know that this was just a drill. Therefore the chief commander could understand the anxiety within her heart. However, because of the agreement between Wu Dong and the chief director, it was not possible to reveal the reality of the drill to the rest of the Wu family. Therefore, even looking at Wu Peng's mother's current emotions, the chief commander could not tell the truth about the exercise as it was. Chief commander, the cell phone signal tracking of the kidnappers in Huangjiang Park has failed. That means the kidnappers turned their cell phones off. Right at this moment, a police officer from the technical department sitting in front of the computer suddenly looked at the chief commander and reported the latest situation. After tracking the kidnappers' cell phone signal in Huangjiang Park, they had been locking the location of this signal. And during this 20-minute period, this signal did not move. In other words, the kidnappers have always stayed in the same place. But at this moment, this signal had suddenly disappeared. Is Lu Ming preparing to change the location where the ransom was traded? Sure enough, he's still cautious. That's his style. The commander-in-chief sniffed but wasn't too surprised, only nodding with a calm expression on his face, murmuring a few words to himself. Seemingly, for the kidnapper's cell phone signal to disappear, it had already been in his expectation. After all, in the chief commander's mind, Lu Ming was a cautious person. With such an important step as the ransom transaction, if Lu Ming would have been waiting in place, that was what would make the chief commander feel that something was wrong. Call up the surveillance around Huang Zhang Park that we have access to. Keep an eye on the people coming out of the park and see if there's any chance of locking onto Lu Ming's figure. The chief commander took the marker in his hand and lightly tapped a few times on the conference table. Only then did he look at the police messenger from the technical department and give the order. Yes, that police messenger sniffed. Turning around, he followed the chief commander's request to retrieve the surveillance. The commander-in-chief's gaze returned to the footage coming back from the camera in Wu Peng's mother's car, regarding the intention to use the camera surveillance outside Huang Zhang Park to lock Lu Ming. The commander-in-chief did not hold much hope. After all, Lu Ming was a smart and cautious person. He would definitely try to avoid the cameras along the way as much as possible when entering and exiting Huang Zhang Park. And in a free park like this, it wasn't difficult to find a path that was completely in the camera's blind spot. At this moment, the chief commander was rather curious. The real ransom transaction location in Lu Ming's mind, 
where exactly would it be? This section of the plot thought for a long time, the self-feeling is still good. So begging for a wave of gifts is not too much, right? He 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 he. Flowers, love letters, razor blades, milk tea, throw them all over. Highway, I SUV sped along the road. Even though the voice navigation had kept ringing out the speeding tips, but the vehicle didn't have the intention to slow down. The person driving this car was Wu Peng's mother. After getting off the congested viaduct, there was still a distance of 15 kilometers from Huangjiang Park, and there were already only 10 minutes left until the time requested by the robbers. Therefore, Wu Peng's mother could not care less, speeding along the way, only thinking that she could try her best to reach the place requested by the kidnappers within the stipulated time. Chief Team, Wu Peng's mother has lost control. She drove her vehicle through several traffic lights in a row, causing traffic chaos, and we can't keep up with her car. The police officer who was driving after Wu Peng's mother watched the car driven by Wu Peng's mother go far away, and then looked at the vehicles blocking the intersection, hurriedly picking up the walkie-talkie to report the situation to the chief commander of the case analysis room. Just now, Wu Peng's mother ignored the red light at the intersection, directly from the left turn lane straight through, forced to stop several normal traffic vehicles. For a time, this intersection was in chaos, separating the several vehicles driven by the police patrol that followed Wu Peng's mother in the rear. It was impossible to follow any further. Roger, you will first assist in restoring traffic at the same location before rushing to Huangjiang Park. The commander-in-chief received the situation report. Picking up the walkie-talkie, he responded calmly. He had been watching the images coming back from the camera in Wu Peng's mother's car. Therefore, naturally, he also knew everything that had happened. He took out his cell phone and prepared to make a call to Wu Peng's mother. However, after pondering for a moment, he still gave up. Casually placing the cell phone on the conference table, the chief commander reached out and pinched his brow. During the rush hour after work, 30 kilometers away, yet the kidnappers had stipulated to arrive within an hour. Wu Peng's mother, because of her eagerness to save her son, was unlikely to listen to the words of the police team. Next, the kidnappers will change the location of the deal. The kidnappers will change the location of the deal halfway through, so that Wu Peng's mother will be completely out of the police's hands. What the kidnappers want to see is the current situation. After all, in this way, it would be much easier for the kidnappers to get the ransom smoothly. The chief commander knew what Lu Ming wanted to do. However, however, he could only watch as he was led by Lu Ming. After all, Lu Ming was in the shadows. The chief commander didn't know exactly where his next request for a ransom trade would be, and couldn't take effective action. Chief commander, the kidnappers have made a move. Just as the chief commander was frowning. Pondering where exactly Lu Ming's location for the ransom transaction would be chosen, the police officer from the technical department over there excitedly opened his mouth to report. At the sound of his voice, the chief commander rushed over and came over to the computer screen to take a look. It was a text message from the robbers that Wu Peng's mother had just received, because Wu Peng's mother's cell phone had the listening software installed by the police officer team. Therefore, at the same time that her phone received the text message, the side of the technology department squad could also receive it synchronously. Be at the South Lake Bridge within 30 minutes. I don't want to see the police messenger. Seeing the content of this text message, the chief commander's eyebrows, which had just been stretched, couldn't help but lock up deeply again. Looming's phrase, I don't wish to see the police messenger. It was quite the time to use it now. In order to rush to the Huangjiang Park that the robbers had previously requested within the specified time, Wu Peng's mother did not hesitate to speed and ran several red lights one after another. She was about to arrive at the ransom exchange within the stipulated time. And this time, the robbers suddenly changed the location of the transaction. That one sentence, I don't want to see the police messenger, would make Wu Peng's mother think that it was the police team that had screwed her over. Her trust in the police force would reach the freezing point. Plus, the kidnappers are asking for an extremely tight schedule. It was already completely impossible for the police force to gain Wu Peng's mother's trust. South Lake Bridge? After the chief commander sighed slightly, his attention went back to the location Lu Ming had requested. He took the map and took a look at it. The South Lake Bridge was 23 kilometers away from Huangjiang Park. Lu Ming's cell phone signal disappeared in Huangjiang Park 35 minutes ago. This time, it was enough time for him to arrive at the South Lake Bridge from Huangjiang Park. Try tracking the kidnapper's signal and see if the kidnapper is really at the South Lake Bridge. The commander-in-chief hurriedly opened his mouth to the police officer from the technical department in front of him and commanded. That police officer almost nodded. It quickly tracked the cell phone signal that the robber had sent the text message. The chief commander also hurriedly grabbed the walkie-talkie on the conference table. Attention special duty team and team 3. The kidnappers have changed the location of the ransom transaction. The new location is South Lake Bridge. Pressing the talk button. 
The commander-in-chief rushed to give the latest situation to the police detail that had rushed to Huangjiang Park earlier. Roger. Roger. Soon the voices of the special police team and the three groups of team members reporting the situation came from among the walkie-talkies. The commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air. His eyes returned to the map. Just now, the team members of the third group had disturbed the traffic because Wu Peng's mother had run the red light. There was no way to continue following her car. The commander-in-chief let them stay where they were to assist in restoring traffic. Their location was only 17 kilometers away from the South Lake Bridge. In other words, if the three groups of team members set off after receiving their message, they should be able to reach the South Lake Bridge before Wu Peng's mother. This was a chance. Chief team, the robber's cell phone signal has been tracked. It is indeed at the South Lake Bridge. Just as the chief commander was pondering whether he could next utilize the time gap that the three teams of team members could fight for to deploy a point of action, the side of the technical department team members also rushed to report the situation. Very good. You guys bite the bullet on Wu Peng's mother's movements through her vehicle's localization. If there are any abnormalities, report to me at the first opportunity. The chief commander nodded. Then he hurriedly gave another command. At this moment, the three groups of team members and the special task force were all some distance away from Wu Peng's mother's vehicle, and it would be too much of a waste of time to want them to refollow them. Anyway, they had already installed GPS on Wu Peng's mother's vehicle before, using positioning to monitor Wu Peng's mother's vehicle. The problem shouldn't be too big. Yes, that technician hurriedly nodded in response. The commander-in-chief was not idle either. Taking the map, he began to study the deployment of the South Lake Bridge operation. At the same time, next to the fountain in People's Square, Lu Ming pulled out his cell phone and looked at the time. With a raised eyebrow, he stretched out somewhat bored. In fact, Lu Ming didn't really know if his plan was going well. The current him, it was like a hunter who had already laid out all the traps. One could only wait for the prey to step on the traps. There wasn't much that could be done. Sitting under the shadow of the street lamp, Lu Ming took out the cigarette case from his pocket, pulled out a cigarette, and calmly lit it. The smoke curled up. Under the shadow of the streetlight, it rose up. Lu Ming was not considered an addicted smoker. However, in his previous life experiences, many times he needed cigarettes to make himself more awake and calm, like the time when he had enlisted in the army. And also like, at the moment, he was controlling a big game of chess, and needed to keep his spirits up at all times. In the rotten building, Zhou Hang looked at the distant lights, and then looked back at Wu Peng, who was tied up in the center of the rotten building. Hiss. He sucked in a breath of cool air. He kept pacing in the middle of this rotten building. Lu Ming had already gone out to get the ransom in the afternoon, and now it was already 7 or 8 o'clock and still not back. Although, before Lu Ming left, he had said that his trip might take longer. But wasn't this time also too long? Zhou Hang naturally had great faith in Brother Ming's abilities. However, the chief commander of that police force was not someone to be dealt with. So Zhou Hang still couldn't help but worry. He was afraid that Lu Ming might accidentally flip the boat. Maybe he had already been arrested by the police force, but he hadn't given himself up. If that was the case, what could he do? After all, with his own IQ, there was nothing he could do if he wanted to save Lu Ming. I said how can you rich people be stingy like this? Five million dollars to buy your life and your old lady has to call the police, she can't even spare this much money. Tell me, are you your own son or not? Isn't five million dollars a fart to your family? Zhou Hang paced and turned around in that rotten building twice before he walked in front of Wu Peng. Using the flashlight in his hand, he shone it at Wu Peng's face. With a displeased face, he opened his mouth. After all, if it wasn't for Wu Peng's mother reporting to the police, it was estimated that Lu Ming's first ransom pickup wouldn't have been a problem. Where was the need to take the risk a second time? The flashlight's glare shone so brightly that Wu Ping couldn't open his eyes. He closed his eyes in death and didn't dare to say anything. If you ask me, you rich people are all completely disowned for a little money. You can spend tens of thousands of dollars on a meal, and you can't afford to spend five million dollars to save your own son. Zhou Hang moved the flashlight away a bit. Only then did he open his mouth with some contempt, obviously disgusted by the cold-bloodedness of this rich family. Although, Lu Ming had previously said that Wu Peng's mother would call the police in order to give her son a greater possibility of surviving. However, in Zhou Hang's opinion, it was Wu Peng's family that couldn't afford to part with that little bit of money. Otherwise, they would have found a way to send the money long ago. Why bother making his son suffer so much? Maybe, they are disappointed in me. I've been uneducated all these years, and I've been against them all day long. It's normal that they don't want to save me as a son. A son who has no talent and is still disobedient. It would be more safe if he died, right? Just as Zhou Hang found a place to sit down and prepare to smoke a cigarette, Wu Peng behind him suddenly spoke. The voice was not too loud. But in the middle of this quiet rotten building, 
Zhou Hang could still hear it clearly. Zhou Hang took the cigarette and turned around to give Wu Peng a rather surprised look. After all, this was the first time Wu Peng had said so much after being tied up. Previously, he had been scared enough, and was extremely fearful of Lu Ming and Zhou Hang, and hadn't even dared to say a complete sentence. You also know that you don't learn? Just a rich second generation like you. All you know all day long is to get drunk on paper and hoard your family's money. How big the family businesses will be lost to you sooner or later. After looking back at Wu Peng, Zhou Hang lit the cigarette in his hand, taking a deep breath. Only then did he open his mouth in a sneering manner. Wu Peng's old man invited them to participate in the maneuvers and kidnapped Wu Peng. Wasn't it because he wanted Wu Peng to change in such a situation and be able to return the prodigal son? Looking at his current appearance, he seemed to have some feelings. Therefore, Zhou Hang deliberately took advantage of the heat to make a few cynical remarks, so he might be able to provoke him to repent. By the time the exercise was over, wouldn't Wu Peng's father be able to thank himself for being Wu Peng's mentor on the road to repentance? Think about before the exercise. Wu Peng's father casually a check. If he had done a great favor, at that time directly to their own tens of millions of thanks, is not impossible now. However, Wu Peng heard this from Zhou Hang, did not open his mouth again, just lowered his head, not knowing what he was thinking. What would you say is the thing you would most like to do if you were allowed to go back alive? Zhou Hang saw that Wu Peng did not open his mouth. Turning back again, he looked at Wu Peng with a raised eyebrow and opened his mouth. The tone of voice was much kinder, like a casual conversation. There was no longer the vicious look from before. Hire more bodyguards. That way, things like this won't happen in the future. Wu Peng looked at Zhou Hang's attitude at this moment and became slightly more bold. He frowned and thought seriously. Only then did he answer Zhou Hang's question with extreme sincerity. Cough cough. Hearing Wu Peng's answer, Zhou Hang froze and directly choked on a few mouthfuls of smoke, coughing violently. He had thought that Wu Peng would say something about reforming himself. Who knew that the moment this bastard opened his mouth, he interpreted what it means for a dog to change his ways. This really made Zhou Hang angry. Temporary command room. The commander-in-chief studied for a long time. Finally a set of deployment plans at the South Lake Bridge was finalized. At this moment, 20 minutes had passed since the robbers changed locations, and the members of the three groups were close to arriving at the scene. By arriving early, they had time to deploy before Wu Peng's mother arrived. And when Wu Peng's mother came to conduct the ransom transaction, once the kidnappers showed up, the three groups of team members would be able to catch Lu Ming off guard. Chief team, there's new news coming from the kidnapper's side. He has once again requested to change the location of the ransom transaction. Just as the chief commander had just breathed a sigh of relief, the voice of the police messenger reporting the situation over at the technical department rang out. The chief commander froze. He hurriedly got up and went over to check. Lose your tail in half an hour in trade at Wuyue Plaza. Looking at the content of the text message, the chief commander couldn't help but clench his teeth. Changing the trading location again? It seemed that this bit of Lu Ming's cautious character really wasn't all talk nah. Is the kidnapper's cell phone signal at Yeya Plaza? The chief commander took a deep breath of cool air before he looked at the several police officers in the technology department and asked out. When he received the text message, the technical department was already tracking the kidnapper's cell phone signal. There were also results at this time. It's indeed on the Wuyue Plaza. One of the police messengers looked at the commander-in-chief and responded. At those words, the chief commander couldn't help but frown deeply. The three times Lu Ming had sent information about the trading location, the cell phone signal had appeared at the trading location he had mentioned, but he had left early each time and arrived at another location. In other words, he wasn't prepared to trade here from the start. But in that case, why did he still have to specifically run to this trading location, moving around downtown so frequently? Wasn't he afraid that the risk of him being exposed would increase? This doesn't seem to match his cautious character. What kind of medicine is this kid selling? The commander-in-chief frowned tightly with a puzzled look on his face. It seems, for a while, he was unable to understand Lu Ming's opponent. Cautious, yet not that cautious. Doesn't this seem contradictory? Case analysis room. The chief commander frowned and pondered for a moment. He still couldn't figure out that since the kidnappers had to change the ransom transaction location so frequently, then why would they have to personally stay at each location for a while? But time was now pressing. There wasn't much time to think about this question himself. He hurriedly picked up his walkie-talkie and once again gave an order to the special duty team and team 3 members. Attention special duty team and group 3. The robbers have once again changed the trading location. The new transaction location is Wuyue Plaza. The commander-in-chief pressed the talk button on the intercom. Speaking in a calm tone, he gave the latest order. Roger. A dry response came quickly from both teams. Placing the walkie-talkies back on the conference table, the commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air. With a grave expression on his face, 
He looked at the action trajectory of Wu Peng's mother's vehicle localization above the computer screen of the technology department's police officer. Lu Ming kept changing the location of the ransom transaction. This chief commander could understand. After all, this was able to disrupt the police team's operational deployment and maximize the chances for the kidnapper's side. But Lu Ming would appear at those places every time. The chief commander couldn't figure it out somewhat. He was running around so much. What exactly was the reason for that? However, at this moment, judging from the GPS signal on the computer screen, Wu Peng's mother was driving her car towards Wu Yue Plaza. There was nothing unusual about it. On the highway, Wu Peng's mother was driving her vehicle at high speed. After receiving the text message to change the ransom transaction location, she quickly rushed towards Wu Yue Plaza, arriving at an intersection. Looking at the green light that just happened to light up ahead, Wu Peng's mother let out a slight sigh of relief. After all, by waiting for one less red light, she could save a little time. As much as possible, she would be able to rush to the ransom transaction location within the time required by the kidnappers. Ding! Right at this moment, a crisp beep sounded, thinking that it was a message from the kidnappers. Wu Peng's mother hurriedly and nervously grabbed her cell phone to take a look, and after seeing that the text message was just a promotional message from a cosmetic store, she couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. However, with this glance, Wu Peng's mother saw the photo of herself and Wu Peng on the phone screensaver. Looking at Wu Peng's bright smile, she couldn't help but sniffle. Mist rose in a pair of eyes, with a clench of her teeth, she made a decision. Holding the steering wheel with one hand, the other hand ripped the camera off the rearview mirror in the car. Opening the window, she directly threw the camera out. It wasn't long after she threw the camera out the window. The cell phone then rang. Without hesitation, she pressed the answer button of the wireless headset on her ear. MS. Wu. You must trust our police team. Only by catching the kidnappers. Only then can we safely rescue Wu Peng. Within the headset, the voice of the chief commander, Fan Yun, rang out. He had been ascertaining the situation of Wu Peng's mother through the images transmitted back from the camera in her car. Hence, when the camera was thrown out of the window by Wu Peng's mother, he was naturally the first to know. At that moment, he hurriedly called over to calm down Wu Peng's mother. Tell your people to stop following me. My son, I'll save him myself. Isn't it just tens of millions of dollars? I'll give it to the kidnapper if he wants it. If it's not enough we can add more. I just want to see my son come back safe and sound. Wu Peng's mother choked out her words and hung up the phone directly after she finished speaking. She reached out and wiped her tears. The expression on her face became even more determined. A few tens of millions of dollars was indeed nothing to their family. The reason why she called the police before, it was because she was afraid that the kidnappers, after getting the ransom, would not honor the agreement to release Wu Peng and would instead tear up the ticket. But now that the police had been called, so much time had passed, and the police team still hadn't caught the kidnappers. Instead, the first ransom deal was lost in action, angered the kidnappers. Wu Peng's mother knows very well that if it's the second ransom deal that the kidnappers fail to get the money again, then Wu Peng's life safety may be very difficult to ensure. Therefore, Wu Peng's mother decided, she must hand over the ransom to the hands of the kidnappers. In order to prevent the kidnappers to get the ransom will be unfavorable to Wu Peng. She could then promise to pay the kidnappers a large sum of money as long as Wu Peng arrived home safely. In the case analysis room, the chief commander looked at the hung up call on his cell phone and couldn't help but frown. Judging from the attitude of Wu Peng's mother, one wanted to gain her trust in a short period of time, and was afraid that it would not be easy. However, it was a good thing that when they put the GPS into Wu Peng's mother's car, they did not inform Wu Peng's mother. So even if the camera was gone, but as long as they tracked the GPS signal in Wu Peng's mother's car, there shouldn't be any problems. Chief Team, Wu Peng's mother's cell phone received another message from the robbers. Just as the chief commander had just sighed and placed his cell phone on the table, the police messenger from the technical department over there rushed to report the situation again. Sniffing, the chief commander walked over. Above the computer screen was the robber's text message that had been synchronized over. Ten minutes later, take five million dollars to the Joy Luck kiosk next to Wuyue Plaza. Tell the boss that you're here to deposit something, and the boss will teach you what to do. Looking at the content of that text message, the chief commander had a grave expression on his face. Wuyue Plaza was actually the place Lu Ming had chosen to actually trade? But if he was really prepared to pick up the ransom here, why did he then ask Wu Peng's mother to place the ransom at the kiosk instead of handing it to him in person? And the ransom Lu Ming demanded this time was a full 30 million dollars, but he only asked for 5 million to be put in the kiosk? Is the kidnapper's location still on Wuyue Plaza? The chief commander was silent for a few seconds, before he raised one eyebrow and looked at the police messenger from the technical department and asked, still at the previous location. The signal has disappeared. 
it should be that the kidnapper immediately turned off the phone after sending the text message. That technical department police messenger had just responded to the commander-in-chief. When he turned back to look at the computer again, he rushed to speak again. It just shut down. The chief commander nodded and murmured with a frown. In the previous two changes to the ransom transaction location, the kidnapper's cell phone signals had all disappeared with most of the time left on his request. From the timing, it looked like the kidnapper had turned off his cell phone and rushed to the location he was going to change. This time, on the other hand, it was almost time for the transaction, and the details of the ransom deposit location were sent before the phone was turned off. Looks like, it seemed like the kidnappers were really preparing to pick up the ransom here. Attention special duty team and team 3 members, the kidnappers are preparing to trade the ransom at the Joy Luck kiosk next to Wuyue Plaza. The commander-in-chief picked up the walkie-talkie and quickly conveyed the latest news to the special duty team and the three groups of team members. At this time, the chief commander couldn't figure out what Lu Ming was planning to do at all. He could only let the special duty team and group three team members rush to the location of the transaction first. He had to make sure that the $5 million of ransom could not be taken without any problems. Next to Wu Yue Plaza, Joy Luck Kiosk. Although this kiosk was in a good location, it was because of the presence of a large supermarket in the adjacent Wu Yue Plaza. Therefore the business of the kiosk wasn't really good. In the crowded kiosk, at this time, the greasy boss in his early 40s was sitting behind the counter, using his cell phone to catch up on dramas. It wasn't long before, a SUV stopped at the roadside outside the kiosk. Wu Peng's mother anxiously got down from the car and opened the trunk to bring down a box from inside. This one box is loaded with exactly 5 million dollars. 5 million cash weight is not light, full of 115 pounds. Wu Peng's mother's strength is not big will be dragged down when the box, the box directly smashed on the ground. Fortunately, the quality of the box was good and there was no damage. Looking at the kiosk not far away, Wu Peng's mother took a deep breath of cool air and hurriedly dragged the box towards the kiosk. Ding dong, welcome to. Wu Peng's mother had just stepped into the kiosk when the induction speaker at the entrance of that kiosk sounded a mechanical voice. The middle-aged boss looked up and then continued to look down at the drama. In a place like the kiosk, guests would naturally go to self-select what they needed and there was no need for the boss to greet them. Therefore, for this middle-aged woman who dragged a box in, the boss didn't care too much. Boss, hello, I, I'm here to store something. Wu Peng's mother sized up the middle-aged boss for a couple of moments before dragging her suitcase two steps forward and tentatively opening her mouth. While speaking, she also shot two glances towards the door, wanting to see if the kidnappers would be watching this side of the situation from somewhere. It was also when she looked out that a few cars drove up outside and parked on the side of the road. The people in the cars also looked this way. Wu Peng's mother frowned and hurriedly withdrew her gaze. She naturally recognized all the people in those cars, and they were clearly the police officers who had been at her home earlier. Oh, storing things right, just put your stuff there. The boss heard Wu Peng's mother's words, and only then did he hurriedly stand up, pointing to a corner inside the kiosk and opened his mouth. Hearing that, Wu Peng's mother hurriedly dragged the box to the location designated by the boss and put it down. When she turned around and came back, the kiosk owner pulled out a black bag from inside the counter. Your friend said that you don't need to care about the stuff if you put it here. This item is what he asked me to give you, saying that he would contact you again. The boss spoke with a kind face and placed the black bag on the counter. Then he sat down again and prepared to continue chasing his drama. Wu Peng's mother froze slightly when she heard this, but didn't dare to ask anything more. Taking that black plastic bag into her hands she turned around and left the kiosk, returning to her car. Chief Team Wu Peng's mother placed the box with the ransom in the middle of the kiosk, and the shopkeeper gave her a black bag. I don't know what's inside. Should we enter the kiosk to find out what's going on? In the car by the roadside, the team members of the third group hurriedly picked up their walkie-talkies, reporting the situation to the chief commander in the temporary command room. First stay on guard in place and see if anyone enters the kiosk to collect the ransom. Try not to frighten the snakes when there is no situation discovered. Among the walkie-talkies, the voice of the commander-in-chief soon came. Roger, the three groups of team members on this side hurriedly responded. The three groups had a total of 20 team members, driving five vehicles. At this moment, after receiving the commander-in-chief's order, two of the cars stopped where they were, while the remaining three cars drove a little bit towards the front and stopped in the parking space. All the cars turned off their engines and quietly hid in the darkness, staring at that one kiosk. This kiosk was small and didn't have a back door, so they just had to guard the front door. If the kidnappers wanted to take the ransom, they would have to come out from here. Case analysis room. The chief commander, after receiving the news from the three groups of team members, leaning on the conference table, a pair of eyes were staring at the computer screen not far away. 
And what was displayed on the computer screen at this time was the real-time location of Wu Peng's mother's vehicle GPS. That kiosk owner gave Wu Peng's mother a black plastic bag. The commander-in-chief felt that there was a high probability that there was a location where Lu Ming was really ready to trade the ransom money. After all, Wu Peng's mother's cell phone was being tapped by the police force. This was something Lu Ming definitely knew. Therefore, he was also very clear that no matter how many times he changed the location of the transaction, the police team would be able to know firsthand. What he was really trying to do was to get Wu Peng's mother to go to a location that the police team did not know about, using the kiosk owner to give Wu Peng's mother the address. This was indeed a good method. And before, Lu Ming had changed locations several times and used the point of requesting time to create a sense of urgency for Wu Peng's mother. The purpose should be to make Wu Peng's mother unwilling to cooperate with the police officer anymore and to get rid of the police officer. In this way, he would most likely create a time gap, letting the police force not know that he had utilized the kiosk owner to pass on the real transaction location to Wu Peng's mother. But he had miscalculated a little. Wu Peng's mother did not not completely shake off the police messenger. Therefore, the point that he had utilized the kiosk boss to pass on the message was still acquired by the team of police officers. Lu Ming's methods were indeed still brilliant. Now looking back at Lu Ming's entire plan to trade the ransom this time, the only doubtful point was why he had to show up at locations he wasn't prepared to trade at every time. Simply to make the police force believe that was the location he was prepared to trade? But, none of this matters for the time being. Now Wu Peng's mother already knew the real location where the robbers were prepared to trade the ransom. Of course, as of now, she didn't trust the police force. This location she naturally would not tell the police force. However, the chief commander only needed to send someone to follow her with deadly accuracy and was always able to catch Lu Ming while she was trading with him. As for having the three groups of team members stay on guard outside the commissary, the chief commander was only doing it as a precaution. After all, maybe Lu Ming would find himself one or two accomplices in order to fetch the ransom. This possibility, of course, was slim to none. Therefore the chief commander on the third team's side didn't worry too much about it. Chief commander, Wu Peng's mother's cell phone received a new message from the kidnappers. Just when the chief commander felt that he had seen through everything, the police messenger from the technical department once again opened his mouth to report the situation. The chief commander hurriedly got up and walked over. Within 40 minutes, take 5 million and put it next to the fountain at the Eurasia Mall. Above the screen, it was the robber's message received synchronously by the eavesdropping software. Track the cell phone signal where the kidnapper sent this text message and see where the location is. The chief commander rushed to give the order after glancing at the content of the text message. The police officers from the technical department were not idle and quickly began location tracking. A few moments, a red dot lit up above the grid map on the computer screen. The location of the kidnapper's cell phone signal is at the Haining International Mall. That technical department police officer quickly spoke. The chief commander was slightly stunned. He hurriedly took the map on the table and glanced at it. Immediately afterward, a look of relief instantly appeared on his face. Lu Ming had not gone to the location he had requested with a text message this time. Instead, the location of the cell phone signal appeared at the opposite of it, a full 20 kilometers away. In other words, the location of the cell phone signal was where he had truly prepared the ransom transaction. Lu Ming has finally revealed himself. Clapping his hands violently, the chief commander opened his mouth rather excitedly. And this move, it also attracted the gazes of all the police officers in the entire case analysis room. Chief Commander, Wu Peng's mother's vehicle has moved, and it was just after the commander-in-chief opened his mouth in excitement. On the side of the technical department's squad leader, he also reported the situation at the same time. Upon hearing this, the chief commander hurriedly looked at the computer screen. Above the screen, on behalf of Wu Peng's mother vehicle GPS positioning of the green nut, is slowly moving, and the direction of movement, hooray towards the direction of Haining International Mall. Sure enough, the commander-in-chief murmured in a low voice when he saw this scene. Everything had coincided with what he had expected. Chief Commander, the direction that Wu Peng's mother's vehicle is traveling at this time is not the direction to the Eurasia Mall. That technical department squad leader looked at the computer screen and saw that the light point on the computer screen was moving in the wrong direction. And the chief commander didn't have any reaction. At that moment, rushed to open his mouth to give a reminder. Because what she's going to now, is the Haining International Mall. The chief commander nodded and responded with a calm face to the small captain of the technical department. Hearing this from the chief commander, the technical department squad leader was slightly stunned. Then he had a shocked expression on his face. Chief commander, are you saying that Wu Peng's mother knows that the kidnappers are at the Haining International Mall? The technical department squad leader spoke with a rather shocked expression. Obviously, he did not understand how Wu Peng's mother could know the kidnappers' true location at this time. After all, the police team knew the kidnappers' location, 
and that was only from tracking the kidnapper's cell phone signal. And the only contact between Wu Peng's mother and the kidnappers is not the cell phone text messages, but the text messages they communicated have all been obtained by the technical department. There was no mention of Haining International Mall as a place at all nah. That's right, if I'm not wrong, at this time, Wu Peng's mother's trip to Haining International Mall is to prepare for a ransom deal with Lu Ming. The chief commander nodded, with a relaxed face. He looked at the technical department squad leader and opened his mouth. In the face of the kidnapper's second ransom deal, as the highest commander of this exercise's police team, he was under extreme pressure. After all, if the kidnappers were released to get the ransom, the hostages would most likely face the risk of being torn apart. And the kidnapper could not get the ransom, but still got out in one piece. Then the kidnappers were infuriated, and the life of the hostage was difficult to guarantee. Therefore, there is only one way for the police team to go. That is, the kidnapper who comes for the ransom must be captured. Now, the commander-in-chief had determined where Lu Ming was truly prepared to trade the ransom. And naturally, he saw the hope of capturing Lu Ming. For a moment, he felt a lot more relaxed. But, chief commander, how did the kidnappers contact Wu Peng's mother? The small captain of the technical department looked at the chief commander's extremely certain look. At that moment, he raised an eyebrow. Even more curious, he asked out. When Wu Peng's mother went to the kiosk, the shopkeeper gave her a black bag. If I'm not wrong, inside should be a cell phone that the robbers left for Wu Peng's mother, or something that has information about the real transaction location written on it. Looking at the small captain of the technical department who had a confused look on his face, the chief commander stretched his brows and opened his mouth with a smile on his face to voice out his guess. I see. Hearing his words, the technical department squad leader then opened his mouth with a sudden realization. He nodded heavily as he spoke not hiding his admiration for the commander-in-chief in the slightest. All right, mobilize all the manpower we can and head to Haining International Mall immediately. Block off the vicinity of the mall first after arriving at the place to prevent Lu Ming from discovering the situation and abandoning the ransom to escape. Lu Ming has a cautious personality and will most likely hide somewhere until the time of the ransom deal. Therefore let's blockade the area as enlarged as possible, and never alert the snakes. The commander-in-chief took a deep breath of cool air before he reached out and patted the technical department's squad leader on the shoulder. Opening his mouth, he ordered a series of action deployments. Yes, the technical department squad leader hurriedly responded and then conveyed the orders to the various squad leaders. In a moment, all of the police agents participating in this exercise began to be quickly mobilized. Countless police agents drove and began to rush towards the Haining International Mall. People Square. Lu Ming was still sitting under the shadow of the street lamp. His face was calm as he watched the people coming and going above the square. After moving his somewhat sore neck, he took out his cell phone and looked at the time. 21.52. It's almost time. Murmuring with a smile on his face, Lu Ming stood up, dialing an unfamiliar number on his cell phone. The ringtone in the middle of the phone rang for a moment, and the call was answered. Hello? On the other end of the phone, it was Wu Peng's mother's voice that rang out. There were a few hints of caution amidst the anxiety. M.S. Wu. Hello? I've made you run around this night. It's been hard work. Lu Ming spoke cheerfully, his tone sounding very polite. However, a heart of Wu Peng's mother on the other end of the phone was hanging in the air. After all, from the voice she also recognized that this was the kidnapper who had contacted her before. The kidnapper who kidnapped her son. The vicious kidnapper. How is my son now? Did you guys hurt him? I can give you money, as much as you want, but I must see that Wu Ping can come back safely. As long as Wu Peng can return home safely. I promise I can pay you another 100 million. After Wu Peng's mother confirmed the identity of the kidnappers, rushed to speak eagerly. There was nothing in her words that did not reveal her concern for her son's safety. I'm satisfied with this attitude of yours. But, Lu Ming smiled and just responded cheerfully. Then the words turned. The tone instantly turned cold. Your approach really makes me a little angry now. Nah. I promised you before that as long as I was able to successfully get the ransom of 5 million dollars, I would release your son but you chose to collaborate with the police police, and didn't want to give me a single penny, and now you're talking about giving me a hundred million dollars? What do you take me for? The tone of his voice was cold, and his words were filled with warm anger. Hearing Wu Peng's mother's heart thumped, her heart instantly developed a few hints of fear towards this kidnapper she had never met before. She took a deep breath of cool air. For a moment, she did not know what to say, fearing that once she said a wrong word, she would let this kidnapper lay his hands on her son. At once. Both sides of the call fell into a short silence. After a moment, Lu Ming spoke again. I am a man of my word. As long as I can get my hands on five million dollars, I will let your son return alive. Of course, if anything else happens, you'll just wait to collect your son's corpse. M.S. Wu. 
This is your last chance. Understand? Lu Ming spoke with a smile on his face, but his tone was extremely cold. It gave people a chilling feeling. It caused Wu Peng's mother on the other end of the phone to gulp. I understand. She hurriedly responded. At this point, she had already lost her trust in the police force. Therefore, all hope of saving her son was also placed on the kidnappers being able to keep their word, and what she had to do. Then it was also to be able to let the kidnappers get the ransom smoothly. Very well. After arriving at the Haining International Mall, you will place the ransom in batches to the location I requested. Lu Ming spoke with considerable satisfaction. He began to give instructions to Wu Peng's mother remotely. Have her place the remaining $25 million of ransom in batches at various locations in Haining International Mall, the case analysis room. At this moment, the chief commander was sitting at the conference table, waiting for news with a calm expression. The technical department had been monitoring the GPS signal from Wu Peng's mother's car and confirmed that Wu Peng's mother had indeed traveled to Haining International Mall. This also made the commander-in-chief firmly believe that his inference was not wrong. Haining International Mall. This was where Lu Ming was preparing to actually trade the ransom. Report, Wu Peng's mother's vehicle has appeared near the Haining International Mall. In the midst of the commander-in-chief's wait, a voice reporting the situation suddenly came over the intercom, taking a deep breath of cool air. The expression on the commander-in-chief's face once again regained its gravity. Roger, send someone to follow Lu Ming's mother's vehicle, and don't let her find out as much as possible so as not to alert the snakes. The commander-in-chief hurriedly picked up the walkie-talkie. He responded with a calm tone. At this time, Wu Peng's mother no longer had any trust in the police messenger team. If she were to discover that the police messenger team was following her, she would most likely inform the robbers. Roger, a response quickly came from the walkie-talkie. The commander-in-chief exhaled a mouthful of turbid air. His right hand clenched into a fist and dragged his chin, his brows deeply locked. At this moment, he was inevitably a little nervous inside. After all, Lu Ming was the core of the kidnapper's team. There was no doubt about it. Therefore, whether or not he could capture Lu Ming was extremely important to the direction of the next maneuver, Haining International Shopping Center. At this time, although it was already nearly 10 o'clock in the evening, however, the flow of people above the mall was still very large. The 20-story mall was brightly lit, and almost all of the stores were still in business. After Wu Peng's mother entered the mall in her car, parked the car on the side of the road, putting on her headset, she maintained her call with the kidnappers. At the same time, on the side of the road a hundred meters away from Wu Peng's mother, two cars also stopped one after the other. The cars turned off their engines. The people inside the cars were staring from afar at the direction where Wu Peng's mother's car was parked. Not long after, they saw Wu Peng's mother get out of the car, open the trunk and take out a box with ransom money, dragging the box towards the square in front of the mall. The people in the two cars were rushing to get out of the car. Eight people quickly separated, seemingly in different directions, but in fact, they are slowly approaching towards Wu Peng's mother. Wu Peng's mother was dragging her suitcase along while looking around from time to time. Her brows were deeply locked and her expression was tense. A few moments later, Wu Peng's mother dragged the box containing the ransom money to a corner of the square, and then put down the box and quickly left. Seeing this, the police officer who was following from afar, disguised as a passerby, pressed the talk button on his headset, reporting to the general team. After Wu Peng's mother placed a suitcase containing the ransom at the edge of the square, she returned to the car once again, requesting next instructions. That police messenger reported this side of the situation to the chief commander of the case analysis room. After all, the box contained $5 million in cash. He couldn't afford the responsibility if something went wrong. Guard in place. Pay attention to the camouflage. Don't show any signs. If a suspected kidnapper is found near the ransom, make an arrest at the first opportunity. A group of brothers follow Wu Peng's mother. Pay attention to never be exposed. A response from the commander-in-chief quickly came over the intercom. The words were determined and decisive. Obviously the chief commander had already expected such a thing to happen. Yes, the police officer hurriedly responded. Then he gave a wink to a few colleagues not far away. A few people then disguised themselves as passers-by and stayed nearby, keeping an eye on the box containing the ransom at all times. As for Wu Peng's mother, she returned to the car and drove it to the other side of the mall. Similarly, she took a box containing the ransom money from the trunk. It was placed in a nearby corner. In the case analysis room, the commander-in-chief listened to the voice of the intercom reporting the situation over and over again. His expression became more and more gloomy. Wu Peng's mother had already driven her car around the mall. Every other place, a box containing ransom money would be put down. By now, four had already been put down. Together with the boxes previously placed in the kiosk, there were a total of five. And in each box was five million dollars in cash. In other words, 
At this time she has released a total of 25 million in cash. Prepared 30 million ransom has only 5 million left in Wu Peng's mother's car. And at this time, the kidnappers who took the ransom have not shown up. Reporting to the chief team, Wu Peng's mother's vehicle has entered the underground parking lot. Brothers from Team 6 are following. Right at this moment, the voice reporting the situation came again from the intercom. Pay attention to concealment. Never let Wu Peng's mother notice anything unusual. The commander-in-chief picked up the walkie-talkie and hurriedly responded. The kidnapper hadn't shown himself at this point in time. This showed that he must be staring somewhere. And only after confirming that it was safe would he possibly come out to collect the ransom. Therefore, the more it came to this time, the more it was important not to scare the snakes. Roger, over the intercom, came the voice of the five groups of team members responding. The commander-in-chief rubbed his temples with his eyes closed. And with his eyes closed, his brain was racing. There was a total of 30 million dollars in ransom. At this moment, 25 million had all appeared in the line of sight of the police team. In other words, as long as the last box containing the ransom money was also under the surveillance of the police team, what they need to do is to wait for the rabbit, waiting for Lu Ming to come and collect the ransom and take him down directly. Underground parking lot. Wu Peng's mother was driving her car, slowly entering the parking lot area. Find parking space 302 and park there. Within the headphones, Lu Ming's ice-cold voice rang out. Wu Peng's mother didn't dare to be the slightest bit slow, and hurriedly did as the kidnapper asked. The car slowly traveled to the designated parking space, and behind him, two cars followed from afar. Seeing Wu Peng's mother ready to stop the car, they did not dare to continue to follow, and directly parked the car in the nearby parking space. The 302 parking space was just behind the load-bearing wall, and that load-bearing wall blocked the line of sight of the police badges on the car. Therefore, after Wu Peng's mother's car was parked in the parking space, they could not see anything. But just a few moments, Wu Peng's mother pulled a box out. After looking around, she placed the box next to a car parked in a parking space at the back. And after that, Wu Peng's mother got into the car and drove it out of the parking lot. Reporting to the general team, Wu Peng's mother drove off after placing the last box containing the ransom in the underground parking lot. Should we have our brothers continue to follow Wu Peng's mother's vehicle? The police messenger in the underground parking lot hurriedly reported the situation up through the intercom. No need. All teams monitor your counterparts for the ransom. The kidnappers are estimated to be hiding nearby. Pay attention to concealment and don't be exposed. The voice of the commander-in-chief soon sounded over the intercom. The six suitcases containing the ransom money were all in the line of sight of the police teams at this moment. Therefore, Wu Peng's mother leaving was no longer important to the police team. They only needed to keep an eye on the ransom money and Lu Ming would always deliver it to their door. The chief commander after giving the order, couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. And at the same time, Wu Peng's mother was driving her car towards People's Square. And in the trunk of his car, there was a box. People's Square. Lu Ming looked at the time and stretched. Only then did he get up and walk towards the outside of the square without any hurry. Standing on the side of the road, his face was calm as he looked at the traffic coming in front of him. Not long after. A SUV drove over in the direction where Lu Ming was, after seeing the license plate clearly. Only then did Lu Ming wave towards the vehicle. The vehicle slowly stopped in front of Lu Ming. M.S. Wu. Hello. After the car window fell, Lu Ming looked at Wu Peng's mother sitting in the driver's seat. With a smile on his face, he spoke. The tone was quite kind. Together with the faint smile on that face, it gave off a svelte feeling. However, Wu Peng's mother heard Lu Ming's voice. Still, she couldn't help but swallow her saliva. There was a look of fear on her face that was hard to hide. Although it was the first time she had seen Lu Ming, this voice was simply too familiar to her. This person in front of her was clearly the kidnapper. The ransom you want is inside the trunk. When will you release my son? As long as my son can go home safely, I can give you another large sum of money. As long as it's within my reach, any amount of money will do. Wu Peng's mother looked at Lu Ming and spoke with extreme sincerity. Previously, she had mentioned in the middle of the phone call that she could pay extra ransom in exchange for Wu Peng's safe intentions, but instead, it had somewhat angered the kidnappers. Therefore, when she brought it up again at this time, her words were also quite cautious. As long as I can go back with the ransom without any problems, you will definitely be able to watch your son go back before dawn. Open the trunk. After I take the ransom, you can just drive the car home. Don't worry. I'm a man of my word. After all, doing business, integrity is the most important thing. Lu Ming opened his mouth to respond with a smile on his face. The expression on his face when he spoke was quite sincere, and it gave off a rather credible feeling. However, listening to his words of doing business, integrity is the most important. Wu Peng's mother's face expression is extremely complex, but she still rushed to open the trunk, did not dare to be slow. 
After all, Wu Peng's mother knows that the kidnappers, although it looks peaceful, but if one accidentally annoyed him, then I'm afraid that the consequences would be the last thing one would want to see. Lu Ming walked to the back of the car and took down the box containing the ransom money in the trunk. Wu Peng's mother also quickly drove the car and left the confines of People's Square. The ransom had arrived. Lu Ming put away the gentle smile on his face. Taking the ransom money, he walked towards the other side of the square, wanting to win the maneuver. Not only did he need to get the ransom, but he also needed to leave Kunjiang City with the ransom. Right now, the police team hadn't reacted to the fact that they had gotten the ransom. Therefore, he could choose to take a car and run directly towards the outside of Kunjiang City. Once in the car, he could then inform Zhou Hang that the ransom had arrived and ask him to meet him at the designated place. This appeared to be the easiest way, but People Square, where he was at the moment, was in the center of the city. It would take at least two hours to leave the confines of Kunjian City by taxi. This was still the case when the roads were unobstructed. Once there were complicated road conditions, this time would be much longer, and the means used in his own ransom plan was not considered to be very clever, and it wouldn't take long for the police force to react. In other words, if Lu Ming really did this, the police force would definitely react before he left Kunjian City. At that time, he would be exposed to the eyes of the police force. By then, he would be exposed to the eyes of the police force. It would be impossible for him to leave the city of Kunming. Therefore, Lu Ming would not choose such an almost certain death path. Now that he couldn't leave, he could only find a place to hide first. Five million dollars was not small. When the time came to leave with such a large box of money, it really wasn't an easy thing to do. Lu Ming would have to plan his next move. Hijackers view live. Lu Ming's plan to get the ransom this time has been set up since the afternoon. The audience in the live broadcast room had also been watching from the afternoon until now. Watching the ransom arrive, all of the viewers in the live broadcast room exploded. Lu Ming actually really got the ransom in hand. This is too bullish. This series of plans makes people have to admire Na. Strong indeed. Living up to his title of the strongest robber. I was dumbfounded watching it. The most outrageous thing is that Lu Ming. This guy. The place where he finally took the ransom is still the people's square where he failed to take the ransom for the first time. This is indeed somewhat outrageous, taking the ransom at noon and planting it here. At night people still come back here and still manage to get the ransom. I don't know what kind of mood the commander-in-chief will be in after he knows. My wife asked me why I was kneeling down to watch the whole live broadcast until I pulled her over to watch Lu Ming's operation. And now it's the two of us kneeling down together to watch the whole live broadcast. Brothers upstairs, are you trying to laugh me to death? But Lu Ming's entire plan did make me watch on my knees as well. Just Lu Ming's performance in the middle of this maneuver is worthy of sending me a big rocket. Without further ado, I'm ready to eat steamed buns for the next half of the month, and I'll follow up with a round of rockets. No way. This thing hasn't even ended yet, and you guys are ready to celebrate for Lu Ming? Maybe Lu Ming will be arrested next if he can't escape from Kunjian City? Although it's not impossible, but just from Lu Ming's performance so far, it's already pretty awesome. That said, what do you guys think? Now that Lu Ming has gotten the ransom, what will he and Zhou Hang do with Wu Peng? Didn't Lu Ming already say that as long as he gets the ransom and goes back safely, he will release Wu Peng? I have a feeling that he won't. After all, he's a tough bandit. After getting the ransom, shouldn't the first thing he does be to directly tear the ticket? Bad smile. Ha ha. If he really tore the ticket, then Lu Ming would be too much of a dog. After all, he has also been mouthing off to Wu Peng's mother that he is a man who keeps his promises. Where do kidnappers need to keep their promises? Support tearing the ticket. The heat in the live broadcast room reached a new peak for this maneuver. Countless pop-ups filled the live broadcast room. The viewers were extremely impressed with Lu Ming's plan to fetch the ransom this time, as well as the series of deployments. While frantically sending out pop-ups for discussion, the number of gifts also saw a surge. The number of online viewers in the hijacker's perspective live broadcast room had also reached more than 3 million, and more than half of the platform's audience was in this live broadcast room. At the same time, all sorts of posts and short videos about this maneuver were also circulating like crazy online. And the name Lu Ming also topped the hot searches of countless websites. For a time, the heat and popularity of Lu Ming as well as the live broadcast of the maneuver had reached an extremely terrifying level. Of course, Lu Ming was unaware of everything that was going on in the live broadcast. At this time, he dragged the box containing the ransom money and walked to an uninhabited path. He pulled out his cell phone from his pocket and dialed a number. The ransom has arrived. Tear the ticket. He waited for the call to be answered before he spoke with a calm expression on his face. 